First Nephi, chapters one through four of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrew White. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. First Nephi, chapter one. I Nephi having been born of goodly parents therefore i was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father and having seen many afflictions in the course of my days nevertheless having been highly favored of the lord in all my days yea having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of god therefore i make a record of my proceedings in my days yea i make a record in the language of my father which consists of the learning of the jews and the language of the egyptians and i know that the record which i make is true and i make it with mine own hand and i make it according to my knowledge for it came to pass in the commencement of the first year of the reign of zedekiah king of judah my father lehi having dwelt at jerusalem in all his days and in that same year there came many prophets prophesying unto the people that they must repent or the great city jerusalem must be destroyed wherefore it came to pass that my father lehi as he went forth prayed unto the lord yea even with all his heart in behalf of his people and it came to pass as he prayed unto the lord there came a pillar of fire and dwelt upon a rock before him and he saw and heard much and because of the things which he saw and heard he did quake and tremble exceedingly and it came to pass that he returned to his own house at jerusalem and he cast himself upon his bed being overcome with the spirit and the things which he had seen and being thus overcome with the spirit he was carried away in a vision even that he saw the heavens open and he thought he saw god sitting upon his throne surrounded with numberless concourses of angels in the attitude of singing and praising their god and it came to pass that he saw one descending out of the midst of heaven and he beheld that his lustre was above that of the sun at noonday and he also saw twelve others following him and their brightness did exceed that of the stars in the firmament and they came down and went forth upon the face of the earth and the first came and stood before my father and gave unto him a book and bade him that he should read and it came to pass that as he read he was filled with the spirit of the lord and he read saying woe woe unto jerusalem for i have seen thine abominations yea and many things did my father read concerning jerusalem that it should be destroyed and the inhabitants thereof many should perish by the sword and many should be carried away captive into babylon and it came to pass that when my father had read and seen many great and marvelous things he did exclaim many things unto the lord such as great and marvelous are thy works o lord god almighty thy throne is high in the heavens and thy power and goodness and mercy are over all the inhabitants of the earth and because thou art merciful thou wilt not suffer those who come unto thee that they shall perish and after this manner was the language of my father in the praising of his god for his soul did rejoice and his whole heart was filled because of the things which he had seen yea which the lord had shown unto him and now i nephi do not make a full account of the things which my father hath written for he hath written many things which he saw in visions and in dreams and he also hath written many things which he prophesied and spake unto his children of which i shall not make a full account but i shall make an account of my proceedings in my days behold i make an abridgment of the record of my father upon plates which i have made with mine own hands wherefore after i have abridged the record of my father then will i make an account of mine own life therefore i would that ye should know that after the lord had shown so many marvelous things unto my father lehi yea concerning the destruction of jerusalem behold he went forth among the people and began to prophesy and to declare unto them concerning the things which he had both seen and heard and it came to pass that the jews did mock him because of the things which he testified of them for he truly testified of their wickedness and their abominations 
and he testified that the things which he saw and heard and also the things which he read in the book manifested plainly of the coming of the messiah and also the redemption of the world and when the jews heard these things they were angry with him yea even as with the prophets of old whom they had cast out and stoned and slain and they also sought his life that they might take it away but behold i nephi will show unto you that the tender mercies of the lord are over all those whom he hath chosen because of their faith to make them mighty even unto the power of deliverance first nephi chapter two for behold it came to pass that the lord spake unto my father yea even in a dream and said unto him blessed art thou lehi because of the things which thou hast done and because thou hast been faithful and declared unto this people the things which i commanded thee behold they seek to take away thy life and it came to pass that the lord commanded my father even in a dream that he should take his family and depart into the wilderness and it came to pass that he was obedient unto the word of the lord wherefore he did as the lord commanded him and it came to pass that he departed into the wilderness and he left his house and the land of his inheritance and his gold and his silver and his precious things and took nothing with him save it were his family and provisions and tents and departed into the wilderness and he came down by the borders near the shore of the red sea and he travelled in the wilderness in the borders which are nearer the red sea and he did travel in the wilderness with his family which consisted of my mother sariah and my elder brothers who were laman lemuel and sam and it came to pass that when he had travelled three days in the wilderness he pitched his tent in a valley by the side of a river of water and it came to pass that he built an altar of stones and made an offering unto the lord and gave thanks unto the lord our god and it came to pass that he called the name of the river laman and it emptied into the red sea and the valley was in the borders near the mouth thereof and when my father saw that the waters of the river emptied into the fountain of the red sea he spake unto laman saying o oh, that thou mightest be like unto this river continually running into the fountain of all righteousness and he also spake unto lemuel o oh, that thou mightest be like unto this valley firm and steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of the lord now this he spake because of the stiff nakedness of laman and lemuel for behold they did murmur in many things against their father because he was a visionary man and had led them out of the land of jerusalem to leave the land of their inheritance and their gold and their silver and their precious things to perish in the wilderness and this they said he had done because of the foolish imaginations of his heart and thus laman and lemuel being the eldest did murmur against their father and they did murmur because they knew not the dealings of that god who had created them neither did they believe that jerusalem that great city could be destroyed according to the words of the prophets and they were like unto the jews who were at jerusalem who sought to take away the life of my father and it came to pass that my father did speak unto them in the valley of lemuel with power being filled with the spirit until their frames did shake before him and he did confound them that they durst not utter against him wherefore they did as he commanded them and my father dwelt in a tent and it came to pass that i nephi being exceedingly young nevertheless being large in stature and also having great desires to know of the mysteries of god wherefore i did cry unto the lord and behold he did visit me and did soften my heart that i did believe all the words which had been spoken by my father wherefore i did not rebel against him like unto my brothers and i spake unto sam making known unto him the things which the lord had manifested unto me by his holy spirit and it came to pass that he believed in my words but behold laman and lemuel would not hearken unto my words and being grieved because of the hardness of their hearts i cried unto the lord for them and it came to pass that the lord spake unto me saying blessed art thou nephi because of thy faith for thou hast sought me diligently with lowliness of heart and inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments 
ye shall prosper and shall be led to a land of promise yea even a land which i have prepared for you yea a land which is choice above all other lands and inasmuch as thy brethren shall rebel against thee they shall be cut off from the presence of the lord and inasmuch as thou shalt keep my commandments thou shalt be made a ruler and a teacher over thy brethren for behold in that day that they shall rebel against me i will curse them even with a sore curse and they shall have no power over thy seed except they shall rebel against me also and if it so be that they rebel against me they shall be a scourge unto thy seed to stir them up in the ways of remembrance first nephi chapter three and it came to pass that i nephi returned from speaking with the lord to the tent of my father and it came to pass that he spake unto me saying behold i have dreamed a dream in which the lord hath commanded me that thou and thy brethren shall return to jerusalem for behold laban hath the record of the jews and also a genealogy of my forefathers and they are engraven upon plates of brass wherefore the lord hath commanded me that thou and thy brothers should go unto the house of laban and seek the records and bring them down hither into the wilderness and now behold thy brothers murmur saying it is a hard thing which i have required of them but behold i have not required it of them but it is a commandment of the lord therefore go my son and thou shalt be favored of the lord because thou hast not murmured and it came to pass that i nephi said unto my father i will go and do the things which the lord hath commanded for i know that the lord giveth no commandments unto the children of men save he shall prepare a way for them that they may accomplish the thing which he commandeth them and it came to pass that when my father had heard these words he was exceedingly glad for he knew that i had been blessed of the lord and i nephi and my brethren took our journey in the wilderness with our tents to go up to the land of jerusalem and it came to pass that when we had gone up to the land of jerusalem i and my brethren did consult one with another and we cast lots who of us should go in unto the house of laban and it came to pass that the lot fell upon laman and laman went in unto the house of laban and he talked with him as he sat in his house and he desired of laban the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass which contained the genealogy of my father and behold it came to pass that laban was angry and thrust him out from his presence and he would not that he should have the records wherefore he said unto him behold thou art a robber and i will slay thee but laman fled out of his presence and told the things which laban had done unto us and we began to be exceedingly sorrowful and my brethren were about to return unto my father in the wilderness but behold i said unto them that as the lord liveth and as we live we will not go down unto our father in the wilderness until we have accomplished the thing which the lord hath commanded us wherefore let us be faithful in keeping the commandments of the lord therefore let us go down to the land of our father's inheritance for behold he left gold and silver and all manner of riches and all this he hath done because of the commandments of the lord for he knew that jerusalem must be destroyed because of the wickedness of the people for behold they have rejected the words of the prophets wherefore if my father should dwell in the land after he hath been commanded to flee out of the land behold he would also perish wherefore it must needs be that he flee out of the land and behold it is wisdom in god that we should obtain these records that we may preserve unto our children the language of our fathers and also that we may preserve unto them the words which have been spoken by the mouth of all the holy prophets which have been delivered unto them by the spirit and power of god since the world began even down unto this present time and it came to pass that after this manner of language did i persuade my brethren that they might be faithful in keeping the commandments of god and it came to pass that we went down to the land of our inheritance and we did gather together our gold and our silver and our precious things and after we had gathered these things together we went up again unto the house of laban and it came to pass that we went in unto laban 
and desired him that he would give unto us the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass for which we would give unto him our gold and our silver and all our precious things and it came to pass that when laban saw our property and that it was exceedingly great he did lust after it insomuch that he thrust us out and sent his servants to slay us that he might obtain our property and it came to pass that we did flee before the servants of laban and we were obliged to leave behind our property and it fell into the hands of laban and it came to pass that we fled into the wilderness and the servants of laban did not overtake us and we hid ourselves in the cavity of a rock and it came to pass that laman was angry with me and also with my father and also was lemuel for he hearkened unto the words of laman wherefore laman and lemuel did speak many hard words unto us their younger brothers and they did smite us even with a rod and it came to pass as they smote us with a rod behold an angel of the lord came and stood before them and he spake unto them saying why do ye smite your younger brother with a rod know ye not that the lord hath chosen him to be a ruler over you and this because of your iniquities behold ye shall go up to jerusalem again and the lord will deliver laban into your hands and after the angel had spoken unto us he departed and after the angel had departed laman and lemuel again began to murmur saying how is it possible that the lord will deliver laban into our hands behold he is a mighty man and he can command fifty yea even he can slay fifty then why not us first nephi chapter four and it came to pass that i spake unto my brethren saying let us go up again unto jerusalem and let us be faithful in keeping the commandments of the lord for behold he is mightier than all the earth then why not mightier than laban and his fifty yea or even than his tens of thousands therefore let us go up let us be strong like unto moses for he truly spake unto the waters of the red sea and they divided hither and thither and our fathers came through out of captivity on dry ground and the armies of pharaoh did follow and were drowned in the waters of the red sea now behold ye know that this is true and ye also know that an angel hath spoken unto you wherefore can ye doubt let us go up the lord is able to deliver us even as our fathers and to destroy laban even as the egyptians now when i had spoken these words they were yet wroth and did still continue to murmur nevertheless they did follow me up until we came without the walls of jerusalem and it was by night and i caused that they should hide themselves without the walls and after they had hid themselves i nephi crept into the city and went forth towards the house of laban and i was led by the spirit not knowing beforehand the things which i should do nevertheless i went forth and as i came near unto the house of laban i beheld a man and he had fallen to the earth before me for he was drunken with wine and when i came to him i found that it was laban and i beheld his sword and i drew it forth from the sheath thereof and the hilt thereof was of pure gold and the workmanship thereof was exceedingly fine and i saw that the blade thereof was of the most precious steel and it came to pass that i was constrained by the spirit that i should kill laban but i said in my heart never at any time have i shed the blood of man and i shrunk and would that i might not slay him and the spirit said unto me again behold the lord hath delivered him into thy hands yea and i also knew that he had sought to take away mine own life yea and he would not hearken unto the commandments of the lord and he also had taken away our property and it came to pass that the spirit said unto me again slay him for the lord hath delivered him into thy hands behold the lord slayeth the wicked to bring forth his righteous purposes it is better that one man should perish than that a nation should dwindle and perish in unbelief and now when i nephi had heard these words i remembered the words of the lord which he spake unto me in the wilderness saying that inasmuch as thy seed shall keep my commandments they shall prosper in the land of promise 
yea and i also thought that they could not keep the commandments of the lord according to the law of moses save they should have the law and i also knew that the law was engraven upon the plates of brass and again i knew that the lord had delivered laban into my hands for this cause that i might obtain the records according to his commandments therefore i did obey the voice of the spirit and took laban by the hair of the head and i smote off his head with his own sword and after i had smitten off his head with his own sword i took the garments of laban and put them upon mine own body yea even every whit and i did gird on his armour about my loins and after i had done this i went forth unto the treasury of laban and as i went forth towards the treasury of laban behold i saw the servant of laban who had the keys of the treasury and i commanded him in the voice of laban that he should go with me into the treasury and he supposed me to be his master laban for he beheld the garments and also the sword girded about my loins and he spake unto me concerning the elders of the jews he knowing that his master laban had been out by night among them and i spake unto him as if it had been laban and i also spake unto him that i should carry the engravings which were upon the plates of brass to my elder brethren who were without the walls and i also bade him that he should follow me and he supposing that i spake of the brethren of the church and that i was truly that laban whom i had slain wherefore he did follow me and he spake unto me many times concerning the elders of the jews as i went forth unto my brethren who were without the walls and it came to pass that when laman saw me he was exceedingly frightened and also lemuel and sam and they fled from before my presence for they supposed it was laban and that he had slain me and had sought to take away their lives also and it came to pass that i called after them and they did hear me wherefore they did cease to flee from my presence and it came to pass that when the servant of laban beheld my brethren he began to tremble and was about to flee from before me and return to the city of jerusalem and now i nephi being a man large in stature and also having received much strength of the lord therefore i did seize upon the servant of laban and held him that he should not flee and it came to pass that i spake with him that if he would hearken unto my words as the lord liveth and as i live even so that if he would hearken unto our words we would spare his life and i spake unto him even with an oath that he need not fear that he should be a free man like unto us if he would go down in the wilderness with us and i also spake unto him saying surely the lord hath commanded us to do this thing and shall we not be diligent in keeping the commandments of the lord therefore if thou wilt go down into the wilderness to my father thou shalt have place with us and it came to pass that zoram did take courage at the words which i spake now zoram was the name of the servant and he promised that he would go down into the wilderness unto our father yea and he also made an oath unto us that he would tarry with us from that time forth now we were desirous that he should tarry with us for this cause that the jews might not know concerning our flight into the wilderness lest they should pursue us and destroy us and it came to pass that when zoram had made an oath unto us our fears did cease concerning him and it came to pass that we took the plates of brass and the servant of laban and departed into the wilderness and journeyed unto the tent of our father end of first nephi chapters one through four recording by andrew white andrew white usa at yahoo dot com first nephi chapters five to eleven of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org the book of mormon translated by joseph smith first nephi chapter five and it came to pass that after we had come down into the wilderness unto our father behold he was filled with joy and also my mother saria was exceedingly glad for she truly had mourned because of us for she had supposed that we had perished in the wilderness and she also had complained against my father telling him that he was a visionary man 
saying, Behold, thou hast led us forth from the land of our inheritance, and my sons are no more, and we perish in the wilderness. And after this manner of language had my mother complained against my father. And it had come to pass that my father spake unto her, saying, I know that I am a visionary man, for if I had not seen the things of God in a vision, I should not have known the goodness of God, but had tarried at Jerusalem, and had perished with my brethren. But behold, I have obtained a land of promise, in the which things I do rejoice. Yea, and I know that the Lord would deliver my sons out of the hands of Laban, and bring them down again unto us in the wilderness. And after this manner of language did my father, Lehi, comfort my mother, Saria, concerning us, while we journeyed in the wilderness up to the land of Jerusalem, to obtain the record of the Jews. And when we had returned to the tent of my father, behold, their joy was full, and my mother was comforted. And she spake, saying, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath commanded my husband to flee into the wilderness. Yea, and I also know of a surety that the Lord hath protected my sons, and delivered them out of the hands of Laban, and given them power whereby they could accomplish the thing which the Lord hath commanded them. And after this manner of language did she speak. And it came to pass that they did rejoice exceedingly, and did offer sacrifice and burnt offerings unto the Lord, and they gave thanks unto the God of Israel. And after they had given thanks unto the God of Israel, my father, Lehi, took the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass, and he did search them from the beginning. And he beheld that they did contain the five books of Moses, which gave an account of the creation of the world, and also of Adam and Eve, who were our first parents, and also a record of the Jews from the beginning, even down to the commencement of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, and also the prophecies of the holy prophets from the beginning, even down to the commencement of the reign Zedekiah, and also many prophecies which have been spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah. And it came to pass that my father, Lehi, also found upon the plates of brass a genealogy of his fathers, wherefore he knew that he was a descendant of Joseph, yea, even that Joseph, who was the son of Jacob, who was sold into Egypt, and who was preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he might preserve his father Jacob and all his household from perishing with famine. And they were also led out of captivity and out of the land of Egypt by that same God who had preserved them. And thus my father Lehi did discover the genealogy of his fathers. And Laban also was a descendant of Joseph, wherefore he and his fathers had kept the records. And now, when my father saw all these things, he was filled with the Spirit, and began to prophesy concerning his seed, that these plates of brass should go forth unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, who were of his seed. Wherefore he said, that these plates of brass should never perish, neither should they be dimmed any more by time. And he prophesied many things concerning his seed. And it came to pass that thus far I and my father had kept the commandments wherewith the Lord had commanded us. And we had obtained the records which the Lord had commanded us, and researched them, and found that they were desirable, yea, even of great worth unto us, insomuch that we could preserve the commandments of the Lord unto our children. Wherefore it was wisdom in the Lord that we should carry them with us, as we journeyed in the wilderness toward the land of promise. CHAPTER six. And now I, Nephi, do not give the genealogy of my fathers in this part of my record, neither at any time shall I give it after, upon these plates which I am writing, for it is given in the record which has been kept by my father, wherefore I do not write it in this work for it sufficeth me to say that we are descendants of Joseph. And it mattereth not to me that I am particular to give a full account of all the things of my father, for they cannot be written upon these plates, for I desire the room that I may write of the things of God. For the fullness of mine intent is that I may persuade men to come unto the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and be saved. Wherefore, the things which are pleasing unto the world I do not write, but the things which are pleasing unto God, and unto those who are not of the world. Wherefore I shall give commandment unto my seed, that they shall not occupy these plates which things which are not of worth unto the children of men. CHAPTER seven. And now I would that ye might know, 
that after my father, Lehi, had made an end of prophesying concerning his seed, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto him again, saying that it was not meet for him, Lehi, that he should take his family into the wilderness alone, but that his sons should take daughters to wife, that they might raise up seed unto the Lord in the land of promise. And it came to pass that the Lord commanded him that I, Nephi, and my brethren should again return unto the land of Jerusalem, and bring down Ishmael and his family into the wilderness. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did again with my brethren go forth into the wilderness to go up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass that we went up unto the house of Ishmael, and we did gain favor in the sight of Ishmael, insomuch that we did speak unto him the words of the Lord. And it came to pass that the Lord did soften the heart of Ishmael, and also his household, insomuch that they took their journey with us down into the wilderness, to the tent of our father. And it came to pass that as we journeyed in the wilderness, behold, Laman and Lemuel, and two of the daughters of Ishmael, and the two sons of Ishmael and their families, did rebel against us, yea, against me, Nephi, and Sam, and their father Ishmael, and his wife, and his three other daughters. And it came to pass in the witch rebellion they were desirous to return unto the land of Jerusalem. And now I, Nephi, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, therefore I spake unto them, saying, Yea, even unto Laman and unto Lemuel, Behold, ye are mine elder brethren, and how is it that ye are so hard in your hearts, and so blind in your minds, that ye have need that I, your younger brother, should speak unto you, yea, and set an example for you? How is it that ye have not hearkened unto the word of the Lord? How is it that ye have forgotten that ye have seen an angel of the Lord? Yea, and how is it that ye have forgotten what great things the Lord hath done for us, in delivering us out of the hands of Laban, and also that we should obtain the record? Yea, and how is it that ye have forgotten that the Lord is able to do all things according to his will, for the children of men, if it so be that they exercise faith in him? Wherefore, let us be faithful to him. And if it be so that we are faithful to him, we shall obtain the land of promise, and ye shall know at some future period that the word of the Lord shall be fulfilled concerning the destruction of Jerusalem, for all things which the Lord hath spoken concerning the destruction of Jerusalem must be fulfilled. For behold, the Spirit of the Lord ceaseth soon to strive with them. For behold, they have rejected the prophets, and Jeremiah have they cast into prison and they have sought to take away the life of my father, insomuch that they have driven him out of the land. Now behold, I say unto you, that if ye will return unto Jerusalem, ye shall also perish with them. And now, if ye have choice, go up to the land, and remember the words which I speak unto you, that if ye go, ye will also perish. For thus the Spirit of the Lord constraineth me that I should speak." And it came to pass that when I, Nephi, had spoken these words unto my brethren, they were angry with me. And it came to pass that they did lay their hands upon me, for, behold, they were exceedingly wroth. And they did bind me with cords, for they sought to take away my life, that they might leave me in the wilderness to be devoured by wild beasts. But it came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord, saying, O Lord, according to my faith which is in thee, wilt thou deliver me from the hands of my brethren? Yea, even give me strength that I may burst these bands with which I am bound. And it came to pass that when I had said these words, behold, the bands were loosed from off my hands and feet, and I stood before my brethren, and I spake unto them again. And it came to pass that they were angry with me again, and sought to lay hands upon me. But behold, one of the daughters of Ishmael, yea, and also her mother, and one of the sons of Ishmael, did plead with my brethren, insomuch that they did soften their hearts and they did cease striving to take away my life. And it came to pass that they were sorrowful because of their wickedness, insomuch that they did bow down before me, and did plead with me that I would forgive them of the thing that they had done against me. And it came to pass that I did frankly forgive them all that they had done, and I did exhort them that they would pray unto the Lord their God for forgiveness. And it came to pass that they did so. And after they had done praying unto the Lord, we did again travel on our journey toward the tent of our father. And it came to pass that we did come down unto the tent of our father, and after I and my brethren and all the house of Ishmael had come down unto the tent of my father, they did give thanks unto the Lord their God, and they did offer sacrifice and burnt offerings unto him. 
Chapter 8 And it came to pass that we had gathered together all manner of seeds of every kind, both of grain of every kind, and also of the seeds of fruit of every kind. And it came to pass that while my father tarried in the wilderness, he spake unto us, saying, Behold, I have dreamed a dream, or in other words, I have seen a vision. And behold, because of the thing which I have seen, I have reason to rejoice in the Lord, because of Nephi and also of Sam. For I have reason to suppose that they, and also many of their seed, will be saved. But behold, Laman and Lemuel, I fear exceedingly because of you. For behold, methought I saw in my dream a dark and dreary wilderness. And it came to pass that I saw a man, and he was dressed in a white robe, and he came and stood before me. And it came to pass that he spake unto me, and bade me follow him. And it came to pass that as I followed him I beheld myself that I was in a dark and dreary waste. And after I had travelled for the space of many hours in the darkness, I began to pray unto the Lord that he would have mercy on me, according to the multitude of his tender mercies. And it came to pass, after I had prayed unto the Lord, I beheld a large and spacious field. And it came to pass that I beheld a tree, whose fruit was desirable to make one happy. And it came to pass that I did go forth and partake of the fruit thereof, and I beheld that it was most sweet above all that I have ever before tasted. Yea, and I beheld that the fruit thereof was white, to exceed all the whiteness that I had ever seen. And as I partook of the fruit thereof, it filled my soul with exceedingly great joy. Wherefore I began to be desirous that my family should partake of it also, for I knew that it was desirable above all other fruit. And as I cast my eyes round about, that perhaps I might discover my family also, I beheld a river of water, and it ran along, and it was near the tree of which I was partaking the fruit. And I looked to behold from whence it came, and I saw the head thereof a little way off, and at the head thereof I beheld your mother, Saria, and Sam, and Nephi, and they stood as if they knew not whither they should go. And it came to pass, that I beckoned unto them, and I also did say unto them with a loud voice, that they should come unto me, and partake of the fruit, which was desirable above all other fruit. And it came to pass, that they did come unto me, and partake of the fruit also. And it came to pass, that I was desirous that Laman and Lemuel should come and partake of the fruit also. Wherefore I cast mine eyes towards the head of the river, that perhaps I might see them. And it came to pass, that I saw them, but they would not come unto me, and partake of the fruit. And I beheld a rod of iron, and it extended along the bank of the river, and led to the tree by which I stood. And I also beheld a straight and narrow path, which came along by the rod of iron, even to the tree by which I stood, and it also led by the head of the fountain, unto a large and spacious field, as if it had been a world. And I saw numberless concourses of people, many of whom were pressing forward, that they might obtain the path which led unto the tree by which I stood. And it came to pass that they did come forth, and commence in the path which led to the tree. And it came to pass that there arose a mist of darkness, yea, even an exceedingly great mist of darkness, insomuch that they who had commenced in the path did lose their way, that they wandered off and were lost. And it came to pass that I beheld others pressing forward, and they came forth and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron, and they did press forward through the mist of darkness, clinging to the rod of iron, even until they did come forth and partake of the fruit of the tree. And after they had partaken of the fruit of the tree, they did cast their eyes about as if they were ashamed. And I also cast my eyes round about, and beheld, on the other side of the river of water, a great and spacious building, and it stood, as it were, in the air high above the earth. And it was filled with people, both old and young, both male and female, and their manner of dress was exceedingly fine, and they were in the attitude of mocking and pointing their fingers towards those who had come at and were partaking of the fruit. And after they had tasted of the fruit they were ashamed because of those that were scoffing at them, and they fell away into forbidden paths and were lost. And now I, Nephi, do not speak all the words of my father. But to be short in writing, behold, he saw other multitudes pressing forward, and they came and caught hold of the end of the rod of iron, and they did press their way forward, continually holding fast to the rod of iron, until they came forth and fell down, and partook of the fruit of the tree. And he also saw other multitudes feeling their way towards that great and spacious building. And it came to pass that many were drowned in the depths of the fountain, and many were lost from his view, wandering in strange roads. 
and great was the multitude that did enter into that strange building. And after they did enter into that building, they did point the finger of scorn at me, and those that were partaking of the fruit also, but we heeded them not. These are the words of my father, for as many as heeded them had fallen away. And Laman and Lemuel partook not of the fruit, said my father. And it came to pass, after my father had spoken all the words of his dream or vision, which were many, he said unto us, because of these things which he saw in a vision, he exceedingly feared for Laman and Lemuel, yea, he feared lest they should be cast off from the presence of the Lord. And he did exhort them then, with all the feeling of a tender parent, that they would hearken to his words, that perhaps the Lord would be merciful to them, and not cast them off. Yea, my father did preach unto them. And after he had preached unto them, and also prophesied unto them of many things, he bade them to keep the commandments of the Lord, and he did cease speaking unto them. CHAPTER Nine. And all these things did my father see, and hear, and speak, as he dwelt in a tent, in the valley of Lemuel, and also a great many more things which cannot be written upon these plates. And now, as I have spoken concerning these plates, behold, they are not the plates upon which I make a full account of the history of my people, for the plates upon which I make a full account of my people I have given the name of Nephi. Wherefore they are called the plates of Nephi, after mine own name, and these plates are also called the plates of Nephi. Nevertheless I have received a commandment of the Lord that I should make these plates for the special purpose that there should be an account engraven of the ministry of my people. Upon the other plates should be engraven an account of the reign of the kings, and the wars and contentions of my people. Wherefore these plates are for the more part of the ministry, and the other plates are for the more part of the reign of kings, and the wars and contentions of my people. Wherefore the Lord hath commanded me to make these plates for a wise purpose in him, which purpose I know not. But the Lord knoweth all things from the beginning, wherefore he prepareth a way to accomplish all his works among the children of men. For behold, he hath all power unto the fulfilling of all his words, and thus it is. Amen. CHAPTER Ten, And now I, Nephi, proceed to give an account upon these plates of my proceedings and my reign and ministry, wherefore, to proceed with mine account, I must speak somewhat of the things of my father and also of my brethren. For behold, it came to pass, after my father had made an end of speaking the words of his dream, and also of exhorting them to all diligence, he spake unto them concerning the Jews, that after they should be destroyed, even that great city Jerusalem, and many be carried away captive into Babylon, according to the own due time of the Lord, they should return again, yea, even be brought back out of captivity, and after they should be brought back out of captivity, they should possess again the land of their inheritance. Yea, even six hundred years from the time that my father left Jerusalem, a prophet would the Lord God raise up among the Jews, even a Messiah, or in other words, a Saviour of the world. And he also spake concerning the prophets, how great a number had testified of these things concerning this Messiah of whom he had spoken, or this Redeemer of the world. Wherefore all mankind were in a lost and in a fallen state, and ever would be, save they should rely on this Redeemer. And he spake also concerning a prophet who should come before the Messiah to prepare the way of the Lord. Yea, even he should go forth and cry in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and make his path straight. For there standeth one among you whom ye know not, and he is mightier than I, whose shoes latchet I am not worthy to unloose. And much spake my father concerning this thing. And my father said he should baptize in Bethabara, beyond Jordan, and he also said he should baptize with water, even that he should baptize the Messiah with water. And after he had baptized the Messiah with water, he should behold and bear record that he had baptized the Lamb of God, who should take away the sins of the world. And it came to pass, after my father had spoken these words, he spake unto my brethren concerning the gospel which should be preached among the Jews, and also concerning the dwindling of the Jews in unbelief. And after they had slain the Messiah, who should come, and after he had been slain, he should rise from the dead, and should make himself manifest by the Holy Ghost unto the Gentiles. Yea, even my father spake much concerning the Gentiles, and also concerning the house of Israel, that they should be compared like unto an olive tree, whose branches should be broken off, and should be scattered upon all the face of the earth. Wherefore, he said, it must needs be that we should be led with one accord into the land of promise, unto the fulfilling of the word of the Lord, that we should be scattered upon all the face of the earth. 
and after the house of Israel should be scattered, they should be gathered together again. Or, in fine, after the Gentiles had received the fullness of the gospel, the natural branches of the olive tree, or the remnants of the house of Israel, should be grafted in, or come to the knowledge of the true Messiah, their Lord and their Redeemer. And after this manner of language did my father prophesy and speak unto my brethren, and also many more things which I do not write in this book, for I have written as many of them as were expedient for me in mine other book. And all these things of which I have spoken were done as my father dwelt in a tent in the valley of Lemuel. And it came to pass, after I, Nephi, having heard all the words of my father concerning the things which he saw in a vision, and also the things which he spake by the power of the Holy Ghost, which power he received by faith on the Son of God, and the Son of God was the Messiah who should come, I, Nephi, was desirous also that I might see and hear and know of these things by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the gift of God unto all those who diligently seek him, as well in times of old as in the time that he should manifest himself unto the children of men. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and the way is prepared for all men from the foundation of the world, if it so be that they repent and come unto him. For he that diligently seeketh shall find, and the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto them, by the power of the Holy Ghost, as well in these times as in times of old, and as well in times of old as in times to come. Wherefore the course of the Lord is one eternal round. Therefore remember, O man, for all thy doings thou shalt be brought into judgment. Wherefore, if ye have sought to do wickedly in the days of your probation, then ye are found unclean before the judgment seat of God, and no unclean thing can dwell with God. Wherefore, ye must be cast off for ever. And the Holy Ghost giveth authority that I should speak these things, and deny them not. End of First Nephi, chapters 5 to 11. First Nephi, chapters 11 to 14 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. First Nephi, Chapter 11. For it came to pass, after I had desired to know the things that my father had seen, and believing that the Lord was able to make them known unto me, as I sat pondering in mine heart, I was caught away in the Spirit of the Lord, yea, into an exceedingly high mountain which I had never before seen and upon which I never had before set my foot. And the Spirit said unto me, Behold, what desirest thou? And I said, I desire to behold the things which my father saw. And the Spirit said unto me, Believest thou that thy father saw the tree of which he hath spoken? And I said, Yea, thou knowest that I believe all the words of my father. And when I had spoken these words, the Spirit cried with a loud voice, saying, Hosanna to the Lord, the Most High God, for he is God over all the earth, yea, even above all. And blessed art thou, Nephi, because thou believest in the Son of the Most High God. Wherefore thou shalt behold the things which thou hast desired. And behold, this thing shall be given unto thee for a sign, that after thou hast beheld the tree which bore the fruit which thy father tasted, thou shalt also behold a man descending out of heaven, and him shall ye witness. And after ye have witnessed him, ye shall bear record that it is the Son of God. And it came to pass that the Spirit said unto me, Look, and I looked, and beheld a tree, and it was like unto the tree which my father had seen, and the beauty thereof was far beyond, yea, exceeding of all beauty, and the whiteness thereof did exceed the whiteness of the driven snow. And it came to pass, after I had seen the tree, I said unto the Spirit, I behold, thou hast shown unto me the tree which is precious above all. And he said unto me, What desirest thou? And I said unto him, To know the interpretation thereof, for I spake unto him as a man speaketh, for I beheld that he was in the form of a man, yet nevertheless I knew that it was the Spirit of the Lord, and he spake unto me as a man speaketh with another. And it came to pass that he said unto me, Look. And I looked as if to look upon him, and I saw him not for he had gone from before my presence. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the great city of Jerusalem, and also other cities. And I beheld the city of Nazareth, and in the city of Nazareth I beheld a virgin, and she was exceedingly fair and white. 
and it came to pass that I saw the heavens open, and an angel came down and stood before me, and he said unto me, Nephi, what beholdest thou? And I said unto him, A virgin most beautiful and fair above all other virgins. And he said unto me, Knowest thou the condescension of God? And I said unto him, I know that he loveth his children, nevertheless I do not know the meaning of all things. And he said unto me, Behold, the virgin whom thou seest is the mother of the Son of God, after the manner of the flesh. And it came to pass that I beheld that she was carried away in the spirit. And after she had been carried away in the spirit for the space of a time, the angel spake unto me, saying, Look. And I looked, and beheld the virgin again bearing a child in her arms. And the angel said unto me, Behold the Lamb of God, yea, even the Son of the Eternal Father. Knowest thou the meaning of the tree which thy father saw? And I answered him, saying, Yea, it is the love of God which sheddeth itself abroad in the hearts of the children of men, wherefore it is the most desirable above all things. And he spake unto me, saying, Yea, and the most joyous to the soul. And after he had said these words, he said unto me, Look. And I looked. And I beheld the Son of God going forth among the children of men, and I saw many fall down at his feet and worship him. And it came to pass that I beheld that the rod of iron which my father had seen was the word of God, which led to the fountain of living waters, or to the tree of life, which waters are a representation of the love of God. And I also beheld that the tree of life was a representation of the love of God. And the angel said unto me again, Look, and behold the condescension of God. And I looked, and beheld the Redeemer of the world, of whom my father had spoken. And I also beheld the prophet who should prepare the way before him. And the Lamb of God went forth and was baptized of him. And after he was baptized, I beheld the heavens open, and the Holy Ghost come down out of heaven, and abide upon him in the form of a dove. And I beheld that he went forth ministering unto the people, in power and great glory, and the multitudes were gathered together to hear him. And I beheld that they cast him out from among them. And I also beheld twelve others following him, and it came to pass that they were carried away in the spirit from before my face, and I saw them not. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me again, saying, Look. And I looked, and I beheld the heavens open again, and I saw angels descending upon the children of men, and they did minister unto them. And he spake unto me again, saying, Look. And I looked, and I beheld the Lamb of God going forth among the children of men, and I beheld multitudes of people who were sick, who were afflicted with all manner of diseases, and with devils and unclean spirits. And the angel spake, and showed all these things unto me. And they were healed by the power of the Lamb of God, and the devils and the unclean spirits were cast out. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me again, saying, Look. And I looked, and beheld the Lamb of God, that he was taken by the people. Yea, the Son of the everlasting God was judged of the world, and I saw and bear record. And I, Nephi, saw that he was lifted up upon the cross, and slain for the sins of the world. And after he was slain I saw the multitudes of the earth, that they were gathered together to fight against the apostles of the Lamb. For thus were the twelve called by the angel of the Lord. And the multitude of the earth was gathered together, and I beheld that they were in a large and spacious building, like unto the building which my father saw. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me again, saying, Behold the world and the wisdom thereof. Yea, behold, the house of Israel hath gathered together to fight against the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And it came to pass that I saw and bear record that the great and spacious building was the pride of the world, and it fell, and the fall thereof was exceedingly great. And the angel of the Lord spake unto me again, saying, Thus shall be the destruction of all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, that shall fight against the twelve apostles of the Lamb. CHAPTER Twelve. And it came to pass that the angel said unto me, Look, and behold thy seed, and also the seed of thy brethren. And I looked and beheld the land of promise, and I beheld multitudes of people, yea, even as it were in number as many as the sand of the sea. And it came to pass that I beheld many generations pass away, after the manner of wars and contentions in the land, and I beheld many cities, yea, even that I did not number them. And it came to pass that I saw a mist of darkness on the face of the land of promise, and I saw lightnings, and I heard thunderings, 
and earthquakes and all manner of tumultuous noises and i saw the earth and the rocks that they rent and i saw mountains tumbling into pieces and i saw the plains of the earth that they were broken up and i saw many cities that they were sunk and i saw many that they were burned with fire and i saw many that did tumble to the earth because of the quaking thereof and it came to pass after i saw these things i saw the vapour of darkness that it passed from off the face of the earth and behold i saw multitudes who had not fallen because of the great and terrible judgments of the lord and i saw the heavens open and the lamb of god descending out of heaven and he came down and showed himself unto them and i also saw and bear record that the holy ghost fell upon twelve others and they were ordained of god and chosen and the angel spake unto me saying behold the twelve disciples of the lamb who are chosen to minister unto thy seed and he said unto me thou rememberest the twelve apostles of the lamb behold they are they who shall judge the twelve tribes of israel wherefore the twelve ministers of thy seed shall be judged of them for ye are of the house of israel and these twelve ministers whom thou beholdest shall judge thy seed and behold they are righteous for ever for because of their faith in the lamb of god their garments are made white in his blood and the angel said unto me look and i looked and beheld three generations pass away in righteousness and their garments were white even like unto the lamb of god and the angel said unto me these are made white in the blood of the lamb because of their faith in him and i nephi also saw many of the fourth generation who passed away in righteousness and it came to pass that i saw the multitudes of the earth gathered together and the angel said unto me behold thy seed and also the seed of thy brethren and it came to pass that i looked and beheld the people of my seed gathered together in multitudes against the seed of my brethren and they were gathered together to battle and the angel spake unto me saying behold the fountain of filthy water which thy father saw yea even the river of which he spake and the depths thereof are the depths of hell and the mists of darkness are the temptations of the devil which blindeth the eyes and hardeneth the hearts of the children of men and leadeth them away into broad roads that they perish and are lost and the large and spacious building which thy father saw is vain imaginations and the pride of the children of men and a great and terrible gulf divideth them yea even the word of the justice of the eternal god and the messiah who is the lamb of god of whom the holy ghost beareth record from the beginning of the world until this time and from this time henceforth and forever and while the angel spake these words i beheld and saw that the seed of my brethren did contend against my seed according to the word of the angel and because of the pride of my seed and the temptations of the devil i beheld that the seed of my brethren did overpower the people of my seed and it came to pass that i beheld and saw the people of the seed of my brethren that they had overcome my seed and they went forth in multitudes upon the face of the land and i saw them gathered together in multitudes and i saw wars and rumours of wars among them and in wars and rumours of wars i saw many generations pass away and the angel said unto me behold these shall dwindle in unbelief and it came to pass that i beheld after they had dwindled in unbelief they became a dark and loathsome and a filthy people full of idleness and all manner of abominations chapter thirteen and it came to pass that the angel spake unto me saying look and i looked and beheld many nations and kingdoms and the angel said unto me what beholdest thou and i said i behold many nations and kingdoms and he said unto me these are the nations and kingdoms of the gentiles and it came to pass that i saw among the nations of the gentiles the formation of a great church and the angel said unto me behold the formation of a church which is most abominable above all other churches which slayeth the saints of god yea and tortureth them and bindeth them down and yoketh them with a yoke of iron and bringeth them down into captivity and it came to pass that i beheld this great and abominable church and i saw the devil that he was the founder of it and i also saw gold and silver and silks and scarlets and fine twined linen and all manner of precious clothing and i saw many harlots and the angel spake unto me saying behold the gold and the silver and the silks and the scarlets and the fine twined linen and the precious clothing and the harlots are the desires of this great and abominable church and also for the praise of the world do they destroy the saints of god and bring them down into captivity and it came to pass that i looked and beheld many waters and they divided the gentiles from the seed of my brethren 
and it came to pass that the angel said unto me behold the wrath of god is upon the seed of thy brethren and i looked and beheld a man among the gentiles who was separated from the seed of my brethren by the many waters and i beheld the spirit of god that it came down and wrought upon the man and he went forth upon the many waters even unto the seed of my brethren who were in the promised land and it came to pass that i beheld the spirit of god that it wrought upon other gentiles and they went forth out of captivity upon the many waters and it came to pass that I beheld many multitudes of the Gentiles upon the land of promise, and I beheld the wrath of God, that it was upon the seed of my brethren, and they were scattered before the Gentiles, and were smitten. And I beheld the Spirit of the Lord, that it was upon the Gentiles, and they did prosper and obtain the land for their inheritance. And I beheld that they were white, and exceedingly fair and beautiful, like unto my people before they were slain. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles who had gone forth out of captivity did humble themselves before the Lord, and the power of the Lord was with them. And I beheld that their mother Gentiles were gathered together upon the waters, and upon the land also, to battle against them. And I beheld that the power of God was with them, and also that the wrath of God was upon all those that were gathered together against them to battle. And I, Nephi, beheld that the Gentiles that had gone out of captivity were delivered by the power of God out of the hands of all other nations. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld that they did prosper in the land, and I beheld a book, and it was carried forth among them. And the angel said unto me, Knowest thou the meaning of the book? And I said unto him, I know not. And he said, Behold, it proceedeth out of the mouth of a Jew. And I, Nephi, beheld it. And he said unto me, The book that thou beholdest is a record of the Jews, which contains the covenants of the Lord which he hath made unto the house of Israel, and it also containeth many of the prophecies of the holy prophets. And it is a record like unto the engravings which are upon the plates of brass, save there are not so many. Nevertheless they contain the covenants of the Lord which he hath made unto the house of Israel, wherefore they are of great worth unto the Gentiles. And the angel of the Lord said unto me, Thou hast beheld that the book proceeded forth from the mouth of a Jew, and when it proceeded forth from the mouth of a Jew it contained the fullness of the gospel of the Lord, of whom the twelve apostles bear record, and they bear record according to the truth which is in the Lamb of God. Wherefore these things go forth from the Jews in purity unto the Gentiles, according to the truth which is in God. And after they go forth by the hand of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, from the Jews unto the Gentiles, thou seest the formation of a great and abominable church which is most abominable above all other churches. For behold, they have taken away from the gospel of the Lamb many parts which are plain and most precious, and also many covenants of the Lord have they taken away. And all this have they done that they might pervert the right ways of the Lord, that they might blind the eyes and harden the hearts of the children of men. Wherefore thou seest that after the book hath gone forth through the hands of the great and abominable church, that there are many plain and precious things taken away from the book which is the book of the Lamb of God. And after these plain and precious things were taken away, it goeth forth unto all the nations of the Gentiles. And after it goeth forth unto all the nations of the Gentiles, yea, even across the many waters which thou hast seen with the Gentiles, which have gone forth out of captivity, thou seest, because of the many plain and precious things which have been taken out of the book, which were plain unto the understanding of the children of men, according to the plainness which is in the Lamb of God, because of these things which are taken away out of the gospel of the Lamb, an exceedingly great many do stumble, yea, insomuch that Satan hath great power over them. Nevertheless thou beholdest that the Gentiles who have gone forth out of captivity, and have been lifted up by the power of God above all other nations, upon the face of the land which is choice above all other lands, which is the land that the Lord God hath covenanted with thy father, that his seed should have for the land of their inheritance, Wherefore thou seest that the Lord God will not suffer that the Gentiles will utterly destroy the mixture of thy seed, which are among thy brethren. Neither will he suffer that the Gentiles shall destroy the seed of thy brethren. Neither will the Lord God suffer that the Gentiles shall forever remain in that awful state of blindness, which thou beholdest therein, because of the plain and most precious parts of the gospel of the Lamb, which have been kept back by that abominable church whose formation thou hast seen. Wherefore saith the Lamb of God, I will be merciful unto the Gentiles, unto the visiting of the remnant of the house of Israel in great judgment. And it came to pass that the angel of the Lord spake unto me, saying, Behold, saith the Lamb of God, after I have visited the remnant of the house of Israel, and this remnant of whom I speak is the seed of thy father. 
Wherefore, after I have visited them in judgment, and smitten them by the hand of the Gentiles, and after the Gentiles do stumble exceedingly because of the most plain and precious parts of the gospel of the Lamb, which have been kept back by that abominable church, which is the mother of harlots, saith the Lamb, I will be merciful unto the Gentiles in that day, insomuch that I will bring forth unto them, in mine own power, much of my gospel, which shall be plain and precious, saith the Lamb. For behold, saith the Lamb, I will manifest myself unto thy seed, that they shall write many things which I shall minister unto them, which shall be plain and precious, and after thy seed shall be destroyed and dwindle in unbelief, and also the seed of thy brethren, behold, these things shall be hid up, to come forth unto the Gentiles by the gift and power of the Lamb. And in them shall be written my gospel, saith the Lamb, and my rock and my salvation. And blessed are they who shall seek to bring forth my Zion at that day. For they shall have the gift and the power of the Holy Ghost. And if they endure unto the end, they shall be lifted up at the last day, and shall be saved in the everlasting kingdom of the Lamb. And whoso shall publish peace, yea, tidings of great joy, how beautiful upon the mountains shall they be! And it came to pass that I beheld the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also the book of the Lamb of God, which had proceeded forth from the mouth of the Jew, that it came forth from the Gentiles unto the remnant of the seed of my brethren. And after it had come forth unto them, I beheld other books, which came forth by the power of the Lamb, from the Gentiles unto them unto the convincing of the Gentiles, and the remnant of the seed of my brethren, and also the Jews who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, that the records of the prophets and of the twelve apostles of the Lamb are true. And the angel spake unto me, saying, These last records which thou hast seen among the Gentiles shall establish the truth of the first, which are of the twelve apostles of the Lamb, and shall make known the plain and precious things which have been taken away from them, and shall make known to all kindreds, tongues, and people, that the Lamb of God is the Son of the Eternal Father, and the Saviour of the world, and that all men must come unto him, or they cannot be saved. And they must come according to the words which shall be established by the mouth of the Lamb, and the words of the Lamb shall be made known in the records of thy seed, as well as in the records of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Wherefore they both shall be established in one, for there is one God and one Shepherd over all the earth. And the time cometh that he shall manifest himself unto all nations, both unto the Jews and also unto the Gentiles. And after he has manifested himself unto the Jews and also unto the Gentiles, then he shall manifest himself unto the Gentiles and also unto the Jews. And the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. End of First Nephi, chapters 11 to 14. First Nephi chapters 14 through 16 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of Mormon translated by Joseph Smith. First Nephi chapter 14. And it shall come to pass that if the Gentiles shall hearken unto the Lamb of God in that day that he shall manifest himself unto them in word, and also in power, in very deed, unto the taking away of their stumbling blocks, and harden not their hearts against the Lamb of God, they shall be numbered among the seed of thy father. Yea, they shall be numbered among the house of Israel, and they shall be a blessed people upon the promised land for ever. They shall be no more brought down into captivity, and the house of Israel shall no more be confounded. And that great pit, which hath been digged for them by that great and abominable church, which was founded by the devil and his children, that he might lead away the souls of men down to hell, yea, that great pit which hath been digged for the destruction of men shall be filled by those who digged it. Unto their utter destruction, saith the Lamb of God, not the destruction of the soul, save it be the casting of it into that hell which hath no end. For behold, this is according to the captivity of the devil, and also according to the justice of God upon all those who will work wickedness and abomination before him. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, Nephi, saying, Thou hast beheld that if the Gentiles repent, it shall be well with them. Thou also knowest concerning the covenants of the Lord unto the house of Israel. And thou also hast heard 
that whoso repenteth must not perish. Therefore, woe be unto the Gentiles, if it so be that they harden their hearts against the Lamb of God. For the time cometh, saith the Lamb of God, that I will work a great and a marvelous work among the children of men, a work which shall be everlasting, either on the one hand or on the other, either to the convincing of them unto peace and life eternal, or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts, and the blindness of their minds unto their being brought down into captivity, and also into destruction, both temporally and spiritually, according to the captivity of the devil, of which I have spoken. And it came to pass, that when the angel had spoken these words, he said unto me, Rememberest thou the covenants of the Father unto the house of Israel? I said unto him, Yea. And it came to pass that he said unto me, Look, and behold that great and abominable church, which is the mother of abominations, whose founder is the devil. And he said unto me, Behold, there are save two churches only. The one is the church of the Lamb of God, and the other is the church of the devil. Wherefore, whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb of God, belongeth to that great church, which is the mother of abominations, and she is the whore of all the earth. And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the whore of all the earth, and she sat upon many waters, and she had dominion over all the earth, among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people. And it came to pass that I beheld the church of the Lamb of God, and its numbers were few, because of the wickedness and abominations of the whore who sat upon many waters. Nevertheless, I beheld that the church of the Lamb, who were the saints of God, were also upon all the face of the earth, and their dominions upon the face of the earth were small, because of the wickedness of the great whore whom I saw. And it came to pass that I beheld that the great mother of abominations did gather together multitudes upon the face of all the earth, among all the nations of the Gentiles, to fight against the Lamb of God. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth, and they were armed with righteousness, and with the power of God in great glory. And it came to pass that I beheld that the wrath of God was poured out upon that great and abominable church, insomuch that there were wars and rumors of wars among all the nations and kindreds of the earth. And as there began to be wars and rumors of wars among all the nations which belong to the mother of abominations, the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the mother of harlots, and behold, thou seest all these things. And when the day cometh that the wrath of God is poured out upon the mother of harlots, which is the great and abominable church of all the earth, whose founder is the devil, then, at that day, the work of the Father shall commence, in preparing the way for the fulfilling of his covenants, which he hath made to his people, who are of the house of Israel. And it came to pass that the angel spake unto me, saying, Look! And I looked and beheld a man, and he was dressed in a white robe. And the angel said unto me, Behold, one of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. Behold, he shall see and write the remainder of these things, yea, and also many things which have been. And he shall also write concerning the end of the world. Wherefore, the things which he shall write are just and true. And behold, they are written in the book which thou beheld, proceeding out of the mouth of the Jew. And at the time they proceeded out of the mouth of the Jew, or, at the time the book proceeded out of the mouth of the Jew, the things which were written were plain and pure, and most precious and easy to the understanding of all men. And behold, the things which this apostle of the Lamb shall write are many things which thou hast seen, and behold, the remainder shalt thou see. But the things which thou shalt see hereafter thou shalt not write. For the Lord God hath ordained the apostle of the Lamb of God that he should write them, and also others who have been. To them he hath shown all things, and they have written them, and they are sealed up to come forth in their purity, according to the truth which is in the Lamb, in the own due time of the Lord, unto the house of Israel. And I, Nephi, 
heard and bear record that the name of the apostle of the Lamb was John, according to the word of the angel. And behold, I, Nephi, am forbidden that I should write the remainder of the things which I saw and heard, wherefore the things which I have written sufficeth me, and I have written but a small part of the things which I saw. And I bear record that I saw the things which my father saw, and the angel of the Lord did make them known unto me. And now I make an end of speaking concerning the things which I saw while I was carried away in the spirit. And if all the things which I saw are not written, the things which I have written are true. And thus it is. Amen. First Nephi chapter 15 And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had been carried away in the spirit and seen all these things, I returned to the tent of my father. And it came to pass that I beheld my brethren, and they were disputing one with another concerning the things my father had spoken unto them. For he truly spoke many great things unto them, which were hard to be understood, save a man should inquire of the Lord. And they being hard in their hearts, therefore they did not look unto the Lord as they ought. And now I, Nephi, was grieved because of the hardness of their hearts and also because of the things which I had seen, and knew they must unavoidably come to pass because of the great wickedness of the children of men. And it came to pass that I was overcome because of my afflictions, for I considered that mine afflictions were great above all because of the destruction of my people, for I had beheld their fall. And it came to pass that after I had received strength, I spake unto my brethren, desiring to know of them the cause of their disputations. And they said, Behold, we cannot understand the words which our father hath spoken concerning the natural branches of the olive tree, and also concerning the Gentiles. And I said unto them, Have ye inquired of the Lord? And they said unto me, We have not, for the Lord maketh no such thing known to us. Behold, I said unto them, how is it that ye do not keep the commandments of the Lord? How is it that ye will perish because of the hardness of your hearts? Do ye not remember the things which the Lord hath said? If ye will not harden your hearts, and ask me in faith, believing that ye shall receive, with diligence in keeping my commandments, surely these things shall be made known unto you. Behold, I say unto you, that the house of Israel was compared unto an olive tree, by the Spirit of the Lord which was in our Father. And behold, are we not broken off from the house of Israel? And are we not a branch of the house of Israel? And now, the thing which our Father meaneth concerning the grafting in of the natural branches through the fullness of the Gentiles, is that in the latter days, when our seed shall have dwindled in unbelief, yea, for the space of many years, and many generations after the Messiah shall be manifested in body unto the children of men, then shall the fullness of the gospel of the Messiah come unto the Gentiles, and from the Gentiles unto the remnant of our seed. And at that day shall the remnant of our seed know that they are the house of Israel, and that they are the covenant people of the Lord. And then shall they know and come to the knowledge of their forefathers, and also to the knowledge of the gospel of their Redeemer, which was ministered unto their fathers by him. Wherefore, they shall come to the knowledge of their Redeemer, and the very points of his doctrine, that they may know how to come unto him and be saved. And then, at that day, will they not rejoice and give praise unto their everlasting God, their rock and their salvation? Yea, at that day, Will they not receive the strength and nourishment from the true vine? Yea, will they not come unto the true fold of God? Behold, I say unto you, Yea, they shall be remembered again among the house of Israel. They shall be grafted in, being a natural branch of the olive tree, into the true olive tree. And this is what our Father meaneth, and he meaneth that it will not come to pass until after they are scattered by the Gentiles. And he meaneth that it shall come by way of the Gentiles, that the Lord may show his power unto the Gentiles, for the very cause that he shall be rejected of the Jews, or of the house of Israel. Wherefore, our Father hath not spoken of our seed alone, 
but also of all the house of Israel, pointing to the covenant which should be fulfilled in the latter days, which covenant the Lord made to our father Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, spake much unto them concerning these things, Yea, I spake unto them concerning the restoration of the Jews in the latter days. And I did rehearse unto them the words of Isaiah, who spake concerning the restoration of the Jews, or of the house of Israel. And after they were restored, they should no more be confounded, neither should they be scattered again. And it came to pass that I did speak many words unto my brethren, that they were pacified, and did humble themselves before the Lord. And it came to pass that they did speak unto me again, saying, What meaneth this thing which our father saw in a dream? What meaneth the tree which he saw? And I said unto them, It was a representation of the tree of life. And they said unto me, What meaneth the rod of iron which our father saw that led to the tree? And I said unto them, That it was the word of God, and whose would hearken unto the word of God, and would hold fast unto it, they would never perish. Neither could the temptations and the fiery darts of the adversary overpower them unto blindness, to lead them away to destruction. Wherefore I, Nephi, did exhort them to give heed unto the word of the Lord. Yea, I did exhort them, with all the energies of my soul, and with all the faculty which I possessed, that they would give heed to the word of God, and remember to keep his commandments always in all things. And they said unto me, What meaneth the river of water which our father saw? And I said unto them, That the water which my father saw was filthiness, and so much was his mind swallowed up in other things, that he beheld not the filthiness of the water. And I said unto them, That it was an awful gulf, which separated the wicked from the tree of life, and also from the saints of God. And I said unto them, That it was a representation of that awful hell, which the angel said unto me was prepared for the wicked. And I said unto them, that our father also saw that the justice of God did also divide the wicked from the righteous, and the brightness thereof was like unto the brightness of a flaming fire, which ascendeth up unto God for ever and ever, and hath no end. And they said unto me, Doth this thing mean the torment of the body in the days of probation? Or doth it mean the final state of the soul after the death of the temporal body? Or doth it speak of the things which are temporal? And it came to pass that I said unto them that it was a representation of things both temporal and spiritual. For the day should come that they must be judged of their works, yea, even the works which were done by the temporal body in their days of probation. Wherefore, if they should die in their wickedness, they must be cast off also. As to the things which are spiritual, which are pertaining to righteousness. Wherefore, they must be brought to stand before God, to be judged of their works. And if their works have been filthiness, they must needs be filthy. And if they be filthy, it must needs be that they cannot dwell in the kingdom of God. If so, the kingdom of God must be filthy also. But behold, I say unto you, the kingdom of God is not filthy. And therefore, cannot any unclean thing enter into the kingdom of God. Wherefore, there must needs be a place of filthiness prepared for that which is filthy. And there is a place prepared, yea, even that awful hell of which I have spoken, and the devil is the preparator of it. Wherefore, the final state of the souls of men is to dwell in the kingdom of God, or to be cast out because of that justice of which I have spoken. Wherefore, the wicked are rejected from the righteous, and also from that tree of life, whose fruit is most precious and most desirable above all other fruits. Yea, and it is the greatest of all the gifts of God. And thus I spake unto my brethren. Amen. First Nephi chapter 16 And now it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had made an end of speaking to my brethren, behold, they said unto me, Thou hast declared unto us hard things, more than we are able to bear. And it came to pass that I said unto them, that I knew that I had spoken hard things against the wicked, according to the truth, and the righteous have I justified, 
and testified that they should be lifted up at the last day. Wherefore, the guilty taketh the truth to be hard, for it cutteth them to the very center. And now, my brethren, if ye were righteous, and were willing to hearken to the truth, and give heed unto it, that ye might walk uprightly before God, then ye would not murmur because of the truth, and say, Thou speakest hard things against us. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did exhort my brethren with all diligence to keep the commandments of the Lord. And it came to pass that they did humble themselves before the Lord, insomuch that I had joy and great hopes of them, that they would walk in the paths of righteousness. Now all these things were said and done as my father dwelt in a tent in the valley which he called Lemuel. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, took one of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also my brethren took of the daughters of Ishmael to wife, and also Zoram took the eldest daughter of Ishmael to wife. And thus my father had fulfilled all the commandments of the Lord which had been given unto him. And also I, Nephi, had been blessed of the Lord exceedingly. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord spake unto my father by night, and commanded him that on the morrow he should take his journey into the wilderness. And it came to pass that as my father arose in the morning, and went forth to the tent door, to his great astonishment he beheld upon the ground a round ball of curious workmanship, and it was of fine brass. And within the ball were two spindles, and the one pointed the way whither we should go into the wilderness. And it came to pass that we did gather together whatsoever things we should carry into the wilderness, and all the remainder of our provisions which the Lord had given unto us. And we did take seed of every kind that we might carry into the wilderness. And it came to pass that we did take our tents and depart into the wilderness across the river Laman, and it came to pass that we traveled for the space of four days, nearly a south-southeast direction, and we did pitch our tents again, and we did call the name of the place Shazer. And it came to pass that we did take our bows and our arrows, and go forth into the wilderness to slay food for our families. And after we had slain food for our families, we did return again to our families in the wilderness, to the place of Shazer. And we did go forth again in the wilderness, following the same direction, keeping in the most fertile parts of the wilderness, which were in the borders near the Red Sea. And it came to pass that we did travel for the space of many days, slaying food by the way, with our bows and our arrows and our stones and our slings. And we did follow the directions of the ball, which led us in the more fertile parts of the wilderness. And after we had traveled for the space of many days, we did pitch our tents for the space of a time, that we might again rest ourselves and obtain food for our families. And it came to pass that as I, Nephi, went forth to slay food, behold, I did break my bow, which was made of fine steel. And after I did break my bow, behold, my brethren were angry with me because of the loss of my bow, for we did obtain no food. And it came to pass that we did return without food to our families, and being much fatigued because of their journeying, they did suffer much for the want of food. And it came to pass that Laman and Lemuel and the sons of Ishmael did begin to murmur exceedingly because of their sufferings and afflictions in the wilderness. And also my father began to murmur against the Lord his God. Yea, and they were all exceedingly sorrowful, even that they did murmur against the Lord. Now it came to pass that I, Nephi, having been afflicted with my brethren because of the loss of my bow, and their bows having lost their springs, it began to be exceedingly difficult, yea, insomuch that we could obtain no food. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did speak much unto my brethren, because they had hardened their hearts again, even unto complaining against the Lord their God. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did make out of wood a bow, and out of a straight stick an arrow, Wherefore, I did arm myself with a bow and an arrow, with a sling and with stones. And I said unto my father, Whither shall I go to obtain food? And it came to pass that he did inquire of the Lord, for they had humbled themselves because of my words. For I did say many things unto them in the energy of my soul. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came unto my father, 
and he was truly chastened because of his murmuring against the Lord, insomuch that he was brought down into the depths of sorrow. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord said unto him, Look upon the ball, and behold the things which are written. And it came to pass that when my father beheld the things which were written upon the ball, he did fear and tremble exceedingly, and also my brethren, and the sons of Ishmael, and our wives. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the pointers which were in the ball, that they did work according to the faith and diligence and heed which we did give unto them. And there was also written upon them a new writing, which was plain to be read, which did give us understanding concerning the ways of the Lord. And it was written and changed from time to time, according to the faith and diligence which we gave unto it. And thus we see that by small means the Lord can bring about great things. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did go forth up into the top of the mountain, according to the directions which were given upon the ball. And it came to pass that I did slay wild beasts, insomuch that I did obtain food for our families. And it came to pass that I did return to our tents, bearing the beasts which I had slain. And now, when they had beheld that I had obtained food, how great was their joy! And it came to pass that they did humble themselves before the Lord, and did give thanks unto him. And it came to pass that we did again take our journey, traveling nearly the same course as in the beginning. And after we had traveled for the space of many days, we did pitch our tents again, that we might tarry for the space of a time. And it came to pass that Ishmael died, and was buried in the place which was called Naham. And it came to pass that the daughters of Ishmael did mourn exceedingly because of the loss of their father, and because of their afflictions in the wilderness. And they did murmur against my father, because he had brought them out of the land of Jerusalem, saying, Our father is dead. Yea, and we have wandered much in the wilderness, and we have suffered much affliction, hunger, thirst, and fatigue. And after all these sufferings we must perish in the wilderness with hunger. And thus did they murmur against my father, and also against me, and they were desirous to return again to Jerusalem. And Laman said unto Lemuel, and also unto the sons of Ishmael, Behold, let us slay our father, and also our brother Nephi, who has taken it upon him to be our ruler and our teacher, who are his elder brethren. Now he says that the Lord has talked with him, and also that angels have ministered unto him. But behold, we know that he lies unto us, and he tells us these things, and he worketh many things by his cunning arts, that he may deceive our eyes, thinking, perhaps, that he may lead us away into some strange wilderness. And after he has led us away, he has thought to make himself a king and a ruler over us, that he may do with us according to his will and pleasure. And after this manner did my brother Laman stir up their hearts to anger. And it came to pass that the Lord was with us. Yea, even the voice of the Lord came, and did speak many words unto them, and did chasten them exceedingly. And after they were chastened by the voice of the Lord, they did turn away their anger, and did repent of their sins, insomuch that the Lord did bless us again with food that we did not perish. End of First Nephi chapters 14 through 16 Recording by Michael Evans, Urbana, Illinois First Nephi chapters 17 through 19 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. First Nephi chapters 17 through 19. Chapter 17. And it came to pass that we did again take our journey in the wilderness. And we did travel nearly eastward from that time forth, and we did travel and wade through much affliction in the wilderness, and our women did bear children in the wilderness. And so great were the blessings of the Lord upon us, that while we did live upon raw meat in the wilderness, our women did give plenty of suck for their children, and were strong, yea, even like unto the men, and they began to bear their journeyings without murmurings. And thus we see that the commandments of God must be fulfilled. And if it so be that the children of men keep the commandments of God, he doth nourish them, and strengthen them, and provide means whereby they can accomplish the thing which he has commanded them. 
Wherefore he did provide means for us while we did sojourn in the wilderness. And we did sojourn for the space of many years, yea, even eight years in the wilderness. And we did come to the land which we called Bountiful, because of its much fruit and also wild honey. And all these things were prepared of the Lord that we might not perish. And we beheld the sea, which we called Iriantum, which, being interpreted, is many waters. And it came to pass that we did pitch our tents by the seashore, and, notwithstanding, we had suffered many afflictions and much difficulty, yea, even so much that we cannot write them all, we were exceedingly rejoiced when we came to the seashore, and we called the place Bountiful, because of its much fruit. And it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had been in the land of Bountiful for the space of many days, the voice of the Lord came unto me, saying, Arise, and get thee into the mountain. And it came to pass that I arose and went up into the mountain, and cried unto the Lord, and it came to pass that the Lord spake unto me, saying, Thou shalt construct a ship, after the manner which I shall show thee, that I may carry thy people across these waters. And I said, Lord, whither shall I go that I may find ore to molten, that I may make tools to construct the ship, after the manner which thou hast shown unto me? And it came to pass that the Lord told me whither I should go to find ore, that I might make tools. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did make a bellows wherewith to blow the fire, of the skins of beasts, and after I had made a bellows, that I might have wherewith to blow the fire, I did smite two stones together, that I might make fire. For the Lord had not hitherto suffered that we should make much fire, as we journeyed in the wilderness. For he said, I will make thy food become sweet, that ye cook it not. And I will also be your light in the wilderness, and I will prepare the way before you, if it so be that ye shall keep my commandments. Wherefore, inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall be led towards the promised land, and ye shall know that it is by me that ye are led. Yea, and the Lord said also that, After ye have arrived in the promised land, ye shall know that I, the Lord, am God, and that I, the Lord, did deliver you from destruction, yea, that I did bring you out of the land of Jerusalem. Wherefore I, Nephi, did strive to keep the commandments of the Lord, and I did exhort my brethren to faithfulness and diligence. And it came to pass that I did make tools of the ore which I did molten out of the rock. And when my brethren saw that I was about to build a ship, they began to murmur against me, saying, Our brother is a fool, for he thinketh he can build a ship, yea, and he also thinketh that he can cross these great waters. And thus my brethren did complain against me, and were desirous that they might not labor, for they did not believe that I could build a ship, neither would they believe that I was instructed of the Lord. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, was exceedingly sorrowful because of the hardness of their hearts. And now when they saw that I began to be sorrowful, they were glad in their hearts, insomuch that they did rejoice over me, saying, We knew that ye could not construct a ship, for we knew that ye were lacking in judgment, wherefore thou canst not accomplish so great a work. And thou art like unto our father, led away by foolish imaginations of his heart. Yea, he hath led us out of the land of Jerusalem, and we have wandered in the wilderness for these many years. And our women have toiled, being big with child, and they have borne children in the wilderness, and suffered all things save it were death. And it would have been better that they had died before they came out of Jerusalem than to have suffered these afflictions. Behold, these many years we have suffered in the wilderness, which time we might have enjoyed our possessions and the land of our inheritance, yea, and we might have been happy. And we know that the people who were in the land of Jerusalem were a righteous people, for they kept the statutes and judgments of the Lord, and all his commandments, according to the law of Moses. Wherefore we know that they are a righteous people, and our Father hath judged them, and hath led us away because we would hearken unto his words. Yea, and our brother is like unto him. And after this manner of language did my brethren murmur and complain against us. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, spake unto them, saying, Do you believe that our fathers, who were the children of Israel, would have been led away out of the hands of the Egyptians if they had not hearkened unto the words of the Lord? Yea, do ye suppose that they would have been led out of bondage if the Lord had not commanded Moses that he should lead them out of bondage? Now ye know that the children of Israel were in bondage, and ye know that they were laden with tasks which were grievous to be borne. Wherefore ye know that it must needs be a good thing for them, that they should be brought out of bondage. Now ye know that Moses was commanded of the Lord to do that great work, and ye know that by his word the waters of the Red Sea were divided hither and thither, and they passed through on dry ground. But ye know that the Egyptians were drowned in the Red Sea, who were the armies of Pharaoh. 
and ye also know that they were fed with manna in the wilderness. Yea, and ye also know that Moses, by his word, according to the power of God which was in him, smote the rock, and there came forth water, that the children of Israel might quench their thirst. And notwithstanding they being led, the Lord their God, their Redeemer, going before them, leading them by day, and giving light unto them by night, and doing all things for them which were expedient for man to receive, they hardened their hearts, and blinded their minds, and reviled against Moses, and against the true and living God. And it came to pass that according to his word he did destroy them, and according to his word he did lead them, and according to his word he did do all things for them, and there was not anything done save it were by his word. And after they had crossed the river Jordan, he did make them mighty unto the driving out of the children of the land, yea, unto the scattering them to destruction. And now do ye suppose that the children of this land, who were in the land of promise, who were driven out by our fathers, do ye suppose that they were righteous? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Do ye suppose that our fathers would have been more choice than they if they had been righteous? I say unto you, Nay. Behold, the Lord esteemeth all flesh in one. He that is righteous is favored of God. But behold, his people had rejected every word of God, and they were ripe in iniquity, and the fullness of the wrath of God was upon them, and the Lord did curse the land against them, and bless it unto our fathers. Yea, he did curse it against them unto their destruction, and he did bless it unto our fathers unto their obtaining power over it. Behold, the Lord hath created the earth that it should be inhabited, and he hath created his children that they should possess it. And he raiseth up a righteous nation, and destroyeth the nations of the wicked. And he leadeth away the righteous into precious lands, and the wicked he destroyeth, and curseth the land unto them for their sakes. He ruleth high in the heavens, for it is his throne, and this earth is his footstool. And he loveth those who will have him to be their God. Behold, he loved our fathers, and he covenanted with them, yea, even Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he remembered the covenants which he had made, wherefore he did bring them out of the land of Egypt. And he did straighten them in the wilderness with his rod, for they hardened their hearts, even as ye have. And the Lord straightened them because of their iniquity. He sent fiery flying serpents among them, and after they were bitten he prepared a way that they might be healed. And the labor which they had to perform was to look, and because of the simpleness of the way, or the easiness of it, there were many who perished. And they did harden their hearts from time to time, and they did revile against Moses, and also against God. Nevertheless ye know that they were led forth by his matchless power into the land of promise. And now, after all these things, the time has come that they have become wicked, yea, nearly unto ripeness. And I know not, but they are at this day about to be destroyed. For I know that the day must surely come that they must be destroyed, save a few only who shall be led away into captivity. Wherefore the Lord commanded my father that he should depart into the wilderness, and the Jews also sought to take away his life. Yea, and ye also have sought to take away his life. Wherefore ye are murderers in your hearts, and ye are like unto them. Ye are swift to do iniquity, but slow to remember the Lord your God. Ye have seen an angel, and he spake unto you. Yea, ye have heard his voice from time to time, and he hath spoken unto you in a still small voice. But ye were past feeling, that ye could not feel his words. Wherefore he has spoken unto you like unto the voice of thunder, which did cause the earth to shake as if it were to divide asunder. And ye also know that by the power of his almighty word he can cause the earth that it shall pass away. Yea, and ye know that by his word he can cause the rough places to be made smooth, and the smooth places shall be broken up. O oh, then, why is it that ye can be so hard in your hearts? Behold, my soul is rent with anguish because of you, and my heart is pained. I fear lest ye shall be cast off forever. Behold, I am full of the Spirit of God, insomuch that my frame has no strength. And now it came to pass that when I had spoken these words, they were angry with me, and were desirous to throw me into the depths of the sea. And as they came forth to lay their hands upon me, I spake unto them, saying, In the name of the Almighty God I command you that ye touch me not, for I am filled with the power of God, even unto the consuming of my flesh. And whoso shall lay his hands upon me shall wither, even as a dry reed, and he shall be as naught before the power of God, for God shall smite him. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, said unto them that they should murmur no more against their father, neither should they withhold their labor from me, for God had commanded me that I should build a ship. 
and I said unto them, If God commanded me to do all things, I could do them. If he should command me, that I should say unto this water, Be thou earth, it should be earth, and if I should say it, it would be done. And now, if the Lord has such great power, and has wrought so many miracles among the children of men, how is it that he cannot instruct me that I should build a ship? And it came to pass that I, Nephi, said many things unto my brethren, insomuch that they were confounded, and could not contend against me. Neither durst they lay their hands upon me, nor touch me with their fingers, even for the space of many days. Now they durst not do this, lest they should wither before me. So powerful was the Spirit of God, and thus it had been wrought upon them. And it came to pass that the Lord said unto me, Stretch forth thy hand again unto thy brethren, and they shall not wither before thee, but I will shock them, saith the Lord. And this I will do, that they may know that I am the Lord their God. And it came to pass that I stretched forth my hand unto my brethren, and they did not wither before me, but the Lord did shake them, even according to the word which he had spoken. And now they said, We know of a surety that the Lord is with thee, for we know that it is the power of the Lord that has shaken us. And they fell down before me, and were about to worship me. But I would not suffer them, saying, I am thy brother, yea, even thy younger brother. Wherefore worship the Lord thy God, and honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God shall give thee. Chapter 18 And it came to pass that they did worship the Lord, and did go forth with me, and we did work timbers of curious workmanship. And the Lord did show me from time to time after what manner I should work the timbers of the ship. Now I, Nephi, did not work the timbers after the manner which was learned by men, neither did I build the ship after the manner of men, but I did build it after the manner which the Lord had shown unto me, wherefore it was not after the manner of men. And I, Nephi, did go unto the mount often, and I did pray oft unto the Lord, wherefore the Lord showed unto me great things. And it came to pass that after I had finished the ship, according to the word of the Lord, my brethren beheld that it was good, and the workmanship thereof was exceedingly fine, wherefore they did humble themselves again before the Lord. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came unto my father, that we should arise and go down into the ship. And it came to pass that on the morrow, after we had prepared all things, much fruits and meat from the wilderness, and honey in abundance, and provisions according to that which the Lord had commanded us, we did go down into the ship, with all our loading and our seeds, and whatsoever thing we have brought with us, every one according to his age. Wherefore we did go down into the ship, with our wives and our children. And now my father had begat two sons in the wilderness. The elder was called Jacob, and the younger Joseph. And it came to pass, after we had all gone down into the ship, and had taken with us our provisions and things which had been commanded us, we did put forth into the sea, and were driven forth before the wind towards the promised land. And after we had been driven forth before the wind for the space of many days, behold, my brethren and the sons of Ishmael, and also their wives, began to make themselves merry, insomuch that they began to dance, and to sing, and to speak with much rudeness. Yea, even that they did forget by what power they had been brought thither. Yea, they were lifted up unto exceeding rudeness. And I, Nephi, began to fear exceedingly, lest the Lord should be angry with us, and smite us because of our iniquity, that we should be swallowed up in the depths of the sea. Wherefore I, Nephi, began to speak to them with much soberness. But behold, they were angry with me, saying, we will not that our younger brother shall be a ruler over us. And it came to pass that Laman and Lemuel did take me and bind me with cords, and they did treat me with much harshness. Nevertheless the Lord did suffer it, that he might show forth his power, unto the fulfilling of his word which he had spoken concerning the wicked. And it came to pass that after they had bound me insomuch that I could not move, the compass, which had been prepared of the Lord, did cease to work. Wherefore they knew not whither they should steer the ship, insomuch that there arose a great storm, yea, a great and terrible tempest, and we were driven back upon the waters for the space of three days, and they began to be frightened exceedingly, lest they should be drowned in the sea. Nevertheless, they did not loose me. And on the fourth day, which we had been driven back, the tempest began to be exceedingly sore, and it came to pass that we were about to be swallowed up in the depths of the sea. And after we had been driven back upon the waters for the space of four days, my brethren began to see that the judgments of God were upon them, that they must perish save they should repent of their iniquities. 
Wherefore they came unto me, and loosed the bands which were upon my wrist, and behold they had swollen exceedingly, and also mine ankles were much swollen, and great was the soreness thereof. Nevertheless I did look unto my God, and I did praise him all the day long, and I did not murmur against the Lord because of mine afflictions. Now my father Lehi had said many things unto them, and also unto the sons of Ishmael, but behold they did breathe out much threatenings against any one that should speak for me, and my parents, being stricken in years, and having suffered much grief because of their children, they were brought down, yea, even upon their sick beds. Because of their grief and much sorrow and the iniquity of my brethren, they were brought near to be carried out of this time to meet their God. Yea, their gray hairs were about to be brought down to lie low in the dust. Yea, even they were near to be cast with sorrow into a watery grave. And Jacob and Joseph also, being young, having need of much nourishment, were grieved because of the afflictions of their mother, and also my wife with her tears and prayers, and also my children did not soften the hearts of my brethren that they would loose me. And there was nothing save it were the power of God which threatened them with destruction, could soften their hearts. Wherefore, when they saw they were about to be swallowed up in the depths of the sea, they repented of the thing which they had done, insomuch that they loosed me. And it came to pass that after they had loosed me, behold, I took the compass, and it did work whither I desired it. And it came to pass that I prayed unto the Lord, and after I had prayed the winds did cease, and the storm did cease, and there was a great calm. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did guide the ship, that we sailed again towards the promised land. And it came to pass that after we had sailed for the space of many days we did arrive at the promised land, and we went forth upon the land, and did pitch our tents, and we did call it the promised land. And it came to pass that we did begin to till the earth, and we began to plant seeds, yea, we did put all our seeds into the earth, which we had brought from the land of Jerusalem. And it came to pass that they did grow exceedingly, wherefore we were blessed in abundance. And it came to pass that we did find upon the land of promise as we journeyed in the wilderness, that there were beasts in the forest of every kind, both the cow and the ox, and the ass and the horse, and the goat, and the wild goat, and all manner of wild animals, which were for the use of men. And we did find all manner of ore, both of gold, and of silver, and of copper. Chapter 19 And it came to pass that the Lord commanded me, wherefore I did make plates of ore that I might engraven upon them the record of my people. And upon the plates which I made I did engraven the record of my father, and also our journeyings in the wilderness, and the prophecies of my father, and also many of mine own prophecies have I engraven upon them. And I knew not at the time when I made them that I should be commanded of the Lord to make these plates, wherefore the record of my father, and the genealogy of his fathers, and the more part of all our proceedings in the wilderness are engraven upon those first plates of which I have spoken. Wherefore the things which transpired before I made these plates are, of a truth, more particularly made mention upon the first plates. And after I had made these plates by way of commandment, I, Nephi, received a commandment that the ministry and the prophecies, the more plain and precious parts of them, should be written upon these plates, and that the things which were written should be kept for the instruction of my people, who should possess the land, and also for other wise purposes, which purposes are known unto the Lord. Wherefore I, Nephi, did make a record upon the other plates, which gives an account, or which gives a greater account, of the wars and contentions and destructions of my people. And this have I done, and commanded my people what they should do after I was gone, and that these plates should be handed down from one generation to another, or from one prophet to another, until further commandments of the Lord. And an account of my making these plates shall be given hereafter. And then, behold, I proceed according to that which I have spoken, and this I do that the more sacred things may be kept for the knowledge of my people. Nevertheless, I do not write anything upon plate, save it be that I think it be sacred. And now, if I do err, even did they err of old, not that I would excuse myself because of other men, but because of the weakness which is in me, according to the flesh, I would excuse myself. For the things which some men esteem to be of great worth, both to the body and soul, Others set it not, and trample under their feet. Yea, the very God of Israel do men trample under their feet. I say trample under their feet, but I would speak in other words. They set him at not, and hearken not to the voice of his counsels. And behold, he cometh according to the words of the angel, in six hundred years from the time my father left Jerusalem. And the world, because of their iniquity, shall judge him to be a thing of naught. Wherefore they scourge him, 
and he suffereth it. And they smite him, and he suffereth it. Yea, they spit upon him, and he suffereth it, because of his loving kindness and his long suffering towards the children of men. And the God of our fathers, who were led out of Egypt, out of bondage, and were also preserved in the wilderness by him, yea, the God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, yieldeth himself, according to the words of the angel, as a man, into the hands of wicked men, to be lifted up, according to the words of Zenoch, and to be crucified, according to the words of Neam, and to be buried in a sepulchre, according to the words of Zenus, which he spake concerning the three days of darkness, which should be a sign given of his death unto those who should inhabit the isles of the sea, more especially given unto those who are of the house of Israel. For thus spake the prophet, The Lord God shall surely visit all the house of Israel at that day, some with his voice, because of their righteousness, unto their great joy and salvation, and others with the thunderings and the lightnings of his power, by tempest, by fire, and by smoke, and by vapor of darkness, and by the opening of the earth, and by mountains which shall be carried up. And all these things must surely come, saith the prophet Zenos, and the rocks of the earth must rend, and because of the groanings of the earth many kings of the isles of the sea shall be wrought upon by the Spirit of God to exclaim, The God of nature suffers. And as for those who are at Jerusalem, saith the prophet, they shall be scourged by all people, because they crucify the God of Israel, and turn their hearts aside, rejecting signs and wonders, and the power and glory of the God of Israel. And because they turn their hearts aside, saith the prophet, and have despised the Holy One of Israel, they shall wander in the flesh and perish, and become a hiss and a byword, and be hated among all nations. Nevertheless, when that day cometh, saith the prophet, that they no more turn aside their hearts against the Holy One of Israel, then will he remember the covenants which he made to their fathers. Yea, then will he remember the isles of the sea. Yea, and all the people who are of the house of Israel will I gather in, saith the Lord, according to the words of the prophet Zenos, from the four quarters of the earth. Yea, and all the earth shall see the salvation of the Lord, saith the prophet. Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people shall be blessed. And I, Nephi, have written these things unto my people, that perhaps I might persuade them that they would remember the Lord their Redeemer. Wherefore I speak unto all the house of Israel, if it so be that they should obtain these things. For behold, I have workings in the spirit, which doth weary me even that all my joints are weak. For those who are at Jerusalem, for had not the Lord been merciful to show unto me concerning them, even as he had the prophets of old, I should have perished also. And he did surely show unto the prophets of old all things concerning them, and also he did show unto many concerning us. Wherefore it must needs be that we know concerning them, for they are written upon the plates of brass. Now it came to pass that I, Nephi, did teach my brethren these things, and it came to pass that I did read many things to them, which were engraven upon the plates of brass, that they might know concerning the doings of the Lord in other lands, among people of old. And I did read many things unto them which were written in the books of Moses, that I might more fully persuade them to believe in the Lord their Redeemer. I did read unto them that which was written by the prophet Isaiah, for I did liken all scriptures unto us, that it might be for our profit and learning. Wherefore I spake unto them, saying, Hear ye the words of the prophet, ye who are a remnant of the house of Israel, a branch who have been broken off, hear ye the words of the prophet, which were written unto all the house of Israel, and liken them unto yourselves, that ye may hope as well as your brethren from whom ye have been broken off. For after this manner has the prophet written. End of First Nephi, chapters 17 through 19. First Nephi, chapters 20 through 22 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. First Nephi, chapters 20 through 22. Chapter 20. Hearken and hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel, and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, or out of the waters of baptism, who swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, yet they swear not in truth nor in righteousness. Nevertheless they call themselves of the holy city, but they do not stay themselves upon the God of Israel, who is the Lord of hosts, yea, 
the Lord of hosts is his name. Behold, I have declared the former things from the beginning, and they went forth out of my mouth, and I showed them, I did show them suddenly. And I did it because I knew that thou art obstinate, and thy neck is an iron sinew, and thy brow brass. And I have from the beginning declared it to thee, before it came to pass that I showed them thee. And I showed them for fear, lest thou shouldst say, Mine idol hath done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. Thou hast seen and heard all this, and will ye not declare them? And I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, and thou didst not know them. They are created now, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, they were declared unto thee, lest thou shouldst say, Behold, I knew them. Yea, and thou heardest not, yea, thou knewest not, yea, from that time thine ear was not opened, for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, and wast called a transgressor from the womb. Nevertheless, for my name's sake will I defer mine anger, and for my praise will I refrain from thee, that I cut thee not off. For behold, I have refined thee, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. For mine own sake, yea, for mine own sake will I do this, for I will not suffer my name to be polluted, and I will not give my glory unto another. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel my called, for I am he, I am the first, and I am also the last. Mine hand hath also laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. I call unto them, and they stand up together. All ye, assemble yourselves, and hear, who among them hath declared these things unto them? The Lord hath loved him, yea, and he will fulfill his word which he hath declared by them, and he will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arms shall come upon the Chaldeans. And also, saith the Lord, I, the Lord, yea, I have spoken, yea, I have called him to declare, I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come ye near unto me, I have not spoken in secret, from the beginning, from the time that it was declared have I spoken, and the Lord God, and his Spirit hath sent me. And thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I have sent him, the Lord thy God, who teacheth thee to profit, who leadeth thee by the way thou shouldst go, hath done it. O oh, that thou hadst hearkened to my commandments! Then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Thy seed also had been as sand, the offspring of thy bowels like the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Go ye forth of Babylon, flee ye from the Chaldeans, with a voice singing, Declare ye, tell this, utter to the end of the earth, say ye, the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. And they thirsted not, he led them through the deserts, he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them, he clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. And notwithstanding he hath done all this, and greater also, there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Chapter 21 And again hearken, O ye house of Israel, all ye that are broken off, and are driven out because of the wickedness of the pastors of my people, Yea, all that are broken off, that are scattered abroad, who are of my people, O house of Israel. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother, and hath made mention of my name. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword, in the shadow of his hand hath he hid me, and made me a polished shaft, in his quiver hath he hid me. And he said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain, I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. And now saith the Lord, that formed me from the womb, that I should be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldst be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the ends of the earth. Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because of the Lord that is faithful. 
Thus saith the Lord, In an acceptable time have I heard thee, O isles of the sea, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee. And I will preserve thee, and give thee my servant for a covenant of the people, to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that sit in darkness, show yourselves, they shall feed in the ways, and their pastures shall be in all high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. And I will make my mountains away, and my highways shall be exalted. And then, O house of Israel, behold, these shall come from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinim. Sing, O heavens, and be joyful, O earth, for the feet of those who are in the east shall be established, and break forth into singing, O mountains, for they shall be smitten no more, for the Lord hath comforted his people, and will have mercy upon his afflicted. But behold, Zion hath said, The Lord hath forsaken me, and my Lord hath forgotten me, but he will show that he hath not. For can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet I will not forget thee, O house of Israel. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands, thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste against thy destroyers, and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together, and they shall come to thee. And as I live, saith the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all, as with an ornament, and bind them on, even as a bride. For thy waste and thy desolate places, and the land of thy destruction, shall even now be too narrow by reason of the inhabitants, and they that swallow thee up shall be far away. The children whom thou shalt have, after thou hast lost the first, shall again in thy ears say, The place is too straight for me, give place to me that I may dwell. Then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these, seeing I have lost my children, and am desolate, a captive, and removing to and fro? And who hath brought up these? Behold, I was left alone, these. Where have they been? Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. For shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captives delivered? But thus saith the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for I will contend with them that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. And I will feed on them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Saviour, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Chapter 22 and now it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had read these things which were engraven upon the plates of brass, my brethren came unto me, and said unto me, What meaneth these things which ye have read? Behold, are they to be understood according to things which are spiritual, which shall come to pass according to the spirit and not the flesh? And I, Nephi, said unto them, Behold, they were manifest unto the prophet by the voice of the spirit. For by the spirit are all things made known unto the prophets which shall come upon the children of men according to the flesh. Wherefore the things of which I have read are things pertaining to things both temporal and spiritual, for it appears that the house of Israel, sooner or later, will be scattered upon all the face of the earth, and also among all nations. And behold, there are many who are already lost from the knowledge of those who are at Jerusalem. Yea, the more part of all the tribes have been led away, and they are scattered to and fro upon the isles of the sea, and whither they are none of us knoweth save we know that they have been led away. And since they have been led away, these things have been prophesied concerning them, and also concerning all those who shall hereafter be scattered and be confounded, because of the Holy One of Israel, for against him will they harden their hearts. Wherefore they shall be scattered among all nations, and shall be hated of all men. Nevertheless, after they shall be nursed by the Gentiles, and the Lord has lifted up his hand upon the Gentiles, and set them up for a standard, 
and their children have been carried in their arms, and their daughters have been carried upon their shoulders. Behold, these things of which are spoken are temporal, for thus are the commandments of the Lord with our fathers, and it meaneth in the days to come, and also all our brethren who are of the house of Israel. And it meaneth that the time cometh that after all the house of Israel hath been scattered and confounded, that the Lord God will raise up a mighty nation among the Gentiles, yea, even upon the face of this land, and by them shall our seed be scattered. And after our seed is scattered, the Lord God will proceed to do a marvellous work among the Gentiles, which shall be of great worth unto our seed. Wherefore it is likened unto their being nourished by the Gentiles, and being carried in their arms and upon their shoulders. And it shall also be of worth unto the Gentiles, and not only unto the Gentiles, but unto all the house of Israel, unto the making known of the covenants of the Father of heaven unto Abraham, saying, In thy seed shall the kindreds of the earth be blessed. And I would, my brethren, that ye should know that all the kindreds of the earth cannot be blessed, unless he shall make bare his arm in the eyes of the nations. Wherefore the Lord God will proceed to make bare his arm in the eyes of all the nations, in bringing about his covenants and his gospel unto those who are of the house of Israel. Wherefore he will bring them again out of captivity, and they shall be gathered together to the lands of their inheritance, and they shall be brought out of obscurity and out of darkness, and they shall know that the Lord is their Saviour, and their Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. And the blood of the great and abominable church, which is the whore of all the earth, shall turn upon their own heads, for they shall war among themselves, and the sword of their own hands shall fall upon their own heads, and they shall be drunken with their own blood. And every nation which shall war against thee, O house of Israel, shall be turned one against another, and they shall fall into the pit which they digged to ensnare the people of the Lord. And all that fight against Zion shall be destroyed. And that great whore who hath perverted the right ways of the Lord, yea, that great and abominable church, shall tumble to the dust, and great shall be the fall of it. For behold, saith the prophet, the time cometh speedily, that Satan shall have no more power over the hearts of the children of men. For the day soon cometh that all the proud and they who do wickedly shall be as stubble, and the day cometh that they must be burned. For the time soon cometh that the fullness of the wrath of God shall be poured out upon all the children of men, for he will not suffer that the wicked shall destroy the righteous. Wherefore he will preserve the righteous by his power, even if it so be that the fullness of his wrath must come, and the righteous be preserved even unto the destruction of their enemies by fire. Wherefore the righteous need not fear, for thus saith the prophet, They shall be saved, even if it so be as by fire. Behold, my brethren, I say unto you that these things must shortly come, yea, even blood and fire, and vapour of smoke must come, and it must needs be upon the face of the earth, and it cometh unto men according to the flesh, if it so be that they will harden their hearts against the Holy One of Israel. For behold, the righteous shall not perish, for the time surely must come that all they who fight against Zion shall be cut off. And the Lord will surely prepare a way for his people unto the fulfilling of the words of Moses, which he spake, saying, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you, like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things, whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that all those who will not hear that prophet shall be cut off from among the people. And now I, Nephi, declare unto you, that this prophet of whom Moses spake was the Holy One of Israel, wherefore he shall execute judgment in righteousness. And the righteous need not fear, for they are those who shall not be confounded. But it is the kingdom of the devil, which shall be built up among the children of men, which kingdom is established among them which are in the flesh. For the time speedily shall come that all churches which are built up to get gain, and all those who are built up to get power over the flesh, and those who are built up to become popular in the eyes of the world, and those who seek the lusts of the flesh, and the things of the world, and do all manner of iniquity, Yea, and find all those who belong to the kingdom of the devil are they who need fear, and tremble, and quake. They are those who must be brought low in the dust. They are those who must be consumed as stubble. And this is according to the words of the prophet. And the time cometh speedily that the righteous must be led up as calves of the stall, and the Holy One of Israel must reign in dominion, and might, and power, and great glory. And he gathereth his children from the four quarters of the earth, and he numbereth his sheep, and they know him. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd, and he shall feed his sheep, and in him they shall find pasture. And because of the righteousness of his people, Satan has no power. 
wherefore he cannot be loosed for the space of many years for he hath no power over the hearts of the people for they dwell in righteousness and the holy one of israel reigneth and now behold i nephi say unto you that all these things must come according to the flesh but behold all nations kindreds tongues and people shall dwell safely in the holy one of israel if it so be that they will repent and now i nephi make an end for i durst not speak further as yet concerning these things wherefore my brethren i would that ye should consider that the things which have been written upon the plates of brass are true and they testify that a man must be obedient to the commandments of god wherefore ye need not suppose that i and my father are the only ones that have testified and also taught them wherefore if ye shall be obedient to the commandments and endure to the end ye shall be saved at the last day and thus it is amen end of first nephi chapters twenty through twenty two Second Nephi, chapters 1 to 3, of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tony Russell. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Second Nephi, chapters 1 to 3. The Second Book of Nephi. An account of the death of Lehi. Nephi's brethren rebel against him. The Lord warns Nephi to depart into the wilderness, his journeyings in the wilderness, and so forth. Chapter 1 And now it came to pass that after I, Nephi, had made an end of teaching my brethren, our father Lehi also spake many things unto them, and rehearsed unto them how great things the Lord had done for them in bringing them out of the land of Jerusalem. And he spake unto them concerning their rebellions upon the waters, and the mercies of God in sparing their lives, that they were not swallowed up in the sea. And he also spake unto them concerning the land of promise, which they had obtained, how merciful the Lord had been in warning us that we should flee out of the land of Jerusalem. For behold, said he, I have seen in a vision in which I know that Jerusalem is destroyed, and had we remained in Jerusalem, we should also have perished. But, said he, notwithstanding our afflictions, we have obtained a land of promise, a land which is choice above all other lands, a land which the Lord God hath covenanted with me should be a land for the inheritance of my seed. Yea, the Lord hath covenanted this land unto me and to my children forever and also all those who should be led out of other countries by the hand of the Lord. Wherefore I, Lehi, prophesy according to the workings of the Spirit which is in me, that there shall none come into this land, save they shall be brought by the hand of the Lord. Wherefore this land is consecrated unto him whom he shall bring, and if it so be that they shall serve him according to the commandments which he hath given, it shall be a land of liberty unto them. Wherefore, they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it shall be because of iniquity. For if iniquity shall abound, cursed shall be the land for their sakes. But unto the righteous it shall be blessed forever. And behold, it is wisdom that this land should be kept as yet from the knowledge of other nations. For behold, many nations would overrun the land, that there would be no place for an inheritance. Wherefore I, Lehi, have obtained a promise, that inasmuch as those whom the Lord God shall bring out of the land of Jerusalem shall keep his commandments, they shall prosper upon the face of this land, and they shall be kept from all other nations, that they may possess this land unto themselves. And if it so be that they shall keep his commandments, they shall be blessed upon the face of this land, and there shall be none to molest them, nor to take away the land of their inheritance, and they shall dwell safely forever. But behold, when the time cometh that they shall dwindle in unbelief, after they have received so great blessings from the hand of the Lord, having a knowledge of the creation of the earth, and all men, knowing the great and marvelous works of the Lord from the creation of the world, 
having power given them to do all things by faith, having all the commandments from the beginning, and having been brought by his infinite goodness into this precious land of promise. Behold, I say, if the day shall come that they shall reject the Holy One of Israel, the true Messiah, their Redeemer, and their God, behold, the judgments of him that is just shall rest upon them. Yea, he shall bring other nations unto them, and he will give unto them power, and he will take away from them the lands of their possessions, and he will cause them to be scattered and smitten. Yea, as one generation passeth to another, there shall be bloodsheds and great visitations among them. Wherefore, my sons, I would that ye would remember, yea, I would that ye would hearken unto my words. O oh, that ye would awake, awake from a deep sleep, yea, even from the sleep of hell, and shake off the awful chains by which ye are bound, which are the chains which bind the children of men, that they are carried away captive down to the eternal gulf of misery and woe. Awake, and arise from the dust, and hear the words of a trembling parent, whose limbs ye must soon lay down in the cold and silent grave, from whence no traveller can return. A few more days, and I go the way of all the earth. But behold, the Lord hath redeemed my soul from hell. I have beheld his glory, and I am encircled about eternally in the arms of his love. And I desire that ye should remember to observe the statutes and the judgments of the Lord. Behold, this hath been the anxiety of my soul from the beginning. My heart hath been weighed down with sorrow from time to time, for I have feared, lest for the hardness of your hearts the Lord your God should come out in the fullness of his wrath upon you, that ye be cut off and destroyed for ever or that a cursing should come upon you for the space of many generations, and ye are visited by sword and by famine, and are hated, and are led according to the will and captivity of the devil. O oh, my sons, that these things might not come upon you, but that ye might be a choice and a favored people of the Lord. But behold, his will be done, for his ways are righteousness forever. And he hath said that, Inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. But inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from my presence. And now that my soul might have joy in you, and that my heart might leave this world with gladness because of you, that I might not be brought down with grief and sorrow to the grave. Arise from the dust, my sons, and be men, and be determined in one mind and in one heart, united in all things, that ye may not come down into captivity, that ye may not be cursed with a sore cursing, and also that ye may not incur the displeasure of a just God upon you unto the destruction, yea, the eternal destruction of both soul and body. Awake, my sons, Put on the armor of righteousness, shake off the chains with which ye are bound, and come forth out of obscurity, and arise from the dust. Rebel no more against your brother, whose views have been glorious, and who hath kept the commandments from the time that we left Jerusalem, and who hath been an instrument in the hands of God in bringing us forth into the land of promise. For were it not for him, we must have perished with hunger in the wilderness. Nevertheless, ye sought to take away his life, yea, and he hath suffered much sorrow because of you. And I exceedingly fear and tremble because of you, lest he shall suffer again. For behold, ye have accused him that he sought power and authority over you. But I know that he hath not sought for power nor authority over you. But he hath sought the glory of God, and your own eternal welfare. And ye have murmured, because he hath been plain unto you. Ye say that he hath used sharpness, 
ye say that he hath been angry with you. But behold, his sharpness was the sharpness of the power of the word of God, which was in him, and that which ye call anger was the truth, according to that which is in God, which he could not restrain, manifesting boldly concerning your iniquities. And it must needs be that the power of God must be with him, even unto his commanding you that ye must obey. But behold, it was not he, but it was the Spirit of the Lord which was in him, which opened his mouth to utterance that he could not shut it. And now my son, Laman, and also Lemuel, and Sam, and also my sons who are the sons of Ishmael, behold, if ye will hearken unto the voice of Nephi, ye shall not perish. And if ye will hearken unto him, I leave unto you a blessing, yea, even my first blessing. But if ye will not hearken unto him, I take away my first blessing, yea, even my blessing, and it shall rest upon him. And now, Zoram, I speak unto you. Behold, thou art the servant of Laban. Nevertheless, thou hast been brought out of the land of Jerusalem, and I know that thou art a true friend unto my son Nephi forever. Wherefore, because thou hast been faithful, thy seed shall be blessed with his seed, that they dwell in prosperity long upon the face of this land, and nothing, save it shall be iniquity among them, shall harm or disturb their prosperity upon the face of this land forever. Wherefore, if ye shall keep the commandments of the Lord, the Lord hath consecrated this land for the security of thy seed with the seed of my son. Chapter 2 And now, Jacob, I speak unto you. Thou art my firstborn in the days of my tribulation in the wilderness, and behold, in thy childhood thou hast suffered afflictions and much sorrow because of the rudeness of thy brethren. Nevertheless, Jacob, my firstborn in the wilderness, thou knowest the greatness of God, and he shall consecrate thine afflictions for thy gain. Wherefore, thy soul shall be blessed, and thou shalt dwell safely with thy brother Nephi, and thy days shall be spent in the service of thy God. Wherefore, I know that thou art redeemed because of the righteousness of thy Redeemer. For thou hast beheld that in the fullness of time he cometh to bring salvation unto men. And thou hast beheld in thy youth his glory, wherefore thou art blessed even as they unto whom he shall minister in the flesh. For the Spirit is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the way is prepared from the fall of man, and salvation is free. And men are instructed sufficiently that they know good from evil, and the law is given unto men, and by the law no flesh is justified, or by the law men are cut off, yea, by the temporal law they were cut off, and also by the spiritual law they perish from that which is good and become miserable forever. Wherefore, Redemption cometh in and through the holy Messiah, for he is full of grace and truth. Behold, he offereth himself a sacrifice for sin, to answer the ends of the law, unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit, and unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. Wherefore, how great the importance to make these things known unto the inhabitants of the earth, that they may know that there is no flesh that can dwell in the presence of God, save it be through the merits and mercy and grace of the Holy Messiah, who layeth down his life according to the flesh, and taketh it again by the power of the Spirit, that he may bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, being the first that should rise. Wherefore, he is the firstfruits unto God, inasmuch as he shall make intercession for all the children of men, and they that believe in him shall be saved. And because of the intercession for all, all men come unto God, wherefore they stand in the presence of him, 
to be judged of him according to the truth and holiness which is in him wherefore the ends of the law which the holy one hath given unto the inflicting of the punishment which is affixed which punishment that is affixed is in opposition to that of the happiness which is affixed to answer the ends of the atonement for it must needs be that there is an opposition in all things if not so my firstborn in the wilderness righteousness could not be brought to pass neither wickedness neither holiness nor misery neither good nor bad wherefore all things must needs be a compound in one wherefore if it should be one body it must needs remain as dead having no life neither death nor corruption nor incorruption happiness nor misery neither sense nor insensibility wherefore it must needs have been created for a thing of naught wherefore there would have been no purpose in the end of its creation wherefore this thing must needs destroy the wisdom of god and his eternal purposes and also the power and the mercy and the justice of god and if ye shall say there is no law ye shall also say there is no sin if ye shall say there is no sin ye shall also say there is no righteousness and if there be no righteousness there be no happiness and if there be no righteousness nor happiness there be no punishment nor misery and if these things are not there is no god and if there is no god we are not neither the earth for there could have been no creation of things neither to act nor to be acted upon wherefore all things must have vanished away and now my sons i speak unto you these things for your profit and learning for there is a god and he hath created all things both the heavens and the earth and all things that in them are both things to act and things to be acted upon and to bring about his eternal purposes in the end of man after he had created our first parents and the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air and in fine all things which are created it must needs be that there was an opposition even the forbidden fruit in opposition to the tree of life the one being sweet and the other bitter wherefore the lord god gave unto man that he should act for himself wherefore man could not act for himself save it should be that he was enticed by the one or the other and i lehi according to the things which i have read must needs suppose that an angel of god according to that which is written had fallen from heaven wherefore he became a devil having sought that which was evil before god and because he had fallen from heaven and had become miserable forever he sought also the misery of all mankind wherefore he said unto eve yea even that old serpent who is the devil who is the father of all lies wherefore he said partake of the forbidden fruit and ye shall not die but ye shall be as god knowing good and evil and after adam and eve had partaken of the forbidden fruit they were driven out of the garden of eden to till the earth and they have brought forth children yea even the family of all the earth and the days of the children of men were prolonged according to the will of god that they might repent while in the flesh wherefore their state became a state of probation and their time was lengthened according to the commandments which the lord god gave unto the children of men for he gave commandment that all men must repent for he showed unto all men that they were lost because of the transgression of their parents and now behold if adam had not transgressed he would not have fallen but he would have remained in the garden of eden and all things which were created must have remained in the same state in which they were after they were created and they must have remained forever and had no end 
and they would have had no children, wherefore they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy, for they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. But behold, all things have been done in the wisdom of him who knoweth all things. Adam fell that men might be, and men are, that they might have joy. And the Messiah cometh in the fullness of time, that he may redeem the children of men from the fall. And because they are redeemed from the fall, they have become free forever, knowing good from evil, to act for themselves, and not to be acted upon, save it be by the punishment of the law at the great and last day, according to the commandments which God hath given. Wherefore, men are free according to the flesh, and all things are given them which are expedient unto man, and they are free to choose liberty and eternal life through the great mediator of all men, or to choose captivity and death according to the captivity and power of the devil. For he seeketh that all men might be miserable like unto himself. And now, my sons, I would that ye should look to the great Mediator, and hearken unto his great commandments, and be faithful unto his words, and choose eternal life according to the will of his Spirit, and not choose eternal death according to the will of the flesh and the evil which is therein, which giveth the spirit of the devil power to captivate, to bring you down to hell, that he may reign over you in his own kingdom. I have spoken these few words unto you all, my sons, in the last days of my probation, and I have chosen the good part, according to the words of the prophet. And I have none other object, save it be the everlasting welfare of your souls. Amen. Chapter 3 and now I speak unto you, Joseph, my last-born. Thou wast born in the wilderness of mine afflictions, yea, in the days of my greatest sorrow did thy mother bear thee. And may the Lord consecrate also unto thee this land, which is a most precious land, for thine inheritance and the inheritance of thy seed with thy brethren, for thy security forever, if it so be that ye shall keep the commandments of the Holy One of Israel. And now, Joseph, my last-born, whom I have brought out of the wilderness of mine afflictions, may the Lord bless thee forever, for thy seed shall not utterly be destroyed. For behold, thou art the fruit of my loins, and I am a descendant of Joseph, who was carried captive into Egypt. And great were the covenants of the Lord which he made unto Joseph. Wherefore Joseph truly saw our day, and he obtained a promise of the Lord, that out of the fruit of his loins the Lord God would raise up a righteous branch unto the house of Israel, not the Messiah, but a branch which was to be broken off, nevertheless to be remembered in the covenants of the Lord that the Messiah should be made manifest unto them in the latter days, in the spirit of power, unto the bringing of them out of darkness unto light. Yea, out of hidden darkness, and out of captivity unto freedom. For Joseph truly testified, saying, A seer shall the Lord my God raise up, who shall be a choice seer unto the fruit of my loins. Yea, Joseph truly said, Thus saith the Lord unto me, A choice seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and he shall be esteemed highly among the fruit of thy loins, and unto him will I give commandment that he shall do a work for the fruit of thy loins, his brethren, which shall be of great worth unto them, even to the bringing of them to the knowledge of the covenants which I have made with thy fathers. And I will give unto him a commandment that he shall do none other work, save the work which I shall command him, and I will make him great in mine eyes for he shall do my work. And he shall be great like unto Moses, whom I have said I would raise up unto you to deliver my people, O house of Israel. And Moses will I raise up to deliver thy people out of the land of Egypt. 
but a seer will I raise up out of the fruit of thy loins, and unto him will I give power to bring forth my word unto the seed of thy loins, and not to the bringing forth my word only, saith the Lord, but to the convincing them of my word, which shall have already gone forth among them. Wherefore the fruit of thy loins shall write, and the fruit of the loins of Judah shall write, and that which shall be written by the fruit of thy loins, and also that which shall be written by the fruit of the loins of Judah, shall grow together under the confounding of false doctrines, and laying down of contentions, and establishing peace among the fruit of thy loins, and bringing them to the knowledge of their fathers in the latter days, and also to the knowledge of my covenants, saith the Lord. And out of weakness he shall be made strong in that day when my work shall commence among all my people under the restoring thee, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. And thus prophesied Joseph, saying, Behold, that seer will the Lord bless, and they that seek to destroy him shall be confounded. For this promise which I have obtained of the Lord of the fruit of my loins shall be fulfilled. Behold, I am sure of the fulfilling of this promise. And his name shall be called after me, and it shall be after the name of his father, and he shall be like unto me, for the thing which the Lord shall bring forth by his hand, by the power of the Lord, shall bring my people unto salvation. Yea, thus prophesied Joseph, I am sure of this thing, even as I am sure of the promise of Moses, for the Lord hath said unto me, I will preserve thy seed forever. And the Lord hath said, I will raise up a Moses, and I will give power unto him in a rod, and I will give judgment unto him in writing. Yet I will not loose his tongue, that he shall speak much. For I will not make him mighty in speaking, but I will write unto him my law by the finger of mine own hand, and I will make a spokesman for him. And the Lord said unto me also, I will raise up unto the fruit of thy loins, and I will make for him a spokesman. And I, behold, I will give unto him that he shall write the writing of the fruit of thy loins unto the fruit of thy loins, and the spokesman of thy loins shall declare it. And the words which he shall write shall be the words which are expedient in my wisdom should go forth unto the fruit of thy loins. And it shall be as if the fruit of thy loins had cried unto them from the dust, for I know their faith. And they shall cry from the dust, yea, even repentance unto their brethren, even after many generations have gone by them. And it shall come to pass that their cry shall go, even according to the simpleness of their words. Because of their faith, their words shall proceed forth out of my mouth unto their brethren who are the fruit of thy loins. And the weakness of their words will I make strong in their faith, under the remembering of my covenant which I made unto thy fathers. And now behold, my son Joseph, after this manner did my father of old prophesy. Wherefore, because of this covenant thou art blessed, for thy seed shall not be destroyed, for they shall hearken unto the words of the book. And there shall rise up one mighty among them, who shall do much good, both in word and in deed, being an instrument in the hands of God, with exceeding faith, to work mighty wonders, and do that thing which is great in the sight of God, unto the bringing to pass much restoration unto the house of Israel, and unto the seed of thy brethren. And now blessed art thou, Joseph. Behold, thou art little. Wherefore hearken unto the words of thy brother Nephi, and it shall be done unto thee even according to the words which I have spoken. Remember the words of thy dying father. Amen. End of Second Nephi chapters 1 to 3 Recording by Tony Russell, Bend, Oregon Second Nephi chapters 4 to 7 of the Book of Mormon This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. 
For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tony Russell. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith, Second Nephi, Chapter Four. And now I, Nephi, speak concerning the prophecies of which my father hath spoken, concerning Joseph, who was carried into Egypt. For behold, he truly prophesied concerning all his seed, and the prophecies which he wrote, there are not many greater. And he prophesied concerning us, and our future generations, and they are written upon the plates of brass. Wherefore, after my father had made an end of speaking concerning the prophecies of Joseph, he called the children of Laman, his sons and his daughters, and said unto them, Behold, my sons and my daughters, who are the sons and the daughters of my firstborn. I would that ye should give ear unto my words. For the Lord God hath said that, Inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. And inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from my presence. But behold, my sons and my daughters, I cannot go down to my grave, save I should leave a blessing upon you. For behold, I know that if ye are brought up in the way ye should go, ye will not depart from it. Wherefore, if ye are cursed, behold, I leave my blessing upon you, that the cursing may be taken from you, and be answered upon the heads of your parents. Wherefore, because of my blessing, the Lord God will not suffer that ye shall perish. Wherefore, he will be merciful unto you, and unto your seed for ever. And it came to pass that after my father had made an end of speaking to the sons and daughters of Laman, he caused the sons and daughters of Lemuel to be brought before him. And he spake unto them, saying, Behold, my sons and my daughters, who are the sons and the daughters of my second son, Behold, I leave unto you the same blessing which I left unto the sons and daughters of Laman, wherefore thou shalt not utterly be destroyed, but in the end thy seed shall be blessed. And it came to pass that when my father had made an end of speaking unto them, behold, he spake unto the sons of Ishmael, yea, and even all his household. And after he had made an end of speaking unto them, he spake unto Sam, saying, Blessed art thou and thy seed, for thou shalt inherit the land like unto thy brother Nephi, and thy seed shall be numbered with his seed, and thou shalt be even like unto thy brother, and thy seed like unto his seed, and thou shalt be blessed in all thy days. And it came to pass, after my father Lehi had spoken unto all his household, according to the feelings of his heart, and the Spirit of the Lord which was in him, he waxed old. And it came to pass that he died and was buried. And it came to pass that not many days after his death, Laman and Lemuel and the sons of Ishmael were angry with me because of the admonitions of the Lord. For I, Nephi, was constrained to speak unto them according to his word. For I had spoken many things unto them, and also my father before his death, many of which sayings are written upon mine other plates, for a more history part are written upon mine other plates. And upon these I write the things of my soul, and many of the scriptures which are engraven upon the plates of brass, for my soul delighteth in the scriptures, and my heart pondereth them, and writeth them for the learning and the profit of my children. Behold, my soul delighteth in the things of the Lord, and my heart pondereth continually upon the things which I have seen and heard. Nevertheless, notwithstanding the great goodness of the Lord, in showing me his great and marvelous works, my heart exclaimeth, O wretched man that I am! Yea, my heart sorroweth because of my flesh, my soul grieveth because of mine iniquities. I am encompassed about because of the temptations and the sins which do so easily beset me. And when I desire to rejoice, my heart groaneth because of my sins. Nevertheless, I know in whom I have trusted. My God hath been my support. He hath led me through mine afflictions in the wilderness, and he hath preserved me upon the waters of the great deep. He hath filled me with his love, even unto the consuming of my flesh. 
he hath confounded mine enemies, unto the causing of them to quake before me. Behold, he hath heard my cry by day, and he hath given me knowledge by visions in the night time. And by day have I waxed bold in mighty prayer before him. Yea, my voice have I sent up on high, and angels came down and ministered unto me. And upon the wings of his spirit hath my body been carried away upon exceedingly high mountains, and mine eyes have beheld great things, yea, even too great for man. Therefore I was bidden that I should not write them. O oh, then, if I have seen so great things, if the Lord in his condescension unto the children of men hath visited men in so much mercy, why should my heart weep, and my soul linger in the valley of sorrow, and my flesh waste away, and my strength slacken because of mine afflictions? And why should I yield to sin because of my flesh? Yea, why should I give way to temptations, that the evil one have place in my heart to destroy my peace and afflict my soul? Why am I angry because of mine enemy? Awake, my soul! No longer droop in sin. Rejoice, O my heart, and give place no more for the enemy of my soul. Do not anger again because of mine enemies. Do not slacken my strength because of mine afflictions. Rejoice, O my heart, and cry unto the Lord, and say, O Lord, I will praise thee forever. Yea, my soul will rejoice in thee, my God, and the rock of my salvation. O Lord, wilt thou redeem my soul? Wilt thou deliver me out of the hands of mine enemies? Wilt thou make me that I may shake at the appearance of sin? May the gates of hell be shut continually before me, because that my heart is broken, and my spirit is contrite. O Lord, wilt thou not shut the gates of thy righteousness before me, that I may walk in the path of the low valley, that I may be strict in the plain road? O Lord, wilt thou encircle me around in the robe of thy righteousness? O Lord, wilt thou make a way for mine escape before mine enemies? Wilt thou make my path straight before me? Wilt thou not place a stumbling block in my way, but that thou wouldst clear my way before me, and hedge not up my way, but the ways of mine enemy? O Lord, I have trusted in thee, and I will trust in thee forever. I will not put my trust in the arm of flesh, for I know that cursed is he that putteth his trust in the arm of flesh. Yea, cursed is he that putteth his trust in man, or maketh flesh his arm. Yea, I know that God will give liberally to him that asketh. Yea, my God will give me, if I ask not amiss. Therefore I will lift up my voice unto thee. Yea, I will cry unto thee, my God, the rock of my righteousness. Behold, my voice shall forever ascend up unto thee, my rock and mine everlasting God. Amen. Chapter 5 Behold, it came to pass that I, Nephi, did cry much unto the Lord my God because of the anger of my brethren. But behold, their anger did increase against me, insomuch that they did seek to take away my life. Yea, they did murmur against me, saying, Our younger brother thinks to rule over us, and we have had much trial because of him. Wherefore now let us slay him that we may not be afflicted more because of his words. For behold, we will not have him to be our ruler, for it belongs unto us who are the elder brethren to rule over this people. Now I do not write upon these plates all the words which they murmured against me, but it sufficeth me to say that they did seek to take away my life. And it came to pass that the Lord did warn me that I, Nephi, should depart from them and flee into the wilderness, and all those who would go with me. Wherefore it came to pass that I, Nephi, did take my family, and also Zoram and his family, and Sam, mine elder brother, and his family, and Jacob and Joseph, my younger brethren, and also my sisters, and also those who would go with me. And all those who would go with me were those who believed in the warnings and the revelations of God. Wherefore they did hearken unto my words. And we did take our tents, and whatsoever things were possible for us, and did journey in the wilderness for the space of many days. 
and after we had journeyed for the space of many days, we did pitch our tents. And my people would that we should call the name of the place Nephi, wherefore we did call it Nephi, and all those who were with me did take upon them to call themselves the people of Nephi. And we did observe to keep the judgments and the statutes and the commandments of the Lord in all things according to the law of Moses. And the Lord was with us, and we did prosper exceedingly, for we did sow seed, and we did reap again in abundance. And we began to raise flocks and herds and animals of every kind. And I, Nephi, had also brought the records which were engraven upon the plates of brass, and also the ball, or compass, which was prepared for my father by the hand of the Lord, according to that which is written. And it came to pass that we began to prosper exceedingly, and to multiply in the land. And I, Nephi, did take the sword of Laban, and after the manner of it did make many swords, lest by any means the people who were now called Lamanites should come upon us and destroy us. For I knew their hatred towards me and my children, and those who were called my people. And I did teach my people to build buildings, and to work in all manner of wood, and of iron, and of copper, and of brass, and of steel, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious ores, which were in great abundance. And I, Nephi, did build a temple, and I did construct it after the manner of the temple of Solomon, save it were not built of so many precious things, for they were not to be found upon the land, wherefore it could not be built like unto Solomon's temple. But the manner of the construction was like unto the temple of Solomon, and the workmanship thereof was exceedingly fine. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did cause my people to be industrious, and to labor with their hands. And it came to pass that they would that I should be their king. But I, Nephi, was desirous that they should have no king. Nevertheless, I did for them according to that which was in my power. And behold, the words of the Lord had been fulfilled unto my brethren, which he spake concerning them, that I should be their ruler and their teacher. Wherefore, I had been their ruler and their teacher, according to the commandments of the Lord, until the time they sought to take away my life. Wherefore, the word of the Lord was fulfilled, which he spake unto me, saying that, Inasmuch as they will not hearken unto thy words, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord, and behold, they were cut off from his presence. And he had caused the cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. And thus saith the Lord God, I will cause that they shall be loathsome unto thy people, save they shall repent of their iniquities. And cursed shall be the seed of him that mixeth with their seed, for they shall be cursed even with the same cursing. And the Lord spake it, and it was done. And because of their cursing which was upon them, they did become an idle people, full of mischief and subtlety, and did seek in the wilderness for beasts of prey. And the Lord God said unto me, They shall be a scourge unto thy seed, to stir them up in remembrance of me, and inasmuch as they will not remember me, and hearken unto my words, they shall scourge them even unto destruction. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did consecrate Jacob and Joseph, that they should be priests and teachers over the land of my people. And it came to pass that we lived after the manner of happiness, and thirty years had passed away from the time we left Jerusalem. And I, Nephi, had kept the records upon my plates which I had made of my people thus far. And it came to pass that the Lord God said unto me, Make other plates, and thou shalt engrave in many things upon them which are good in my sight, for the profit of thy people." Wherefore I, Nephi, to be obedient to the commandments of the Lord, went and made these plates upon which I have engraven these things, and I engraved that which is pleasing unto God. And if my people are pleased with the things of God, they will be pleased with mine engravings which are upon these plates. 
and if my people desire to know the more particular part of the history of my people, they must search mine other plates. And it sufficeth me to say that forty years had passed away, and we had already had wars and contentions with our brethren. Chapter 6 The words of Jacob, the brother of Nephi, which he spake unto the people of Nephi. Behold, my beloved brethren, I, Jacob, having been called of God, and ordained after the manner of his holy order, and having been consecrated by my brother Nephi, unto whom ye look as a king or a protector, and on whom ye depend for safety, behold, ye know that I have spoken unto you exceedingly many things. Nevertheless, I speak unto you again, for I am desirous for the welfare of your souls. Yea, mine anxiety is great for you, and ye yourselves know that it ever has been. For I have exhorted you with all diligence, and I have taught you the words of my Father, and I have spoken unto you concerning all things which are written from the creation of the world. And now, behold, I would speak unto you concerning things which are, and which are to come. Wherefore, I will read you the words of Isaiah, and they are the words which my brother has desired that I should speak unto you. And I speak unto you for your sakes, that ye may learn and glorify the name of your God. And now, the words which I shall read are they which Isaiah spake concerning all the house of Israel. Wherefore, they may be likened unto you, for ye are of the house of Israel. And there are many things which have been spoken by Isaiah which may be likened unto you, because ye are of the house of Israel. And now these are the words, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up mine hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their faces towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. And now I, Jacob, would speak somewhat concerning these words, for behold, the Lord has shown me that those who are at Jerusalem from whence we came have been slain and carried away captive. Nevertheless, the Lord has shown unto me that they should return again. And he has also shown unto me that the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, should manifest himself unto them in the flesh, and after he should manifest himself, they should scourge him and crucify him, according to the words of the angel who spake it unto me. And after they have hardened their hearts and stiffened their necks against the Holy One of Israel, behold, the judgments of the Holy One of Israel shall come upon them, and the day cometh that they shall be smitten and afflicted. Wherefore, after they are driven to and fro, for thus saith the angel, many shall be afflicted in the flesh, and shall not be suffered to perish, because of the prayers of the faithful. They shall be scattered, and smitten, and hated. Nevertheless the Lord will be merciful unto them, that when they shall come to the knowledge of their Redeemer, they shall be gathered together again to the lands of their inheritance. And blessed are the Gentiles, they of whom the prophet has written. For behold, if it so be that they shall repent, and fight not against Zion, and do not unite themselves to that great and abominable church, they shall be saved. For the Lord God will fulfill his covenants which he has made unto his children, and for this cause the prophet has written these things. Wherefore they that fight against Zion and the covenant people of the Lord shall lick up the dust of their feet, and the people of the Lord shall not be ashamed. For the people of the Lord are they who wait for him, for they still wait for the coming of the Messiah. And behold, according to the words of the prophets, the Messiah will set himself again the second time to recover them. Wherefore he will manifest himself unto them in power and great glory unto the destruction of their enemies when that day cometh when they shall believe in him, and none will he destroy that believe in him. And they that believe not in him shall be destroyed, both by fire and by tempest and by earthquakes and by bloodsheds and by pestilence and by famine. 
and they shall know that the Lord is God, the Holy One of Israel. For shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered, for the mighty God shall deliver his covenant people. For thus saith the Lord, I will contend with them that contendeth with thee. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Chapter 7 Yea, for thus saith the Lord, Have I put thee away, or have I cast thee off forever? For thus saith the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement? To whom have I put thee away? Or to which of my creditors have I sold you? Yea, to whom have I sold you? Behold, for your iniquities have ye sold yourselves, and for your transgressions is your mother put away. Wherefore, when I came, there was no man. When I called, yea, there was none to answer. O house of Israel, is my hand shortened at all that it cannot redeem, or have I no power to deliver? Behold, at my rebuke I dry up the sea. I make their rivers a wilderness and their fish to stink because the waters are dried up and they die because of thirst. I clothe the heavens with blackness and I make sackcloth their covering. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season unto thee, O house of Israel. When ye are weary, he waketh morning by morning. He waketh mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smiter, and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. And the Lord is near, and he justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near me, and I will smite him with the strength of my mouth. For the Lord God will help me. And all they who shall condemn me, behold, all they shall wax old as a garment, and the moth shall eat them up. Who is among you that feareth the Lord? that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness, and hath no light. Behold, all ye that kindle fire, that compass yourselves about with sparks, walk in the light of your fire, and in the sparks which ye have kindled. This shall ye have of mine hand. Ye shall lie down in sorrow. End of Second Nephi chapters 4 to 7 Recording by Tony Russell, Bend, Oregon Second Nephi, chapters 8 to 11 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tony Russell. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Second Nephi, chapters 8 to 11. Chapter 8. Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. Look unto the rock from whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit from whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah, she that bare you. For I called him alone, and blessed him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving, and the voice of melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light for the people. My righteousness is near, my salvation is gone forth, and mine arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on mine arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. 
for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart I have written my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be ye afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord, awake as in the ancient days. Art thou not he that hath cut Rahab, and wounded the dragon? Art thou not he who hath dried the sea, the waters of the great deep, that hath made the depths of the sea a way for the ransomed to pass over? Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return, and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy and holiness shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy. Sorrow and mourning shall flee away. I am he. Yea, I am he that comforteth you. Behold, who art thou, that thou shouldst be afraid of man, who shall die, and of the son of man, who shall be made like unto grass? And forgettest the Lord thy Maker, that hath stretched forth the heavens, and laid the foundations of the earth, and hast feared continually every day, because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy? And where is the fury of the oppressor? The captive exile hasteneth, that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. But I am the Lord thy God, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is my name. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundations of the earth, and say unto Zion, Behold, thou art my people. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which hast drunk at the hand of the Lord the cup of his fury. Thou hast drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling wrung out. And none to guide her among all the sons she hath brought forth, neither that taketh her by the hand of all the sons she hath brought up. These two sons are come unto thee, who shall be sorry for thee, thy desolation and destruction, and the famine and the sword, and by whom shall I comfort thee? Thy sons have fainted, save these two. They lie at the head of all the streets, as a wild bull in a net. They are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. Therefore hear now this, thou afflicted, and drunken, and not with wine. Thus saith thy Lord, the Lord and thy God pleadeth the cause of his people. Behold, I have taken out of thine hand the cup of trembling, the dregs of the cup of my fury. Thou shalt no more drink it again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, who have said to thy soul, Bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground and as the street to them that went over. Awake! Awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust, arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. Chapter 9 and now, my beloved brethren, I have read these things that ye might know concerning the covenants of the Lord that he has covenanted with all the house of Israel, that he has spoken unto the Jews by the mouth of his holy prophets, even from the beginning down from generation to generation, until the time comes that they shall be restored to the true church and fold of God, when they shall be gathered home to the lands of their inheritance, and shall be established in all their lands of promise. Behold, my beloved brethren, I speak unto you these things that ye may rejoice and lift up your heads forever because of the blessings which the Lord God shall bestow upon your children. For I know that ye have searched much, many of you, to know of things to come. 
Wherefore I know that ye know that our flesh must waste away and die. Nevertheless, in our bodies we shall see God. Yea, I know that ye know that in the body he shall show himself unto those at Jerusalem from whence we came. For it is expedient that it should be among them. For it behooveth the great Creator that he suffereth himself to become subject unto man in the flesh, and die for all men, that all men might become subject unto him. For as death hath passed upon all men to fulfill the merciful plan of the great Creator, there must needs be a power of resurrection, and the resurrection must needs come unto man by reason of the fall, and the fall came by reason of transgression. And because man became fallen, they were cut off from the presence of the Lord. Wherefore it must needs be an infinite atonement, save it should be an infinite atonement, this corruption could not put on incorruption. Wherefore the first judgment which came upon man must needs have remained in an endless duration, and if so, this flesh must have laid down to rot and to crumble to its mother earth to rise no more. O oh, the wisdom of God, his mercy and grace! For behold, if the flesh should rise no more, our spirits must become subject to that angel who fell from before the presence of the eternal God and became the devil to rise no more. And our spirits must have become like unto him, and we become devils, angels to a devil, to be shut out from the presence of our God, and to remain with the father of lies in misery like unto himself, yea, to that being who beguiled our first parents, who transformeth himself nigh unto an angel of light, and stirreth up the children of men unto secret combinations of murder, and all manner of secret works of darkness. Oh, how great the goodness of our God, who prepareth a way for our escape from the grasp of this awful monster, yea, that monster, death and hell, which I call the death of the body, and also the death of the spirit. And because of the way of deliverance of our God, the Holy One of Israel, this death of which I have spoken, which is the temporal, shall deliver up its dead, which death is the grave. And this death of which I have spoken, which is the spiritual death, shall deliver up its dead, which spiritual death is hell. Wherefore death and hell must deliver up their dead, and hell must deliver up its captive spirits, and the grave must deliver up its captive bodies, and the bodies and the spirits of men will be restored one to the other, and it is by the power of the resurrection of the Holy One of Israel. Oh, how great the plan of our God! For on the other hand, the paradise of God must deliver up the spirits of the righteous, and the grave deliver up the body of the righteous, and the spirit and the body is restored to itself again, and all men become incorruptible and immortal, and they are living souls, having a perfect knowledge like unto us in the flesh, save it be that our knowledge shall be perfect. Wherefore, we shall have a perfect knowledge of all our guilt, and our uncleanness, and our nakedness. And the righteous shall have a perfect knowledge of their enjoyment, and their righteousness, being clothed with purity, yea, even with the robe of righteousness. And it shall come to pass that when all men shall have passed from this first death unto life, insomuch as they have become immortal, they must appear before the judgment seat of the Holy One of Israel, and then cometh the judgment, and then must they be judged according to the holy judgment of God. And assuredly as the Lord liveth, for the Lord God hath spoken it, and it is his eternal word which cannot pass away, that they who are righteous shall be righteous still, and they who are filthy shall be filthy still. Wherefore they who are filthy are the devil and his angels, and they shall go away into everlasting fire, prepared for them, and their torment is as a lake of fire and brimstone, whose flame ascendeth up for ever and ever and has no end. O oh, the greatness and the justice of our God! For he executeth all his words, and they have gone forth out of his mouth, and his law must be fulfilled. But behold, 
the righteous, the saints of the Holy One of Israel, they who have believed in the Holy One of Israel, they who have endured the crosses of the world and despised the shame of it, they shall inherit the kingdom of God, which was prepared for them from the foundation of the world, and their joy shall be full forever. O oh, the greatness of the mercy of our God, the Holy One of Israel! For he delivereth his saints from that awful monster, the devil, and death, and hell, and that lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment. O oh, how great the holiness of our God! For he knoweth all things, and there is not anything save he knows it. And he cometh into the world, that he may save all men if they will hearken unto his voice. For behold, he suffereth the pains of all men, yea, the pains of every living creature, both men, women, and children, who belong to the family of Adam. And he suffereth this, that the resurrection might pass upon all men, that all might stand before him at the great and judgment day. And he commandeth all men that they must repent, and be baptized in his name, having perfect faith in the Holy One of Israel, or they cannot be saved in the kingdom of God. And if they will not repent and believe in his name, and be baptized in his name, and endure to the end, they must be damned. For the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, has spoken it. Wherefore, he has given a law, and where there is no law given, there is no punishment. And where there is no punishment, there is no condemnation. And where there is no condemnation, the mercies of the Holy One of Israel have claim upon them because of the atonement, for they are delivered by the power of him. For the atonement satisfieth the demands of his justice upon all those who have not the law given to them, that they are delivered from that awful monster, death and hell, and the devil, and the lake of fire and brimstone, which is endless torment. And they are restored to that God who gave them breath, which is the Holy One of Israel. But woe unto him that has the law given, yea, that has all the commandments of God like unto us, and that transgresseth them, and that wasteth the days of his probation, for awful is his state. O oh, that cunning plan of the evil one! O oh, the vainness and the frailties and the foolishness of men! When they are learned, they think they are wise, and they hearken not unto the counsel of God. For they set it aside, supposing they know of themselves. Wherefore their wisdom is foolishness, and it profiteth them not, and they shall perish. But to be learned is good, if they hearken unto the counsels of God. But woe unto the rich, who are rich as to the things of the world. For because they are rich, they despise the poor, and they persecute the meek and their hearts are upon their treasures. Wherefore their treasure is their God, and behold, their treasure shall perish with them also. And woe unto the deaf that will not hear, for they shall perish. Woe unto the blind that will not see, for they shall perish also. Woe unto the uncircumcised of heart, for a knowledge of their iniquities shall smite them at the last day. Woe unto the liar, for he shall be thrust down to hell. Woe unto the murderer, who deliberately killeth, for he shall die. Woe unto them who commit whoredoms, for they shall be thrust down to hell. Yea, woe unto those that worship idols, for the devil of all devils delighteth in them. And in fine, woe unto all those who die in their sins, for they shall return to God, and behold his face, and remain in their sins. O oh, my beloved brethren, remember the awfulness in transgressing against that holy God, and also the awfulness of yielding to the enticings of that cunning one. Remember, to be carnally minded is death, and to be spiritually minded is life eternal. O oh, my beloved brethren, give ear to my words, Remember the greatness of the Holy One of Israel. Do not say that I have spoken hard things against you, for if ye do, ye will revile against the truth, for I have spoken the words of your Maker. I know that the words of truth are hard against all uncleanness, 
but the righteous fear them not, for they love the truth and are not shaken. O then, my beloved brethren, come unto the Lord, the Holy One. Remember that his paths are righteous. Behold, the way for man is narrow, but it lieth in a straight course before him, and the keeper of the gate is the Holy One of Israel and he employeth no servant there and there is none other way save it be by the gate for he cannot be deceived for the lord god is his name and whoso knocketh to him will he open and the wise and the learned and they that are rich who are puffed up because of their learning and their wisdom and their riches yea they are they whom he despiseth and save they shall cast these things away, and consider themselves fools before God, and come down in the depths of humility, he will not open unto them. But the things of the wise and the prudent shall be hid from them forever, yea, that happiness which is prepared for the saints. O oh, my beloved brethren, remember my words. Behold, I take off my garments, and I shake them before you. I pray the God of my salvation that he view me with his all-searching eye. Wherefore, ye shall know that at the last day, when all men shall be judged of their works, that the God of Israel did witness that I shook your iniquities from my soul, and that I stand with brightness before him, and am rid of your blood. O my beloved brethren, Turn away from your sins, shake off the chains of him that would bind you fast, come unto that God who is the rock of your salvation. Prepare your souls for that glorious day when justice shall be administered unto the righteous, even the day of judgment, that ye may not shrink with awful fear, that ye may not remember your awful guilt in perfectness, and be constrained to exclaim, Holy, holy are thy judgments. O Lord God Almighty, but I know my guilt. I transgressed thy law, and my transgressions are mine, and the devil hath obtained me, that I am a prey to his awful misery. But behold, my brethren, is it expedient that I should awake you to an awful reality of these things? Would I harrow up your souls if your minds were pure? Would I be plain unto you according to the plainness of the truth? if ye were freed from sin. Behold, if ye were holy, I would speak unto you of holiness. But as ye are not holy, and ye look upon me as a teacher, it must needs be expedient that I teach you the consequences of sin. Behold, my soul abhorreth sin, and my heart delighteth in righteousness, and I will praise the holy name of my God. Come, my brethren, every one that thirsteth, Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come by and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do not spend money for that which is of no worth, nor your labor for that which cannot satisfy. Hearken diligently unto me, and remember the words which I have spoken, and come unto the Holy One of Israel, and feast upon that which perisheth not neither can be corrupted, and let your soul delight in fatness. Behold, my beloved brethren, remember the words of your God. Pray unto him continually by day, and give thanks unto his holy name by night. Let your hearts rejoice. And behold how great the covenants of the Lord, and how great his condescensions unto the children of men. And because of his greatness, and his grace and mercy, he has promised unto us that our seed shall not utterly be destroyed according to the flesh, but that he would preserve them, and in future generations they shall become a righteous branch unto the house of Israel. And now, my brethren, I would speak unto you no more, but on the morrow I will declare unto you the remainder of my words. Amen. Chapter 10 And now I, Jacob, speak unto you again, my beloved brethren, concerning this righteous branch of which I have spoken. For behold, the promises which we have obtained are promises unto us according to the flesh. Wherefore, as it has been shown unto me that many of our children shall perish in the flesh because of unbelief, 
nevertheless god will be merciful unto many and our children shall be restored that they may come to that which will give them the true knowledge of their redeemer wherefore as i said unto you it must needs be expedient that christ for in the last night the angel spake unto me that this should be his name should come among the jews among those who are the more wicked part of the world and they shall crucify him for thus it behooveth our god and there is none other nation on earth that would crucify their god for should the mighty miracles be wrought among other nations they would repent and know that he be their god but because of priest crafts and iniquities they at jerusalem will stiffen their necks against him that he be crucified wherefore because of their iniquities destructions famines pestilences and bloodshed shall come upon them and they who shall not be destroyed shall be scattered among all nations but behold thus saith the lord god when the day cometh that they shall believe in me that i am christ then have i covenanted with their fathers that they shall be restored in the flesh upon the earth unto the lands of their inheritance and it shall come to pass that they shall be gathered in from their long dispersion from the isles of the sea and from the four parts of the earth and the nations of the gentiles shall be great in the eyes of me saith god in carrying them forth to the lands of their inheritance yea the kings of the gentiles shall be nursing fathers unto them and their queens shall become nursing mothers wherefore the promises of the lord are great unto the gentiles for he hath spoken it and who can dispute but behold this land said god shall be a land of thine inheritance and the gentiles shall be blessed upon the land and this land shall be a land of liberty unto the gentiles and there shall be no kings upon the land who shall raise up unto the gentiles and i will fortify this land against all other nations and he that fighteth against zion shall perish saith god for he that raiseth up a king against me shall perish for i the lord the king of heaven will be their king and i will be a light unto them forever that hear my words wherefore for this cause that my covenants may be fulfilled which i have made unto the children of men that i will do unto them while they are in the flesh i must needs destroy the secret works of darkness and of murders and of abominations wherefore he that fighteth against zion both jew and gentile both bond and free both male and female shall perish for they are they who are the whore of all the earth for they who are not of me are against me saith our god for i will fulfill my promises which i have made unto the children of men that i will do unto them while they are in the flesh wherefore my beloved brethren thus saith our god i will afflict thy seed by the hand of the gentiles nevertheless i will soften the hearts of the gentiles that they shall be like unto a father to them wherefore the gentiles shall be blessed and numbered among the house of israel wherefore i will consecrate this land unto thy seed and them who shall be numbered among thy seed forever for the land of their inheritance for it is a choice land saith god unto me above all other lands wherefore i will have all men that dwell thereon that they shall worship me saith god and now my beloved brethren seeing that our merciful god has given us so great knowledge concerning these things let us remember him and lay aside our sins and not hang down our heads for we are not cast off nevertheless we have been driven out of the land of our inheritance but we have been led to a better land for the lord has made the sea our path and we are upon an isle of the sea but great are the promises of the lord unto them who are upon the isles of the sea wherefore as it says isles there must needs be more than this and they are inhabited also by our brethren 
For behold, the Lord God has led away from time to time from the house of Israel according to his will and pleasure. And now behold, the Lord remembereth all them who have been broken off, wherefore he remembereth us also. Therefore, cheer up your hearts, and remember that ye are free to act for yourselves, to choose the way of everlasting death or the way of eternal life. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, reconcile yourselves to the will of God, and not to the will of the devil and the flesh. And remember, after ye are reconciled unto God, that it is only in and through the grace of God that ye are saved. Wherefore, may God raise you from death by the power of the resurrection, and also from everlasting death by the power of the atonement, that ye may be received unto the eternal kingdom of God, that ye may praise him through grace divine. Amen. Chapter 11 And now Jacob spake many more things to my people at that time. Nevertheless, only these things have I caused to be written, for the things which I have written sufficeth me. And now I, Nephi, write more of the words of Isaiah, for my soul delighteth in his words. For I will liken his words unto my people, and I will send them forth unto all my children, for he verily saw my Redeemer, even as I have seen him. And my brother Jacob also has seen him as I have seen him. Wherefore, I will send their words forth unto my children to prove unto them that my words are true. Wherefore, by the words of three... God hath said, I will establish my word. Nevertheless, God sendeth more witnesses, and he proveth all his words. Behold, my soul delighteth in proving unto my people the truth of the coming of Christ. For, for this end hath the law of Moses been given, and all things which have been given of God from the beginning of the world unto man are the typifying of him. And also my soul delighteth in the covenants of the Lord which he hath made to our fathers. Yea, my soul delighteth in his grace and in his justice and power and mercy in the great and eternal plan of deliverance from death. And my soul delighteth in proving unto my people that save Christ should come, all men must perish. For if there be no Christ, there be no God. And if there be no God, we are not, for there could have been no creation. But there is a God, and he is Christ, and he cometh in the fullness of his own time. And now I write some of the words of Isaiah, that whoso of my people shall see these words may lift up their hearts and rejoice for all men. Now these are the words, and ye may liken them unto you and unto all men. End of Second Nephi chapters eight to eleven. Recording by Tony Russell, Bend, Oregon. Second Nephi chapters twelve to seventeen of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tony Russell. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Second Nephi, chapters 12 to 17. Chapter 12. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days, when the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nations, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, 
neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Yea, come, for ye have all gone astray, every one to his wicked ways. Therefore, O Lord, thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and hearken unto soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Their land also is full of silver and gold, neither is there any end of their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, neither is there any end of their chariots. Their land is also full of idols, they worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth not down, and the great man humbleth himself not, therefore forgive him not. O ye wicked ones, enter into the rock, and hide thee in the dust, for the fear of the Lord and the glory of his majesty shall smite thee. And it shall come to pass that the lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts soon cometh upon all nations, yea, upon every one, yea, upon the proud and lofty, and upon every one who is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Yea, and the day of the Lord shall come upon all the cedars of Lebanon, for they are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills, and upon all the nations which are lifted up, and upon every people, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall, and upon all the ships of the sea, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of man shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day, and the idols he shall utterly abolish. And they shall go into the holes of the rocks, and into the caves of the earth, for the fear of the Lord shall come upon them, and the glory of his majesty shall smite them, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver, and his idols of gold, which he hath made for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats, to go into the clefts of the rocks, and into the tops of the ragged rocks, for the fear of the Lord shall come upon them, and the majesty of his glory shall smite them, when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth. Cease ye from man whose breath is in his nostrils, for wherein is he to be accounted of? Chapter 13 For behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole staff of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty and the honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. And I will give children unto them to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, and shall say, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let not this ruin come under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house there is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongues and their doings have been against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and doth declare their sin to be even as Sodom, and they cannot hide it. Woe unto their souls, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say unto the righteous that it is well with them, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe unto the wicked, for they shall perish, for the reward of their hands shall be upon them. And my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. O oh, my people! They who lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. 
the Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people and the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard and the spoil of the poor in your houses. What mean ye? Ye beat my people to pieces, and grind the faces of the poor, saith the Lord God of hosts. Moreover the Lord saith, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, Therefore the Lord shall smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments and calls and round tires like the moon, the chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings the rings and nose jewels the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pins the glasses and the fine linen and hoods and the veils and it shall come to pass instead of sweet smell there shall be stink and instead of a girdle a rent and instead of well-set hair baldness and instead of a stomacher a girding of sackcloth burning instead of beauty thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in the war and her gates shall lament and mourn and she shall be desolate and shall sit upon the ground chapter fourteen and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread, and wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, the fruit of the earth excellent and comely to them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass, they that are left in Zion and remain in Jerusalem shall be called holy, every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning, and the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion, and upon her assemblies, a cloud of smoke by day and the shining of a flaming fire by night, for upon all the glory of Zion shall be a defense. And there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat, and for a place of refuge, and a covert from storm and from rain. Chapter 15 And then will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it, and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine-press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard than I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, it brought forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up. And I will break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste, it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, and behold, oppression, for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house, till there can be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts, of a truth many houses shall be desolate, and great and fair cities without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of a homer shall yield an ephah. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, 
that they may follow strong drink and continue until night and wine inflame them and the harp and the viol the tabret and pipe and wine are in their feasts but they regard not the work of the lord neither consider the operation of his hands therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it and the mean man shall be brought down and the mighty man shall be humbled and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled but the lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment and god that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness then shall the lambs feed after their manner and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with a cart rope that say let him make speed hasten his work that we may see it and let the counsel of the holy one of israel draw nigh and come that we may know it woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter woe unto the wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight woe unto the mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink who justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him therefore as the fire devoureth the stubble and the flame consumeth the chaff their roots shall be rottenness and their blossoms shall go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the lord of hosts and despised the word of the holy one of israel therefore is the anger of the lord kindled against his people and he hath stretched forth his hand against them and hath smitten them and the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still and he will lift up an ensign to the nations from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth and behold they shall come with speed swiftly none shall be weary nor stumble among them none shall slumber nor sleep neither shall the girdle of their loins be loosed nor the latchet of their shoes be broken whose arrows shall be sharp and all their bows bent and their horses hoofs shall be counted like flint and their wheels like a whirlwind their roaring like a lion they shall roar like young lions yea they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry away safe and none shall deliver and in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea and if they look unto the land behold darkness and sorrow and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof chapter sixteen in the year that king uzziah died i saw also the lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple above it stood the seraphim each one had six wings with twain he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the posts of the door moved at the voice of him that cried and the house filled with smoke then said i woe is unto me for i am undone because i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphim unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this has touched thy lips and thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged also i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us then i said here am i send me and he said go and tell this people hear ye indeed but they understood not 
and see ye indeed, but they perceived not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he said, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away, for there shall be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet there shall be a tenth, and they shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Chapter 17 and it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Ramaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved, and the heart of his people, as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shear Jashub thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto him, Take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and of the son of Ramalia. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, yea, the son of Tabeel. Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus resin. And within threescore and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramalia's son. If ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, ask it either in the depths or in the heights above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men, but will ye weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself shall give unto you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and to choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. The Lord shall bring upon thee, and upon thy people, and upon thy father's house, days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of Egypt, and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come, and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys, and in the holes of the rocks, and upon all thorns, and upon all bushes. In the same day shall the Lord shave with a razor that is hired by them beyond the river by the king of Assyria the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall also consume the beard. And it shall come to pass in that day a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep, and it shall come to pass, for the abundance of milk they shall give he shall eat butter, for butter and honey shall every one eat that is left in the land. And it shall come to pass in that day every place shall be where there were a thousand vines at a thousand silverlings, which shall be for briars and thorns. With arrows and with bows shall men come thither, because all the land shall become briars and thorns. And all hills that shall be digged with the mattock, 
There shall not come thither the fear of briars and thorns, but it shall be for the sending forth of oxen and the treading of lesser cattle. End of Second Nephi chapters twelve to seventeen. Recording by Tony Russell, Bend, Oregon. Second Nephi chapters eighteen through twenty three of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Second Nephi, chapters 18-23. to 23. Chapter 18 Moreover, the word of the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll, and write in it with a man's pen. Concerning Maher Shalal Hashbaz. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record, Uriah the priest, and Zechariah the son of Jeberkiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son, and said the Lord to me, Call his name Maher Shalal Hashbaz. For behold, the child shall not have knowledge to cry. My father and my mother, before the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spake also unto me, saying, Forasmuch as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh, that go softly, and rejoice in Rezin and Remaliah's son, now therefore behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels, and go over all his banks. And he shall pass through Judah, he shall overflow and go over, he shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breadth of thy land, O Emmanuel. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give ear all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not, a confederacy, to all to whom this people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall, and be broken, and be snared, and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel and from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to hear from the dead? To the law and to the testimony, and if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And they shall pass through it hardly bestead and hungry, and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves, and curse their king and their God, and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth, and behold trouble, and darkness, dimness of anguish, and shall be driven to darkness. Chapter 19 Nevertheless the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterwards did more grievously afflict by the way of the Red Sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, and increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden, and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, 
and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of government and peace there is no end, upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even for ever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent his word unto Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim, and all the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, The bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of resin against him, and join his enemies together. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, they shall not devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them, neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore will the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless or widows, for every one of them is a hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forests, and they shall mount up like the lifting up of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire, no man shall spare his brother. And he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied, and they shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh, they together shall be against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Chapter 20 Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness when they have prescribed, to turn away the needy from judgment, and to take away the right from the poor of my people, that widows may be their prey, and that they may rob the fatherless. And what will ye do in the day of visitation, and in the desolation which shall come from far? To whom will ye flee for help, and where will ye leave your glory? Without me they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, and the staff in their hand, is their indignation. I will send him against a hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil, and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. Howbeit he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but in his heart it is to destroy and cut off nations not a few. For he saith, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kalno as Carchemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand hath founded the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and to her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and upon Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria, and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand and by my wisdom I have done these things, for I am prudent, and I have moved the borders of the people, and have robbed their treasures, and I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. And my hand hath found as a nest the riches of the people, and as one gathereth eggs that are left have I gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or peeped. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? Shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? 
as if the rod should shake itself against him that lifted up, or as if the staff should lift up itself as if it were no wood. Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and shall burn and shall devour his thorns and his briars in one day, and shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field both body and soul, and they shall be as when a standard-bearer fainteth. And the rest of the trees of his forest shall be a few, and that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, yea, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return, the consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in all the land. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwellest in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian, he shall smite thee with a rod, and shall lift up his staff against thee, after the manner of Egypt. For yet a little while, and the indignation shall cease, and mine anger in their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him, according to the slaughter of Midian at the rock of Oreb. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder, and his yoke from off thy neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. He is come up to Aieth, he is passed to Migron, at Michmash he hath laid up his carriages. They are gone over the passage, they have taken up their lodging at Geba, Ramoth is afraid, Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up the voice, O daughter of Galim, cause it to be heard unto Laish, O poor Anathoth. Madmina is removed, the inhabitants of Gebim gathered themselves to flee. As yet shall he remain at Nob that day, he shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lop the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forests with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. Chapter 21 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the suckling shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people, to which shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people which shall be left, from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The envy of Ephraim shall also depart, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not envy Judah, and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. 
but they shall fly upon the shoulders of the Philistines towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea, and with his mighty wind he shall shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, and make men go over dry shod. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Chapter 22 And in that day thou shalt say, O Lord, I will praise thee. Though thou wast angry with me, thine anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For my Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Chapter 23 the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up the banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones, for mine anger is not upon them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of the multitude in the mountains like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdom of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the hosts of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, yea, the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid, pangs and sorrow shall take hold of them. They shall be amazed one at another, their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. He shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay down the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the gold wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place, in the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. And it shall be as the chaste roe, and as a sheep that no man taketh up, and they shall every man turn to his own people, and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is proud shall be thrust through, yea, and every one that is joined to the wicked shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver and gold, nor shall they delight in it. Their bows shall also dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children." And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldee's excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But the wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and the satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the island shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her day shall not be prolonged, for I will destroy her speedily, yea, for I will be merciful unto my people, but the wicked shall perish. End of Second Nephi chapters 18 to 23《Second Nephi》chapters 24 through 27 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Second Nephi. Chapter 24. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, yea, from far unto the ends of the earth, and they shall return to their lands of promise. And the house of Israel shall possess them, and the land of the Lord shall be for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives unto whom they were captives, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear, and from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve. And it shall come to pass in that day that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, and say, How hath the presser ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, the scepters of the rulers. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted, and none hindereth. The whole world is at rest, and is quiet, they break forth into singing. Yea, the fir-trees rejoice at thee, and also the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, the noise of thy vials is not heard, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and shall consider thee, and shall say, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? and made the world as a wilderness, and destroyed the cities thereof, and opened not the house of his prisoners? All the kings of the nations, yea, all of them, lie in glory, every one of them in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and the remnant of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword, that go down to the stones of the pit, as a carcass trodden under feet. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land, and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquities of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, and remnant, and son, and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, and pools of water, and I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. As I have proposed, so it shall stand. That I will bring the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him under foot. Then shall his yoke depart from off them, and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that is purposed upon the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations. For the Lord of hosts hath proposed, and who shall disannul? And his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? In the year that King Ahaz died was this burden. Rejoice not thou, whole Palestine, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken, for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. Howl, O gate! Cry, O city! 
Thou, whole Palestine, art dissolved, for there shall come from the north a smoke, and none shall be alone in his appointed times. What shall then answer the messengers of the nations, that the Lord hath founded Zion, and the poor of his people shall trust in it? Chapter 25 Now I, Nephi, do speak somewhat concerning the words which I have written, which have been spoken by the mouth of Isaiah. For behold, Isaiah spake many things which were hard for many of my people to understand, for they know not concerning the manner of prophesying among the Jews. For I, Nephi, have not taught them many things concerning the manner of the Jews, for their works were works of darkness, and their doings were doings of abominations. Wherefore I write unto my people all those things that shall receive hereafter these things which I write, that they may know the judgments of God, that they may come upon all nations according to the word which he hath spoken. Wherefore hearken, O my people, which are of the house of Israel, and give ear unto my words, for because the words of Isaiah are not plain unto you, nevertheless they are plain unto all those that are filled with the spirit of prophecy. But I give unto you a prophecy, according to the spirit which is in me. Wherefore I shall prophesy according to the plainness which hath been with me from the time that I came out from Jerusalem with my father. For behold, my soul delighteth in plainness unto my people, that they may learn. Yea, and my soul delighteth in the words of Isaiah, for I came out of Jerusalem, and my eyes hath beheld the things of the Jews, and I know that the Jews do understand the things of the prophets, and there is none other people that understand the things which were spoken unto the Jews like unto them, save it be that they are taught after the manner of the things of the Jews. But behold, I, Nephi, have not taught my children after the manner of the Jews, but behold, I of myself have dwelt at Jerusalem, wherefore I know concerning the regions round about, and I have made mention unto my children concerning the judgments of God which hath come to pass among the Jews, unto my children, according to all that which Isaiah hath spoken, and I do not write them. But behold, I proceed with mine own prophecy, according to my plainness, in the which I know that no man can err. Nevertheless, in the days that the prophecies of Isaiah shall be fulfilled, men shall know of a surety, at the times when they shall come to pass. Wherefore they are of worth unto the children of men, and he that supposeth that they are not, unto them will I speak particularly, and confine the words unto mine own people. For I know that they shall be of great worth unto them in the last days, for in that day shall they understand them. Wherefore, for their good have I written them. And as one generation hath been destroyed among the Jews because of iniquity, even so have they been destroyed from generation to generation according to their iniquities. And never hath any of them been destroyed, save it were foretold them by the prophets of the Lord. Wherefore it hath been told them concerning the destruction which should come upon them, immediately after my father left Jerusalem. Nevertheless they hardened their hearts, and according to my prophecy they have been destroyed, save it be those which are carried away captive into Babylon. And now this I speak because of the spirit which is in me, and, notwithstanding they have been carried away, they shall return again, and possess the land of Jerusalem, wherefore they shall be restored again to the land of their inheritance. But behold, they shall have wars, and rumors of wars, and when the day cometh that the only begotten of the Father, yea, even the Father of heaven and of earth, shall manifest himself unto them in the flesh, behold, they will reject him, because of their iniquities, and the hardness of their hearts, and the stiffness of their necks. For behold, they will crucify him, and after he is laid in a sepulchre for the space of three days, he shall rise from the dead with healing in his wings, and all those who shall believe on his name shall be saved in the kingdom of God. Wherefore my soul delighteth to prophesy concerning him, for I have seen his day, and my heart doth magnify his holy name. And behold, it shall come to pass that after the Messiah hath risen from the dead, and hath manifested himself unto his people, unto as many as will believe on his name, behold, Jerusalem shall be destroyed again, for woe unto them that fight against God and the people of his church. Wherefore the Jews shall be scattered among all nations, yea, and also Babylon shall be destroyed. Wherefore the Jews shall be scattered by other nations. And after they have been scattered, and the Lord God hath scourged them by other nations for the space of many generations, yea, even down from generation to generation, until they shall be persuaded to believe in Christ, the Son of God, and the atonement which is infinite for all mankind, and when that day shall come, that they shall believe in Christ, and worship the Father in his name, with pure hearts and clean hands, and look not forward any more for another Messiah, 
then at that time the day will come that it must needs be expedient that they should believe these things and the lord will set his hand again the second time to restore his people from their lost and fallen state wherefore he will proceed to do a marvellous work and a wonder among the children of men wherefore he shall bring forth his words unto them which words shall judge them at the last day for they shall be given them for a purpose of convincing them of the true messiah who was rejected by them and unto the convincing of them that they need not look forward any more for a messiah to come for there should not any come save it should be a false messiah which should deceive the people for there is save one messiah spoken of by the prophets and that messiah is he who should be rejected of the jews for according to the words of the prophets the messiah cometh in six hundred years from the time that my father left jerusalem according to the words of the prophets and also the word of the angel of god his name shall be jesus christ the son of god and now my brethren i have spoken plainly that ye cannot err and as the lord god liveth that brought israel up out of the land of egypt and gave unto moses power that he should heal the nations after they had been bitten by poisonous serpents if they would cast their eyes unto the serpent which he did raise up before them and also gave him power that he should smite the rock and the water should come forth yea behold i say unto you that as these things are true and as the lord god liveth there is none other name given under heaven save it be this jesus christ of which i have spoken whereby man can be saved wherefore for this cause hath the lord promised unto me that these things which i write shall be kept and preserved and handed down unto my seed from generation to generation that the promise may be fulfilled unto joseph that his seed should never perish as long as the earth should stand wherefore these things shall go from generation to generation as long as the earth shall stand and they shall go according to the will and pleasure of god and the nations who shall possess them shall be judged of them according to the words which are written for we labor diligently to write to persuade our children and also our brethren to believe in christ and to be reconciled to god for we know that it is by his grace that we are saved after all we can do and notwithstanding we believe in christ we keep the law of moses and look forward with steadfastness unto christ until the law shall be fulfilled for for this end was the law given wherefore the law hath become dead unto us and we are made alive in christ because of our faith yet we keep the law because of the commandments and we talk of christ we rejoice in christ we preach of christ we prophesy of christ and we write according to our prophecies that our children may know to what source they may look for a remission of their sins wherefore we speak concerning the law that our children may know the deadness of the law and they knowing the deadness of the law may look forward unto that life which is in christ and know for what end the law was given and after the law is fulfilled in christ that they need not harden their hearts against him when the law ought to be done away and now behold my people ye are a stiff-necked people wherefore i have spoken plainly unto you that ye cannot misunderstand and the words which i have spoken shall stand as a testimony against you for they are sufficient to teach any man the right way for the right way is to believe in christ and deny him not for by denying him ye also deny the prophets and the law and now behold i say unto you that the right way is to believe in christ and deny him not and christ is the holy one of israel wherefore ye must bow down before him and worship him with all your might mind and strength and your whole soul and if ye do this ye shall in no wise be cast out and inasmuch as it shall be expedient ye must keep the performances and ordinances of god until the law shall be fulfilled which is given unto moses chapter twenty six and after christ shall have risen from the dead he shall show himself unto you my children and my beloved brethren and the words which he shall speak unto you shall be the law which ye shall do for behold i say unto you that i have beheld that many generations shall pass away and there shall be great wars and contentions among my people and after the messiah shall come there shall be signs given unto my people of his birth and also of his death and resurrection and great and terrible shall that day be unto the wicked for they shall perish and they shall perish because they cast out the prophets and the saints and stone them and slay them wherefore the cry of the blood of the saints shall ascend up to god from the ground against them wherefore all those who are proud and that do wickedly the day that cometh shall burn them up saith the lord of hosts for they shall be a stubble 
and they that kill the prophets and the saints the depths of the earth shall swallow them up saith the lord of hosts and the mountains shall cover them and whirlwind shall carry them away and buildings shall fall upon them and crush them to pieces and grind them to powder and they shall be visited with thunderings and lightnings and earthquakes and all manner of destructions for the fire of the anger of the lord shall be kindled against them and they shall be a stubble and the day that cometh shall consume them saith the lord of hosts O oh, the pain and the anguish of my soul for the loss of the slain of my people for i nephi have seen it and it well nigh consumeth me before the presence of the lord but i must cry unto my god thy ways are just but behold the righteous that hearken unto the words of the prophets and destroy them not but look forward unto christ with steadfastness for the signs which are given notwithstanding all persecution behold they are they which shall not perish but the son of righteousness shall appear unto them and he shall heal them and they shall have peace with him until three generations shall have passed away and many of the fourth generation shall have passed away in righteousness and when these things have passed away a speedy destruction cometh unto my people for notwithstanding the pains of my soul i have seen it wherefore i know that it shall come to pass and they shall sell themselves for naught for for the reward of their pride and their foolishness they shall reap destruction for because they yield unto the devil and choose works of darkness rather than light therefore they must go down to hell for the spirit of the lord will not always strive with man and when the spirit ceaseth to strive with man then cometh speedy destruction and this grieveth my soul and as i spake concerning the convincing of the jews that jesus is the very christ it must needs be that the gentiles be convinced also that jesus is the christ the eternal god and that he manifesteth himself unto all those who believe in him by the power of the holy ghost yea unto every nation kindred tongue and people working mighty miracles signs and wonders among the children of men according to their faith but behold i prophesy unto you concerning the last days concerning the days when the lord god shall bring these things forth unto the children of men after my seed and the seed of my brethren shall have dwindled in unbelief and shall have been smitten by the gentiles yea after the lord god shall have camped against them round about and shall have laid siege against them with the mount and raised forts against them and after they shall have been brought down low in the dust even that they are not yet the words of the righteous shall be written and the prayers of the faithful shall be heard and all those who have dwindled in unbelief shall not be forgotten for those who shall be destroyed shall speak unto them out of the ground and their speech shall be low out of the dust and their voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit for the lord god will give unto him power that he may whisper concerning them even as it were out of the ground and their speech shall whisper out of the dust for thus saith the lord god they shall write the things which shall be done among them and they shall be written and sealed up in a book and those who have dwindled in unbelief shall not have them for they seek to destroy the things of god wherefore as those who have been destroyed have been destroyed speedily and the multitude of their terrible ones shall be as chaff that passeth away yea thus saith the lord god it shall be at an instant suddenly and it shall come to pass that those who have dwindled in unbelief shall be smitten by the hand of the gentiles and the gentiles are lifted up in the pride of their eyes and have stumbled because of the greatness of their stumbling block that they have built up many churches nevertheless they put down the power and miracles of god and preach up unto themselves their own wisdom and their own learning that they may get gain and grind upon the face of the poor and there are many churches built up which cause envyings and strifes and malice and there are also secret combinations even as in times of old according to the combinations of the devil for he is the founder of all these things yea the founder of murder and works of darkness yea and he leadeth them by the neck with a flaxen cord until he bindeth them with his strong cords for ever for behold my beloved brethren i say unto you that the lord god worketh not in darkness he doeth not anything save it be for the benefit of the world for he loveth the world even that he layeth down his own life that he may draw all men unto him wherefore he commandeth none that they shall not partake of his salvation behold doth he cry unto any saying depart from me behold i say unto you nay but he saith come unto me all ye ends of the earth buy milk and honey without money and without price behold hath he commanded any that they should depart out of the synagogues or out of the houses of worship 
Behold, I say unto you, Nay. Hath he commanded any that they should not partake of his salvation? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. But he hath given it free for all men, and he hath commanded his people that they should persuade all men to repentance. Behold, hath the Lord commanded any that they should not partake of his goodness? Behold, I say unto you, Nay. But all men are privileged, the one like unto the other, and none are forbidden. He commandeth that there shall be no priestcrafts. For behold, priestcrafts are that men preach, and set themselves up for a light unto the world, that they may get gain and praise of the world, but they seek not the welfare of Zion. Behold, the Lord hath forbidden this thing. Wherefore, the Lord God hath given a commandment that all men should have charity, which charity is love, and except they should have charity, they were nothing. Wherefore, if they should have charity, they would not suffer the laborer in Zion to perish. But the laborer in Zion shall labor for Zion. If they labor for money, they shall perish. And again the Lord God hath commanded that men should not murder, that they should not lie, that they should not steal, that they should not take the name of the Lord their God in vain, that they should not envy, that they should not have malice, that they should not contend one with another, that they should not commit whoredoms, and that they should do none of these things, for whoso doeth them shall perish. For none of these iniquities come of the Lord, for he doeth that which is good among the children of men, and he doeth nothing save it be plain unto the children of men, and he inviteth them all to come unto him and partake of his goodness, and he denieth none that come unto him, black and white, bond and free, male and female, and he remembereth the heathen, and all are alike unto God, both Jew and Gentile. Chapter 27 But behold, in the last days, or in the days of the Gentiles, yea, behold, all the nations of the Gentiles, and also the Jews, both those who shall come upon this land, and those who shall be upon other lands, yea, even upon all the lands of the earth, behold, they will be drunken with iniquity, and all manner of abominations. And when that day shall come, that they shall be visited of the Lord of hosts, with thunder, and with earthquake, and with a great noise, and with storm, and with tempest, and with the flame of devouring fire. And all the nations that fight against Zion, and that distress her, shall be as a dream of a night vision. Yea, it shall be unto them even as a hungry man which dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he awaketh, and his soul is empty, or like unto a thirsty man which dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul hath appetite. Yea, even so shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. For behold, all ye that doeth iniquity, stay yourselves, and wonder, for ye shall cry out, and cry. Yea, ye shall be drunken, but not with wine. Ye stagger, but not with strong drink. For behold, the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, for behold, ye have closed your eyes, and ye have rejected the prophets, and your rulers, and the seers hath he covered because of your iniquity. And it shall come to pass that the Lord God shall bring forth unto you the words of a book, and they shall be the words of them which have slumbered. And behold, the book shall be sealed, and in the book shall be a revelation from God, from the beginning of the world to the ending thereof. Wherefore, because of the things which are sealed up, the things which are sealed up shall not be delivered in the day of wickedness and abominations of the people, wherefore the book shall be kept from them. But the book shall be delivered unto a man, and he shall deliver the words of the book, which are the words of those who have slumbered in the dust, and he shall deliver these words unto another. But the words which are sealed he shall not deliver, neither shall he deliver the book, for the book shall be sealed by the power of God, and the revelation which was sealed shall be kept in the book until the own due time of the Lord, that they may come forth. For behold, they reveal all things from the foundation of the world unto the end thereof. And the day cometh that the words of the book which were sealed shall be read upon the housetops, and they shall be read by the power of Christ, and all things shall be revealed unto the children of men which ever have been among the children of men, and which ever will be even unto the end of the earth. Wherefore, at the day when the book shall be delivered unto the man of whom I have spoken, the book shall be hid from the eyes of the world, and that the eyes of none shall behold it, save it be that three witnesses shall behold it, by the power of God, besides him to whom the book shall be delivered, and they shall testify to the truth of the book and the things therein. 
and there is none other which shall view it save it be a few according to the will of god to bear testimony of his word unto the children of men for the lord god hath said that the words of the faithful should speak as if it were from the dead wherefore the lord god will proceed to bring forth the words of the book and the mouth of as many witnesses as seemeth him good will establish his word and woe be unto him that rejecteth the word of god but behold it shall come to pass that the lord god shall say unto him to whom he shall deliver the book take these words which are not sealed and deliver them to another that he may show them unto the learned saying read this i pray thee and the learned shall say bring hither the book and i will read them and now because of the glory of the world and to get gain will they say this and not for the glory of god and the man shall say i cannot bring the book for it is sealed then shall the learned say i cannot read it wherefore it shall come to pass that the lord god will deliver again the book and the words thereof to him that is not learned and the man that is not learned shall say i am not learned then shall the lord god say unto him the learned shall not read them for they have rejected them and i am unable to do mine own work wherefore thou shalt read the words which i shall give unto thee touch not the things which are sealed for i will bring them forth in mine own due time for i will show unto the children of men that i am able to do mine own work wherefore when thou hast read the words which i have commanded thee and obtained the witnesses which i have promised unto thee then shalt thou seal up the book again and hide it up unto me that i may preserve the words which thou hast not read until i shall see fit in mine own wisdom to reveal all things unto the children of men for behold i am god and i am a god of miracles and i will show unto the world that i am the same yesterday today and for ever and I work not among the children of men, save it be according to their faith. And again it shall come to pass that the Lord shall say unto him that shall read the words that shall be delivered him, Forasmuch as this people draw near unto me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Therefore I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, yea, a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise and learned shall perish, and the understanding of their prudence shall be hid. And woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark, and they say, Who seeth us, and who knoweth us? And they also say, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. But behold, I will show unto them, saith the Lord of hosts, that I know all their works. For shall the work say of him that made it, He made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, He had no understanding? But behold, saith the Lord of hosts, I will show unto the children of men that it is yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness and the meek shall also increase and their joy shall be in the lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the holy one of israel for assuredly as the lord liveth they shall see that the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off and they that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught therefore thus saith the lord who redeemed abraham concerning the house of jacob Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of my hands, in the midst of them, shall they sanctify my name, and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding, and they that murmured shall learn doctrine. End of Second Nephi chapters 24-27 through 27. Second Nephi chapters 28 through 33 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Corey Osborne. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Second Nephi chapter 28. And now, behold, my brethren, I have spoken unto you, according as the Spirit hath constrained me. 
wherefore i know that they must surely come to pass and the things which shall be written out of the book shall be of great worth unto the children of men and especially unto our seed which is a remnant of the house of israel for it shall come to pass in that day that the churches which are built up and not unto the lord when the one shall say unto the other behold i am the lord's and the others shall say i i am the lord's and thus shall every one say that hath built up churches and not unto the lord and they shall contend one with another and their priests shall contend one with another and they shall teach with their learning and deny the holy ghost which giveth utterance and they deny the power of god the holy one of israel and they say unto the people hearken unto us and hear ye our precept for behold there is no god today for the lord and the redeemer hath done his work and he hath given his power unto men behold hearken ye unto my precept if they shall say there is a miracle wrought by the hand of the lord believe it not for this day he is not a god of miracles he hath done his work yea and there shall be many which shall say eat drink and be merry for tomorrow we die and it shall be well with us and there shall also be many which shall say eat drink and be merry nevertheless fear god he will justify in committing a little sin yea lie a little take the advantage of one because of his words dig a pit for thy neighbour there is no harm in this and do all these things for tomorrow we die and if it so be that we are guilty god will beat us with a few stripes and at last we shall be saved in the kingdom of god yea and there shall be many which shall teach after this manner false and vain and foolish doctrines and shall be puffed up in their hearts and shall seek deep to hide their counsels from the lord and their works shall be in the dark and the blood of the saints shall cry from the ground against them yea they have all gone out of the way they have become corrupted because of pride and because of false teachers and false doctrine their churches have become corrupted and their churches are lifted up because of pride they are puffed up they rob the poor because of their fine sanctuaries they rob the poor because of their fine clothing and they persecute the meek and the poor in heart because of their pride they are puffed up they wear stiff necks and high heads yea and because of pride and wickedness and abominations and whoredoms they have all gone astray save it be a few who are the humble followers of christ nevertheless they are led that in many instances they do err because they are taught by the precepts of men o oh, the wise and the learned and the rich that are puffed up in the pride of their hearts and all those who preach false doctrines and all those who commit whoredoms and pervert the right way of the lord woe 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 be unto them saith the lord god almighty for they shall be thrust down to hell woe unto them that turn aside the just for a thing of naught and revile against that which is good and say that it is of no worth for the day shall come that the lord god will speedily visit the inhabitants of the earth and in that day that they are fully ripe in iniquity they shall perish but behold if the inhabitants of the earth shall repent of their wickedness and abominations they shall not be destroyed saith the lord of hosts but behold that great and abominable church the whore of all the earth must tumble to the earth and great must be the fall thereof for the kingdom of the devil must shake and they which belong to it must needs be stirred up unto repentance or the devil will grasp them with his everlasting chains and they be stirred up to anger and perish for behold at that day shall he rage in the hearts of the children of men and stir them up to anger against that which is good and others he will pacify and lull them away into a carnal security that they shall say all is well in zion yea zion prospereth all is well and thus the devil cheateth their souls and leadeth them away carefully down to hell and behold others he flattereth away and telleth them there is no hell and he saith unto them i am no devil for there is none 
and thus he whispereth in their ears until he grasps them with his awful chains from whence there is no deliverance yea they are grasped with death and hell and death and hell and the devil and all that have been seized therewith must stand before the throne of god and be judged according to their works from whence they must go into the place prepared for them even a lake of fire and brimstone which is endless torment therefore woe be unto him that is at ease in zion woe be unto him that crieth all is well yea woe be unto him that hearkeneth unto the precepts of men and denieth the power of god and the gift of the holy ghost yea woe be unto him that saith we have received and we need no more and in fine woe unto all those who tremble and are angry because of the truth of god for behold he that is built upon the rock receiveth it with gladness and he that is built upon a sandy foundation trembleth lest he should fall woe be unto him that shall say we have received the word of god and we need no more of the word of god for we have enough for behold thus saith the lord god i will give unto the children of men line upon line precept upon precept here a little and there a little and blessed are those who hearken unto my precepts and lend an ear unto my counsel for they shall learn wisdom for unto him that receiveth i will give more and from them that shall say we have enough from them shall be taken away even that which they have cursed is he that putteth his trust in man or maketh flesh his arm or shall hearken unto the precepts of men save their precepts shall be given by the power of the holy ghost woe be unto the gentiles saith the lord god of hosts for notwithstanding i shall lengthen out my arm unto them from day to day they will deny me nevertheless i will be merciful unto them saith the lord god if they will repent and come unto me for mine arm is lengthened out all the day long saith the lord god of hosts second nephi chapter twenty nine but behold there shall be many at that day when i shall proceed to do a marvellous work among them that i may remember the covenants which i have made unto the children of men that i may set my hand again the second time to recover my people which are of the house of israel and also that i may remember the promises which i have made unto thee nephi and also unto thy father that i would remember your seed and that the words of your seed should proceed forth out of my mouth unto your seed and my words shall hiss forth unto the ends of the earth for a standard unto my people which are of the house of israel and because my words shall hiss forth many of the gentiles shall say a bible a bible we have got a bible and there cannot be any more bible but thus saith the lord god o oh, fools they shall have a bible and it shall proceed forth from the jews mine ancient covenant people and what think they the jews for the bible which they receive from them yea what do the gentiles mean do they remember the travails and the pains and the labors of the jews and their diligence unto me in bringing forth salvation unto the gentiles o ye gentiles have ye remembered the jews mine ancient covenant people nay but ye have cursed them and have hated them and have not sought to recover them but behold i will return all these things upon your own heads for i the lord have not forgotten my people thou fool that shall say a bible we have got a bible and we need no more bible have ye obtained a bible save it were by the jews know ye not that there are more nations than one know ye not that i the lord your god have created all men and that i remember those who are upon the isles of the sea and that i rule in the heavens above and in the earth beneath and i bring forth my word unto the children of men yea even upon all the nations of the earth wherefore murmur ye because that ye shall receive more of my word know ye not that the testimony of two nations is a witness unto you that i am god that i remember one nation like unto another wherefore i speak the same words unto one nation like unto another 
and when the two nations shall run together the testimony of the two nations shall run together also and i do this that i may prove unto many that i am the same yesterday today and for ever and that i speak forth my words according to mine own pleasure and because that i have spoken one word ye need not suppose that i cannot speak another for my work is not yet finished neither shall it be until the end of man neither from that time henceforth and for ever wherefore because that ye have a bible ye need not suppose that it contains all my words neither need ye suppose that i have not caused more to be written for i command all men both in the east and in the west and in the north and in the south and in the islands of the sea that they shall write the words which i speak unto them for out of the books which shall be written i will judge the world every man according to their works according to that which is written for behold i shall speak unto the jews and they shall write it and i shall also speak unto the nephites and they shall write it and i shall also speak unto the other tribes of the house of israel which i have led away and they shall write it and i shall also speak unto all nations of the earth and they shall write it and it shall come to pass that the jews shall have the words of the nephites and the nephites have the words of the jews and the nephites and the jews shall have the words of the lost tribes of israel and the lost tribes of israel shall have the words of the nephites and the jews and it shall come to pass that my people which are of the house of israel shall be gathered home unto the lands of their possessions and my word shall also be gathered in one and i will show unto them that fight against my word and against my people who are of the house of israel that i am god and that i covenanted with abraham that i would remember his seed for ever second nephi chapter thirty and now behold my beloved brethren i would speak unto you for i nephi would not suffer that ye should suppose that ye are more righteous than the gentiles shall be for behold except ye shall keep the commandments of god ye shall all likewise perish and because of the words which have been spoken ye need not suppose that the gentiles are utterly destroyed for behold i say unto you that as many of the gentiles as will repent are the covenant people of the lord and as many of the jews as will not repent shall be cast off for the lord covenanteth with none save it be with them that repent and believe in his son who is the holy one of israel and now i would prophesy somewhat more concerning the jews and the gentiles for after the book which i have spoken shall come forth and be written unto the gentiles and sealed up again unto the lord there shall be many which shall believe the words which are written and they shall carry them forth unto the remnant of our seed and then shall the remnant of our seed know concerning us how that we came out from jerusalem and that they are descendants of the jews and the gospel of jesus christ shall be declared among them wherefore they shall be restored unto the knowledge of their fathers and also the knowledge of jesus christ which was had among their fathers and then shall they rejoice for they shall know that it is a blessing unto them from the hand of god and their scales of darkness shall begin to fall from their eyes and many generations shall not pass away among them save they shall be a pure and delightsome people and it shall come to pass that the jews which are scattered also shall begin to believe in christ and they shall begin to gather in upon the face of the land and as many as shall believe in christ shall also become a delightsome people and it shall come to pass that the lord god shall commence his work among all nations kindreds tongues and people to bring about the restoration of his people upon the earth and with righteousness shall the lord god judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked for the time speedily cometh that the lord god shall cause a great division among the people and the wicked will he destroy and he will spare his people yea even if it so be that he must destroy the wicked by fire and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins and then shall the wolf dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together 
and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Wherefore, the things of all nations shall be made known, yea, all things shall be made known unto the children of men. There is nothing which is secret, save it shall be revealed. There is no work of darkness, save it shall be made manifest in the light. And there is nothing which is sealed upon the earth, save it shall be loosed. Wherefore, all things which have been revealed unto the children of men shall at that day be revealed. And Satan shall have power over the hearts of the children of men no more, for a long time, and now, my beloved brethren, I make an end of my sayings. Second Nephi, chapter 31 And now I, Nephi, make an end of my prophesying unto you, my beloved brethren. And I cannot write but a few things, which I know must surely come to pass. Neither can I write but a few of the words of my brother Jacob. Wherefore, the things which I have written sufficeth me save it be a few words which I must speak concerning the doctrine of Christ. Wherefore, I shall speak unto you plainly, according to the plainness of my prophesying. For my soul delighteth in plainness, for after this manner doth the Lord God work among the children of men. For the Lord God giveth light unto the understanding, for he speaketh unto men according to their language, unto their understanding. Wherefore, I would that ye should remember that I have spoken unto you concerning that prophet which the Lord showed unto me, that should baptize the Lamb of God, which should take away the sins of the world. And now, if the Lamb of God, he being holy, should have need to be baptized by water to fulfill all righteousness, oh then, how much more need have we, being unholy, to be baptized, yea, even by water, and now I would ask of you, my beloved brethren, wherein the Lamb of God did fulfill all righteousness in being baptized by water. Know ye not that he was holy? But notwithstanding he being holy, he showeth unto the children of men that, according to the flesh, he humbleth himself before the Father, and witnesseth unto the Father that he would be obedient unto him in keeping his commandments. Wherefore, after he was baptized with water, the Holy Ghost ascended upon him in the form of a dove. And again it showeth unto the children of men the straightness of the path, and the narrowness of the gate, by which they should enter, he having set the example before them. And he said unto the children of men, Follow thou me. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, can we follow Jesus, save we shall be willing to keep the commandments of the Father? And the Father said, Repent ye, repent ye, and be baptized in the name of my beloved Son. And also the voice of the Son came unto me, saying, He that is baptized in my name, to him will the Father give the Holy Ghost, like unto me. Wherefore, follow me, and do the things which ye have seen me do. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, I know that if ye shall follow the Son, with full purpose of heart, acting no hypocrisy and no deception before God, but with real intent, repenting of your sins, witnessing unto the Father that ye are willing to take upon you the name of Christ by baptism, yea, by following your Lord and your Saviour down into the water, according to his word, behold, then shall ye receive the Holy Ghost, yea, then cometh the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost, and then can ye speak with the tongue of angels, and shout praises unto the Holy One of Israel. But behold, my beloved brethren, thus came the voice of the Son unto me, saying, After ye have repented of your sins, and witnessed unto the Father that ye are willing to keep my commandments by the baptism of water, and have received the baptism of fire and of the Holy Ghost, and can speak with a new tongue, yea, even with the tongue of angels, and after this should deny me, it would have been better for you that ye had not known me. 
and i heard a voice from the father saying yea the words of my beloved are true and faithful he that endureth to the end the same shall be saved and now my beloved brethren i know by this that unless a man shall endure to the end in following the example of the son of the living god he cannot be saved wherefore do the things which i have told you i have seen that your lord and your redeemer should do for for this cause have they been shown unto me that ye might know the gate by which ye should enter for the gate by which ye should enter is repentance and baptism by water and then cometh the remission of your sins by fire and by the holy ghost and then are ye in this straight and narrow path which leads to eternal life yea ye have entered in by the gate ye have done according to the commandments of the father and the son and ye have received the holy ghost which witnesses of the father and the son unto the fulfilling of the promise which he hath made that if ye entered in by the way ye should receive and now my beloved brethren after ye have gotten into this straight and narrow path i would ask if all is done behold i say unto you nay for ye have not come this far save it were by the word of christ with unshaken faith in him relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save wherefore ye must press forward with a steadfastness in christ having a perfect brightness of hope and a love of god and of all men wherefore if ye shall press forward feasting upon the word of christ and endure to the end behold thus saith the father ye shall have eternal life and now behold my beloved brethren this is the way and there is none other way nor name given under heaven whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of god and now behold this is the doctrine of christ and the only and true doctrine of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost which is one god without end amen second nephi chapter 32 and now behold my beloved brethren i suppose that ye ponder somewhat in your hearts concerning that which ye should do after ye have entered in by the way but behold why do you ponder these things in your hearts do you not remember that i said unto you that after ye have received the holy ghost ye could speak with the tongue of angels and now how could ye speak with the tongue of angels save it were by the holy ghost angels speak by the power of the holy ghost wherefore they speak the words of christ wherefore i said unto you feast upon the words of christ for behold the words of christ will tell you all things which ye should do wherefore now after i have spoken these words if ye cannot understand them it will be because ye ask not neither do ye knock wherefore ye are not brought into the light but must perish in the dark for behold again i say unto you that if ye will enter in by the way and receive the holy ghost it will show unto you all things which ye should do behold this is the doctrine of christ and there will be no more doctrine given until after he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh and when he shall manifest himself unto you in the flesh the things which he shall say unto you shall ye observe to do and now i nephi cannot say more the spirit stoppeth mine utterance and i am left to mourn because of the unbelief and the wickedness and the ignorance and the stiff nakedness of men for they will not search knowledge nor understand great knowledge when it is given unto them in plainness even as plain as word can be and now my beloved brethren i perceive that ye ponder still in your hearts and it grieveth me that i must speak concerning this thing for if ye would hearken unto the spirit which teacheth a man to pray ye would know that ye must pray for the evil spirit teacheth not a man to pray but teacheth him that he must not pray but behold i say unto you that ye must pray always and not faint that ye must not perform anything unto the lord save in the first place ye shall pray unto the father in the name of christ that he will consecrate thy performance unto thee that thy performance may be for the welfare of thy soul second nephi chapter thirty three 
and now i nephi cannot write all the things which were taught among my people neither am i mighty in writing like unto speaking for when a man speaketh by the power of the holy ghost the power of the holy ghost carrieth it unto the hearts of the children of men but behold there are many that harden their hearts against the holy spirit that it hath no place in them wherefore they cast many things away which are written and esteem them as things of naught but i nephi have written what i have written and i esteem it as of great worth and especially unto my people for i pray continually for them by day and mine eyes water my pillow by night because of them and i cry unto my god in faith and i know that he will hear my cry and i know that the lord god will consecrate my prayers for the gain of my people and the words which i have written in weakness will be made strong unto them for it persuadeth them to do good and maketh known unto them of their fathers and it speaketh of jesus and persuadeth them to believe in him and to endure to the end which is life eternal and it speaketh harshly against sin according to the plainness of the truth wherefore no man will be angry at the words which i have written save he shall be of the spirit of the devil i glory in plainness i glory in truth i glory in my jesus for he hath redeemed my soul from hell i have charity for my people and great faith in christ that i shall meet many souls spotless at his judgment seat i have charity for the jew i say jew because i mean them from whence i came i also have charity for the gentiles but behold for none of these can i hope except they shall be reconciled unto christ and enter into the narrow gate and walk in the straight path which leads to life and continue in the path until the end of the day of probation and now my beloved brethren and also jew and all ye ends of the earth hearken unto these words and believe in christ and if ye believe not in these words believe in christ and if ye shall believe in christ ye will believe in these words for they are the words of christ and he hath given them unto me and they shall teach all men that they should do good and if they are not the words of christ judge ye for christ will show unto you with power and great glory that they are his words at the last day and you and i shall stand face to face before his bar and ye shall know that i have been commanded of him to write these things notwithstanding my weakness and i pray the father in the name of christ that many of us if not all may be saved in his kingdom at that great and last day and now my beloved brethren all those who are of the house of israel and all ye ends of the earth i speak unto you as the voice of one crying from the dust farewell until that great day shall come and you that will not partake of the goodness of god and respect the words of the jews and also my words and the words which shall proceed forth out of the mouth of the lamb of god behold i bid you an everlasting farewell for these words shall condemn you at the last day for what i seal on earth shall be brought against you at the judgment bar for thus hath the lord commanded me and i must obey amen end of second nephi chapters 28 through 33 recording by cory osborne jacob chapters 1 through 4 of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by jared hess the book of mormon translated by joseph smith jacob chapters 1 through 4 jacob chapter 1 for behold it came to pass that fifty and five years had passed away from the time that lehi left jerusalem wherefore nephi gave me jacob a commandment concerning the small plates upon which these things are engraven and he gave me jacob a commandment that i should write upon these plates a few of the things which i consider to be most precious that i should not touch save it were lightly concerning the history of this people which are called the people of nephi for he said that the history of his people should be engraven upon his other plates 
and that I should preserve these plates, and hand them down unto my seed from generation to generation. And if there were preaching which was sacred, or revelation which was great, or prophesying, that I should engraven the heads of them upon these plates, and touch upon them as much as it were possible for Christ's sake, and for the sake of our people. For because of faith and great anxiety, it truly had been made manifest unto us concerning our people what things should happen unto them. And we also had many revelations, and the spirit of much prophecy. Wherefore we knew of Christ and his kingdom which should come. Wherefore we labored diligently among our people, that we might persuade them to come unto Christ, and partake of the goodness of God, that they might enter into his rest, lest by any means he should swear in his wrath they should not enter in, as in the provocation in the days of temptation, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Wherefore we would to God that we could persuade all men not to rebel against God, to provoke him to anger, but that all men would believe in Christ, and view his death, and suffer his cross, and bear the shame of the world. Wherefore I, Jacob, take it upon me to fulfill the commandment of my brother Nephi. Now Nephi began to be old, and he saw that he must soon die. Wherefore he appointed a man to be a king and a ruler over his people now, according to the reigns of the kings. The people having loved Nephi exceedingly, he having been a great protector for them, having wielded the sword of Laban in their defense, and having labored in all his days for their welfare. Wherefore the people were desirous to retain in remembrance his name, and whoso should reign in his stead were called by the people second Nephi, third Nephi, and so forth, according to the reigns of the kings, and thus they were called by the people, let them be of whatever name they would. And it came to pass that Nephi died. Now the people, which were not Lamanites, were Nephites. Nevertheless they were called Nephites, Jacobites, Josephites, Zoramites, Lamanites, Lemuelites, and Ishmaelites. But I, Jacob, shall not hereafter distinguish them by these names, but I shall call them Lamanites that seek to destroy the people of Nephi. And those who are friendly to Nephi I shall call Nephites, or the people of Nephi, according to the reigns of the kings. And now it came to pass that the people of Nephi, under the reign of the second king, began to grow hard in their hearts, and indulged themselves somewhat in wicked practices, such as like unto David of old, desiring many wives and concubines, and also Solomon his son. Yea, and they also began to search much gold and silver, and began to be lifted up somewhat in pride. Wherefore I, Jacob, gave unto them these words, as I taught them in the temple, having first obtained mine errand from the Lord. For I, Jacob, and my brother Joseph, had been consecrated priests and teachers of this people by the hand of Nephi, and we did magnify our office unto the Lord, taking upon us the responsibility, answering the sins of the people upon our own heads, if we did not teach them the word of God with all diligence. Wherefore, by laboring with our might, their blood might not come upon our garments. Otherwise their blood would come upon our garments, and we would not be found spotless at the last day. Jacob, Chapter 2 The words which Jacob, the brother of Nephi, spake unto the people of Nephi after the death of Nephi. Now, my beloved brethren, I, Jacob, according to the responsibility which I am under to God, to magnify mine office with soberness, and that I might rid my garments of your sins. I come up into the temple this day, that I might declare unto you the word of God. And ye yourselves know that I have hitherto been diligent in the office of my calling. But I this day am weighed down with much more desire and anxiety for the welfare of your souls than I have hitherto been. For behold, as yet ye have been obedient unto the word of the Lord which I have given unto you, but behold, hearken ye unto me, and know that by the help of the all-powerful Creator of heaven and earth, I can tell you concerning your thoughts, how that ye are beginning to labor in sin, which sin appeareth very abominable unto me, yea, and abominable unto God. Yea, it grieveth my soul, and causeth me to shrink with shame before the presence of my Maker, that I must testify unto you concerning the wickedness of your hearts. And also it grieveth me, that I must use so much boldness of speech concerning you before your wives and your children, 
many of whose feelings are exceedingly tender and chaste and delicate before God, which thing is pleasing unto God. And it supposeth me that they have come up hither to hear the pleasing word of God, yea, the word which healeth the wounded soul. Wherefore it burdeneth my soul, that I should be constrained because of the strict commandment which I have received from God, to admonish you according to your crimes, to enlarge the wounds of those who are already wounded, instead of consoling and healing their wounds, and those who have not been wounded, instead of feasting upon the pleasing word of God, have daggers placed to pierce their souls, and wound their delicate minds. But, notwithstanding, the greatness of the task I must do according to the strict commands of God, and tell you concerning your wickedness and abominations in the presence of the pure in heart, and the broken heart, and under the glance of the piercing eye of the Almighty God. Wherefore I must tell you the truth according to the plainness of the word of God. For behold, as I inquired of the Lord, thus came the word unto me, saying, Jacob, get thou up into the temple on the morrow, and declare the word which I shall give thee unto this people. And now, behold, my brethren, this is the word which I declare unto you, that many of you have begun to search for gold and for silver, and for all manner of precious ores, in the which this land, which is a land of promise unto you, and to your seed, doth abound most plentifully. And the hand of providence hath smiled upon you most pleasingly, that you have obtained many riches, and because some of you have obtained more abundantly than that of your brethren, ye are lifted up in the pride of your hearts, and wear stiff necks and high heads because of the costliness of your apparel, and persecute your brethren because ye suppose that ye are better than they. And now, my brethren, do ye suppose that God justifieth you in this thing? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, but he condemneth you, and if ye persist in these things, his judgments must speedily come unto you. Oh, that he would show you, that he can pierce you, and with one glance of his eye he can smite you to the dust. Oh, that he would rid you from this iniquity and abomination. And oh, that ye would listen unto the word of his commands, and let not this pride of your hearts destroy your souls. Think of your brethren like unto yourselves and be familiar with all, and free with your substance, that they may be rich like unto you. But before ye seek for riches, seek ye for the kingdom of God. And after ye have obtained a hope in Christ, ye shall obtain riches if ye seek them, and ye will seek them for the intent to do good, to clothe the naked, and to feed the hungry, and to liberate the captive, and administer relief to the sick and the afflicted. And now, my brethren, I have spoken unto you concerning pride, and to those of you which have afflicted your neighbor, and persecuted him, because ye were proud in your hearts of the things which God hath given you, what say ye of it? Do ye not suppose that such things are abominable unto him who created all flesh? And the one being is as precious in his sight as the other, and all flesh is of the dust, and for the self-same end hath he created them that they should keep his commandments, and glorify him forever. And now I make an end of speaking unto you concerning this pride. And were it not that I must speak unto you concerning a grosser crime, my heart would rejoice exceedingly because of you. But the word of God burdens me because of your grosser crimes. For behold, thus saith the Lord, This people begin to wax in iniquity, they understand not the scriptures, for they seek to excuse themselves in committing whoredoms, because of the things which were written concerning David and Solomon his son. Behold, David and Solomon truly had many wives and concubines, which thing was abominable before me, saith the Lord. Wherefore thus saith the Lord, I have led this people forth out of the land of Jerusalem, by the power of mine arm, that I might raise up unto me a righteous branch, from the fruit of the loins of Joseph. Wherefore I, the Lord God, will not suffer that this people shall do like unto them of old. Wherefore, my brethren, hear me, and hearken to the word of the Lord, for there shall not any man among you have, save it be one wife, and concubines he shall have none. For I, the Lord God, delight in the chastity of women, and whoredoms are an abomination before me, thus saith the Lord of hosts. 
Wherefore this people shall keep my commandments, saith the Lord of hosts, or cursed be the land for their sakes. For if I will, saith the Lord of hosts, raise up seed unto me, I will command my people. Otherwise they shall hearken unto these things. For behold, I the Lord have seen the sorrow, and heard the mourning of the daughters of my people in the land of Jerusalem, yea, and in all the lands of my people, because of the wickedness and abominations of their husbands. And I will not suffer, saith the Lord of hosts, that the cries of the fair daughters of this people, which I have led out of the land of Jerusalem, shall come up unto me against the men of my people, saith the Lord of hosts. For they shall not lead away captive the daughters of my people because of their tenderness, save I shall visit them with a sore curse, even unto destruction. For they shall not commit whoredoms like unto them of old, saith the Lord of hosts. And now, behold, my brethren, ye know that these commandments were given to our father Lehi. Wherefore, ye have known them before, and ye have come unto great condemnation, for ye have done these things which ye ought not to have done. Behold, ye have done greater iniquities than the Lamanites, our brethren. Ye have broken the hearts of your tender wives, and lost the confidence of your children, because of your bad examples before them, and the sobbings of their hearts ascend up to God against you. And because of the strictness of the word of God, which cometh down against you, many hearts died, pierced with deep wounds. Jacob, chapter 3 But behold, I, Jacob, would speak unto you that are pure in heart. Look unto God with firmness of mind, and pray unto him with exceeding faith, and he will console you in your afflictions, and he will plead your cause, and send down justice upon those who seek your destruction. O all ye that are pure in heart, lift up your heads, and receive the pleasing word of God, and feast upon his love, for ye may, if your minds are firm forever. But woe, woe, woe unto you that are not pure in heart, that are filthy this day before God, for except you repent, the land is cursed for your sakes, and the Lamanites, which are not filthy, like unto you. Nevertheless, they are cursed with a sore cursing, shall scourge you even unto destruction. And the time speedily cometh that except ye repent, they shall possess the land of your inheritance, and the Lord God will lead away the righteous out from among you. Behold, the Lamanites, your brethren, whom ye hate, because of their filthiness, and the cursing which hath come upon their skins, are more righteous than you, for they have not forgotten the commandment of the Lord, which was given unto our father, that they should have, save it were one wife, and concubines they should have none, and there should not be whoredoms committed among them. And now this commandment they observe to keep. Wherefore, because of this observance, in keeping this commandment, the Lord God will not destroy them, but will be merciful unto them, and one day they shall become a blessed people. Behold, their husbands love their wives, and their wives love their husbands, and their husbands and their wives love their children, and their unbelief and their hatred towards you is because of the iniquity of their fathers. Wherefore, how much better are you than they in the sight of your great Creator? O oh, my brethren, I fear that unless ye shall repent of your sins, that their skins will be whiter than yours when ye shall be brought with them before the throne of God. Wherefore, a commandment I give unto you, which is the word of God, that ye revile no more against them because of the darkness of their skins. Neither shall ye revile against them because of their filthiness. But ye shall remember your own filthiness, and remember that their filthiness came because of their fathers. Wherefore, ye shall remember your children, how that ye have grieved their hearts because of the example that ye have set before them. And also remember that ye may, because of your filthiness, bring your children unto destruction, and their sins be heaped upon your heads at the last day. O my brethren, hearken unto my words, arouse the faculties of your souls, shake yourselves that ye may awake from the slumber of death, and loose yourselves from the pains of hell that ye may not become angels to the devil to be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone which is the second death and now i jacob spake many more things unto the people of nephi warning them against fornication and lasciviousness and every kind of sin telling them the awful consequences of them and a hundredth part of the proceedings of this people which now began to be numerous cannot be written upon these plates but many of their proceedings are written upon the larger plates, 
and their wars and their contentions and the reigns of their kings. These plates are called the plates of Jacob, and they were made by the hand of Nephi, and I make an end of speaking these words. Jacob chapter 4 Now behold, it came to pass that I, Jacob, having ministered much unto my people in word, and I cannot write but a little of my words because of the difficulty of engraving our words upon plates. And we know that the things which we write upon plates must remain. But whatsoever thing we write upon anything, save it be upon plates, must perish and vanish away. But we can write a few words upon plates, which will give our children, and also our beloved brethren, a small degree of knowledge concerning us, or concerning their fathers. Now in this thing we do rejoice, and we labor diligently to engrave in these words upon plates, hoping that our beloved brethren and our children will receive them with thankful hearts, and look upon them that they may learn with joy and not with sorrow, neither with contempt concerning their first parents. For for this intent have we written these things, that they may know that we knew of Christ, and we had a hope of his glory many hundred years before his coming. And not only we ourselves had a hope of his glory, but also all the holy prophets which were before us. Behold, they believed in Christ, and worshipped the Father in his name. And also we worship the Father in his name. And for this intent we keep the law of Moses, it pointing our souls to him. And for this cause it is sanctified unto us for righteousness, even as it was accounted unto Abraham in the wilderness to be obedient unto the commands of God in offering up his son Isaac, which is a similitude of God and his only begotten Son. Wherefore we search the prophets, and we have many revelations in the spirit of prophecy, and having all these witnesses we obtain a hope, and our faith becometh unshaken, insomuch that we truly can command in the name of Jesus, and the very trees obey us, or the mountains, or the waves of the sea. Nevertheless the Lord God showeth unto us our weakness, that we may know that it is by his grace, and his great condescensions unto the children of men, that we have power to do these things. Behold, great and marvelous are the works of the Lord. How unsearchable are the depths of the mysteries of him! And it is impossible that man should find out all his ways, and no man knoweth of his ways, save it be revealed unto him. Wherefore, brethren, despise not the revelations of God. For behold, by the power of his word man came upon the face of the earth, which earth was created by the power of his word. Wherefore, if God, being able to speak, and the world was, and to speak, and man was created, O oh, then why not able to command the earth, or the workmanship of his hands upon the face of it, according to his will and pleasure? Wherefore, brethren, seek not to counsel the Lord, but to take counsel from his hand. For behold, ye yourselves know that he counseleth in wisdom, and in justice, and in great mercy over all his works. Wherefore, beloved brethren, be reconciled unto him through the atonement of Christ, his only begotten Son, and ye may obtain a resurrection according to the power of the resurrection which is in Christ, and be presented as the firstfruits of Christ unto God, having faith, and obtained a good hope of glory in him before he manifesteth himself in the flesh. And now, beloved, marvel not that I tell you these things. For why not speak of the atonement of Christ, and attain to a perfect knowledge of him, as to attain to the knowledge of a resurrection in the world to come? Behold, my brethren, he that prophesieth, let him prophesy to the understanding of men. For the Spirit speaketh the truth, and lieth not. Wherefore it speaketh of things as they really are, and of things as they really will be. Wherefore these things are manifested unto us plainly for the salvation of our souls. But, behold, we are not witnesses alone in these things, for God also spake them unto prophets of old. But, behold, the Jews were a stiff-necked people, and they despised the words of plainness, and killed the prophets, and sought for things that they could not understand. Wherefore, because of their blindness, which blindness came by looking beyond the mark, they must needs fall. For God hath taken away his plainness from them, and delivered unto them many things which they cannot understand, because they desired it. And because they desired it, God hath done it, that they may stumble. And now I, Jacob, am led on by the Spirit unto prophesying, 
for i perceive by the workings of the spirit which is in me that by the stumbling of the jews they will reject the stone upon which they might build and have safe foundation but behold according to the scriptures this stone shall become the great and the last and the only sure foundation upon which the jews can build and now my beloved how is it possible that these after having rejected the sure foundation can ever build upon it that it may become the head of their corner behold my beloved brethren i will unfold this mystery unto you if i do not by any means get shaken from my firmness in the spirit and stumble because of my over anxiety for you end of jacob chapters one through four recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com Jacob, chapters 5 through 7 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Jacob, chapter 5. Behold, my brethren, do ye not remember to have read the words of the prophet Zenos, which he spake unto the house of Israel, saying, Hearken, O ye house of Israel, and hear the words of me, a prophet of the Lord. For behold, thus saith the Lord, I will liken thee, O house of Israel, like unto a tame olive tree, which a man took and nourished in his vineyard, and it grew and waxed old and began to decay. And it came to pass that the master of the vineyard went forth, and he saw that his olive tree began to decay and he said i will prune it and dig about it and nourish it that perhaps it may shoot forth young and tender branches and it perish not and it came to pass that he pruned it and digged about it and nourished it according to his word and it came to pass that after many days it began to put forth somewhat a little young and tender branches but behold the main top thereof began to perish and it came to pass that the master of the vineyard saw it and he said unto his servant it grieveth me that i should lose this tree wherefore go and pluck the branches from a wild olive tree and bring them hither unto me and we will pluck off those main branches which are beginning to wither away and we will cast them into the fire that they may be burned and behold saith the lord of the vineyard i take away many of these young and tender branches and i will graft them whithersoever i will and it mattereth not that if it so be that the root of this tree will perish I may preserve the fruit thereof unto myself. Therefore I will take these young and tender branches, and I will graft them whithersoever I will. Take thou the branches of the wild olive tree, and graft them in, in the stead thereof. And these which I have plucked off I will cast into the fire and burn them, that they may not cumber the ground of my vineyard. And it came to pass that the servant of the Lord of the vineyard did according to the word of the Lord of the vineyard, and grafted in the branches of the wild olive tree. And the Lord of the vineyard caused that it should be digged about, and pruned, and nourished, saying unto his servant, It grieveth me that I should lose this tree. Wherefore, that perhaps I might preserve the roots thereof, that they perish not, that I might preserve them unto myself, I have done this thing. Wherefore, go thy way, watch the tree, and nourish it according to my words. And these will I place in the nethermost part of my vineyard, whithersoever I will, it mattereth not unto thee and i do it that i may preserve unto myself the natural branches of the tree and also that i may lay up fruit thereof against the season unto myself for it grieveth me that i should lose this tree and the fruit thereof and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard went his way and hid the natural branches of the tame olive tree in the nethermost parts of the vineyard some in one and some in another according to his will and pleasure and it came to pass that a long time passed away and the lord of the vineyard said unto his servant come let us go down into the vineyard that we may labor in the vineyard and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard and also the servant went down into the vineyard to labor and it came to pass that the servant said unto his master behold look here behold the tree and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard looked and beheld the tree in which the wild olive branches had been grafted and it had sprung forth and begun to bear fruit and he beheld that it was good and the fruit thereof was like unto the natural fruit and he said unto the servant 
behold the branches of the wild tree have taken hold of the moisture of the root thereof that the root thereof hath brought forth much strength and because of the much strength of the root thereof the wild branches have brought forth tame fruit now if we had not grafted in these branches the tree thereof would have perished and now behold i will lay up much fruit which the tree thereof hath brought forth and the fruit thereof i will lay up against the season unto mine own self and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said unto the servant come let us go to the nethermost part of the vineyard and behold if the natural branches of the tree have not brought forth much fruit also that i may lay up of the fruit thereof against the season unto mine own self and it came to pass that they went forth whither the master had hid the natural branches of the tree and he said unto the servant behold these and he beheld the first that it had brought forth much fruit and he beheld also that it was good and he said unto the servant take of the fruit thereof and lay it up against the season that i may preserve it unto mine own self for behold said he this long time have i nourished it and it hath brought forth much fruit and it came to pass that the servant said unto his master how comest thou hither to plant this tree or this branch of the tree for behold it was the poorest spot in all the land of thy vineyard and the lord of the vineyard said unto him counsel me not i knew that it was a poor spot of ground wherefore i said unto thee i have nourished it this long time and thou beholdest that it hath brought forth much fruit and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said unto his servant look hither behold i have planted another branch of the tree also and thou knowest that this spot of ground was poorer than the first but behold the tree i have nourished it this long time and it hath brought forth much fruit therefore gather it and lay it up against the season that i may preserve it unto mine own self and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said again unto his servant look hither and behold another branch also which i have planted behold that i have nourished it also and it hath brought forth fruit and he said unto the servant look hither and behold the last behold this have i planted in a good spot of ground and i have nourished it this long time and only a part of the tree hath brought forth tame fruit and the other part of the tree hath brought forth wild fruit behold i have nourished this tree like unto the others and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said unto the servant pluck off the branches that have not brought forth good fruit and cast them into the fire but behold the servant said unto him let us prune it and dig about it and nourish it a little longer that perhaps it may bring forth good fruit unto thee that thou canst lay it up against the season and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard and the servant of the lord of the vineyard did nourish all the fruit of the vineyard and it came to pass that a long time had passed away and the lord of the vineyard said unto his servant come let us go down into the vineyard that we may labor again in the vineyard for behold the time draweth near and the end soon cometh wherefore i must lay up fruit against the season unto mine own self and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard and the servant went down into the vineyard and they came to the tree whose natural branches had been broken off and the wild branches had been grafted in and behold all sorts of fruit did cumber the tree and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard did taste of the fruit every sort according to its number and the lord of the vineyard said behold this long time have we nourished this tree and i have laid up unto myself against the season much fruit but behold this time it hath brought forth much fruit and there is none of it which is good and behold there are all kinds of bad fruit and it profiteth me nothing notwithstanding all our labor and now it grieveth me that i should lose this tree and the lord of the vineyard said unto the servant what shall we do unto the tree that i may preserve again good fruit thereof unto mine own self and the servant said unto his master behold because thou didst graft in the branches of the wild olive tree they have nourished the roots that they are alive and they have not perished wherefore thou beholdest that they are yet good and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said unto his servant the tree profiteth me nothing and the roots thereof profit me nothing so long as it shall bring forth evil fruit nevertheless i know that the roots are good and for mine own purpose i have preserved them and because of their much strength they have hitherto brought forth from the wild branches good fruit 
but behold the wild branches have grown and have overrun the roots thereof and because that the wild branches have overcome the roots thereof it hath brought forth much evil fruit and because that it hath brought forth so much evil fruit thou beholdest that it beginneth to perish and it will soon become ripened that it may be cast into the fire except we should do something for it to preserve it and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said unto his servant let us go down into the nethermost parts of the vineyard and behold if the natural branches have also brought forth evil fruit and it came to pass that they went down into the nethermost parts of the vineyard and it came to pass that they beheld that the fruit of the natural branches had become corrupt also yea the first and the second and also the last and they had all become corrupt and the wild fruit of the last had overcome that part of the tree which brought forth good fruit even that the branch had withered away and died and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard wept and said unto the servant what could i have done more for my vineyard behold i knew that all the fruit of the vineyard save it were these had become corrupted and now these which have once brought forth good fruit have also become corrupted and now all the trees of my vineyard are good for nothing save it be to be hewn down and cast into the fire and behold this last whose branch had withered away i did plant in a good spot of ground yea even that which was choice unto me above all other parts of the land of my vineyard and thou beheldest that i also cut down that which cumbered this spot of ground that i might plant this tree in the stead thereof and thou beheldest that a part thereof brought forth good fruit and a part thereof brought forth wild fruit and because i plucked not the branches thereof and cast them into the fire behold they have overcome the good branch that it hath withered away and now behold notwithstanding all the care which we have taken of my vineyard the trees thereof have become corrupted that they bring forth no good fruit and these i had hoped to preserve to have laid up fruit thereof against the season unto mine own self but behold they have become like unto the wild olive tree and they are of no worth but to be hewn down and cast into the fire and it grieveth me that i should lose them but what could i have done more in my vineyard have i slackened mine hand that i have not nourished it nay i have nourished it and i have digged about it and i have pruned it and i have dunged it and i have stretched forth mine hand almost all the day long and the end draweth nigh and it grieveth me that i should hew down all the trees of my vineyard and cast them into the fire that they should be burned who is it that has corrupted my vineyard and it came to pass that the servant said unto his master is it not the loftiness of thy vineyard have not the branches thereof overcome the roots which are good and because the branches have overcome the roots thereof behold they grew faster than the strength of the roots taking strength unto themselves behold i say is not this the cause that the trees of thy vineyard have become corrupted and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard said unto the servant let us go to and hew down the trees of the vineyard and cast them into the fire that they shall not cumber the ground of my vineyard for i have done all what could i have done more for my vineyard but behold the servant said unto the lord of the vineyard spare it a little longer and the lord said yea i will spare it a little longer for it grieveth me that i should lose the trees of my vineyard wherefore let us take of the branches of these which i have planted in the nethermost parts of my vineyard and let us graft them into the tree from whence they came and let us pluck from the tree those branches whose fruit is most bitter and graft in the natural branches of the tree in the stead thereof and this will i do that the tree may not perish that perhaps i may preserve unto myself the roots thereof for mine own purpose and behold the roots of the natural branches of the tree which i have planted whithersoever i would are yet alive wherefore that i may preserve them also for mine own purpose i will take of the branches of this tree and i will graft them in unto them yea i will graft in unto them the branches of their mother tree that i may preserve the roots also unto mine own self that when they shall be sufficiently strong perhaps they may bring forth good fruit unto me and i may yet have glory in the fruit of my vineyard and it came to pass that they took from the natural tree which had become wild and grafted in unto the natural trees which also had become wild and they also took of the natural trees which had become wild and grafted into their mother tree and the lord of the vineyard said unto the servant 
pluck not the wild branches from the trees save it be those which are most bitter and in them ye shall graft according to that which i have said and we will nourish again the trees of the vineyard and we will trim up the branches thereof and we will pluck from the trees those branches which are ripened that they must perish and cast them into the fire and this i do that perhaps the roots thereof may take strength because of their goodness and because of the change of the branches that the good may overcome the evil and because that i have preserved the natural branches and the roots thereof and that i have grafted in the natural branches again into their mother tree and have preserved the roots of their mother tree that perhaps the trees of my vineyard may bring forth again good fruit and that i may have joy again in the fruit of my vineyard and perhaps that i may rejoice exceedingly that i have preserved the roots of the branches of the first fruit wherefore go to and call servants that we may labor diligently with our might in the vineyard that we may prepare the way that i may bring forth again the natural fruit which natural fruit is good and most precious above all other fruit wherefore let us go to and labor with our might this last time for behold the end draweth nigh and this is for the last time that i shall prune my vineyard graft in the branches begin at the last that they may be first and that the first may be last and dig about the trees both old and young the first and the last and the last and the first that all may be nourished once again for the last time wherefore dig about them and prune them and dung them once more for the last time for the end draweth nigh and if it be so that these last grafts shall grow and bring forth the natural fruit then shall ye prepare the way for them that they may grow and as they begin to grow ye shall clear away the branches which bring forth bitter fruit according to the strength of the good and the size thereof and ye shall not clear away the bad thereof all at once lest the roots thereof should be too strong for the graft and the graft thereof shall perish and i lose the trees of my vineyard for it grieveth me that i should lose the trees of my vineyard wherefore ye shall clear away the bad according as the good shall grow that the root and the top may be equal in strength until the good shall overcome the bad and the bad be hewn down and cast into the fire that they cumber not the ground of my vineyard and thus will i sweep away the bad out of my vineyard and the branches of the natural tree will i graft in again into the natural tree and the branches of the natural tree will i graft into the natural branches of the tree and thus will i bring them together again that they shall bring forth the natural fruit and they shall be one and the bad shall be cast away yea even out of all the land of my vineyard for behold only this once will i prune my vineyard and it came to pass that the lord of the vineyard sent his servant and the servant went and did as the lord had commanded him and brought other servants and they were few and the lord of the vineyard said unto them go to and labor in the vineyard with your might for behold this is the last time that i shall nourish my vineyard for the end is nigh at hand and the season speedily cometh and if ye labor with your might with me ye shall have joy in the fruit which i shall lay up unto myself against the time which will soon come and it came to pass that the servants did go and labor with their mights and the lord of the vineyard labored also with them and they did obey the commandments of the lord of the vineyard in all things and there began to be the natural fruit again in the vineyard and the natural branches began to grow and thrive exceedingly and the wild branches began to be plucked off and to be cast away and they did keep the root and the top thereof equal according to the strength thereof and thus they labored with all diligence according to the commandments of the lord of the vineyard even until the bad had been cast away out of the vineyard and the lord had preserved unto himself that the trees had become again the natural fruit and they became like unto one body and the fruits were equal and the lord of the vineyard had preserved unto himself the natural fruit which was most precious unto him from the beginning and it came to pass that when the lord of the vineyard saw that his fruit was good and that his vineyard was no more corrupt he called up his servants and said unto them behold for this last time have we nourished my vineyard and thou beholdest that i have done according to my will and i have preserved the natural fruit that it is good even like as it was in the beginning and blessed art thou for because ye have been diligent in laboring with me in my vineyard and have kept my commandments and have brought unto me again the natural fruit that my vineyard is no more corrupted and the bad is cast away behold ye shall have joy with me 
because of the fruit of my vineyard. For behold, for a long time will I lay up of the fruit of my vineyard unto mine own self, against the season which speedily cometh. And for the last time have I nourished my vineyard, and pruned it, and dug about it, and dunged it. Wherefore I will lay up unto mine own self of the fruit for a long time, according to that which I have spoken. And when the time cometh that evil fruit shall again come into my vineyard, then will I cause the good and the bad to be gathered, and the good will I preserve unto myself, and the bad will I cast away into its own place. And then cometh the season and the end, and my vineyard will I cause to be burned with fire. Jacob chapter 6 And now behold, my brethren, as I said unto you that I would prophesy, behold, this is my prophecy that the things which this prophet Zenos spake concerning the house of Israel, in the which he likened them unto a tame olive tree, must surely come to pass. And the day that he shall set his hand again the second time to recover his people is the day, yea, even the last time, that the servants of the Lord shall go forth in his power to nourish and prune his vineyard, and after that the end soon cometh. And how blessed are they who have labored diligently in his vineyard! And how cursed are they who shall be cast out into their own place, and the world shall be burned with fire. And how merciful is our God unto us, for he remembereth the house of Israel, both roots and branches, and he stretches forth his hands unto them all the day long. And they are a stiff-necked and a gainsaying people, but as many as will not harden their hearts shall be saved in the kingdom of God. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, I beseech of you, in words of soberness, that ye would repent, and come with full purpose of heart, and cleave unto God as he cleaveth unto you. And while his arm of mercy is extended toward you in the light of the day, harden not your hearts. Yea, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For why will ye die? For behold, after ye have been nourished by the good word of God all the day long, will ye bring forth evil fruit, that ye must be hewn down and cast into the fire? Behold, Will ye reject these words? Will ye reject the words of the prophets? And will ye reject all the words which have been spoken concerning Christ, after so many have spoken concerning him, and deny the good word of Christ, and the power of God, and the gift of the Holy Ghost, and quench the Holy Spirit, and make a mock of the great plan of redemption which hath been laid for you? Know ye not that if ye will do these things, that the power of the redemption and the resurrection which is in Christ will bring you to stand with shame and awful guilt before the bar of God? And according to the power of justice, for justice cannot be denied, ye must go away into that lake of fire and brimstone, whose flames are unquenchable, and whose smoke ascendeth up for ever and ever, which lake of fire and brimstone is endless torment. O oh, then, my beloved brethren, repent ye, and enter in at the straight gate, and continue in the way which is narrow, until ye shall obtain eternal life. O oh, be wise, what can I say more? Finally, I bid you farewell, until I shall meet you before the pleasing bar of God, which bar striketh the wicked with awful dread and fear. Amen. Jacob, Chapter 7 and now it came to pass, after some years had passed away, there came a man among the people of Nephi, whose name was Sherem. And it came to pass that he began to preach among the people, and to declare unto them that there should be no Christ. And he preached many things which were flattering unto the people. And this he did, that he might overthrow the doctrine of Christ. And he labored diligently, that he might lead away the hearts of the people, insomuch that he did lead away many hearts. And he, knowing that I, Jacob, had faith in Christ, who should come, he sought much opportunity that he might come unto me. And he was learned, that he had a perfect knowledge of the language of the people. Wherefore he could use much flattery and much power of speech according to the power of the devil. And he had hope to shake me from the faith, notwithstanding the many revelations and the many things which I had seen concerning these things. For I truly had seen angels, and they had ministered unto me, and also I had heard the voice of the Lord speaking unto me in very word from time to time. Wherefore, I could not be shaken. And it came to pass that he came unto me, and on this wise did he speak unto me, saying, 
brother jacob i have sought much opportunity that i might speak unto you for i have heard and also know that thou goest about much preaching that which ye call the gospel or the doctrine of christ and ye have led away much of this people that they pervert the right way of god and keep not the law of moses which is the right way and convert the law of moses into the worship of a being which ye say shall come many hundred years hence and now behold i sherem declare unto you that this is blasphemy for no man knoweth of such things for he cannot tell of things to come and after this manner did sherem contend against me but behold the lord god poured in his spirit into my soul insomuch that i did confound him in all his words and i said unto him deniest thou the christ who shall come and he said if there should be a christ i would not deny him but i know that there is no christ neither has been nor ever will be and i said unto him believest thou the scriptures and he said yea and i said unto him then ye do not understand them for they truly testify of christ behold i say unto you that none of the prophets have written nor prophesied save they have spoken concerning this christ and this is not all it has been made manifest unto me for i have heard and seen and it also has been made manifest unto me by the power of the holy ghost wherefore i know if there should be no atonement made all mankind must be lost and it came to pass that he said unto me show me a sign by this power of the holy ghost in which ye know so much and i said unto him what am i that i should tempt god to show unto thee a sign in the thing which thou knowest to be true yet thou wilt deny it because thou art of the devil nevertheless not my will be done but if god shall smite thee let that be a sign unto thee that he has power both in heaven and in earth and also that christ shall come and thy will o lord be done and not mine and it came to pass that when i jacob had spoken these words the power of the lord came upon him insomuch that he fell to the earth and it came to pass that he was nourished for the space of many days and it came to pass that he said unto the people gather together on the morrow for i shall die wherefore i desire to speak unto the people before i shall die and it came to pass that on the morrow the multitude were gathered together and he spake plainly unto them and denied the things which he had taught them and confessed the christ and the power of the holy ghost and the ministering of angels and he spake plainly unto them that he had been deceived by the power of the devil and he spake of hell and of eternity and of eternal punishment and he said i fear lest i have committed the unpardonable sin for i have lied unto god for i denied the christ and said that i believed the scriptures and they truly testify of him and because i have thus lied unto god i greatly fear lest my case shall be awful but i confess unto god and it came to pass that when he had said these words he could say no more and he gave up the ghost and when the multitude had witnessed that he spake these things as he was about to give up the ghost they were astonished exceedingly insomuch that the power of god came down upon them and they were overcome that they fell to the earth now this thing was pleasing unto me jacob for i had requested it of my father who was in heaven for he had heard my cry and answered my prayer and it came to pass that peace and the love of god was restored again among the people and they searched the scriptures and hearkened no more to the words of this wicked man and it came to pass that many means were devised to reclaim and restore the lamanites to the knowledge of the truth but it was all vain for they delighted in wars and bloodshed and they had an eternal hatred against us their brethren and they sought by the power of their arms to destroy us continually wherefore the people of nephi did fortify against them with their arms and with all their might trusting in the god and rock of their salvation wherefore they became as yet conquerors of their enemies and it came to pass that i jacob began to be old and the record of this people being kept on the other plates of nephi wherefore i conclude this record declaring that i have written according to the best of my knowledge by saying that the time passed away with us and also our lives passed away like as it were unto us a dream we being a lonesome and a solemn people wanderers 
cast out from Jerusalem, born in tribulation, in a wilderness, and hated of our brethren, which caused wars and contentions, wherefore we did mourn out our days. And I, Jacob, saw that I must soon go down to my grave, wherefore I said unto my son Enos, Take these plates. And I told him the things which my brother Nephi had commanded me, and he promised obedience unto the commands. And I make an end of my writing upon these plates, which writing has been small, and to the reader I bid farewell, hoping that many of my brethren may read my words. Brethren, adieu. End of Jacob, chapters 5 through 7. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. The Book of Enos, the Book of Jerem, and the Book of Omni, of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrew White. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. The Book of Enos. Behold, it came to pass that I, Enos, knowing my father, that he was a just man, for he taught me in his language, and also in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and blessed be the name of my God for it. And I will tell you of the wrestle which I had before God, before I received a remission of my sins. Behold, I went to hunt beasts in the forests, and the words which I had often heard my father speak concerning eternal life and the joy of the saints sunk deep into my heart, and my soul hungered, and I kneeled down before my Maker, and I cried unto him in mighty prayer and supplication for mine own soul, and all the day long did I cry unto him, yea, and when the night came I did still raise my voice high, that it reached the heavens. And there came a voice unto me, saying, Enos, thy sins are forgiven thee, and thou shalt be blessed. And I, Enos, knew that God could not lie, wherefore my guilt was swept away. And I said, Lord, how is it done? And he said unto me, Because of thy faith in Christ, whom thou hast never before heard nor seen, and many years pass away before he shall manifest himself in the flesh, wherefore go to, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now it came to pass that when I had heard these words, I began to feel a desire for the welfare of my brethren, the Nephites. Wherefore I did pour out my whole soul unto God for them. And while I was thus struggling in the spirit, behold, the voice of the Lord came into my mind again, saying, I will visit thy brethren according to their diligence in keeping my commandments. I have given unto them this land, and it is a holy land, and I curse it not save it be for the cause of iniquity. Wherefore I will visit thy brethren according as I have said, and their transgressions will I bring down with sorrow upon their own heads. And after I, Enos, had heard these words, my faith began to be unshaken in the Lord, and I prayed unto him with many long strugglings for my brethren, the Lamanites. And it came to pass that after I had prayed and labored with all diligence, the Lord said unto me, I will grant unto thee according to thy desires, because of thy faith. And now behold, this was the desire which I desired of him, that if it should so be that my people, the Nephites, should fall into transgression, and by any means be destroyed, and the Lamanites should not be destroyed, that the Lord God would preserve a record of my people, the Nephites even if it so be by the power of his holy arm, that it might be brought forth at some future day unto the Lamanites, that perhaps they might be brought unto salvation. For at the present our strugglings were vain in restoring them to the true faith, and they swore in their wrath that, if it were possible, they would destroy our records and us, and also all the traditions of our fathers. Wherefore, I knowing that the Lord God was able to preserve our records, I cried unto him continually, for he had said unto me, Whatsoever thing ye shall ask in faith, believing that ye shall receive in the name of Christ, ye shall receive it. 
and I had faith. And I did cry unto God that he would preserve the records, and he covenanted with me that he would bring them forth unto the Lamanites in his own due time. And I, Enos, knew it would be according to the covenant which he had made, wherefore my soul did rest. And the Lord said unto me, Thy fathers have also required of me this thing, and it shall be done unto them according to their faith, for their faith was like unto thine. And now it came to pass that I, Enos, went about among the people of Nephi, prophesying of things to come, and testifying of the things which I had heard and seen. And I bear record that the people of Nephi did seek diligently to restore the Lamanites unto the true faith in God. But our labors were vain, their hatred was fixed, and they were led by their evil nature, that they became wild and ferocious, and a bloodthirsty people, full of idolatry and filthiness, feeding upon beasts of prey, dwelling in tents, and wandering about in the wilderness with a short skin girdle about their loins, and their heads shaven, and their skill was in the bow, and in the scimitar, and the axe, and many of them did eat nothing save it was raw meat, and they were continually seeking to destroy us. And it came to pass that the people of Nephi did till the land, and raise all manner of grain, and of fruit, and flocks of herds, and flocks of all manner of cattle of every kind, and goats, and wild goats, and also many horses. And there were exceedingly many prophets among us, and the people were a stiff-necked people, hard to understand. And there was nothing, save it was exceeding harshness, preaching and prophesying of wars, and contentions, and destructions, and continually reminding them of death, and the duration of eternity, and the judgments and the power of God, and all these things, stirring them up continually to keep them in the fear of the Lord. I say there was nothing short of these things, and exceedingly great plainness of speech would keep them from going down speedily to destruction, and after this manner do I write concerning them. And I saw wars between the Nephites and Lamanites in the course of my days. And it came to pass that I began to be old, and an hundred and seventy and nine years had passed away from the time that our father Lehi left Jerusalem. And I saw that I must soon go down to my grave, having been wrought upon by the power of God, that I must preach and prophesy unto this people, and declare the word according to the truth which is in Christ. And I have declared it in all my days, and have rejoiced in it above that of the world. And I soon go to the place of my rest, which is with my Redeemer, for I know that in Him I shall rest, and I rejoice in the day when my mortal shall put on immortality, and shall stand before him, then shall I see his face with pleasure, and he will say unto me, Come unto me, ye blessed, there is a place prepared for you in the mansions of my father. Amen. The Book of Jerem Now behold, I, Jerem, write a few words according to the commandment of my father, Enos, that our genealogy may be kept. And as these plates are small, and as these things are written for the intent of the benefit of our brethren the Lamanites, wherefore it must needs be that I write a little, but I shall not write the things of my prophesying, nor of my revelations. For what could I write more than my fathers have written? For have not they revealed the plan of salvation? I say unto you, Yea, and this sufficeth me. Behold, it is expedient that much should be done among this people, because of the hardness of their hearts, and the deafness of their ears, and the blindness of their minds, and the stiffness of their necks. Nevertheless, God is exceedingly merciful unto them, and has not as yet swept them off from the face of the land. And there are many among us who have many revelations, for they are not all stiff-necked, and as many as are not stiff-necked, and have faith, have communion with the Holy Spirit, which maketh manifest unto the children of men according to their faith. And now, behold, two hundred years had passed away, and the people of Nephi had waxed strong in the land. They observed to keep the law of Moses, and the Sabbath day holy unto the Lord. And they profaned not, 
neither did they blaspheme, and the laws of the land were exceedingly strict. And they were scattered upon much of the face of the land, and the Lamanites also, and they were exceedingly more numerous than were they of the Nephites, and they loved murder, and would drink the blood of beasts. And it came to pass that they came many times against us, the Nephites, to battle, but our kings and our leaders were mighty men in the faith of the Lord, and they taught the people the ways of the Lord. Wherefore we withstood the Lamanites, and swept them away out of our lands, and began to fortify our cities, or whatsoever place of our inheritance. And we multiplied exceedingly, and spread upon the face of the land, and became exceedingly rich in gold, and in silver, and in precious things, and in fine workmanship of wood, in buildings, and in machinery, and also in iron, and copper, and brass, and steel, making all manner of tools of every kind to till the ground, and weapons of war, yea, the sharp-pointed arrow, and the quiver, and the dart, and the javelin, and all preparations for war. And thus being prepared to meet the Lamanites, they did not prosper against us, but the word of the Lord was verified, which he spake unto our fathers, saying that, Inasmuch as ye will keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. And it came to pass that the prophets of the Lord did threaten the people of Nephi, according to the word of God, that if they did not keep the commandments, but should fall into transgression, they should be destroyed from off the face of the land. Wherefore the prophets, and the priests, and the teachers, did labor diligently, exhorting with all long suffering the people to diligence, teaching the law of Moses, and the intent for which it was given, persuading them to look forward unto the Messiah, and believe in him to come as though he already was, and after this manner did they teach them. And it came to pass that by so doing they kept them from being destroyed upon the face of the land, for they did prick their hearts with the word, continually stirring them up unto repentance. And it came to pass that two hundred and thirty and eight years had passed away, after the manner of wars, and contentions, and dissensions, for the space of much of the time. And I, Jerem, do not write more, for the plates are small, but behold, my brethren, ye can go to the other plates of Nephi, for behold, upon them the records of our wars are engraven, according to the writings of the kings, or those which they cause to be written and i deliver these plates into the hands of my son omni that they may be kept according to the commandments of my fathers the book of omni behold it came to pass that i omni being commanded by my father jerem that i should write somewhat upon these plates to preserve our genealogy Wherefore, in my days, I would that ye should know that I fought much with the sword to preserve my people, the Nephites, from falling into the hands of their enemies, the Lamanites. But behold, I of myself am a wicked man, and I have not kept the statutes and the commandments of the Lord as I ought to have done. And it came to pass that two hundred and seventy and six years had passed away, and we had many seasons of peace and we had many seasons of serious war and bloodshed. Yea, and in fine, two hundred and eighty and two years had passed away, and I had kept these plates according to the commandments of my fathers, and I conferred them upon my son Amaron, and I make an end. And now I, Amaron, write the things whatsoever I write, which are few, in the book of my father, Behold, it came to pass that three hundred and twenty years had passed away, and the more wicked part of the Nephites were destroyed. For the Lord would not suffer, after he had led them out of the land of Jerusalem, and kept and preserved them from falling into the hands of their enemies. Yea, he would not suffer that the words should not be verified, which he spake unto our fathers, saying that, Inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall not prosper in the land. Wherefore the Lord did visit them in great judgment. Nevertheless, he did spare the righteous that they should not perish, but did deliver them out of the hands of their enemies. And it came to pass that I did deliver the plates unto my brother Chemish. Now I, Chemish, write what few things I write in the same book with my brother, 
for behold i saw the last which he wrote that he wrote it with his own hand and he wrote it in the day that he delivered them unto me and after this manner we keep the records for it is according to the commandments of our fathers and i make an end behold i abinadom am the son of chemish behold it came to pass that i saw much war and contention between my people the nephites and the lamanites and i with my own sword have taken the lives of many of the lamanites in the defence of my brethren and behold the record of this people is engraven upon plates which is had by the kings according to the generations and i know of no revelation save that which has been written neither prophecy wherefore that which is sufficient is written and i make an end behold i am amalekai the son of abinadom behold i will speak unto you somewhat concerning mosiah who was made king over the land of zarahemla for behold he being warned of the lord that he should flee out of the land of nephi and as many as would hearken unto the voice of the lord should also depart out of the land with him into the wilderness and it came to pass that he did according as the lord had commanded him and they departed out of the land into the wilderness as many as would hearken unto the voice of the lord and they were led by many preachings and prophesyings and they were admonished continually by the word of god and they were led by the power of his arm through the wilderness until they came down into the land which is called the land of zarahemla and they discovered a people who were called the people of zarahemla now there was great rejoicing among the people of zarahemla and also zarahemla did rejoice exceedingly because the lord had sent the people of mosiah with the plates of brass which contained the record of the jews behold it came to pass that mosiah discovered that the people of zarahemla came out from jerusalem at the time that zedekiah king of judah was carried away captive into babylon and they journeyed in the wilderness and were brought by the hand of the lord across the great waters into the land where mosiah discovered them and they had dwelt there from that time forth and at the time that mosiah discovered them they had become exceedingly numerous nevertheless they had had many wars and serious contentions and had fallen by the sword from time to time and their language had become corrupted and they had brought no records with them and they denied the being of their creator and mosiah nor the people of mosiah could understand them but it came to pass that mosiah caused that they should be taught in his language and it came to pass that after they were taught in the language of mosiah Zarahemla gave a genealogy of his fathers, according to his memory, and they are written, but not in these plates. And it came to pass that the people of Zarahemla and of Mosiah did unite together, and Mosiah was appointed to be their king. And it came to pass in the days of Mosiah there was a large stone brought unto him with engravings on it, and he did interpret the engravings by the gift and power of God and they gave an account of one coriantumr and the slain of his people and coriantumr was discovered by the people of zarahemla and he dwelt with them for the space of nine moons it also spake a few words concerning his fathers and his first parents came out from the tower at the time the lord confounded the language of the people and the severity of the lord fell upon them according to his judgments which are just and their bones lay scattered in the land northward behold i amalekai was born in the days of mosiah and i have lived to see his death and benjamin his son reigneth in his stead and behold i have seen in the days of king benjamin a serious war and much bloodshed between the nephites and the lamanites but behold the nephites did obtain much advantage over them yea insomuch that king benjamin did drive them out of the land of zarahemla 
and it came to pass that i began to be old and having no seed and knowing king benjamin to be a just man before the lord wherefore i shall deliver up these plates unto him exhorting all men to come unto god the holy one of israel and believe in prophesying and in revelations and in the ministering of angels and in the gift of speaking with tongues and in the gift of interpreting languages and in all things which are good for there is nothing which is good save it comes from the lord and that which is evil cometh from the devil and now my beloved brethren i would that ye should come unto christ who is the holy one of israel and partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption yea come unto him and offer your whole souls as an offering unto him and continue in fasting and praying and endure to the end and as the lord liveth ye will be saved and now i would speak somewhat concerning a certain number who went up into the wilderness to return to the land of nephi for there was a large number who were desirous to possess the land of their inheritance wherefore they went up into the wilderness and their leader being a strong and mighty man and a stiff-necked man wherefore he caused a contention among them and they were all slain save fifty in the wilderness and they returned again to the land of zarahemla and it came to pass that they also took others to a considerable number and took their journey again into the wilderness and i amalekai had a brother who also went with them and i have not since known concerning them and i am about to lie down in my grave and these plates are full and i make an end of my speaking end of the book of enos the book of jerem and the book of omni recording by andrew white Andrew White, USA, at yahoo.com. The Words of Mormon and the Book of Mosiah, Chapters 1 through 3 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Andrew White The Book of Mormon Translated by Joseph Smith The Words of Mormon Chapter 1 And now I, Mormon, being about to deliver up the record which I have been making into the hands of my son, Moroni, behold, I have witnessed almost all the destruction of my people, the Nephites and it is many hundred years after the coming of christ that i deliver these records into the hands of my son and it supposeth me that he will witness the entire destruction of my people but may god grant that he may survive them that he may write somewhat concerning them and somewhat concerning christ that perhaps some day it may profit them and now i speak somewhat concerning that which i have written for after i had made an abridgment from the plates of nephi down to the reign of this king benjamin of whom amalekai spake i searched among the records which had been delivered into my hands and i found these plates which contained this small account of the prophets from jacob down to the reign of this king benjamin and also many of the words of nephi and the things which are upon these plates pleasing me because of the prophecies of the coming of christ and my fathers knowing that many of them have been fulfilled yea and i also know that as many things as have been prophesied concerning us down to this day have been fulfilled and as many as go beyond this day must surely come to pass wherefore i chose these things to finish my record upon them which remainder of my record i shall take from the plates of nephi and i cannot write the hundredth part of the things of my people but behold i shall take these plates which contain these prophesyings and revelations and put them with the remainder of my record for they are choice unto me and i know they will be choice unto my brethren and i do this for a wise purpose for thus it whispereth me according to the workings of the spirit of the lord which is in me and now i do not know all things but the lord knoweth all things which are to come wherefore he worketh in me to do according to his will and my prayer to god is concerning my brethren that they may once again come to the knowledge of god yea the redemption of christ 
that they may once again be a delightsome people. And now I, Mormon, proceed to finish out my record, which I take from the plates of Nephi, and I make it according to the knowledge and the understanding which God has given me. Wherefore it came to pass that after Amalekai had delivered up these plates into the hands of King Benjamin, he took them and put them with the other plates, which contained records which had been handed down by the kings from generation to generation until the days of King Benjamin. And they were handed down from King Benjamin from generation to generation until they have fallen into my hands. And I, Mormon, pray to God that they may be preserved from this time henceforth, and I know that they will be preserved, for there are great things written upon them, out of which my people and their brethren shall be judged at the great and last day, according to the word of God which is written. And now, concerning this King Benjamin, he had somewhat of contentions among his own people. And it came to pass also that the armies of the Lamanites came down out of the land of Nephi to battle against his people. But behold, King Benjamin gathered together his armies, and he did stand against them, and he did fight with the strength of his own arm, with the sword of Laban. And in the strength of the Lord they did contend against their enemies, until they had slain many thousands of the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did contend against the Lamanites, until they had driven them out of all the lands of their inheritance. And it came to pass that after there had been false Christs, and their mouths had been shut, and they punished according to their crimes. And after there had been false prophets and false preachers and teachers among the people, and all these having been punished according to their crimes, and after there having been much contention and many dissensions away unto the Lamanites, behold, it came to pass that King Benjamin, with the assistance of the holy prophets who were among his people, for behold, King Benjamin was a holy man, and he did reign over his people in righteousness, and there were many holy men in the land. And they did speak the word of God with power and with authority, and they did use much sharpness because of the stiff-neckedness of the people. Wherefore, with the help of these, King Benjamin, by laboring with all the might of his body and the faculty of his whole soul, and also the prophets, did once more establish peace in the land. The Book of Mosiah, Chapter 1 and now there was no more contention in all the land of Zarahemla, among all the people who belonged to King Benjamin, so that King Benjamin had continual peace all the remainder of his days. And it came to pass that he had three sons, and he called their names Mosiah, and Heloram, and Helaman. And he caused that they should be taught in all the language of his fathers, that thereby they might become men of understanding and that they might know concerning the prophecies which had been spoken by the mouths of their fathers, which were delivered them by the hand of the Lord. And he also taught them concerning the records which were engraven on the plates of brass, saying, My sons, I would that ye should remember that were it not for these plates which contain these records and these commandments, we must have suffered in ignorance, even at this present time, not knowing the mysteries of God. For it were not possible that our father, Lehi, could have remembered all these things, to have taught them to his children, except it were for the help of these plates. For he having been taught in the language of the Egyptians, therefore, he could read these engravings, and teach them to his children, that thereby they could teach them to their children, and so fulfilling the commandments of God, even down to this present time. I say unto you, my sons, were it not for these things, which have been kept and preserved by the hand of God, that we might read and understand of his mysteries, and have his commandments always before our eyes, that even our fathers would have dwindled in unbelief, and we should have been like unto our brethren, the Lamanites, who know nothing concerning these things, or even do not believe them when they are taught them, because of the traditions of their fathers, which are not correct. O oh, my sons, I would that ye should remember that these sayings are true, 
and also that these records are true and behold also the plates of nephi which contain the records and the sayings of our fathers from the time they left jerusalem until now and they are true and we can know of their surety because we have them before our eyes and now my sons i would that ye should remember to search them diligently that ye may profit thereby and i would that ye should keep the commandments of god that ye may prosper in the land according to the promises which the lord made unto our fathers and many more things did king benjamin teach his sons which were not written in this book and it came to pass that after king benjamin had made an end of teaching his sons that he waxed old and he saw that he must very soon go the way of all the earth therefore he thought it expedient that he should confer the kingdom upon one of his sons therefore he had mosiah brought before him and these are the words which he spake unto him saying my son i would that ye should make a proclamation throughout all this land among all this people or the people of zarahemla and the people of mosiah who dwell in the land that thereby they may be gathered together for on the morrow i shall proclaim unto this my people out of mine own mouth that thou art a king and a ruler over this people whom the lord our god hath given us and moreover i shall give this people a name that thereby they may be distinguished above all the people which the lord god hath brought out of the land of jerusalem and this i do because they have been a diligent people in keeping the commandments of the lord and i give unto them a name that never shall be blotted out except it be through transgression yea and moreover i say unto you that if this highly favored people of the lord should fall into transgression and become a wicked and an adulterous people that the lord will deliver them up that thereby they become weak like unto their brethren and he will no more preserve them by his matchless and marvelous power as he has hitherto preserved our fathers for i say unto you that if he had not extended his arm in the preservation of our fathers they must have fallen into the hands of the lamanites and become victims to their hatred and it came to pass that after king benjamin had made an end of these sayings to his son that he gave him charge concerning all the affairs of the kingdom and moreover he also gave him charge concerning the records which were engraven on the plates of brass and also the plates of nephi and also the sword of laban and the ball or director which led our fathers through the wilderness which was prepared by the hand of the lord that thereby they might be led every one according to the heed and diligence which they gave unto him therefore as they were unfaithful they did not prosper nor progress in their journey but were driven back and incurred the displeasure of god upon them and therefore they were smitten with famine and sore afflictions to stir them up in remembrance of their duty and now it came to pass that mosiah went and did as his father had commanded him and proclaimed unto all the people who were in the land of zarahemla that thereby they might gather themselves together to go up to the temple to hear the words which his father should speak unto them chapter two and it came to pass that after mosiah had done as his father had commanded him and had made a proclamation throughout all the land that the people gathered themselves together throughout all the land that they might go up to the temple to hear the words which king benjamin should speak unto them and there were a great number even so many that they did not number them for they had multiplied exceedingly and waxed great in the land and they also took of the firstlings of their flocks that they might offer sacrifice and burnt offerings according to the law of moses and also that they might give thanks to the lord their god who had brought them out of the land of jerusalem and who had delivered them out of the hands of their enemies and had appointed just men to be their teachers and also a just man to be their king who had established peace in the land of zarahemla and who had taught them to keep the commandments of god that they might rejoice and be filled with love towards god and all men and it came to pass that when they came up to the temple they pitched their tents round about every man according to his family consisting of his wife 
and his sons and his daughters and their sons and their daughters from the eldest down to the youngest every family being separate one from another and they pitched their tents round about the temple every man having his tent with the door thereof towards the temple that thereby they might remain in their tents and hear the words which king benjamin should speak unto them for the multitude being so great that king benjamin could not teach them all within the walls of the temple therefore he caused a tower to be erected that thereby his people might hear the words which he should speak unto them and it came to pass that he began to speak to his people from the tower and they could not all hear his words because of the greatness of the multitude therefore he caused that the words which he spake should be written and sent forth among those that were not under the sound of his voice that they might also receive his words and these are the words which he spake and caused to be written saying my brethren all ye that have assembled yourselves together you that can hear my words which i shall speak unto you this day for i have not commanded you to come up hither to trifle with the words which i shall speak but that you should hearken unto me and open your ears that ye may hear and your hearts that ye may understand and your minds that the mysteries of god may be unfolded to your view i have not commanded you to come up hither that ye should fear me or that ye should think that i of myself am more than a mortal man but i am like as yourselves subject to all manner of infirmities in body and mind yet i have been chosen by this people and consecrated by my father and was suffered by the hand of the lord that i should be a ruler and a king over this people and have been kept and preserved by his matchless power to serve you with all the might mind and strength which the lord hath granted unto me i say unto you that as i have been suffered to spend my days in your service even up to this time and have not sought gold nor silver nor any manner of riches of you neither have i suffered that ye should be confined in dungeons nor that ye should make slaves one of another nor that ye should murder or plunder or steal or commit adultery nor even have i suffered that ye should commit any manner of wickedness and have taught you that ye should keep the commandments of the lord in all things which he hath commanded you and even i myself have labored with mine own hands that i might serve you and that ye should not be laden with taxes and that there should nothing come upon you which was grievous to be borne and of all these things which i have spoken ye yourselves are witnesses this day yet my brethren i have not done these things that i might boast neither do i tell these things that thereby i might accuse you but i tell you these things that ye may know that i can answer a clear conscience before god this day behold i say unto you that because i said unto you that i had spent my days in your service i do not desire to boast for i have only been in the service of god and behold i tell you these things that ye may learn wisdom that ye may learn that when ye are in the service of your fellow beings ye are only in the service of your god behold ye have called me your king and if i whom ye call your king do labor to serve you then ought not ye to labor to serve one another and behold also if i whom ye call your king who has spent his days in your service and yet has been in the service of god do merit any thanks from you oh how you ought to thank your heavenly king i say unto you my brethren that if you should render all the thanks and praise which your whole soul has power to possess to that god who has created you and has kept and preserved you and has caused that ye should rejoice and has granted that ye should live in peace one with another i say unto you that if ye should serve him who has created you from the beginning and is preserving you from day to day by lending you breath that ye may live and move and do according to your own will and even supporting you from one moment to another i say if ye should serve him with all your whole souls yet ye would be unprofitable servants and behold all that he requires of you is to keep his commandments and he has promised you that if ye would keep his commandments ye should prosper in the land and he never doth vary from that which he hath said 
therefore if ye do keep his commandments he doth bless you and prosper you and now in the first place he hath created you and granted unto you your lives for which ye are indebted unto him and secondly he doth require that ye should do as he hath commanded you for which if ye do he doth immediately bless you and therefore he hath paid you and ye are still indebted unto him and are and will be for ever and ever therefore of what have ye to boast and now i ask can ye say aught of yourselves i answer you nay ye cannot say that ye are even as much as the dust of the earth yet ye were created of the dust of the earth but behold it belongeth to him who created you and i even i whom ye call your king am no better than ye yourselves are for i am also of the dust and ye behold that i am old and am about to yield up this mortal frame to its mother earth therefore as i said unto you that i had served you walking with a clear conscience before god even so i at this time have caused that ye should assemble yourselves together that i might be found blameless and that your blood should not come upon me when i shall stand to be judged of god of the things whereof he hath commanded me concerning you i say unto you that i have caused that ye should assemble yourselves together that i might rid my garments of your blood at this period of time when i am about to go down to my grave that i might go down in peace and my immortal spirit may join the choirs above and singing the praises of a just god and moreover i say unto you that i have caused that ye should assemble yourselves together that i might declare unto you that i can no longer be your teacher nor your king for even at this time my whole frame doth tremble exceedingly while attempting to speak unto you but the lord god doth support me and hath suffered me that i should speak unto you and hath commanded me that i should declare unto you this day that my son mosiah is a king and a ruler over you and now my brethren i would that ye should do as ye have hitherto done as ye have kept my commandments and also the commandments of my father and have prospered and have been kept from falling into the hands of your enemies even so if ye shall keep the commandments of my son or the commandments of god which shall be delivered unto you by him ye shall prosper in the land and your enemies shall have no power over you but o oh, my people beware lest there shall arise contentions among you and ye list to obey the evil spirit which was spoken of by my father mosiah for behold there is a woe pronounced upon him who listeth to obey that spirit for if he listeth to obey him and remaineth and dieth in his sins the same drinketh damnation to his own soul for he receiveth for his wages an everlasting punishment having transgressed the law of god contrary to his own knowledge i say unto you that there are not any among you except it be your little children that have not been taught concerning these things but what knoweth that ye are eternally indebted to your heavenly father to render to him all that you have and are and also have been taught concerning the records which contain the prophecies which have been spoken by the holy prophets even down to the time of our father lehi left jerusalem and also all that has been spoken by our fathers until now and behold also they spake that which was commanded them of the lord therefore they are just and true and now i say unto you my brethren that after ye have known and have been taught all these things if ye should transgress and go contrary to that which has been spoken that ye do withdraw yourselves from the spirit of the lord that it may have no place in you to guide you in wisdom's paths that ye may be blessed prospered and preserved i say unto you that the man that doeth this the same cometh out in open rebellion against god therefore he listeth to obey the evil spirit and becometh an enemy to all righteousness therefore the lord has no place in him for he dwelleth not in unholy temples therefore if that man repenteth not and remaineth and dieth an enemy to god 
the demands of divine justice do awaken his immortal soul to a lively sense of his own guilt which doth cause him to shrink from the presence of the lord and doth fill his breast with guilt and pain and anguish which is like an unquenchable fire whose flame ascendeth up for ever and ever and now i say unto you that mercy hath no claim on that man therefore his final doom is to endure a never-ending torment o oh, all ye old men and also ye young men and you little children who can understand my words for i have spoken plainly unto you that ye might understand i pray that ye should awake to a remembrance of the awful situation of those that have fallen into transgression and moreover i would desire that ye should consider on the blessed and happy state of those that keep the commandments of god for behold they are blessed in all things both temporal and spiritual and if they hold out faithful to the end they are received into heaven that thereby they may dwell with god in a state of never-ending happiness o oh, remember remember that these things are true for the lord god hath spoken it chapter three and again my brethren i would call your attention for i have somewhat more to speak unto you for behold i have things to tell you concerning that which is to come and the things which i shall tell you are made known unto me by an angel from god and he said unto me awake and i awoke and behold he stood before me and he said unto me awake and hear the words which i shall tell thee for behold i am come to declare unto you the glad tidings of great joy for the lord hath heard thy prayers and hath judged of thy righteousness and hath sent me to declare unto thee that thou mayest rejoice and that thou mayest declare unto thy people that they may also be filled with joy for behold the time cometh and is not far distant that with power the lord omnipotent who reigneth who was and is from all eternity to all eternity shall come down from heaven among the children of men and shall dwell in a tabernacle of clay and shall go forth amongst men working mighty miracles such as healing the sick raising the dead causing the lame to walk the blind to receive their sight and the deaf to hear and curing all manner of diseases and he shall cast out devils or the evil spirits which dwell in the hearts of the children of men and lo he shall suffer temptations and pain of body hunger thirst and fatigue even more than man can suffer except it be unto death for behold blood cometh from every poor so great shall be his anguish for the wickedness and the abominations of his people and he shall be called jesus christ the son of god the father of heaven and earth the creator of all things from the beginning and his mother shall be called mary and lo he cometh unto his own that salvation might come unto the children of men even through faith on his name and even after all this they shall consider him a man and say that he hath a devil and shall scourge him and shall crucify him and he shall rise the third day from the dead and behold he standeth to judge the world and behold all these things are done that a righteous judgment might come upon the children of men for behold and also his blood atoneth for the sins of those who have fallen by the transgression of adam who have died not knowing the will of god concerning them or who have ignorantly sinned but woe woe unto him who knoweth that he rebelleth against god for salvation cometh to none such except it be through repentance and faith on the lord jesus christ and the lord god hath sent his holy prophets among all the children of men to declare these things to every kindred nation and tongue that thereby whosoever should believe that christ should come the same might receive remission of their sins and rejoice with exceedingly great joy even as though he had already come among them yet the lord god saw that his people were a stiff-necked people and he appointed unto them a law even the law of moses 
and many signs and wonders and types and shadows showed he unto them concerning his coming and also holy prophets spake unto them concerning his coming and yet they hardened their hearts and understood not that the law of moses availeth nothing except it were through the atonement of his blood and even if it were possible that little children could sin they could not be saved but i say unto you they are blessed for behold as in adam or by nature they fall even so the blood of christ atoneth for their sins and moreover i say unto you that there shall be no other name given nor any other way nor means whereby salvation can come unto the children of men only in and through the name of christ the lord omnipotent for behold he judgeth and his judgment is just and the infant perisheth not that dieth in his infancy but men drink damnation to their own souls except they humble themselves and become as little children and believe that salvation was and is and is to come in and through the atoning blood of christ the lord omnipotent for the natural man is an enemy to god and has been from the fall of adam and will be for ever and ever unless he yields to the enticings of the holy spirit and putteth off the natural man and becometh a saint through the atonement of christ the lord and becometh as a child submissive meek humble patient full of love willing to submit to all things which the lord seeth fit to inflict upon him even as a child doth submit to his father and moreover i say unto you that the time shall come when the knowledge of the saviour shall spread throughout every nation kindred tongue and people and behold when that time cometh none shall be found blameless before god except it be little children only through repentance and faith on the name of the lord god omnipotent and even at this time when thou shalt have taught thy people the things which the lord thy god hath commanded thee even then are they found no more blameless in the sight of god only according to the words which i have spoken unto thee and now i have spoken the words which the lord god hath commanded me and thus saith the lord they shall stand as a bright testimony against this people at the judgment day whereof they shall be judged every man according to his works whether they be good or whether they be evil and if they be evil they are consigned to an awful view of their own guilt and abominations which doth cause them to shrink from the presence of the lord into a state of misery and endless torment from whence they can no more return therefore they have drunk damnation to their own souls therefore they have drunk out of the cup of the wrath of god which justice could no more deny unto them than it could deny that adam should fall because of his partaking of the forbidden fruit therefore mercy could have claim on them no more for ever and their torment is as a lake of fire and brimstone whose flames are unquenchable and whose smoke ascendeth up for ever and ever thus hath the lord commanded me amen End of The Words of Mormon and The Book of Mosiah, Chapters 1 through 3. Recording by Andrew White. Andrew White, USA, at yahoo.com. Mosiah, Chapters 4 through 7 of The Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kesley Peterson. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah. Chapter 4. And now, it came to pass that when King Benjamin had made an end of speaking the words which had been delivered unto him by the angel of the Lord, that he cast his eyes round about on the multitude, and behold, they had fallen to the earth, for the fear of the Lord had come upon them. And they had viewed themselves in their own carnal state, even less than the dust of the earth. And they all cried aloud with one voice, saying, O oh, have mercy, and apply the atoning blood of Christ, that we may receive forgiveness of our sins, and our hearts may be purified. For we believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
who created heaven and earth and all things who shall come down among the children of men and it came to pass that after they had spoken these words the spirit of the lord came upon them and they were filled with joy having received a remission of their sins and having peace of conscience because of the exceeding faith which they had in jesus christ who should come according to the words which king benjamin had spoken unto them and king benjamin again opened his mouth and began to speak unto them saying my friends my brethren my kindred and my people i would again call your attention that ye may hear and understand the remainder of my words which i shall speak unto you for behold if the knowledge of the goodness of god at this time has awakened you to a sense of your nothingness and your worthless and fallen state i say unto you if ye have come to a knowledge of the goodness of god and his matchless power and his wisdom and his patience and his long suffering towards the children of men and also the atonement which has been prepared from the foundation of the world that thereby salvation might come to him that should put his trust in the lord and should be diligent in keeping his commandments and continue in the faith even unto the end of his life i mean the life of the mortal body i say that this is the man who receiveth salvation through the atonement which was prepared from the foundation of the world for all mankind, which ever were since the fall of Adam, who are, whoever shall be, even unto the end of the world. And this is the means whereby salvation cometh. And there is none other salvation save this which hath been spoken of. Neither are there any conditions whereby a man can be saved, except the conditions which I have told you believe in god believe that he is and that he created all things both in heaven and in earth believe that he has all wisdom and all power both in heaven and in earth believe that man doth not comprehend all the things which the lord can comprehend and again believe that ye must repent of your sins and forsake them and humble yourself before god and ask in sincerity of heart that he would forgive you and now if you believe all these things see that ye do them and again i say unto you as i have said before that as ye have come to the knowledge of the glory of god or if ye have known of his goodness and have tasted of his love and have received a remission of your sins which causeth such exceedingly great joy in your souls even so i would that ye should remember and always retain in remembrance the greatness of god and your own nothingness and his goodness and long suffering towards you unworthy creatures and humble yourselves even in the depths of humility calling on the name of the lord daily and standing steadfastly in the faith of that which is to come which was spoken by the mouth of the angel and behold i say unto you that if you do this ye shall always rejoice and be filled with the love of god and always retain a remission of your sins and ye shall grow in the knowledge of the glory of him that created you or in knowledge of that which is just and true and ye will not have a mind to injure one another but to live peaceably and to render to every man according to that which is his due and ye will not suffer your children that they go hungry or naked neither will ye suffer that they transgress the laws of god and fight and quarrel one with another and serve the devil who is the master of sin or who is the evil spirit which hath been spoken of by our fathers he being an enemy to all righteousness but you will teach them to walk in the ways of truth and soberness you will teach them to love one another and to serve one another and also you yourselves will succor those that stand in need of your succor you will administer of your substance unto him that standeth in need and you will not suffer that the beggar putteth up his petition to you in vain and turn him out to perish perhaps thou shalt say the man has brought upon himself his misery therefore i will stay my hand and will not give unto him of my food nor impart of him of my substance that he may not suffer for his punishments are just but i say unto you o man whosoever doeth this the same hath great cause to repent and except he repenteth of that which he hath done he perisheth for ever and hath no interest in the kingdom of god for behold are we not all beggars do we not all depend upon the same being even god for all the substance which we have for both food and raiment for gold and for silver and for all the riches which we have of every kind and behold even at this time 
ye have been calling on his name and begging for a remission of your sins and has he suffered that ye have begged in vain nay he has poured out of his spirit upon you and has caused that your heart should be filled with joy and has caused that your mouth should be stopped that ye could not find utterance so exceedingly great was your joy and now if god who has created you on whom you are dependent for your lives and for all that ye have and are doth grant unto you whatsoever ye ask that is right in faith believing that ye shall receive oh then how ye ought to impart the substance that ye have one to another and if ye judge the man who putteth up his petition to you for your substance that he perish not and condemn him how much more just will your condemnation for withholding your substance which doth not belong to you but to god to whom all your life belongeth and yet ye put up no petition nor repent of the thing which thou hast done i say unto you woe be unto that man for his substance shall perish with him and now i say these things unto those who are rich as pertaining to the things of the world and again i say unto the poor ye who have not and yet have sufficient that ye remain from day to day i mean all you who deny the beggar because ye have not i would that ye say in your hearts that i give not because i have not but if i had i would give and now if ye say this in your hearts ye remain guiltless otherwise ye are condemned and your condemnation is just for ye covet that which ye have not received and now for the sake of these things which i have spoken unto you that is for the sake of retaining your remission of your sins from day to day that ye may walk guiltless before god i would that ye should impart of your substance to the poor every man according to that which he hath such as feeding the hungry clothing the naked visiting the sick and administering to their relief both spiritually and temporally according to their wants and see that all these things are done in wisdom and order for it is not requisite that a man should run faster than he has strength and again it is expedient that he should be diligent that thereby he might win the prize therefore all things must be done in order and i would that ye should remember that whosoever among you borroweth of his neighbour should return the thing that he borroweth according as he has doth agreed or else thou shalt commit sin and perhaps thou shalt cause thy neighbour to commit sin also and finally i cannot tell you all the things whereby ye may commit sin for there are diverse ways and means even so many that i cannot number them but this much i can tell you that if ye do not watch yourselves and your thoughts and your words and your deeds and observe the commandments of god and continue in the faith of what ye have heard concerning the coming of our lord even unto the end of your lives ye must perish and now o man remember and perish not mosiah chapter five and now it came to pass that when king benjamin had thus spoken to his people he sent among them desiring to know of his people if they believed the words which he had spoken unto them and they all cried with one voice saying yea we believe all the words which thou hast spoken unto us and also we know of their surety and truth because of the spirit of the lord omnipotent which has wrought a mighty change in us or in our hearts that we have no more disposition to do evil but to do good continually and we ourselves also through the infinite goodness of god and the manifestations of his spirit have great views of that which is to come and were it expedient we could prophesy of all things and it is the faith which we have had on the things which our king has spoken unto us that has brought us to this great knowledge whereby we do rejoice with such exceedingly great joy and we are willing to enter into a covenant with our god to do his will and to be obedient to his commandment in all things that he shall command us all the remainder of our days that we may not bring upon ourselves a never-ending torment as has been spoken by the angel that we may not drink out of the cup of the wrath of god and now these are the words which king benjamin desired of them and therefore he said unto them ye have spoken the words that i desired and the covenant which ye have made is a righteous covenant and now because of the covenant which ye have made ye shall be called the children of christ his sons and his daughters for behold this day he hath spiritually begotten you for ye say that your hearts are changed through the faith on his name 
therefore ye are born of him and have become his sons and his daughters and under this head ye are made free and there is no other head whereby ye can be made free there is no other name given whereby salvation cometh therefore i would that ye should take upon you the name of christ all you that have entered into the covenant with god that ye should be obedient unto the end of your lives and it shall come to pass that whosoever doeth this shall be found at the right hand of god for he shall know the name by which he is called for he shall be called by the name of christ and now it shall come to pass that whosoever shall not take upon him the name of christ must be called by some other name therefore he findeth himself on the left hand of god i would that ye should remember also that this is the name that i said i should give unto you that never should be blotted out except it be through transgression therefore take heed that ye do not transgress that the name be not blotted out of your hearts i say unto you i would that ye should remember to retain the name written always in your hearts that ye are not found on the left hand of god but that ye hear and know the voice by which ye shall be called and also the name by which he shall call you for how knoweth a man the master when he has not served and who is a stranger unto him and is far from the thoughts and intents of his heart and again doth a man take an ass which belongs to his neighbor and keep him i say unto you nay he will not even suffer that he shall feed among his flocks but i will drive him away and cast him out i say unto you that even so shall it be among you if you know not the name by which ye are called therefore i would that ye should be steadfast and immovable always abounding in good works that christ the lord god omnipotent may seal you this that ye may be brought to heaven that ye may have everlasting salvation and eternal life through the wisdom and power and justice and mercy of him who created all things in heaven and in earth who is god above all amen mosiah chapter six and now king benjamin thought it was expedient after having finished speaking to the people that he should take the names of all those who had entered into a covenant with god to keep his commandments and it came to pass that there was not one soul except it were little children who had entered into the covenant and had taken upon them the name of christ and again it came to pass that when king benjamin had made an end of all these things and had consecrated his son mosiah to be a ruler and a king over his people and had given him all the charges concerning the kingdom and also had appointed priests to teach the people that thereby they might hear and know the commandments of god and to stir them up in remembrance of the oath which they had made he dismissed the multitude and they returned every one according to their families to their own houses and mosiah began to reign in his father's stead and he began to reign in the thirtieth year of his age making in the whole about four hundred and seventy-six years from the time that lehi left jerusalem and king benjamin lived three years and he died and it came to pass that king mosiah did walk in the ways of the lord and did observe his judgments and his statutes and did keep his commandments and all things whatsoever he commanded him and king mosiah did cause his people that they should till the earth and he also himself did till the earth that thereby he might not become burdensome to his people that he might do according to that which his father had done in all things and there was no contention among all his people for the space of three years mosiah chapter seven and now it came to pass that after king mosiah had had a continual peace for the space of three years he was desirous to know concerning the people who went up to dwell in the land of lehi nephi or in the city of lehi nephi for his people had heard nothing from them from the time they left the land of zarahemla therefore they wearied him with their teasings and it came to pass that king mosiah granted that sixteen of their strong men might go up to the land of lehi nephi to inquire concerning their brethren and it came to pass that on the morrow they started to go up having with them one ammon he being a strong and mighty man and a descendant of zarahemla and he was also their leader and now they knew not the course that they should travel in the wilderness to go up to the land of lehi nephi therefore they wandered many days in the wilderness even forty days did they wander and when they had wandered forty days they came to a hill which is north of the land of shelem 
and there they pitched their tents. And Ammon took three of his brethren, and their names were Amalekai, Helam, and Hem, and they went down into the land of Nephi. And behold, they met the king of the people who were in the land of Nephi, and in the land of Shelam. And they were surrounded by the king's guard, and were taken, and were bound, and were committed to prison. And it came to pass, when they had been in prison two days, they were again brought before the king. And their bands were loosed, and they stood before the king, and were permitted, or rather commanded, that they should answer the questions which he should ask them. And he said unto them, Behold, I am Limhi, the son of Noah, who was the son of Zenith, who came up out of the land of Zarahemla to inherit this land, which was the land of their fathers, who was made a king by the voice of the people. And now, I desire to know the cause whereby you were so bold as to come near the walls of the city, when I myself was with my guards without the gate. And now for this cause have I suffered that ye should be preserved, that I might inquire of you, or else I should have caused that my guard should have put you to death. Ye are permitted to speak. And now, when Ammon saw that he was permitted to speak, he went forth and bowed himself before the king, and rising again he said, O king, I am very thankful before God this day that I am yet alive, and am permitted to speak, and I will endeavor to speak with boldness. For I am assured that if ye had known me, ye would not have suffered that I should have worn these bands. For I am Ammon, and am a descendant of Zarahemla, and have come up out of the land of Zarahemla to inquire concerning our brethren, whom Zenith brought up out of that land. And now it came to pass that after Limhi had heard the words of Ammon, he was exceedingly glad, and said, now i know of a surety that my brethren who are in the land of zarahemla are yet alive and now i will rejoice and on the morrow i will cause that my people should rejoice also for behold we are in bondage to the lamanites and are taxed with a tax which is grievous to be borne and now behold our brethren will deliver us out of our bondage or out of the hands of the lamanites and we will be their slaves for it is better that we be slaves to the nephites then to pay his tributes to the king of the Lamanites. And now King Limhi commanded his guards that they should no more bind Ammon nor his brethren, but cause that they should go to the hill which was north of Shelem, and bring their brethren into the city, that thereby they might eat and drink and rest themselves from the labors of their journey. For they had suffered many things. They had suffered hunger, thirst, and fatigue. And now it came to pass on the morrow that King Limhi sent a proclamation among all his people, that thereby they might gather themselves together to the temple to hear the words which he should speak unto them. And it came to pass that when they had gathered themselves together, that he spake unto them in this wise, saying, O ye my people, lift up your heads and be comforted. For behold, the time is at hand, or is not far distant, when we shall no longer be in subjection to our enemies, notwithstanding our many strugglings, which have been in vain. Yet I trust there remaineth an effectual struggle to be made. Therefore lift up your heads and rejoice, and put your trust in God, in that God who is the God of Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and also that God who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, and caused that they should walk through the Red Sea on dry ground, and fed them with manna that they might not perish in the wilderness. And many more things did he do for them. And again, that same God has brought our fathers out of the land of Jerusalem, and has kept and preserved his people even until now. And behold, it is because of our iniquities and abominations that he has brought us into bondage. And ye all are witnesses this day that Zenith, who was made king over this people, he being overzealous to inherit the land of his fathers, Therefore, being deceived by the cunning and craftiness of King Laman, who having entered into a treaty with King Zenith, and having yielded up into his hands the possessions of part of the land, or even the city of Lehi-Nephi, and the city of Shelem, and the land run about. And all this he did for the sole purpose of bringing this people into subjection or into bondage. And behold, we at this time do pay tribute to the king of the Lamanites to the amount of one half of our corn and our barley, and even all our grain of every kind and one half of all the increase of our flocks and our herds, and even one half of all we have or possess, the king of the Lamanites doth exact of us or our lives. And now is not this grievous to be borne, and is not this our affliction great? 
now behold how great reason we have to mourn yea i say unto you great are the reasons which we have to mourn for behold how many of our brethren have been slain and their blood has been spilt in vain and all because of iniquity for if this people had not fallen into transgression the lord would not have suffered that this great evil should come upon them but behold they would not hearken unto his words but there arose contentions among them even so that they did shed blood among themselves and a prophet of the lord have they slain yea a chosen man of god who told them of their wickedness and abominations and prophesied of many things which are to come yea even the coming of christ and because he said unto them that christ was the god the father of all things and said he should take upon him the image of man and it should be the image after which man was created in the beginning or in other words he said that man was created after the image of god and that god should come down among the children of men and take upon him flesh and blood and go forth upon the face of the earth and now because he said this they did put him to death and many more things did they do which brought down the wrath of god upon them therefore who on earth that they are in bondage and that they are smitten with sore afflictions for behold the lord hath said i will not succor my people in the day of their transgression but i will hedge up their ways that they prosper not and their doing shall be as a stumbling block before them and again he saith if my people shall sow filthiness they shall reap and the chaff thereof is in the whirlwind and the effect thereof is poison and again he saith if my people shall sow filthiness they shall reap the east wind which bringeth immediate destruction and now behold the promise of the lord is fulfilled and ye are smitten and afflicted but if ye will turn to the lord with full purpose of heart and put your trust in him and serve him with all diligence of mind if ye do this he will according to his own will and pleasure deliver you out of bondage end of mosiah chapters four through seven Recording by Kesley Peterson Mosiah chapters 8 through 11 of the Book of Mormon This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Jared Hess The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith Mosiah chapters 8 through 11. Mosiah chapter 8. And it came to pass that after King Limhi had made an end of speaking to his people, for he spake many things unto them, and only a few of them have I written in this book, he told his people all the things concerning their brethren who were in the land of Zarahemla. And he caused that Ammon should stand up before the multitude and rehearse unto them all that had happened unto their brethren from the time that Zenith went up out of the land, even until the time that he himself came up out of the land. And he also rehearsed unto them the last words which King Benjamin had taught them, and explained them to the people of King Limhi, so that they might understand all the words which he spake. And it came to pass that after he had done all this, that King Limhi dismissed the multitude, and caused that they should return every one unto his own house. And it came to pass that he caused that the plates which contained the record of his people from the time that they left the land of Zarahemla should be brought before Ammon, that he might read them. Now as soon as Ammon had read the record, the king inquired of him to know if he could interpret languages, and Ammon told him that he could not. And the king said unto him, Being grieved for the afflictions of my people, I caused that forty and three of my people should take a journey into the wilderness, that thereby they might find the land of Zarahemla, that we might appeal unto our brethren, to deliver us out of bondage. And they were lost in the wilderness for the space of many days, yet they were diligent and found not the land of Zarahemla, but returned to this land, having travelled in a land among many waters, having discovered a land which was covered with bones of men and of beasts, and was also covered with ruins of buildings of every kind, having discovered a land which had been peopled with a people who were as numerous as the hosts of Israel. And for a testimony that the things that they had said are true, they have brought twenty-four plates which are filled with engravings, and they are of pure gold. And behold, also they have brought breastplates, which are large, and are of brass and of copper, and are perfectly sound, 
and again they have brought swords the hilts thereof have perished and the blades thereof were cankered with rust and there is no one in the land that is able to interpret the language or the engravings that are on the plates therefore i said unto thee canst thou translate and i say unto thee again knowest thou of any one that can translate for i am desirous that these records should be translated into our language for perhaps they will give us a knowledge of a remnant of the people who have been destroyed from whence these records came or perhaps they will give us a knowledge of this very people who have been destroyed and i am desirous to know the cause of their destruction now ammon said unto him i can assuredly tell thee o king of a man that can translate the records for he has wherewith that he can look and translate all records that are of ancient date and it is a gift from god and the things are called interpreters and no man can look in them except he be commanded lest he should look for that he ought not and he should perish and whosoever is commanded to look in them the same is called the seer and behold the king of the people who are in the land of zarahemla is the man that is commanded to do these things and who has this high gift from god and the king said that a seer is greater than a prophet and ammon said that a seer is a revelator and a prophet also and a gift which is greater can no man have except he should possess the power of god which no man can yet a man may have great power given him from god but a seer can know of things which are past and also of things which are to come and by them shall all things be revealed or rather shall secret things be made manifest and hidden things shall come to light and things which are not known shall be made known by them and also things shall be made known by them which otherwise could not be known thus god has provided a means that man through faith might work mighty miracles therefore he becometh a great benefit to his fellow beings and now when ammon had made an end of speaking these words the king rejoiced exceedingly and gave thanks to god saying doubtless a great mystery is contained within these plates and these interpreters were doubtless prepared for the purpose of unfolding all such mysteries to the children of men oh how marvellous are the works of the lord and how long doth he suffer with his people yea and how blind and impenetrable are the understandings of the children of men for they will not seek wisdom neither do they desire that she should rule over them yea they are as a wild flock which fleeth from the shepherd and scattereth and are driven and are devoured by the beasts of the forest mosiah chapter nine i zenith having been taught in all the language of the nephites and having had a knowledge of the land of nephi or of the land of our father's first inheritance and having been sent as a spy among the lamanites that i might spy out their forces that our army might come upon them and destroy them but when i saw that which was good among them i was desirous that they should not be destroyed therefore i contended with my brethren in the wilderness for i would that our ruler should make a treaty with them but he being an austere and a bloodthirsty man commanded that i should be slain but i was rescued by the shedding of much blood for father fought against father and brother against brother until the greater number of our army was destroyed in the wilderness and we returned those of us that were spared to the land of zarahemla to relate that tale to their wives and their children and yet i being overzealous to inherit the land of our fathers collected as many as were desirous to go up to possess the land and started again on our journey into the wilderness to go up to the land but we were smitten with famine and sore afflictions for we were slow to remember the lord our god nevertheless after many days wandering in the wilderness we pitched our tents in the place where our brethren were slain which was near to the land of our fathers and it came to pass that i went again with four of my men into the city in unto the king that i might know of the disposition of the king and that i might know if i might go in with my people and possess the land in peace and i went in unto the king and he covenanted with me that i might possess the land of lehi nephi and the land of shilom and he also commanded that his people should depart out of the land and i and my people went into the land that we might possess it and we began to build buildings 
and to repair the walls of the city, yea, even the walls of the city of Lehi-Nephi, and the city of Shilom. And we began to till the ground, yea, even with all manner of seeds, with seeds of corn, and of wheat, and of barley, and with neas, and with shium, and with seeds of all manner of fruits. And we did begin to multiply and prosper in the land. Now it was the cunning and the craftiness of King Laman to bring my people into bondage, that he yielded up the land that we might possess it. Therefore it came to pass that after we had dwelt in the land for the space of twelve years, that King Laman began to grow uneasy, lest by any means my people should wax strong in the land, and that they could not overpower them and bring them into bondage. Now they were a lazy and an idolatrous people, therefore they were desirous to bring us into bondage, that they might glut themselves with the labors of our hands, yea, that they might feast themselves upon the flocks of our fields. Therefore it came to pass that King Laman began to stir up his people, that they should contend with my people, therefore there began to be wars and contentions in the land. For in the thirteenth year of my reign in the land of Nephi, away on the south of the land of Shilom, when my people were watering and feeding their flocks and tilling their lands, a numerous host of Lamanites came upon them and began to slay them, and to take off their flocks and the corn of their fields. Yea, and it came to pass that they fled, all that were not overtaken, even into the city of Nephi, and they did call upon me for protection. And it came to pass that I did arm them with bows, and with arrows, with swords, and with scimitars, and with clubs, and with slings, and with all manner of weapons which we could invent. And I and my people did go forth against the Lamanites to battle. Yea, in the strength of the Lord did we go forth to battle against the Lamanites. For I and my people did cry mightily to the Lord that he would deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. For we were awakened to a remembrance of the deliverance of our fathers, and God did hear our cries, and did answer our prayers, and we did go forth in his might. Yea, we did go forth against the Lamanites, and in one day and a night we did slay three thousand and forty-three. We did slay them even until we had driven them out of our land. And I myself with mine own hands did help to bury their dead. And behold, to our great sorrow and lamentation, two hundred and seventy-nine of our brethren were slain. Mosiah chapter 10 And it came to pass that we again began to establish the kingdom, and we again began to possess the land in peace. And I caused that there should be weapons of war made of every kind, that thereby I might have weapons for my people against the time the Lamanites should come up again to war against my people. And I set guards round about the land, that the Lamanites might not come upon us again unawares and destroy us. And thus I did guard my people and my flocks, and keep them from falling into the hands of our enemies. And it came to pass that we did inherit the land of our fathers, for many years, yea, for the space of twenty and two years. And I did cause that the men should till the ground, and raise all manner of grain, and all manner of fruit of every kind. And I did cause that the women should spin, and toil, and work, and work all manner of fine linen, yea, and cloth of every kind, that we might clothe our nakedness. And thus we did prosper in the land, Thus we did have continual peace in the land for the space of twenty and two years. And it came to pass that King Laman died, and his son began to reign in his stead. And he began to stir his people up in rebellion against my people. Therefore they began to prepare for war, and to come up to battle against my people. But I had sent my spies out round about the land of Shemlon, that I might discover their preparations, that I might guard against them that they might not come upon my people and destroy them. And it came to pass that they came up upon the north of the land of Shilom, with their numerous hosts, men armed with bows, and with arrows, and with swords, and with scimitars, and with stones, and with slings, and they had their heads shaved that they were naked, and they were girded with a leathern girdle about their loins. And it came to pass that I caused that the women and children of my people should be hid in the wilderness, and I also caused that all my old men that could bear arms, and also all my young men that were able to bear arms, should gather themselves together to go to battle against the Lamanites, and I did place them in their ranks, every man according to his age. 
and it came to pass that we did go up to battle against the Lamanites, and I, even I in my old age, did go up to battle against the Lamanites, and it came to pass that we did go up in the strength of the Lord to battle. Now the Lamanites knew nothing concerning the Lord, nor the strength of the Lord, therefore they depended upon their own strength, yet they were a strong people as to the strength of men. They were a wild and ferocious and a bloodthirsty people, believing in the tradition of their fathers, which is this, believing that they were driven out of the land of Jerusalem because of the iniquities of their fathers, and that they were wronged in the wilderness by their brethren, and they were also wronged while crossing the sea, and again that they were wronged while in the land of their first inheritance after they had crossed the sea, and all this because that Nephi was more faithful in keeping the commandments of the Lord, therefore he was favored of the Lord, for the Lord heard his prayers and answered them, and he took the lead of their journey in the wilderness. And his brethren were wroth with him, because they understood not the dealings of the Lord. They were also wroth with him upon the waters, because they hardened their hearts against the Lord. And again they were wroth with him when they had arrived in the promised land, because they said that he had taken the ruling of the people out of their hands, and they sought to kill him. And again they were wroth with him, because he departed into the wilderness, as the Lord had commanded him, and took the records which were engraven on the plates of brass, for they said that he had robbed them. And thus they have taught their children that they should hate them, and that they should murder them, and that they should rob and plunder them, and do all they could to destroy them. Therefore they have an eternal hatred towards the children of Nephi. For this very cause has King Laman by his cunning and lying craftiness and his fair promises deceived me, that I have brought this my people up into this land, that they may destroy them. Yea, and we have suffered these many years in the land. And now I, Zenith, after having told all these things unto my people concerning the Lamanites, I did stimulate them to go to battle with their might, putting their trust in the Lord. Therefore we did contend with them face to face. And it came to pass that we did drive them again out of our land, and we slew them with a great slaughter, even so many that we did not number them. And it came to pass that we returned again to our own land, and my people again began to tend their flocks, and to till their ground. And now I, being old, did confer the kingdom upon one of my sons. Therefore I say no more, and may the Lord bless my people. Amen. Mosiah chapter 11 And now it came to pass that Zenith conferred the kingdom upon Noah, one of his sons. Therefore Noah began to reign in his stead, and he did not walk in the ways of his father. For behold, he did not keep the commandments of God, but he did walk after the desires of his own heart. And he had many wives and concubines, and he did cause his people to commit sin and do that which was abominable in the sight of the Lord. Yea, and they did commit whoredoms, and all manner of wickedness. And he laid a tax of one-fifth part of all they possessed, a fifth part of their gold, and of their silver, and a fifth part of their ziff, and of their copper, and of their brass, and their iron, and a fifth part of their fatlings, and also a fifth part of all their grain. And all this did he take to support himself and his wives and his concubines and also his priests, and their wives and their concubines. Thus he had changed the affairs of the kingdom. For he put down all the priests that had been consecrated by his father, and consecrated new ones in their stead, such as were lifted up in the pride of their hearts. Yea, and thus they were supported in their laziness, and in their idolatry, and in their whoredoms by the taxes which King Noah had put upon his people. Thus did the people labor exceedingly to support iniquity. Yea, and they also became idolatrous, because they were deceived by the vain and flattering words of the king and priests. For they did speak flattering things unto them, and it came to pass that King Noah built many elegant and spacious buildings, and he ornamented them with fine work of wood, and of all manner of precious things, of gold, and of silver, and of iron, and of brass, and of ziff, and of copper. And he also built him a spacious palace, and a throne in the midst thereof, all of which was of fine wood, and was ornamented with gold and silver and with precious things. 
and he also caused that his workmen should work all manner of fine work within the walls of the temple, of fine wood, and of copper, and of brass. And the seats which were set apart for the high priests, which were above all the other seats, he did ornament with pure gold, and he caused a breastwork to be built before them, that they might rest their bodies and their arms upon, while they should speak lying and vain words to his people. And it came to pass that he built a tower near the temple, yea, a very high tower, even so high that he could stand upon the top thereof, and overlook the land of Shilom, and also the land of Shemlon, which was possessed by the Lamanites, and he could even look over all the land round about. And it came to pass that he caused many buildings to be built in the land of Shilom, and he caused a great tower to be built on the hill north of the land Shilom, which had been a resort for the children of Nephi at the time they fled out of the land. And thus he did do with the riches which he obtained by the taxation of his people. And it came to pass that he placed his heart upon his riches, and he spent his time in riotous living with his wives and his concubines, and so did also his priests spend their time with harlots. And it came to pass that he planted vineyards round about in the land, and he built wine-presses, and made wine in abundance, and therefore he became a wine-bibber, and also his people. And it came to pass that the Lamanites began to come in upon his people, upon small numbers, and to slay them in their fields, and while they were tending their flocks. And King Noah sent guards round about the land to keep them off, but he did not send a sufficient number, and the Lamanites came upon them and killed them, and drove many of their flocks out of the land. Thus the Lamanites began to destroy them, and to exercise their hatred upon them. And it came to pass that King Noah sent his armies against them, and they were driven back, or they drove them back for a time. Therefore they returned rejoicing in their spoil. And now because of this great victory they were lifted up in the pride of their hearts, they did boast in their own strength, saying that their fifty could stand against thousands of the Lamanites. And thus they did boast, and did delight in blood, and the shedding of the blood of their brethren, and this because of the wickedness of their king and priests. And it came to pass that there was a man among them whose name was Abinadi, and he went forth among them, and began to prophesy, saying, Behold, thus saith the Lord, and thus hath he commanded me, saying, Go forth, and say unto this people, Thus saith the Lord, Woe be unto this people, for I have seen their abominations, and their wickedness, and their whoredoms, and except they repent I will visit them in mine anger, and except they repent, and turn to the Lord their God, behold, I will deliver them into the hands of their enemies, yea, and they shall be brought into bondage, and they shall be afflicted by the hand of their enemies." and it shall come to pass that they shall know that I am the Lord their God, and am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of my people. And it shall come to pass that except this people repent, and turn unto the Lord their God, they shall be brought into bondage, and none shall deliver them, except it be the Lord the Almighty God. Yea, and it shall come to pass that when they shall cry unto me, I will be slow to hear their cries, Yea, and I will suffer them, that they be smitten by their enemies, and except they repent in sackcloth and ashes, and cry mightily to the Lord their God, I will not hear their prayers, neither will I deliver them out of their afflictions. And thus saith the Lord, and thus hath he commanded me. Now it came to pass that when Abinadi had spoken these words unto them, they were wroth with him, and sought to take away his life, but the Lord delivered him out of their hands. Now when King Noah had heard of the words which Abinadi had spoken unto the people, he was also wroth, and he said, Who is Abinadi, that I and my people should be judged of him? Or who is the Lord that shall bring upon my people such great affliction? I command you to bring Abinadi hither, that I may slay him, for he has said these things, that he might stir up my people to anger one with another, and to raise contentions among my people. Therefore I will slay him. Now the eyes of the people were blinded, therefore they hardened their hearts against the words of Abinadi, and they sought from that time forward to take him. And King Noah hardened his heart against the word of the Lord, and he did not repent of his evil doings. End of Mosiah chapters 8 through 11. 
Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Mosiah, chapters 12 through 15 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah, chapters 12 through 15. Mosiah, chapter 12. And it came to pass that after the space of two years, that Abinadi came among them in disguise, that they knew him not, and began to prophesy among them, saying, Thus hath the Lord commanded me, saying, Abinadi, go and prophesy unto this my people, for they have hardened their hearts against my words, they have repented not of their evil doings, therefore I will visit them in my anger, yea, in my fierce anger will I visit them in their iniquities and abominations, yea woe be unto this generation and the lord said unto me stretch forth thy hand and prophesy saying thus saith the lord it shall come to pass that this generation because of their iniquities shall be brought into bondage and shall be smitten on the cheek yea and shall be driven by men and shall be slain and the vultures of the air and the dogs yea and the wild beasts shall devour their flesh and it shall come to pass that the life of king noah shall be valued even as a garment in a hot furnace for he shall know that i am the lord and it shall come to pass that i will smite this my people with sore afflictions yea with famine and with pestilence and i will cause that they shall howl all the day long yea and i will cause that they shall have burdens lashed upon their backs and they shall be driven before like a dumb ass and it shall come to pass that i will send forth hail among them and it shall smite them, and they shall also be smitten with the east wind, and insects shall pester their land also, and devour their grain. And they shall be smitten with a great pestilence, and all this will I do because of their iniquities and abominations. And it shall come to pass that except they repent, I will utterly destroy them from off the face of the earth. Yet they shall leave a record behind them, and I will preserve them for other nations which shall possess the land, yea even this will i do that i may discover the abominations of this people to other nations and many things did abinadi prophesy against this people and it came to pass that they were angry with him and they took him and carried him bound before the king and said unto the king behold we have brought a man before thee who has prophesied evil concerning thy people and saith that god will destroy them and he also prophesieth evil concerning thy life, and saith that thy life shall be as a garment in a furnace of fire. And again he saith that thou shalt be as a stock, even as a dry stock of the field, which is run over by the beasts and trodden under foot. And again he saith that thou shalt be as the blossoms of a thistle, which, when it is fully ripe, if the wind bloweth, it is driven forth upon the face of the land and he pretendeth the lord hath spoken it and he saith all this shall come upon thee except thou repent and this because of thine iniquities and now o king what great evil hast thou done or what great sins have thy people committed that we should be condemned of god or judged of this man and now o king behold we are guiltless and thou o king hast not sinned therefore this man has lied concerning you and he has prophesied in vain and behold we are strong we shall not come into bondage or be taken captive by our enemies yea and thou hast prospered in the land and thou shalt also prosper behold here is the man we deliver him into thy hands thou mayest do with him as seemeth thee good and it came to pass that king noah caused that abinadi should be cast into prison and he commanded that the priests should gather themselves together, that he might hold a council with them what he should do with him. And it came to pass that they said unto the king, Bring him hither, that we may question him. And the king commanded that he should be brought before them. And they began to question him, that they might cross him, that thereby they might have wherewith to accuse him. But he answered them boldly, and withstood all their questions, yea, to their astonishment for he did withstand them in all their questions and did confound them in all their words and it came to pass that one of them said unto him 
what meaneth the words which are written and which have been taught by our fathers saying how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that publisheth peace that bringeth good tidings of good that publisheth salvation that saith unto zion thy god reigneth thy watchmen shall lift up the voice with the voice together shall they sing for they shall see eye to eye when the lord shall bring again zion break forth into joy sing together ye waste places of jerusalem for the lord hath comforted his people he hath redeemed jerusalem the lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our god and now abinadi said unto them are you priests and pretend to teach this people and to understand the spirit of prophesying and yet desire to know of me what these things mean i say unto you woe be unto you for perverting the ways of the lord for if ye understood these things ye have not taught them therefore ye have perverted the ways of the lord ye have not applied your hearts to understanding therefore ye have not been wise therefore what teach ye this people and they said we teach the law of moses and again he said unto them if ye teach the law of moses why do ye not keep it why do ye set your hearts upon riches why do ye commit whoredoms and spend your strength with harlots yea and cause this people to commit sin that the lord has caused to send me to prophesy against this people yea even a great evil against this people know ye not that i speak the truth yea ye know that i speak the truth and ye ought to tremble before god and it shall come to pass that ye shall be smitten for your iniquities for ye have said that ye teach the law of moses and what know ye concerning the law of moses doth salvation come by the law of moses what say ye and they answered and said that salvation did come by the law of moses but now abinadi said unto them i know if ye keep the commandments of god ye shall be saved yea if ye keep the commandments which the lord delivered unto moses in the mount of sinai saying i am the lord thy god who hath brought thee out of the land of egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything in heaven above or things which are in the earth beneath now abinadi said unto them have ye done all this i say unto you nay ye have not and have ye taught this people that they should do all these things i say unto you nay ye have not mosiah chapter thirteen and now when the king had heard these words he said unto his priests away with this fellow and slay him for what have we to do with him for he is mad and they stood forth and attempted to lay their hands on him but he withstood them and said unto them touch me not for god shall smite you if ye lay your hands upon me for i have not delivered the message which the lord sent me to deliver neither have i told you that which ye requested that i should tell therefore god will not suffer that i shall be destroyed at this time but i must fulfill the commandments wherewith god has commanded me and because i have told you the truth ye are angry with me and again because i have spoken the word of god ye have judged me that i am mad now it came to pass after abinadi had spoken these words that the people of king noah durst not lay their hands on him for the spirit of the lord was upon him and his face shone with exceeding lustre even as moses's did while in the mount of sinai while speaking with the lord and he spake with power and authority from god and he continued his words saying ye see that ye have not power to slay me therefore i finish my message yea and i perceive that it cuts you to your hearts because i tell you the truth concerning your iniquities yea and my words fill you with wonder and amazement and with anger but i finish my message and then it matters not whither i go if it so be that i am saved but this much i tell you what you do with me after this shall be a type and a shadow of things which are to come and now i read unto you the remainder of the commandments of god for i perceive that they are not written in your hearts i perceive that ye have studied and taught iniquity the most part of your lives and now ye remember that i said unto you thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of things which are in heaven above or which are in the earth beneath or which are in the water under the earth 
and again thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day, the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all that in them is. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And it came to pass that after Abinadi had made an end of these sayings, that he said unto them, Have ye taught this people that they should observe to do all these things, for to keep these commandments? I say unto you, Nay. For if ye had, the Lord would not have caused me to come forth, and to prophesy evil concerning this people. And now ye have said that salvation cometh by the law of Moses. I say unto you, that it is expedient that ye should keep the law of Moses as yet. But I say unto you that the time shall come when it shall no more be expedient to keep the law of Moses. And moreover, I say unto you that salvation doth not come by the law alone. And were it not for the atonement which God himself shall make for the sins and iniquities of his people, that they must unavoidably perish, notwithstanding the law of Moses. And now I say unto you that it was expedient that there should be a law given to the children of Israel, yea, even a very strict law, for they were a stiff-necked people, quick to do iniquity, and slow to remember the Lord their God. Therefore there was a law given them, yea, a law of performances and of ordinances, a law which they were to observe strictly from day to day, to keep them in remembrance of God and their duty towards him. But behold, I say unto you that all these things were types of things to come. And now did they understand the law? I say unto you, Nay. They did not all understand the law, and this because of the hardness of their hearts, for they understood not that there could not any man be saved, except it were through the redemption of God. For behold, did not Moses prophesy unto them concerning the coming of the Messiah, and that God should redeem his people? Yea, and even all the prophets who have prophesied ever since the world began, have they not spoken more or less concerning these things? Have they not said that God himself should come down among the children of men, and take upon him the form of man, and go forth in mighty power upon the face of the earth? Yea, and have they not said also that he should bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, and that he himself should be oppressed and afflicted? Mosiah chapter 14 Yea, even doth not Isaiah say, who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised, and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely, he has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquities of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. 
he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb so he opened not his mouth he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgressions of my people was he stricken and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no evil neither was any deceit in his mouth yet it pleased the lord to bruise him he hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin he shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the lord shall prosper in his hand he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors mosiah chapter fifteen and now abinadi said unto them i would that ye should understand that god himself shall come down among the children of men and shall redeem his people and because he dwelleth in flesh he shall be called the son of god and having subjected the flesh to the will of the father being the father and the son the father because he was conceived by the power of god and the son because of the flesh thus becoming the father and son and they are one god yea the very eternal father of heaven and of earth and thus the flesh becoming subject to the spirit or the son to the father being one god suffereth temptation and yieldeth not to the temptation but suffereth himself to be mocked and scourged and cast out and disowned by his people and after all this after working many mighty miracles among the children of men he shall be led yea even as isaiah said as a sheep before the shearer is dumb so he opened not his mouth yea even so he shall be led crucified and slain the flesh becoming subject even unto death the will of the son being swallowed up in the will of the father and thus god breaketh the bands of death having gained the victory over death giving the son power to make intercession for the children of men having ascended into heaven having the bowels of mercy being filled with compassion towards the children of men standing betwixt them and justice having broken the bands of death taken upon himself their iniquity and their transgressions having redeemed them and satisfied the demands of justice and now i say unto you who shall declare his generation behold i say unto you that when his soul has been made an offering for sin he shall see his seed and now what say ye and who shall be his seed behold i say unto you that whosoever has heard the words of the prophets yea all the holy prophets who have prophesied concerning the coming of the lord i say unto you that all those who have hearkened unto their words and believed that the lord would redeem his people and have looked forward to that day for a remission of their sins i say unto you that these are his seed or they are heirs of the kingdom of god for these are they whose sins he has borne these are they for whom he has died to redeem them from their transgressions and now are they not his seed yea and are not the prophets every one that has opened his mouth to prophesy that has not fallen into transgression i mean all the holy prophets ever since the world began i say unto you that they are his seed and these are they who have published peace who have brought good tidings of good who have published salvation and said unto zion thy god reigneth and oh how beautiful upon the mountains were their feet and again how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those that are still publishing peace and again how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of those who shall hereafter publish peace yea from this time henceforth and forever and behold i say unto you this is not all for oh how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings that is the founder of peace yea even the lord who has redeemed his people yea him who has granted salvation unto his people for were it not for the redemption which he hath made for his people which was prepared from the foundation of the world 
I say unto you, were it not for this, all mankind must have perished. But behold, the bands of death shall be broken, and the sun reigneth, and hath power over the death. Therefore he bringeth to pass the resurrection of the dead. And there cometh a resurrection, even a first resurrection, yea, even a resurrection of those that have been, and who are, and who shall be, even until the resurrection of Christ, for so shall he be called. And now the resurrection of all the prophets and all those that have believed in their words, or all those that have kept the commandments of God, shall come forth in the first resurrection. Therefore they are the first resurrection. They are raised to dwell with God who has redeemed them. Thus they have eternal life through Christ, who has broken the bands of death. And these are those who have part in the first resurrection. And these are they that have died before Christ came in their ignorance, not having salvation declared unto them. And thus the Lord bringeth about the restoration of these. And they have a part in the first resurrection, or have eternal life, being redeemed by the Lord. And little children also have eternal life. But behold, and fear, and tremble before God, for ye ought to tremble. For the Lord redeemeth none such that rebel against him, and die in their sins. Yea, even all those that have perished in their sins ever since the world began, that have willfully rebelled against God, that have known the commandments of God, and would not keep them. These are they that have no part in the first resurrection. Therefore ought ye not to tremble, for salvation cometh to none such. For the Lord hath redeemed none such. Yea, neither can the Lord redeem such, for he cannot deny himself, for he cannot deny justice when it has its claim. And now I say unto you, that the time shall come that the salvation of the Lord shall be declared to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Yea, Lord, thy watchmen shall lift up their voice, with the voice together shall they sing, for they shall see eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people, he hath redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. End of Mosiah chapters 12 through 15, recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Mosiah chapters 16 through 19 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah chapters 16 through 19. Mosiah chapter 16. And now it came to pass that after Abinadi had spoken these words, he stretched forth his hand and said, The time shall come when all shall see the salvation of the Lord, when every nation, kindred, tongue, and people shall see eye to eye, and shall confess before God that his judgments are just. And then shall the wicked be cast out, and they shall have cause to howl, and weep, and wail, and gnash their teeth, and this because they would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Therefore the Lord redeemeth them not. For they are carnal and devilish, and the devil has power over them. Yea, even that old serpent that did beguile our first parents, which was the cause of their fall, which was the cause of all mankind becoming carnal, sensual, devilish, knowing evil from good, subjecting themselves to the devil. Thus all mankind were lost, and behold, they would have been endlessly lost, were it not that God redeemed his people from their lost and fallen state. But remember that he that persists in his own carnal nature, and goes on in the ways of sin and rebellion against God, remaineth in his fallen state, and the devil hath all power over him. Therefore he is as though there was no redemption made, being an enemy to God, and also is the devil an enemy to God. And now if Christ had not come into the world, speaking of things to come as though they had already come, there could have been no redemption. And if Christ had not risen from the dead, or have broken the bands of death, that the grave should have no victory, and that death should have no sting, there could have been no resurrection. But 
there is a resurrection therefore the grave hath no victory and the sting of death is swallowed up in christ he is the light and the life of the world yea a light that is endless that can never be darkened yea and also a life which is endless that there can be no more death even this mortal shall put on immortality and this corruption shall put on incorruption and shall be brought to stand before the bar of god to be judged of him according to their works whether they be good or whether they be evil if they be good to the resurrection of endless life and happiness and if they be evil to the resurrection of endless damnation being delivered up to the devil who hath subjected them which is damnation having gone according to their own carnal wills and desires having never called upon the lord while the arms of mercy were extended towards them for the arms of mercy were extended towards them and they would not they being warned of their iniquities and yet they would not depart from them and they were commanded to repent and yet they would not repent and now ought ye not to tremble and repent of your sins and remember that only in and through christ ye can be saved therefore if ye teach the law of moses also teach that it is a shadow of those things which are to come teach them that redemption cometh through christ the lord who is the very eternal father amen mosiah chapter seventeen and now it came to pass that when abinadi had finished these sayings that the king commanded that the priest should take him and cause that he should be put to death but there was one among them whose name was alma he also being a descendant of nephi and he was a young man and he believed the words which abinadi had spoken for he knew concerning the iniquity which abinadi has testified against them therefore he began to plead with the king that he would not be angry with abinadi but suffer that he might depart in peace but the king was more wroth and caused that alma should be cast out from among them and sent his servants after him that they might slay him but he fled from before them and hid himself that they found him not and he being concealed for many days did write all the words which abinadi had spoken and it came to pass that the king caused that his guards should surround abinadi and take him and they bound him and cast him into prison and after three days having counseled with his priests he caused that he should again be brought before him and he said unto him abinadi we have found an accusation against thee and thou art worthy of death for thou hast said that god himself should come down among the children of men and now for this cause thou shalt be put to death unless thou wilt recall all the words which thou hast spoken evil concerning me and my people now abinadi said unto him i say unto you i will not recall the words which i have spoken unto you concerning this people for they are true and that ye may know of their surety i have suffered myself that i have fallen into your hands yea and i will suffer even until death and i will not recall my words and they shall stand as a testimony against you and if ye slay me ye will shed innocent blood and this shall also stand as a testimony against you at the last day and now king noah was about to release him for he feared his word for he feared that the judgments of god would come upon him but the priests lifted up their voices against him and began to accuse him saying he has reviled the king therefore the king was stirred up in anger against him and he delivered him up that he might be slain and it came to pass that they took him and bound him and scourged his skin with faggots yea even unto death and now when the flames began to scorch him he cried unto them saying behold even as ye have done unto me so shall it come to pass that thy seed shall cause that many shall suffer the pains that i do suffer even the pains of death by fire and this because they believe in the salvation of the lord their god and it will come to pass that ye shall be afflicted with all manner of diseases because of your iniquities yea and ye shall be smitten on every hand and shall be driven and scattered to and fro even as a wild flock is driven by wild and ferocious beasts 
and in that day ye shall be hunted, and ye shall be taken by the hand of your enemies, and then ye shall suffer, as I suffer, the pains of death by fire. Thus God executeth vengeance upon those that destroy his people. O God, receive my soul. And now when Abinadi had said these words, he fell, having suffered death by fire yea, having been put to death because he would not deny the commandments of God, having sealed the truth of his words by his death. Mosiah chapter 18 And now it came to pass that Alma, who had fled from the servants of King Noah, repented of his sins and iniquities, and went about privately among the people, and began to teach the words of Abinadi, yea, concerning that which was to come, and also concerning the resurrection of the dead and the redemption of the people, which was to be brought to pass through the power and sufferings and death of Christ, and his resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as many as would hear his word he did teach, and he taught them privately, that it might not come to the knowledge of the king, and many did believe his words. And it came to pass that as many as did believe him did go forth to a place which was called Mormon, having received its name from the king, being in the borders of the land, having been infested by times or at seasons by wild beasts. Now there was in Mormon a fountain of pure water, and Alma resorted thither, there being near the water a thicket of small trees, where he did hide himself in the daytime from the searches of the king. And it came to pass that as many as believed him went thither to hear his words, and it came to pass, after many days there were a goodly number gathered together at the place of Mormon to hear the words of Alma. Yea, all were gathered together that believed on his word to hear him. And he did teach them, and did preach unto them repentance and redemption and faith on the Lord. And it came to pass that he said unto them, Behold, here are the waters of Mormon. For thus were they called. And now as ye are desirous to come into the fold of God, and to be called his people, and are willing to bear one another's burdens, that they may be light, yea, and are willing to mourn with those that mourn, yea, and comfort those that stand in need of comfort, and to stand as witnesses of God at all times, and in all things, and in all places that ye may be in, even until death, that ye may be redeemed of God, and be numbered with those of the first resurrection, that ye may have eternal life. Now I say unto you, if this be the desire of your hearts, what have you against being baptized in the name of the Lord, as a witness before him, that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his Spirit more abundantly upon you? And now, when the people had heard these words, they clapped their hands for joy and exclaimed, This is the desire of our hearts. And now it came to pass that Alma took Helam, he being one of the first, and went and stood forth in the water and cried, saying, O Lord, pour out thy spirit upon thy servant, that he may do this work with holiness of heart. And when he had said these words, the spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he said, Helam, I baptize thee, having authority from the Almighty God, as a testimony that ye have entered into a covenant to serve him, until you are dead as to the mortal body. And may the Spirit of the Lord be poured out upon you, and may he grant unto you eternal life through the redemption of Christ, whom he has prepared from the foundation of the world. And after Alma had said these words, both Alma and Helam were buried in the water, and they arose and came forth out of the water rejoicing, being filled with the Spirit. And again Alma took another, and went forth a second time into the water, and baptized him according to the first, only he did not bury himself again in the water. And after this manner he did baptize every one that went forth to the place of Mormon. And they were in number about two hundred and four souls. Yea, and they were baptized in the waters of Mormon and were filled with the grace of God. And they were called the Church of God, or the Church of Christ, from that time forward. And it came to pass that whosoever was baptized by the power and authority of God was added to his church. And it came to pass that Alma, having authority from God, 
ordained priests, even one priest to every fifty of their number, did he ordain to preach unto them, and to teach them concerning the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And he commanded them that they should teach nothing, save it were the things which he had taught, and which had been spoken by the mouth of the holy prophets. Yea, even he commanded them that they should preach nothing, save it were repentance and faith on the Lord, who had redeemed his people. And he commanded them that there should be no contention, one with another, but that they should look forward with one eye, having one faith and one baptism, having their hearts knit together in unity and in love one towards another. And thus he commanded them to preach, and thus they became the children of God. And he commanded them that they should observe the Sabbath day, and keep it holy, and also every day they should give thanks to the Lord their God. And he also commanded them that the priests whom he had ordained should labor with their own hands for their support. And there was one day in every week that was set apart that they should gather themselves together to teach the people, and to worship the Lord their God, and also, as often as it was in their power, to assemble themselves together. And the priests were not to depend upon the people for their support, but for their labor they were to receive the grace of God, that they might wax strong in the Spirit having the knowledge of God, that they might teach with power and authority from God. And again Alma commanded that the people of the church should impart of their substance, every one according to that which he had. If he have more abundantly, he should impart more abundantly. And of him that had but little, but little should be required. And to him that had not, should be given. And thus they should impart of their substance of their own free will, and good desires towards God, and to those priests that stood in need, yea, and to every needy, naked soul. And this he said unto them, having been commanded of God. And they did walk uprightly before God, imparting to one another both temporally and spiritually according to their needs and their wants. And now it came to pass that all this was done in Mormon, yea, by the waters of Mormon, in the forest that was near the waters of Mormon, Yea, the place of Mormon, the waters of Mormon, the forest of Mormon, how beautiful are they to the eyes of them, who there came to the knowledge of their Redeemer. Yea, and how blessed are they, for they shall sing to his praise for ever. And these things were done in the borders of the land, that they might not come to the knowledge of the king. But behold, it came to pass, that the king, having discovered a movement among the people, sent his servants to watch them. Therefore, on the day that they were assembling themselves together to hear the word of the Lord, they were discovered unto the king. And now the king said that Alma was stirring up the people to rebellion against him. Therefore he sent his army to destroy them. And it came to pass that Alma and the people of the Lord were apprised of the coming of the king's army. Therefore they took their tents and their families and departed into the wilderness. And they were in number about four hundred and fifty souls. Mosiah chapter 19 And it came to pass that the army of the king returned, having searched in vain for the people of the Lord. And now, behold, the forces of the king were small, having been reduced, and there began to be a division among the remainder of the people. And the lesser part began to breathe out threatenings against the king, and there began to be a great contention among them. And now there was a man among them whose name was Gideon, and he, being a strong man, and an enemy to the king. Therefore he drew his sword, and swore in his wrath that he would slay the king. And it came to pass that he fought with the king, and when the king saw that he was about to overpower him, he fled and ran and got upon the tower which was near the temple. And Gideon pursued after him, and was about to get upon the tower to slay the king. And the king cast his eyes round about towards the land of Shemlon, and behold, the army of the Lamanites was within the borders of the land. And now the king cried out in the anguish of his soul, saying, Gideon, spare me, for the Lamanites are upon us, and they will destroy us. Yea, they will destroy my people. And now the king was not so much concerned about his people as he was about his own life. Nevertheless, Gideon did spare his life. And the king commanded the people that they should flee before the Lamanites. And he himself did go before them, and they did flee into the wilderness with their women and their children. 
and it came to pass that the lamanites did pursue them and did overtake them and began to slay them now it came to pass that the king commanded them that all the men should leave their wives and their children and flee before the lamanites now there were many that would not leave them but had rather stay and perish with them and the rest left their wives and their children and fled and it came to pass that those who tarried with their wives and their children caused that their fair daughters should stand forth and plead with the lamanites that they would not slay them and it came to pass that the lamanites had compassion on them for they were charmed with the beauty of their women therefore the lamanites did spare their lives and took them captives and carried them back to the land of nephi and granted unto them that they might possess the land under the conditions that they would deliver up king noah into the hands of the lamanites and deliver up their property even one half of all they possessed one half of their gold and their silver and all their precious things and thus they should pay tribute to the king of the lamanites from year to year and now there was one of the sons of the king among those that were taken captive whose name was limhi and now limhi was desirous that his father should not be destroyed nevertheless limhi was not ignorant of the iniquities of his father he himself being a just man and it came to pass that gideon sent men into the wilderness secretly to search for the king and those that were with him and it came to pass that they met the people in the wilderness all save the king and his priests now they had sworn in their hearts that they would return to the land of nephi and if their wives and their children were slain and also those that had tarried with them that they would seek revenge and also perish with them and the king commanded them that they should not return and they were angry with the king and caused that he should suffer even unto death by fire and they were about to take the priests also and put them to death and they fled before them and it came to pass that they were about to return to the land of nephi and they met the men of gideon and the men of gideon told them of all that had happened to their wives and their children and that the lamanites had granted unto them that they might possess the land by paying a tribute to the lamanites of one half of all they possessed and the people told the men of gideon that they had slain the king and his priests had fled from them farther into the wilderness and it came to pass that after they had ended the ceremony that they returned to the land of nephi rejoicing because their wives and their children were not slain and they told gideon what they had done to the king and it came to pass that the king of the lamanites made an oath unto them that his people should not slay them and also limhi being the son of the king having the kingdom conferred upon him by the people made oath unto the king of the lamanites that his people should pay tribute unto him even one half of all they possessed and it came to pass that limhi began to establish the kingdom and to establish peace among his people and the king of the lamanites set guards round about the land that he might keep the people of limhi in the land that they might not depart into the wilderness and he did support his guards out of the tribute which he did receive from the nephites and now king limhi did have continual peace in his kingdom for the space of two years that the lamanites did not molest them nor seek to destroy them end of mosiah chapters sixteen through nineteen recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hessmess dot blogspot dot com mosiah chapters twenty through twenty three of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by jared hess the book of mormon translated by joseph smith mosiah chapters twenty through twenty three mosiah chapter twenty now there was a place in shemlon where the daughters of the lamanites did gather themselves together to sing and to dance and to make themselves merry and it came to pass that there was one day a small number of them gathered together to sing and to dance and now the priests of king noah being ashamed to return to the city of nephi yea and also fearing that the people would slay them therefore they durst not return to their wives and their children and having tarried in the wilderness and having discovered the daughters of the lamanites they laid and watched them and when there were but few of them gathered together to dance they came forth out of their secret places and took them and carried them into the wilderness 
yea, twenty and four of the daughters of the Lamanites they carried into the wilderness. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites found that their daughters had been missing, they were angry with the people of Limhi, for they thought it was the people of Limhi. Therefore they sent their armies forth, yea, even the king himself went before his people, and they went up to the land of Nephi to destroy the people of Limhi. And now Limhi had discovered them from the tower, even all their preparations for war did he discover. Therefore he gathered his people together and laid wait for them in the fields and in the forests. And it came to pass that when the Lamanites had come up, that the people of Limhi began to fall upon them from their waiting places and began to slay them. And it came to pass that the battle became exceedingly sore, for they fought like lions for their prey. And it came to pass that the people of Limhi began to drive the Lamanites before them, yet they were not half so numerous as the Lamanites. But they fought for their lives, and for their wives, and for their children. Therefore they exerted themselves, and like dragons did they fight. And it came to pass that they found the king of the Lamanites among the number of their dead. Yet he was not dead, having been wounded and left upon the ground, so speedy was the flight of his people. And they took him, and bound up his wounds, and brought him before Limhi, and said, Behold, here is the king of the Lamanites. He, having received a wound, has fallen among their dead, and they have left him. And behold, we have brought him before you, and now let us slay him. But Limhi said unto them, Ye shall not slay him, but bring him hither, that I may see him. And they brought him, and Limhi said unto him, What cause have ye to come up to war against my people? Behold, my people have not broken the oath that I made unto you. Therefore why should ye break the oath which ye made unto my people? And now the king said, I have broken the oath, because thy people did carry away the daughters of my people. Therefore in my anger I did cause my people to come up to war against thy people. And now Limhi had heard nothing concerning this matter. Therefore he said, I will search among my people, and whosoever has done this thing shall perish. Therefore he caused a search to be made among his people. Now when Gideon had heard these things, he being the king's captain, he went forth and said unto the king, I pray thee, forbear, and do not search this people, and lay not this thing to their charge. For do ye not remember the priests of thy father, whom this people sought to destroy? And are they not in the wilderness? And are not they the ones who have stolen the daughters of the Lamanites? And now, behold, and tell the king of these things, that he may tell his people that they may be pacified towards us. For behold, they are already preparing to come against us, and behold, also there are but few of us. And behold, they come with their numerous hosts, and except the king doth pacify them towards us, we must perish. For are not the words of Abinadi fulfilled, which he prophesied against us, and all this because we would not hearken unto the words of the Lord, and turn from our iniquities? And now let us pacify the king, and we fulfill the oath which we have made unto him. For it is better that we should be in bondage, than that we should lose our lives. Therefore let us put a stop to the shedding of so much blood. And now Limhi told the king all the things concerning his father, and the priests that had fled into the wilderness, and attributed the carrying away of their daughters to them. And it came to pass that the king was pacified towards his people. And he said unto them, Let us go forth to meet my people without arms, and I swear unto you with an oath that my people shall not slay thy people. And it came to pass that they followed the king, and went forth without arms to meet the Lamanites. And it came to pass that they did meet the Lamanites, and the king of the Lamanites did bow himself down before them, and did plead in behalf of the people of Limhi. And when the Lamanites saw the people of Limhi, that they were without arms, they had compassion on them, and were pacified towards them, and returned with their king in peace to their own land. Mosiah chapter 21 and it came to pass that Limhi and his people returned to the city of Nephi, and began to dwell in the land again in peace. And it came to pass that after many days the Lamanites began again to be stirred up in anger against the Nephites, and they began to come into the borders of the land round about. Now they durst not slay them, because of the oath which their king had made unto Limhi. But they would smite them on their cheeks, and exercise authority over them, and began to put heavy burdens upon their backs and drive them as they would a dumb ass. Yea, all this was done that the word of the Lord might be fulfilled. 
and now the afflictions of the nephites were great and there was no way that they could deliver themselves out of their hands for the lamanites had surrounded them on every side and it came to pass that the people began to murmur with the king because of their afflictions and they began to be desirous to go against them to battle and they did afflict the king sorely with their complaints therefore he granted unto them that they should do according to their desires and they gathered themselves together again and put on their armor and went forth against the lamanites to drive them out of their land and it came to pass that the lamanites did beat them and drove them back and slew many of them and now there was a great mourning and lamentation among the people of limhi the widow mourning for her husband the son and the daughter mourning for their father and the brothers for their brethren now there were a great many widows in the land and they did cry mightily from day to day for a great fear of the lamanites had come upon them and it came to pass that their continual cries did stir up the remainder of the people of limhi to anger against the lamanites and they went again to battle but they were driven back again suffering much loss yea they went again even the third time and suffered in the like manner and those that were not slain returned again to the city of nephi and they did humble themselves even to the dust subjecting themselves to the yoke of bondage submitting themselves to be smitten and to be driven to and fro and burdened according to the desires of their enemies and they did humble themselves even in the depths of humility and they did cry mightily to god yea even all the day long did they cry unto their god that he would deliver them out of their afflictions and now the lord was slow to hear their cry because of their iniquities nevertheless the lord did hear their cries and began to soften the hearts of the lamanites that they began to ease their burdens yet the lord did not see fit to deliver them out of bondage and it came to pass that they began to prosper by degrees in the land and began to raise grain more abundantly and flocks and herds that they did not suffer with hunger now there was a great number of women more than there was of men therefore king limhi commanded that every man should impart to the support of the widows and their children that they might not perish with hunger and this they did because of the greatness of their number that had been slain now the people of limhi kept together in a body as much as it was possible and secured their grain and their flocks and the king himself did not trust his person without the walls of the city unless he took his guards with him fearing that he might by some means fall into the hands of the lamanites and he caused that his people should watch the land round about that by some means they might take those priests that fled into the wilderness who had stolen the daughters of the lamanites and that had caused such a great destruction to come upon them for they were desirous to take them that they might punish them for they had come into the land of nephi by night and carried off their grain and many of their precious things therefore they laid wait for them and it came to pass that there was no more disturbance between the lamanites and the people of limhi even until the time that ammon and his brethren came into the land and the king having been without the gates of the city with his guard discovered ammon and his brethren and supposing them to be priests of noah therefore he caused that they should be taken and bound and cast into prison and had they been the priests of noah he would have caused that they should be put to death but when he found that they were not but that they were his brethren and had come from the land of zarahemla he was filled with exceedingly great joy now king limhi had sent previous to the coming of ammon a small number of men to search for the land of zarahemla but they could not find it and they were lost in the wilderness nevertheless they did find a land which had been peopled yea a land which was covered with dry bones yea a land which had been peopled and which had been destroyed and they having supposed it to be the land of zarahemla returned to the land of nephi having arrived in the borders of the land not many days before the coming of ammon and they brought a record with them even a record of the people whose bones they had found and it was engraven on plates of ore and now limhi was again filled with joy in learning from the mouth of ammon that king mosiah had a gift from god whereby he could interpret such engravings yea and ammon also did rejoice yet ammon and his brethren were filled with sorrow because so many of their brethren had been slain and also that king noah and his priests had caused the people to commit so many sins and iniquities against god and they also did mourn for the death of abinadi 
and also for the departure of Alma and the people that went with him, who had formed a church of God through the strength and power of God, and faith on the words which had been spoken by Abinadi. Yea, they did mourn for their departure, for they knew not whither they had fled. Now they would have gladly joined with them, for they themselves had entered into a covenant with God to serve him and keep his commandments. And now, since the coming of Ammon, King Limhi had also entered into a covenant with God, and also many of his people, to serve him and keep his commandments. And it came to pass that King Limhi and many of his people were desirous to be baptized. But there was none in the land that had authority from God, and Ammon declined doing this thing, considering himself an unworthy servant. Therefore they did not at that time form themselves into a church, waiting upon the Spirit of the Lord. Now they were desirous to become even as Alma and his brethren, who had fled into the wilderness. They were desirous to be baptized as a witness and a testimony that they were willing to serve God with all their hearts. Nevertheless they did prolong the time, and an account of their baptism shall be given hereafter. And now all the study of Ammon and his people, and King Limhi and his people, was to deliver themselves out of the hands of the Lamanites and from bondage. Mosiah chapter 22 And now it came to pass that Ammon and King Limhi began to consult with the people how they should deliver themselves out of bondage, and even they did cause that all the people should gather themselves together, and this they did that they might have the voice of the people concerning the matter. And it came to pass that they could find no way to deliver themselves out of bondage, except it were to take their women and children, and their flocks, and their herds, and their tents, and depart into the wilderness. For the Lamanites being so numerous, it was impossible for the people of Limhi to contend with them, thinking to deliver themselves out of bondage by the sword. Now it came to pass that Gideon went forth, and stood before the king, and said unto him, Now, O king, thou hast hitherto hearkened unto my words, many times when we have been contending with our brethren the Lamanites. And now, O king, if thou hast not found me to be an unprofitable servant, or if thou hast hitherto listened to my words in any degree, and they have been of service to thee, even so I desire that thou wouldst listen to my words at this time, and I will be thy servant, and deliver this people out of bondage. And the king granted unto him that he might speak. And Gideon said unto him, Behold, the back pass, through the back wall on the back side of the city. The Lamanites, or the guards of the Lamanites, by night are drunken. Therefore let us send a proclamation among all this people that they gather together their flocks and herds, that they may drive them into the wilderness by night. And I will go according to thy command, and pay the last tribute of wine to the Lamanites, and they will be drunken. And we will pass through the secret pass on the left of their camp, when they are drunken and asleep. Thus we will depart with our women and our children, our flocks and our herds, into the wilderness, and we will travel around the land of Shilom. And it came to pass that the king hearkened unto the words of Gideon. And king Limhi caused that his people should gather their flocks together, and he sent the tribute of wine to the Lamanites, and he also sent more wine as a present unto them. And they did drink freely of the wine which king Limhi did send unto them. And it came to pass that the people of king Limhi did depart by night into the wilderness with their flocks and their herds, and they went round about the land of Shilom in the wilderness, and bent their course towards the land of Zarahemla, being led by Ammon and his brethren. And they had taken all their gold and silver and their precious things which they could carry, and also their provisions with them into the wilderness, and they pursued their journey. And after being many days in the wilderness, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla, and joined Mosiah's people, and became his subjects. And it came to pass that Mosiah received them with joy, and he also received their records, and also the records which had been found by the people of Limhi. And now it came to pass, when the Lamanites had found that the people of Limhi had departed out of the land by night, that they sent an army into the wilderness to pursue them. And after they had pursued them two days, they could no longer follow their tracks. Therefore they were lost in the wilderness. Mosiah chapter 23 Now Alma, having been warned of the Lord that the armies of King Noah would come upon them, and having made it known to his people, therefore they gathered together their flocks, and took of their grain, and departed into the wilderness before the armies of King Noah. And the Lord did strengthen them, that the people of King Noah could not overtake them to destroy them. And they fled eight days' journey into the wilderness, and they came to a land, yea, even a very beautiful and pleasant land, a land of pure water. 
and they pitched their tents, and began to till the ground, and began to build buildings. Yea, they were industrious, and did labor exceedingly. And the people were desirous that Alma should be their king, for he was beloved by his people. But he said unto them, Behold, it is not expedient that we should have a king. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not esteem one flesh above another, or one man shall not think himself above another. Therefore I say unto you, It is not expedient that ye should have a king. Nevertheless, if it were possible that ye could always have just men to be your kings, it would be well for you to have a king. But remember the iniquity of King Noah and his priests. And I myself was caught in a snare, and did many things which were abominable in the sight of the Lord, which caused me sore repentance. Nevertheless, after much tribulation, the Lord did hear my cries, and did answer my prayers, and has made me an instrument in his hands in bringing so many of you to a knowledge of his truth. Nevertheless, in this I do not glory, for I am unworthy to glory of myself. And now I say unto you, ye have been oppressed by King Noah, and have been in bondage to him and his priests, and have been brought into iniquity by them. Therefore ye were bound with the bands of iniquity. And now, as ye have been delivered by the power of God out of these bonds, yea, even out of the hands of King Noah and his people, and also from the bonds of iniquity, even so I desire that ye should stand fast in this liberty wherewith ye have been made free, and that ye trust no man to be a king over you, and also trust no one to be your teacher nor your minister, except he be a man of God, walking in his ways and keeping his commandments. Thus did Alma teach his people that every man should love his neighbor as himself, that there should be no contention among them. And now Alma was their high priest, he being the founder of their church. And it came to pass that none received authority to preach or to teach except it were by him from God. Therefore he consecrated all their priests and all their teachers, and none were consecrated except they were just men. Therefore they did watch over their people, and did nourish them with things pertaining to righteousness. And it came to pass that they began to prosper exceedingly in the land, and they called the land Helam. And it came to pass that they did multiply and prosper exceedingly in the land of Helam, and they built a city which they called the city of Helam. Nevertheless the Lord seeth fit to chasten his people, yea, he trieth their patience and their faith, Nevertheless, whosoever putteth his trust in him, the same shall be lifted up at the last day. Yea, and thus it was with this people. For behold, I will show unto you that they were brought into bondage, and none could deliver them but the Lord their God, yea, even the God of Abraham, and Isaac, and of Jacob. And it came to pass that he did deliver them, and he did show forth his mighty power unto them, and great were their rejoicings. For behold, it came to pass that while they were in the land of Helam, yea, in the city of Helam, while tilling the land round about, behold, an army of the Lamanites was in the borders of the land. And it came to pass that the brethren of Alma fled from their fields and gathered themselves together in the city of Helam, and they were much frightened because of the appearance of the Lamanites. But Alma went forth and stood among them and exhorted them that they should not be frightened, but that they should remember the Lord their God, and he would deliver them. Therefore they hushed their fears, and began to cry unto the Lord that he would soften the hearts of the Lamanites, that they would spare them and their wives and their children. And it came to pass that the Lord did soften the hearts of the Lamanites, and Alma and his brethren went forth and delivered themselves up into their hands, and the Lamanites took possession of the land of Helam. Now the armies of the Lamanites, which had followed after the people of King Limhi, had been lost in the wilderness for many days. And behold, they had found those priests of King Noah in a place which they called Amulon, and they had begun to possess the land of Amulon, and had begun to till the ground. Now the name of the leader of those priests was Amulon. And it came to pass that Amulon did plead with the Lamanites, and he also sent forth their wives, who were the daughters of the Lamanites, to plead with their brethren that they should not destroy their husbands. And the Lamanites had compassion on Amulon and his brethren, and did not destroy them because of their wives. And Amulon and his brethren did join the Lamanites. And they were traveling in the wilderness in search of the land of Nephi, when they discovered the land of Helam, which was possessed by Alma and his brethren. And it came to pass that the Lamanites promised unto Alma and his brethren, that if they would show them the way which led to the land of Nephi, that they would grant unto them their lives and their liberty. 
But after Alma had shown them the way that led to the land of Nephi, the Lamanites would not keep their promise, but they set guards round about the land of Helam over Alma and his brethren. And the remainder of them went to the land of Nephi, and a part of them returned to the land of Helam, and also brought with them the wives and the children of the guards who had been left in the land. And the king of the Lamanites had granted unto Amulon that he should be a king and a ruler over his people, who were in the land of Helam. Nevertheless, he should have no power to do anything contrary to the will of the king of the Lamanites. End of Mosiah, chapters 20 through 23. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmess.blogspot.com. Mosiah chapters 24 through 27 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Mosiah chapters 24 through 27. Mosiah chapter 24. And it came to pass that Amulon did gain favor in the eyes of the king of the Lamanites. Therefore the king of the Lamanites granted unto him and his brethren that they should be appointed teachers over his people, yea, even over the people who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the land of Shilom, and in the land of Amulon. For the Lamanites had taken possession of all these lands. Therefore the king of the Lamanites had appointed kings over all these lands. And now the name of the king of the Lamanites was Laman, being called after the name of his father, and therefore he was called King Laman, and he was king over a numerous people. And he appointed teachers of the brethren of Amulon in every land which was possessed by his people. And thus the language of Nephi began to be taught among all the people of the Lamanites. And they were a people friendly one with another. Nevertheless they knew not God. Neither did the brethren of Amulon teach them anything concerning the Lord their God. Neither the law of Moses, nor did they teach them the words of Abinadi. But they taught them that they should keep their record, and that they might write one to another. And thus the Lamanites began to increase in riches, and began to trade one with another and wax great, and began to be a cunning and a wise people, as to the wisdom of the world, yea, a very cunning people, delighting in all manner of wickedness and plunder, except it were among their own brethren. And now it came to pass that Amulon began to exercise authority over Alma and his brethren, and began to persecute him and caused that his children should persecute their children. For Amulon knew Alma, that he had been one of the king's priests, and that it was he that believed the words of Abinadi, and was driven out before the king, and therefore he was wroth with him, for he was subject to King Laman. Yet he exercised authority over them, and put tasks upon them, and put taskmasters over them. And it came to pass that so great were their afflictions, that they began to cry mightily to God, and Amulon commanded them that they should stop their cries, and he put guards over them to watch them, that whosoever should be found calling upon God should be put to death. And Alma and his people did not raise their voices to the Lord their God, but did pour out their hearts to him, and he did know the thoughts of their hearts. And it came to pass that the voice of the Lord came to them in their affliction, saying, Lift up your heads, and be of good comfort, for I know of the covenant which ye have made unto me and I will covenant with my people and deliver them out of bondage. And I will also ease the burdens which are put upon your shoulders, that even you cannot feel them upon your backs, even while you are in bondage. And this will I do, that ye may stand as witnesses for me hereafter, and that ye may know of a surety that I, the Lord God, do visit my people in their afflictions. And now it came to pass that the burdens which were laid upon Alma and his brethren were made light, Yea, the Lord did strengthen them, that they could bear up their burdens with ease, and they did submit cheerfully and with patience to all the will of the Lord. And it came to pass that so great was their faith and their patience that the voice of the Lord came unto them again, saying, Be of good comfort, for on the morrow I will deliver you out of bondage. And he said unto Alma, Thou shalt go before this people, and I will go with thee and deliver this people out of bondage. Now it came to pass that Alma and his people in the night time gathered their flocks together, and also of their grain. Yea, even all the night time were they gathering the flocks together. 
and in the morning the Lord caused a deep sleep to come upon the Lamanites. Yea, and all their taskmasters were in a profound sleep. And Alma and his people departed into the wilderness, and when they had traveled all day, they pitched their tents in a valley, and they called the valley Alma, because he led their way in the wilderness. And in the valley of Alma they poured out their thanks to God, because he had been merciful unto them, and eased their burdens, and had delivered them out of bondage, for they were in bondage, and none could deliver them except it were the Lord their God. And they gave thanks to God, yea, all their men, and all their women, and all their children that could speak, lifted their voices in the praises of their God. And now the Lord said unto Alma, Haste thee, and get thou and this people out of this land, for the Lamanites have awakened, and do pursue thee. Therefore get thee out of this land, and I will stop the Lamanites in this valley, that they come no further in pursuit of this people. And it came to pass that they departed out of the valley, and took their journey into the wilderness. And after they had been in the wilderness twelve days, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla, and King Mosiah did also receive them with joy. Mosiah chapter 25 And now King Mosiah caused that all the people should be gathered together. Now there were not so many of the children of Nephi, or so many of those who were descendants of Nephi, as there were of the people of Zarahemla, who was a descendant of Mulek, and those who came with him into the wilderness. And there were not so many of the people of Nephi, and of the people of Zarahemla, as there were of the Lamanites. Yea, they were not half so numerous. And now all the people of Nephi were assembled together, and also all the people of Zarahemla, and they were gathered together in two bodies. And it came to pass that Mosiah did read and cause to be read the records of Zenith to his people. Yea, he read the records of the people of Zenith from the time that they left the land of Zarahemla until they returned again. And he also read the account of Alma and his brethren, and all their afflictions from the time that they left the land of Zarahemla until the time they returned again. And now, when Mosiah had made an end of reading the records, his people who tarried in the land were struck with wonder and amazement, for they knew not what to think. For when they beheld those that had been delivered out of bondage, they were filled with exceedingly great joy. And again, when they thought of their brethren who had been slain by the Lamanites, they were filled with sorrow, and even shed many tears of sorrow. And again, when they thought of the immediate goodness of God, and his power in delivering Alma and his brethren out of the hands of the Lamanites and of bondage, they did raise their voices and give thanks to God. And again, when they thought upon the Lamanites, who were their brethren, of their sinful and polluted state, they were filled with pain and anguish for the welfare of their souls. And it came to pass that those who were the children of Amulon and his brethren, who had taken to wife the daughters of the Lamanites, were displeased with the conduct of their fathers, and they would no longer be called by the names of their fathers. Therefore they took upon themselves the name of Nephi, that they might be called the children of Nephi, and be numbered among those who were called Nephites. And now all the people of Zarahemla were numbered with the Nephites, and this because the kingdom had been conferred upon none but those who were descendants of Nephi. And now it came to pass that when Mosiah had made an end of speaking and reading to the people, he desired that Alma should also speak to the people. And Alma did speak unto them when they were assembled together in large bodies. And he went from one body to another, preaching unto the people repentance and faith on the Lord. And he did exhort the people of Limhi and his brethren, all those who had been delivered out of bondage, that they should remember that it was the Lord that did deliver them. And it came to pass that after Alma had taught the people many things, and had made an end of speaking to them, that King Limhi was desirous that he might be baptized, and all his people were desirous that they might be baptized also. Therefore Alma did go forth into the water and did baptize them, Yea, he did baptize them after the manner he did his brethren in the waters of Mormon. Yea, and as many as he did baptize did belong to the church of God, and this because of their belief on the words of Alma. And it came to pass that King Mosiah granted unto Alma that he might establish churches throughout all the land of Zarahemla, and he gave him power to ordain priests and teachers over every church. Now this was done because there were so many people that they could not all be governed by one teacher neither could they all hear the word of God in one assembly. Therefore they did assemble themselves together in different bodies, being called churches, every church having their priests and their teachers, and every priest preaching the word according as it was delivered to him by the mouth of Alma. 
and thus notwithstanding there being many churches they were all one church yea even the church of god for there was nothing preached in all the churches except it were repentance and faith in god and now there were seven churches in the land of zarahemla and it came to pass that whosoever were desirous to take upon them the name of christ or of god they did join the churches of god and they were called the people of god and the lord did pour out his spirit upon them and they were blessed and prospered in the land mosiah chapter twenty six now it came to pass that there were many of the rising generation that could not understand the words of king benjamin being little children at the time he spake unto his people and they did not believe the tradition of their fathers they did not believe what had been said concerning the resurrection of the dead neither did they believe concerning the coming of christ and now because of their unbelief they could not understand the word of god and their hearts were hardened and they would not be baptized neither would they join the church and they were a separate people as to their faith and remained so ever after even in their carnal and sinful state for they would not call upon the lord their god and now in the reign of mosiah they were not half so numerous as the people of god but because of the dissensions among the brethren they became more numerous for it came to pass that they did deceive many with their flattering words who were in the church and had caused them to commit many sins therefore it became expedient that those who committed sin that were in the church should be admonished by the church and it came to pass that they were brought before the priests and delivered up unto the priests by the teachers and the priests brought them before alma who was the high priest now king mosiah had given alma the authority over the church and it came to pass that alma did not know concerning them but there were many witnesses against them yea the people stood and testified of their iniquity in abundance now there had not any such thing happened before in the church therefore alma was troubled in his spirit and he caused that they should be brought before the king and he said unto the king behold here are many whom we have brought before thee who are accused of their brethren yea and they have been taken in diverse iniquities and they do not repent of their iniquities therefore we have brought them before thee that thou mayest judge them according to their crimes but king mosiah said unto alma behold i judge them not therefore i deliver them into thy hands to be judged and now the spirit of alma was again troubled and he went and inquired of the lord what he should do concerning this matter for he feared that he should do wrong in the sight of god and it came to pass that after he had poured out his whole soul to god the voice of the lord came to him saying blessed art thou alma and blessed are they who were baptized in the waters of mormon thou art blessed because of thy exceeding faith in the words alone of my servant abinadi and blessed are they because of their exceeding faith in the words alone which thou hast spoken unto them and blessed art thou because thou hast established a church among this people and they shall be established and they shall be my people yea blessed is this people who are willing to bear my name for in my name shall they be called and they are mine and because thou hast inquired of me concerning the transgressor thou art blessed thou art my servant and i covenant with thee that thou shalt have eternal life and thou shalt serve me and go forth in my name and shalt gather together my sheep and he that will hear my voice shall be my sheep and him shall ye receive into the church and him will i also receive for behold this is my church whosoever is baptized shall be baptized unto repentance and whomsoever ye receive shall believe in my name and him will i freely forgive for it is i that taketh upon me the sins of the world for it is i that hath created them and it is i that granteth unto him that believeth unto the end a place at my right hand for behold in my name are they called and if they know me they shall come forth and shall have a place eternally at my right hand and it shall come to pass that when the second trump shall sound then shall they that never knew me come forth and shall stand before me and then shall they know that i am the lord their god that i am their redeemer but they would not be redeemed and then i will confess unto them that i never knew them and they shall depart into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels therefore i say unto you that he that will not hear my voice 
the same shall ye not receive into my church, for him I will not receive at the last day. Therefore I say unto you, Go, and whosoever transgresseth against me, him shall ye judge according to the sins which he has committed. And if he confess his sins before thee and me, and repenteth in the sincerity of his heart, him shall ye forgive, and I will forgive him also. Yea, and as often as my people repent, will I forgive them their trespasses against me. And ye shall also forgive one another your trespasses. For verily I say unto you, He that forgiveth not his neighbor's trespasses, when he says that he repents, the same hath brought himself under condemnation. Now I say unto you, Go. And whosoever will not repent of his sins, the same shall not be numbered among my people, and this shall be observed from this time forward. And it came to pass, when Alma had heard these words, he wrote them down, that he might have them, and that he might judge the people of that church according to the commandments of God. And it came to pass that Alma went and judged those that had been taken in iniquity according to the word of the Lord. And whosoever repented of their sins and did confess them, he did number among the people of the church. And those that would not confess their sins and repent of their iniquity, the same were not numbered among the people of the church, and their names were blotted out. And it came to pass that Alma did regulate all the affairs of the church, and they began again to have peace and to prosper exceedingly in the affairs of the church, walking circumspectly before God, receiving many and baptizing many. And now all these things did Alma and his fellow laborers do, who were over the church, walking in all diligence, teaching the word of God in all things, suffering all manner of afflictions, being persecuted by those who did not belong to the church of God. And they did admonish their brethren, and they were also admonished every one by the word of God, according to his sins, or to the sins which he had committed, being commanded of God to pray without ceasing, and to give thanks in all things. Mosiah chapter 27 And now it came to pass that the persecutions which were inflicted on the church by the unbelievers became so great that the church began to murmur and complain to their leaders concerning the matter. And they did complain to Alma, and Alma laid the case before their king Mosiah, and Mosiah consulted with his priests. And it came to pass that King Mosiah sent a proclamation throughout the land round about that there should not any unbeliever persecute any of those who belonged to the church of God. And there was a strict command throughout all the churches that there should be no persecutions among them, that there should be an equality among all men, that they should let no pride nor haughtiness disturb their peace, that every man should esteem his neighbor as himself, laboring with their own hands for their support. Yea, and all their priests and teachers should labor with their own hands for their support, in all cases, save it were in sickness or in much want. And doing these things they did abound in the grace of God. And there began to be much peace again in the land, and the people began to be very numerous, and began to scatter abroad upon the face of the earth, yea, on the north and on the south, on the east and on the west, building large cities and villages in all quarters of the land. And the Lord did visit them, and prosper them, and they became a large and wealthy people. Now the sons of Mosiah were numbered among the unbelievers, and also one of the sons of Alma was numbered among them, he being called Alma after his father. Nevertheless he became a very wicked and an idolatrous man, and he was a man of many words, and did speak much flattery to the people. Therefore he led many of the people to do after the manner of his iniquities and he became a great hinderment to the prosperity of the church of God, stealing away the hearts of the people, causing much dissension among the people, giving a chance for the enemy of God to exercise his power over them. And now it came to pass that while he was going about to destroy the church of God, for he did go about secretly with the sons of Mosiah seeking to destroy the church and to lead astray the people of the Lord, contrary to the commandments of God, or even the king, and as I said unto you, as they were going about rebelling against God, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and he descended as it were in a cloud, 
and he spake as it were with a voice of thunder which caused the earth to shake upon which they stood and so great was their astonishment that they fell to the earth and understood not the words which he spake unto them nevertheless he cried again saying alma arise and stand forth for why persecutest thou the church of god for the lord hath said this is my church and i will establish it and nothing shall overthrow it save it is the transgression of my people and again the angel said behold the lord hath heard the prayers of his people and also the prayers of his servant alma who is thy father for he has prayed with much faith concerning thee that thou mightest be brought to the knowledge of the truth therefore for this purpose have i come to convince thee of the power and authority of god that the prayers of his servants might be answered according to their faith and now behold can ye dispute the power of god for behold doth not my voice shake the earth and can ye not also behold me before you and i am sent from god now i say unto thee go and remember the captivity of thy fathers in the land of helam and in the land of nephi and remember how great things he has done for them for they were in bondage and he has delivered them and now i say unto thee alma go thy way and seek to destroy the church no more that their prayers may be answered and this even if thou wilt of thyself be cast off and now it came to pass that these were the last words which the angel spake unto alma and he departed and now alma and those that were with him fell again to the earth for great was their astonishment for with their own eyes they had beheld an angel of the lord and his voice was as thunder which shook the earth and they knew that there was nothing save the power of god that could shake the earth and cause it to tremble as though it would part asunder and now the astonishment of alma was so great that he became dumb that he could not open his mouth yea and he became weak even that he could not move his hands therefore he was taken by those that were with him and carried helpless even until he was laid before his father and they rehearsed unto his father all that had happened unto them and his father rejoiced for he knew that it was the power of god and he caused that a multitude should be gathered together that they might witness what the lord had done for his son and also for those that were with him and he caused that the priests should assemble themselves together and they began to fast and to pray to the lord their god that he would open the mouth of alma that he might speak and also that his limbs might receive their strength that the eyes of the people might be opened to see and know of the goodness and glory of god and it came to pass after they had fasted and prayed for the space of two days and two nights the limbs of alma received their strength and he stood up and began to speak unto them bidding them to be of good comfort for said he i have repented of my sins and have been redeemed of the lord behold i am born of the spirit and the lord said unto me marvel not that all mankind yea men and women all nations kindreds tongues and people must be born again yea born of god changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness being redeemed of god becoming his sons and daughters and thus they become new creatures and unless they do this they can in no wise inherit the kingdom of god i say unto you unless this be the case they must be cast off and this i know because i was like to be cast off nevertheless after waiting through much tribulations repenting nigh unto death the lord in mercy hath seen fit to snatch me out of an everlasting burning and i am born of god my soul hath been redeemed from the gall of bitterness and bonds of iniquity i was in the darkest abyss but now i behold the marvellous light of god my soul was racked with eternal torment but i am snatched and my soul is pained no more i rejected my redeemer and denied that which had been spoken of by our fathers but now that they may foresee that he will come and that he remembereth every creature of his creating he will make himself manifest unto all 
yea every knee shall bow and every tongue confess before him yea even at the last day when all men shall stand to be judged of him then shall they confess that he is god then shall they confess who live without god in the world that the judgment of an everlasting punishment is just upon them and they shall quake and tremble and shrink beneath the glance of his all-searching eye and now it came to pass that alma began from this time forward to teach the people and those who were with alma at the time the angel appeared unto them traveling round about through all the land publishing to all the people the things which they had heard and seen and preaching the word of god in much tribulation being greatly persecuted by those who were unbelievers being smitten by many of them but notwithstanding all this they did impart much consolation to the church confirming their faith and exhorting them with long suffering and much travail to keep the commandments of god and four of them were the sons of mosiah and their names were ammon and aaron and omner and himni these were the names of the sons of mosiah and they traveled throughout all the lands of zarahemla and among all the people who were under the reign of king mosiah zealously striving to repair all the injuries which they had done to the church confessing all their sins and publishing all the things which they had seen and explaining the prophecies and the scriptures to all who desired to hear them and thus they were instruments in the hands of god in bringing many to the knowledge of the truth yea to the knowledge of their redeemer and how blessed are they for they did publish peace they did publish good tidings of good and they did declare unto the people that the lord reigneth end of mosiah chapters twenty four through twenty seven recording by jared hess in mapleton utah please visit at hessmess dot blogspot dot com mosiah chapters twenty eight through twenty nine of the book of mormon this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by jared hess the book of mormon translated by joseph smith mosiah chapters twenty eight through twenty nine mosiah chapter twenty eight now it came to pass that after the sons of mosiah had done all these things they took a small number with them and returned to their father the king and desired of him that he would grant unto them that they might with those whom they had selected go up to the land of nephi that they might preach the things which they had heard and that they might impart the word of god to their brethren the lamanites that perhaps they might bring them to the knowledge of the lord their god and convince them of the iniquity of their fathers and that perhaps they might cure them of their hatred towards the nephites that they might also be brought to rejoice in the lord their god that they might become friendly to one another and that there should be no more contentions in all the land which the lord their god had given them now they were desirous that salvation should be declared to every creature for they could not bear that any human soul should perish yea even the very thoughts that any soul should endure endless torment did cause them to quake and tremble and thus did the spirit of the lord work upon them for they were the very vilest of sinners and the lord saw fit in his infinite mercy to spare them nevertheless they suffered much anguish of soul because of their iniquities suffering much and fearing that they should be cast off forever and it came to pass that they did plead with their father many days that they might go up to the land of nephi and king mosiah went and inquired of the lord if he should let his sons go up among the lamanites to preach the word and the lord said unto mosiah let them go up for many shall believe on their words and they shall have eternal life and i will deliver thy sons out of the hands of the lamanites and it came to pass that mosiah granted that they might go and do according to their request and they took their journey into the wilderness to go up to preach the word among the lamanites and I shall give an account of their proceedings hereafter. Now King Mosiah had no one to confer the kingdom upon, for there was not any of his sons who would accept of the kingdom. Therefore he took the records which were engraven on the plates of brass, and also the plates of Nephi, and all the things which he had kept and preserved according to the commandments of God, after having translated and caused to be written the records which were on the plates of gold, 
which had been found by the people of Limhi, which were delivered to him by the hand of Limhi. And this he did because of the great anxiety of his people, for they were desirous beyond measure to know concerning those people who had been destroyed. And now he translated them by the means of those two stones which were fastened into the two rims of a bow. Now these things were prepared from the beginning, and were handed down from generation to generation for the purpose of interpreting languages, and they have been kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he should discover to every creature who should possess the land the iniquities and abominations of his people. And whosoever has these things is called a seer, after the manner of old times. Now after Mosiah had finished translating these records, behold, it gave an account of the people who were destroyed from the time that they were destroyed back to the building of the great tower at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people, and they were scattered abroad upon the face of all the earth, yea, and even from that time back until the creation of Adam. Now this account did cause the people of Mosiah to mourn exceedingly, yea, they were filled with sorrow, nevertheless it gave them much knowledge in the which they did rejoice. And this account shall be written hereafter, for behold, it is expedient that all people should know the things which are written in this account. And now, as I said unto you, that after King Mosiah had done these things, he took the plates of brass, and all the things which he had kept, and conferred them upon Alma, who was the son of Alma, yea, all the records, and also the interpreters, and conferred them upon him, and commanded him that he should keep and preserve them, and also keep a record of the people, handing them down from one generation to another, even as they had been handed down from the time that Lehi left Jerusalem. Mosiah chapter 29 Now when Mosiah had done this, he sent out throughout all the land among all the people, desiring to know their will concerning who should be their king. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came, saying, we are desirous that Aaron thy son should be our king and our ruler. Now Aaron had gone up to the land of Nephi, therefore the king could not confer the kingdom upon him, neither would Aaron take upon him the kingdom, neither were any of the sons of Mosiah willing to take upon them the kingdom. Therefore king Mosiah sent again among the people, yea, even a written word sent he among the people. And these were the words that were written, saying, Behold, O ye my people, or my brethren, for I esteem you as such, I desire that ye should consider the cause which ye are called to consider. For ye are desirous to have a king. Now I declare unto you that he to whom the kingdom doth rightly belong has declined, and will not take upon him the kingdom. And now if there should be another appointed in his stead, behold, I fear there would rise contentions among you. And who knoweth but what my son, to whom the kingdom doth belong, should turn to be angry and draw away a part of this people after him, which would cause wars and contentions among you, which would be the cause of shedding much blood and perverting the way of the Lord, yea, and destroy the souls of many people. Now I say unto you, let us be wise and consider these things, for we have no right to destroy my son, neither should we have any right to destroy another if he should be appointed in his stead. And if my son should turn again to his pride and vain things, he would recall the things which he had said, and claim his right to the kingdom, which would cause him and also this people to commit much sin. And now let us be wise, and look forward to these things, and do that which will make for the peace of this people. Therefore I will be your king the remainder of my days. Nevertheless let us appoint judges to judge this people according to our law and we will newly arrange the affairs of this people. For we will appoint wise men to be judges, that will judge this people according to the commandments of God. Now it is better that a man should be judged of God than of man, for the judgments of God are always just, but the judgments of man are not always just. Therefore, if it were possible that you could have just men to be your kings, who would establish the laws of God and judge this people according to his commandments, Yea, if ye could have men for your kings, who would do even as my father Benjamin did for this people, I say unto you, if this could always be the case, then it would be expedient that ye should always have kings to rule over you. And even I myself have labored with all the power and faculties which I have possessed, to teach you the commandments of God, and to establish peace throughout the land, that there should be no wars, nor contentions, no stealing, 
nor plundering, nor murdering, nor any manner of iniquity. And whosoever has committed iniquity, him have I punished according to the crime which he has committed, according to the law which has been given to us by our fathers. Now I say unto you, that because all men are not just, it is not expedient that ye should have a king or kings to rule over you. For behold, how much iniquity doth one wicked king cause to be committed? Yea, and what great destruction! Yea, remember King Noah, his wickedness and his abominations, and also the wickedness and abominations of his people. Behold, what great destruction did come upon them, and also because of their iniquities they were brought into bondage. And were it not for the interposition of their all-wise Creator, and this because of their sincere repentance, they must unavoidably remain in bondage until now. But, behold, he did deliver them, because they did humble themselves before him, and because they cried mightily unto him, he did deliver them out of bondage. And thus doth the Lord work with his power in all cases among the children of men, extending the arm of mercy towards them that put their trust in him. And behold, now I say unto you, ye cannot dethrone an iniquitous king, save it be through much contention, and the shedding of much blood. For behold, he has his friends in iniquity, and he keepeth his guards about him, and he teareth up the laws of those who have reigned in righteousness before him, and he trampleth under his feet the commandments of God, and he enacteth laws, and sendeth them forth among his people, yea, laws after the manner of his own wickedness, and whosoever doth not obey his laws, he causeth to be destroyed. And whosoever doth rebel against him, he will send his armies against them to war. And if he can, he will destroy them. And thus an unrighteous king doth pervert the ways of all righteousness. And now, behold, I say unto you, it is not expedient that such abominations should come upon you. Therefore choose you by the voice of this people, judges, that ye may be judged according to the laws which have been given by our fathers, which are correct, and which were given them by the hand of the Lord. Now it is not common that the voice of the people desireth anything contrary to that which is right, but it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore this shall ye observe, and make it your law, to do your business by the voice of the people. And if the time comes that the voice of the people doth choose iniquity, then is the time that the judgments of God will come upon you. Yea, then is the time he will visit you with great destruction, even as he has hitherto visited this land. And now, if ye have judges, and they do not judge you according to the law which has been given, ye can cause that they may be judged of a higher judge. If your higher judges do not judge righteous judgments, ye shall cause that a small number of your lower judges should be gathered together, and they shall judge your higher judges according to the voice of the people. And I command you to do these things in the fear of the Lord, and I command you to do these things, and that ye have no king, that if these people commit sins and iniquities they shall be answered upon their own heads. For behold, I say unto you, the sins of many people have been caused by the iniquities of their kings, Therefore their iniquities are answered upon the heads of their kings. And now I desire that this inequality should be no more in this land, especially among this my people. But I desire that this land be a land of liberty, and every man may enjoy his rights and privileges alike, so long as the Lord sees fit that we may live and inherit the land, yea, even as long as any of our posterity remains upon the face of the land. And many more things did King Mosiah write unto them, unfolding unto them all the trials and troubles of a righteous king, yea, all the travails of soul for their people, and also all the murmurings of the people to their king, and he explained it all unto them. And he told them that these things ought not to be, but that the burden should come upon all the people, that every man might bear his part. And he also unfolded unto them all the disadvantages they labored under by having an unrighteous king to rule over them. Yea, all his iniquities and abominations, and all the wars and contentions, and bloodshed, and the stealing, and the plundering, and the committing of whoredoms, and all manner of iniquities which cannot be enumerated, telling them that these things ought not to be, that they were expressly repugnant to the commandments of God. And now it came to pass, after King Mosiah had sent these things forth among the people, they were convinced of the truth of his words. Therefore they relinquished their desires for a king, and became exceedingly anxious, 
that every man should have an equal chance throughout all the land yea and every man expressed a willingness to answer for his own sins therefore it came to pass that they assembled themselves together in bodies throughout the land to cast in their voices concerning who should be their judges to judge them according to the law which had been given them and they were exceedingly rejoiced because of the liberty which had been granted unto them and they did wax strong in love towards mosiah yea they did esteem him more than any other man for they did not look upon him as a tyrant who was seeking for gain yea for that lucre which doth corrupt the soul for he had not exacted riches of them neither had he delighted in the shedding of blood but he had established peace in the land and he had granted unto his people that they should be delivered from all manner of bondage therefore they did esteem him yea exceedingly beyond measure and it came to pass that they did appoint judges to rule over them, or to judge them according to the law. And this they did throughout all the land. And it came to pass that Alma was appointed to be the first chief judge, he being also the high priest, his father having conferred the office upon him, and having given him the charge concerning all the affairs of the church. And now it came to pass that Alma did walk in the ways of the Lord, and he did keep his commandments, and he did judge righteous judgments, and there was continual peace through the land. And thus commenced the reign of the judges throughout all the land of Zarahemla, among all the people who were called the Nephites, and Alma was the first and chief judge. And now it came to pass that his father died, being eighty and two years old, having lived to fulfill the commandments of God. And it came to pass that Mosiah died also, in the thirty and third year of his reign, being sixty and three years old, making in the whole five hundred and nine years from the time Lehi left Jerusalem. And thus ended the reign of the kings over the people of Nephi, and thus ended the days of Alma, who was the founder of their church. End of Mosiah chapters 28 through 29. Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah. Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com. Alma, chapters 1 through 3 of The Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Stevenson. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapter 1. Now it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, from this time forward, King Mosiah having gone the way of all the earth, having warred a good warfare, walking uprightly before God, leaving none to reign in his stead, nevertheless he had established laws, and they were acknowledged by the people. Therefore they were obliged to abide by the laws which he had made. And it came to pass that in the first year of the reign of Alma in the judgment seat, there was a man brought before him to be judged, a man who was large, and was noted for his much strength. And he had gone about among the people, preaching to them that which he termed to be the word of God, bearing down against the church, declaring unto the people that every priest and teacher ought to become popular, and they ought not to labor with their hands, but that they ought to be supported by the people. And he also testified unto the people that all mankind should be saved at the last day, and that they need not fear nor tremble, but that they might lift up their heads and rejoice. For the Lord had created all men, and he had also redeemed all men, and, in the end, all men should have eternal life. And it came to pass that he did teach these things so much that many did believe on his words, even so many that they began to support him and give him money. And he began to be lifted up in the pride of his heart, and to wear very costly apparel yea, and even begin to establish a church after the manner of his preaching. And it came to pass, as he was going to preach to those who believed on his word, he met a man who belonged to the church of God, yea, even one of their teachers, and he began to contend with him sharply, that he might lead away the people of the church. But the man withstood him, admonishing him with the words of God. Now the name of the man was Gideon, and it was he who was an instrument in the hands of God in delivering the people of Lemhi out of bondage. Now because Gideon withstood him with the words of God, he was wroth with Gideon, and drew his sword and began to smite him. 
Now Gideon being stricken with many years, therefore he was not able to withstand his blows, therefore he was slain by the sword. And the man who slew him was taken by the people of the church, and was brought before Alma, to be judged according to the crimes which he had committed. And it came to pass that he stood before Alma and pleaded for himself with much boldness. But Alma said unto him, Behold, this is the first time that priestcraft has been introduced among this people. And behold, thou art not only guilty of priestcraft, but hast endeavored to enforce it by the sword. And were priestcraft to be enforced among this people, it would prove their entire destruction. And thou hast shed blood of a righteous man, yea, a man who has done much good among this people. And were we to spare thee, his blood would come upon us for vengeance. Therefore thou art condemned to die, according to the law which has been given us by Mosiah, our last king, and it has been acknowledged by this people. Therefore this people must abide by the law. And it came to pass that they took him, and his name was Nahor, and they carried him upon the top of the hill Manti, and there he was caused, or rather did acknowledge, between the heavens and the earth, that what he had taught to the people was contrary to the word of God, and there he suffered an ignominious death. Nevertheless, this did not put an end to the spreading of priestcraft throughout the land, for there were many who loved the vain things of the world, and they went forth preaching false doctrines, and this they did for the sake of riches and honor. Nevertheless, they durst not lie, if it were known, for fear of the law, for liars were punished. Therefore they pretended to preach according to their belief, and now the law could have no power on any man for his belief. And they durst not steal, for fear of the law, for such were punished. Neither durst they rob nor murder, for he that murdered was punished unto death. But it came to pass that whoever did not belong to the church of God began to persecute those that did belong to the church of God, and had taken upon them the name of Christ. Yea, they did persecute them, and afflict them with all manner of words, and this because of their humility, because they were not proud in their own eyes, and because they did impart the word of God one with another without money and without price. Now there was a strict law among the people of the church that there should not any man belonging to the church arise and persecute those that did not belong to the church, and that there should be no persecution amongst themselves. Nevertheless, there were many among them who began to be proud, and began to contend warmly with their adversaries, even unto blows, yea, they would smite one another with their fists. Now this was in the second year of the reign of Alma, and it was a cause of much affliction to the church, yea, it was a cause of much trial with the church. For the hearts of many were hardened, and their names were blotted out, that they were remembered no more among the people of God, and also many withdrew themselves from among them. Now this was a great trial to those that did stand fast in the faith. Nevertheless, they were steadfast and immovable in keeping the commandments of God, and they bore with patience the persecution which was heaped upon them. And when the priests left their labor to impart the word of God unto the people, the people also left their labors to hear the word of God. And when the priest had imparted unto them the word of God, they all returned again diligently unto their labors. And the priest, not esteeming himself above his hearers, for the preacher was no better than the hearer, neither was the teacher any better than the learner, and thus they were all equal, and they did all labor, every man according to his strength. And they did impart of their substance, every man according to that which he had, to the poor, and the needy, and the sick, and the afflicted, and they did not wear costly apparel, yet they were neat and comely. And thus they did establish the affairs of the church, and thus they began to have continual peace again, notwithstanding all their persecutions. And now, because of the steadiness of the church, they began to be exceedingly rich, having abundance of all things whatsoever they stood in need, an abundance of flocks and herds, and fatlings of every kind, and also an abundance of grain, and of gold, and of silver, and of precious things, and abundance of silk and fine twine linen, and all manner of good homely cloth. And thus, in their prosperous circumstances, they did not send away any who were naked, or that were hungry, or that were athirst, or that were sick or that had not been nourished, and they did not set their hearts upon riches. Therefore they were liberal to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, whether out of the church or in the church, having no respect to persons as to those who stood in need. And thus they did prosper and become far more wealthy than those who did not belong to their church. For those who did not belong to their church did indulge themselves in sorceries, 
and in idolatry or idleness, and in babblings, and in envyings and strife, wearing costly apparel, being lifted up in the pride of their own eyes, persecuting, lying, thieving, robbing, committing whoredoms, and murdering, and all manner of wickedness. Nevertheless, the law was put in force upon all those who did transgress it, inasmuch as it was possible. And it came to pass that by thus exercising the law upon them, every man suffering according to that which he had done, they became more still, and durst not commit any wickedness if it were known. Therefore there was much peace among the people of Nephi until the fifth year of the reign of the judges. End of chapter 1. Chapter 2. And it came to pass in the commencement of the fifth year of their reign there began to be a contention among the people. For a certain man, being called Amlici, he being a very cunning man, yea, a wise man as to the wisdom of the world, he being after the order of the man that slew Gideon by the sword, who was executed according to the law. Now this Amlici had, by his cunning, drawn away much people after him, even so much that they began to be very powerful, and they began to endeavor to establish Amlici to be king over the people. Now this was alarming to the people of the church, and also to all those who had not been drawn away after the persuasions of Amlici. For they knew that according to their law, that such things must be established by the voice of the people. Therefore, if it were possible that Amlici should gain the voice of the people, he, being a wicked man, would deprive them of their rights and privileges of the church, for it was his intent to destroy the church of God. And it came to pass that the people assembled themselves together throughout all the land, every man according to his mind, whether or for or against Amlici, in separate bodies, having much dispute and wonderful contentions one with another. And thus they did assemble themselves together to cast their voices concerning the matter, and they were laid before the judges. And it came to pass that the voice of the people came against Amlici, that he was not made king over the people. Now this did cause much joy in the hearts of those who were against him. But Amlici did stir up those who were in his favor to anger against those who were not in his favor. And it came to pass that they gathered themselves together, and did consecrate Amlici to be their king. Now when Amlici was made king over them, he commanded them that they should take up arms against their brethren. And this he did that he might subject them to him. Now the people of Amlici were distinguished by the name of Amlici, being called Amlicites, and the remainder were called Nephites, or the people of God. Therefore the people of the Nephites were aware of the intent of the Amlicites, and therefore they did prepare to meet them. Yea, they did arm themselves with swords, and with scimitars, and with bows, and with arrows, and with stones, and with slings, and with all manner of weapons of war of every kind. And thus they were prepared to meet the Amlicites at the time of their coming, and there were appointed captains, and higher captains, and chief captains according to their numbers. And it came to pass that Amlici did arm his men with all manner of weapons of war of every kind, and he also appointed rulers and leaders over his people to lead them to war against their brethren. And it came to pass that the Amlicites came upon the hill Amnihu which was east of the river Sidon, which ran by the land of Zarahemla, and there they began to make war with the Nephites. Now Alma, being the chief judge and the governor of the people of Nephi, therefore he went up with his people, yea, with his captains and chief captains, yea, at the head of his armies, against the Amlicites to battle. And they began to slay the Amlicites upon the hill east of Sidon. And the Amlicites did contend with the Nephites with great strength, insomuch that many of the Nephites did fall before the Amlicites. Nevertheless, the Lord did strengthen the hand of the Nephites, that they slew the Amlicites with great slaughter, that they began to flee before them. And it came to pass that the Nephites did pursue the Amlicites all that day, and did slay them with much slaughter, insomuch that there were slain of the Amlicites twelve thousand five hundred sixty and two souls, and there were slain of the Nephites six thousand five hundred sixty and two souls. And it came to pass that when Alma could pursue the Amlicites no longer, he caused that his people should pitch their tents in the valley of Gideon, the valley being called after that Gideon who was slain by the hand of Nahor with the sword. And in this valley the Nephites did pitch their tents for the night. And Alma sent spies to follow the remnant of the Amlicites, that he might know of their plans and their plots, whereby he might guard himself against them, that he might preserve his people from being destroyed. Now those whom he had sent out to watch the camp of the Amlicites were called Zeram, 
and Amnor, and Manti, and Limher. These were they who went out with their men to watch the camp of the Amlicites. And it came to pass that on the morrow they returned into the camp of the Nephites in great haste, being greatly astonished, and struck with much fear, saying, Behold, we followed the camp of the Amlicites, and to our great astonishment, in the land of Minon, above the land of Zarahemla, in the course of the land of Nephi, we saw a numerous host of the Lamanites, and behold, the Amlicites have joined them. And they are upon our brethren in that land, and they are fleeing before them with their flocks, and their wives, and their children, towards our city. And except we make haste, they obtain possession of our city, and our fathers, and our wives, and our children be slain. And it came to pass that the people of Nephi took their tents, and departed out of the valley of Gideon towards their city, which was the city of Zarahemla. And behold, as they were crossing the river Sidon, the Lamanites and the Amlicites, being as numerous almost as it were as the sands of the sea, came upon them to destroy them. Nevertheless, the Nephites, being strengthened by the hand of the Lord, having prayed mightily to him that he would deliver them out of the hands of their enemies, therefore the Lord did hear their cries, and did strengthen them, and the Lamanites and the Amlicites did fall before them. And it came to pass that Alma fought with Amlici with the sword, face to face, and they did contend mightily, one with another. And it came to pass that Alma, being a man of God, being exercised with much faith, cried, saying, O Lord, have mercy and spare my life, that I may be an instrument in thy hands to save and preserve this people. Now when Alma had said these words, he contended again with Amlici, and he was strengthened, insomuch that he slew Amlici with the sword. And he also contended with the king of the Lamanites. But the king of the Lamanites fled back from before Alma, and sent his guards to contend with Alma. But Alma, with his guards, contended with the guards of the king of the Lamanites, until he slew and drove them back. And thus he cleared the ground, or rather the bank, which was on the west of the river Sidon, throwing the bodies of the Lamanites who had been slain into the waters of the Sidon, that thereby his people might have room to cross and contend with the Lamanites and the Amlicites on the west side of the river Sidon. And it came to pass that when they had crossed the river Sidon, that the Lamanites and the Amlicites began to flee before them, notwithstanding they were so numerous that they could not be numbered. And they fled before the Nephites towards the wilderness which was west and north, away beyond the borders of the land. And the Nephites did pursue them with their might, and did slay them. Yea, they were met on every hand, and slain and driven, until they were scattered on the west and on the north, until they had reached the wilderness, which was called Hermounts. And it was that part of the wilderness which was infested by wild and ravenous beasts. And it came to pass that many died in the wilderness of their wounds, and were devoured by those beasts, and also the vultures of the air, and their bones have been found, and have been heaped upon the earth. End of chapter 2 Chapter 3 and it came to pass that the Nephites who were not slain by the weapons of war, after having buried those who had been slain, now the number of the slain were not numbered, because of the greatness of their number. After they had finished burying their dead, they all returned to their lands, and to their houses, and their wives, and their children. Now many women and children had been slain with the sword, and also many of their flocks and their herds, and also many of their fields of grain were destroyed, for they were trodden down by the hosts of men. And now as many of the Lamanites and the Amlicites who had been slain upon the bank of the river Sidon were cast into the waters of Sidon, and behold, their bones are in the depths of the sea, and they are many. And the Amlicites were distinguished from the Nephites, for they had marked themselves with red in their foreheads after the manner of the Lamanites. Nevertheless, they had not shorn their heads like unto the Lamanites. Now the heads of the Lamanites were shorn, and they were naked, save it were the skin which was girded about their loins, and also their armor which was girded about them, and their bows, and their arrows, and their stones, and their slings, and so forth. And the skins of the Lamanites were dark, according to the mark which was set upon their fathers, which was accursed upon them because of their transgression and their rebellion against their brethren, who consisted of Nephi, Jacob, and Joseph, and Sam, who were just and holy men. And their brethren sought to destroy them, therefore they were cursed, and the Lord God set a mark upon them, yea, upon Laman and Lemuel, and also the sons of Ishmael, and the Ishmaelitish women. And this was done that their seed might be distinguished from the seed of their brethren, that thereby the Lord God might preserve his people, that they might not mix and believe in the incorrect traditions which would prove their destruction. 
And it came to pass that whosoever did mingle his seed with that of the Lamanites did bring the same curse upon his seed. Therefore, whosoever suffered himself to be led away with the Lamanites was called under that head, and there was a mark set upon him. And it came to pass that whosoever would not believe in the tradition of the Lamanites, but believed those records which were brought out of the land of Jerusalem, and also in the tradition of their fathers, which were correct, who believed in the commandments of God and kept them, were called Nephites, or the people of Nephi, from that time forth. And it is they who have kept the records which are true of their people, and also of the Lamanites. Now we will return again to the Amlicites, for they also had a mark set upon them. Yea, they set the mark upon themselves, yea, even a mark of red upon their forehead. Thus the word of God is fulfilled, for these are the words which he said to Nephi, Behold, the Lamanites have I cursed, and I will set a mark on them that they and their seed may be separated from thee and thy seed, from this time henceforth and forever, except they repent of their wickedness and turn to me that I may have mercy upon them. And again, I will set a mark upon him that mingles his seed with thy brethren, that they may be cursed also. And again, I will set a mark upon him that fighteth against thee and thy seed. And again, I say that he that departeth from thee shall no more be called thy seed, and I will bless thee, and whomsoever shall be called thy seed, henceforth and forever. And these were the promises of the Lord unto Nephi and to his seed. Now the Amlicites knew not that they were fulfilling the words of God when they began to mark themselves in their foreheads. Nevertheless, they had come out in open rebellion against God. Therefore it was expedient that the curse should fall upon them. Now I would that ye should see that they brought upon themselves the curse. And even so doth every man that is cursed bring upon himself his own condemnation. Now it came to pass that not many days after the battle which was fought in the land of Zarahemla, by the Lamanites and the Amlicites, that there was another army of the Lamanites came in upon the people of Nephi, in the same place where the first army met the Amlicites. And it came to pass that there was an army sent to drive them out of their land. Now Alma himself, being afflicted with a wound, did not go up to battle at this time against the Lamanites. But he sent up a numerous army against them, and they went up and slew many of the Lamanites, and drove the remainder of them out of the borders of their land. And then they returned again and began to establish peace in the land, being troubled no more for a time with their enemies. Now all these things were done, yea, all these wars and contentions were commenced and ended in the fifth year of the reign of the judges. And in one year there were thousands and tens of thousands of souls sent to the eternal world, that they might reap their rewards according to their works, whether they were good or whether they were bad, to reap eternal happiness or eternal misery, according to the spirit which they listed to obey, whether it be a good spirit or a bad one. For every man receiveth wages of him who he listeth to obey, and this according to the words of the spirit of prophecy. Therefore let it be according to the truth. And thus endeth the fifth year of the reign of the judges. End of Alma, chapters 1 through 3. Recording by David Stevenson. Alma, chapters 4 through 7 of The Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by David Stevenson. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 4 through 7. Now it came to pass in the sixth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were no contentions nor wars in the lands of Zarahemla. But the people were afflicted, yea, greatly afflicted, for the loss of their brethren, and also for the loss of their flocks and herds, and also for the loss of their fields of grain, which were trodden under foot and destroyed by the Lamanites. And so great were their afflictions that every soul had cause to mourn, and they believed that it was the judgments of God sent upon them because of their wickedness and their abominations. Therefore, they were awakened to a remembrance of their duty. And they began to establish the church more fully. Yea, and many were baptized in the waters of Sidon, and were joined to the church of God. Yea, they were baptized by the hands of Alma, who had been consecrated the high priest over the people of the church, by the hands of his father Alma. 
And it came to pass in the seventh year of the reign of the judges that there were about three thousand five hundred souls that united themselves to the church of God and were baptized. And thus endeth the seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And there was continual peace in all that time. And it came to pass in the eighth year of the reign of the judges that the people of the church began to wax proud because of their exceeding riches and their fine silks and their fine twined linen and because of their many flocks and herds and their gold and their silver and all manner of precious things which they had obtained by their industry. And in all these things were they lifted up in the pride of their eyes for they began to wear very costly apparel. Now this was the cause of much affliction to Alma yea, and to many of the people whom Alma had consecrated to be teachers and priests and elders over the church. Yea, many of them were sorely grieved for the wickedness which they saw had begun to be among their people. For they saw and beheld with great sorrow that the people of the church began to be lifted up in the pride of their eyes, and to set their hearts upon riches and upon the vain things of the world. And they began to be scornful one towards another, and they began to persecute those that did not believe according to their own will and pleasure. And thus, in this eighth year of the reign of the judges, there began to be great contentions among the people of the church. Yea, there were envyings, and strife, and malice, and persecutions, and pride, even to exceed the pride of those who did not belong to the church of God. And thus ended the eighth year of the reign of the judges. And the wickedness of the church was a great stumbling block to those who did not belong to the church, and thus the church began to fail in its progress. And it came to pass in the commencement of the ninth year, Alma saw the wickedness of the church, and he saw also that the example of the church had begun to lead those who were unbelievers on from one piece of iniquity to another, thus bringing on the destruction of the people. Yea, he saw great inequality among the people, some lifting themselves up with their pride, despising others, turning their backs upon the needy and the naked, and those who were hungry, and those who were athirst, and those who were sick and afflicted. Now this was a great cause for lamentations among the people, while others were abasing themselves, succoring those who stood in need of their succor, such as imparting their substance to the poor and the needy, feeding the hungry, and suffering all manner of afflictions for Christ's sake, who should come according to the spirit of prophecy, looking forward to that day, thus retaining a remission of their sins, being filled with great joy because of the resurrection of the dead, according to the will and power and deliverance of Jesus Christ from the bands of death. Now it came to pass that Alma, having seen the afflictions of the humble followers of God, and the persecutions which were heaped upon them by the remainder of his people, and seeing all their inequality, began to be very sorrowful. Nevertheless, the Spirit of the Lord did not fail him. And he selected a wise man who was among the elders of the church, and gave him power according to the voice of the people, that he might have power to enact laws according to the laws which had been given, and to put them in force according to the wickedness and the crimes of the people. Now this man's name was Nephihah, and he was appointed chief judge, and he sat in the judgment seat to judge and to govern the people. Now Amma did not grant unto him the office of being high priest over the church, but he retained the office of high priest unto himself, but he delivered the judgment seat unto Nephiha. And this he did, that he himself might go forth among his people, or among the people of Nephi, that he might preach the word of God unto them, to stir them up in remembrance of their duty, that he might pull down, by the word of God, all the pride and craftiness and all the contentions which were among his people seeing no way that he might reclaim them save it were in bearing down in pure testimony against them. And thus, in the commencement of the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, Alma delivered up the judgment seat unto Nephiha, and confined himself wholly to the high priesthood of the holy order of God, to the testimony of the word, according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy. End of chapter 4 Chapter 5 now it came to pass that Alma began to deliver the word of God unto the people, first in the land of Zarahemla, and from thence throughout all the land. And these are the words which he spake to the people in the church which was established in the city of Zarahemla, according to his own record, saying, I, Alma, have been consecrated by my father, Alma, to be a high priest over the church of God, 
he having power and authority from God to do these things. Behold, I say unto you that he began to establish a church in the land which was in the borders of Nephi, yea, the land which was called the land of Mormon, yea, and he did baptize his brethren into the waters of Mormon. And behold, I say unto you, they were delivered out of the hands of the people of King Noah by the mercy and power of God. And behold, after that, they were brought into bondage by the hands of the Lamanites in the wilderness. Yea, I say unto you, they were in captivity, and again the Lord did deliver them out of bondage by the power of his word. And we were brought into this land, and here we began to establish the church of God throughout this land also. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, you that belong to this church, have you sufficiently retained in remembrance the captivity of your fathers? Yea, and have you sufficiently retained in remembrance his mercy and long suffering towards them? And moreover, have ye sufficiently retained in remembrance that he has delivered their souls from hell? Behold, he changed their hearts. Yea, he awakened them out of a deep sleep, and they awoke unto God. Behold, they were in the midst of darkness. Nevertheless, their souls were illuminated by the light of the everlasting word. Yea, they were encircled about by the bands of death and the chains of hell, and an everlasting destruction did await them. Now I ask of you, my brethren, were they destroyed? Behold, I say unto you, Nay, they were not. And again I ask, were the bands of death broken, and the chains of hell which encircled them about, were they loosed? I say unto you, Yea, they were loosed, and their souls did expand, and they did sing redeeming love. And I say unto you that they are saved. And now I ask of you, On what conditions are they saved? Yea, on what grounds had they to hope for salvation? What is the cause of their being loosed from the bands of death? Yea, and also the chains of hell. Behold, I can tell you, did not my father Alma believe in the words which were delivered by the mouth of Abinadi? And was he not a holy prophet? Did he not speak the words of God, and my father Alma believe them? And according to his faith there was a mighty change wrought in his heart. Behold, I say unto you, that this is all true. And behold, he preached the word unto your fathers, and a mighty change was also wrought in their hearts. And they humbled themselves, and put their trust in the true and living God. And behold, they were faithful until the end, therefore they were saved. And now, behold, I ask of you, my brethren of the church, have ye spiritually been born of God? Have ye received his image in your countenances? Have ye experienced this mighty change in your hearts? Do ye exercise faith in the redemption of him who created you? Do you look forward with an eye of faith? and view this mortal body raised in immortality, and this corruption raised in incorruption, to stand before God to be judged according to the deeds which have been done in the mortal body? I say unto you, can you imagine to yourselves that ye hear the voice of the Lord, saying unto you in that day, Come unto me, ye blessed, for behold, your works have been the works of righteousness upon the face of the earth. Or do ye imagine to yourselves that ye can lie unto the Lord in that day, and say, Lord, our works have been righteous works upon the face of the earth, and that he will save you? Or otherwise, can ye imagine yourselves brought before the tribunal of God with your souls filled with guilt and remorse, having a remembrance of all your guilt, yea, a perfect remembrance of all your wickedness, yea, a remembrance that ye have set at defiance the commandments of God? I say unto you, Can ye look up to God at that day with a pure heart and clean hands? I say unto you, Can you look up, having the image of God engraven upon your countenances? I say unto you, Can ye think of being saved when you have yielded yourselves to become subjects to the devil? I say unto you, Ye will know at that day that ye cannot be saved. For there can no man be saved except his garments are washed white. Yea, his garments must be purified until they are cleansed from all stain, through the blood of him of whom it has been spoken by our fathers, who should come to redeem his people from their sins. And now I ask of you, my brethren, how will any of you feel 
if ye shall stand before the bar of God, having your garments stained with blood and all manner of filthiness. Behold, what will these things testify against you? Behold, will they not testify that ye are murderers? Yea, and also that ye are guilty of all manner of wickedness? Behold, my brethren, do ye suppose that such an one can have a place to sit down in the kingdom of God, with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob, and also all the holy prophets, whose garments are cleansed and are spotless, pure, and white? I say unto you, Nay, except ye make our Creator a liar from the beginning, or suppose that he is a liar from the beginning. Ye cannot suppose that such can have place in the kingdom of heaven, but they shall be cast out, for they are children of the kingdom of the devil. And now behold, I say unto you, my brethren, if ye have experienced a change of heart, and if ye have felt to sing the song of redeeming love, I would ask, can ye feel so now? Have ye walked, keeping yourselves blameless before God? Could ye say, if ye were called to die at this time, within yourselves, that ye have been sufficiently humble, that your garments have been cleansed and made white through the blood of Christ, who will come to redeem his people from their sins? Behold, are ye stripped of pride? I say unto you, if ye are not, ye are not prepared to meet God. Behold, ye must prepare quickly, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand and such an one hath not eternal life. Behold, I say, is there one among you who is not stripped of envy? I say unto you that such an one is not prepared, and I would that he should prepare quickly, for the hour is close at hand, and he knoweth not when the time shall come, for such an one is not found guiltless. And I say unto you, is there one among you that doth make a mock of his brother? or that heapeth upon him persecutions? Woe unto such an one! For he is not prepared, and the time is at hand that he must repent, or he cannot be saved. Yea, even woe unto all ye workers of iniquity! Repent, repent, for the Lord God has spoken it. Behold, he sendeth an invitation to all men, for the arms of mercy are extended towards them, and he saith, Repent, and I will receive you. Yea, he saith, Come unto me, and ye shall partake of the fruit of the tree of life. Yea, ye shall eat and drink of the bread and the waters of life freely. Yea, come unto me, and bring forth works of righteousness. And ye shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire. For behold, the time is at hand that whosoever bringeth forth not good fruit, or whosoever doeth not the works of righteousness, the same have cause to wail and mourn. O ye workers of iniquity, ye that are puffed up in the vain things of the world, ye that have professed to have known the ways of righteousness, nevertheless have gone astray, as sheep having no shepherd, notwithstanding a shepherd hath called after you, and is still calling after you, but ye will not hearken unto his voice. Behold, I say unto you, that the good shepherd doth call you, yea, and in his own name he doth call you, which is the name of Christ. And if ye will not hearken unto the voice of the good shepherd, to the name by which ye are called, behold, ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd. And now if ye are not the sheep of the good shepherd, of what fold are ye? Behold, I say unto you, that the devil is your shepherd, and ye are of his fold. And now, who can deny this? Behold, I say unto you, Whosoever denieth this is a liar and a child of the devil. For I say unto you that whatsoever is good cometh from God, and whatsoever is evil cometh from the devil. Therefore, if a man bringeth forth good works, he hearkeneth unto the voice of the good shepherd, and he doth follow him. But whosoever bringeth forth evil works, the same becometh the child of the devil, for he hearkeneth unto his voice, and doth follow him. And whosoever doeth this must receive his wages of him. Therefore, for his wages he receiveth death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness, being dead unto all good works. 
And now, my brethren, I would that ye should hear me, for I speak in the energy of my soul. For behold, I have spoken unto you plainly that ye cannot err, or have spoken according to the commandments of God. For I am called to speak after this manner, according to the holy order of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Yea, I am commanded to stand and testify unto this people the things which have been spoken by our fathers concerning the things which are to come. And this is not all. Do ye not suppose that I know of these things myself? Behold, I testify unto you that I do know these things whereof I have spoken of are true. And how do you suppose that I know of their surety? Behold, I say unto you that they are made known unto me by the Holy Spirit of God. Behold, I have fasted and prayed many days that I might know these things of myself. And now I do know of myself that they are true. For the Lord God hath made them manifest unto me by his Holy Spirit. And this is the spirit of revelation which is in me. And moreover, I say unto you that it has been revealed unto me that the words which have been spoken by our fathers are true, even so according to the spirit of prophecy which is in me, which is also by the manifestation of the Spirit of God. I say unto you, that I know of myself that whatsoever I shall say unto you concerning that which is to come is true. And I say unto you, that I know that Jesus Christ shall come, yea, the Son, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and mercy and truth, and behold, it is he that cometh to take away the sins of the world, yea, the sins of every man who steadfastly believeth on his name. And now I say unto you that this is the order after which I am called, yea, to preach unto my beloved brethren, yea, and every one that dwelleth in the land, yea, to preach unto all, both old and young, both bond and free, yea, I say unto you the aged and also the middle aged and the writhing generation, yea, to cry unto them that they must repent and be born again. Yea, thus saith the Spirit, Repent, all ye ends of the earth, for the kingdom of heaven is soon at hand. Yea, the Son of God cometh in his glory, in his might, majesty, power, and dominion. Yea, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, that the Spirit saith, Behold, the glory of the King of all the earth, and also the King of heaven, shall very soon shine forth among all the children of men. And also the Spirit saith unto me, Yea, crieth unto me with a mighty voice, saying, Go forth, and say unto this people, Repent, for except ye repent, ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, the Spirit saith, Behold, the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Therefore every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, yea, a fire which cannot be consumed, even an unquenchable fire. Behold, and remember, the Holy One hath spoken it, and now, my beloved brethren, I say unto you, Can ye withstand these sayings? Yea, can ye lay aside these things, and trample the Holy One under your feet? Yea, can ye be puffed up in the pride of your hearts? Yea, will ye still persist in the wearing of costly apparel, and setting your hearts upon the vain things of the world, upon your riches? Yea, Will ye persist in supposing that ye are better one than another? Yea, will ye persist in the persecution of your brethren, who humble themselves and do walk after the holy order of God, wherewith they have been brought into this church, having been sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and that they do bring forth works which are meet for repentance? Yea, and will you persist in turning your backs upon the poor and the needy, and in withholding your substance from them? And finally, all ye that will persist in your wickedness, I say unto you that these are they who shall be hewn down and cast into the fire, except they speedily repent. And now I say unto you, all that are desirous to follow the voice of the good shepherd, come ye out from the wicked, and be ye separate, 
and touch not their unclean things. And behold, their names shall be blotted out, that the names of the wicked shall not be numbered among the names of the righteous, that the word of God may be fulfilled, which saith, The names of the wicked shall not be mingled with the names of my people. For the names of the righteous shall be written in the book of life, and unto them will I grant an inheritance at my right hand. And now, my brethren, what have ye to say against this? I say unto you, if ye speak against it, it matters not, for the word of God must be fulfilled. For what shepherd is there among you, having many sheep, doth not watch over them, that the wolves enter not and devour his flock? And behold, if a wolf enter his flock, does he not drive them out? And yea, at the last, if he can, he will destroy him. And now I say unto you that the good shepherd doth call after you, and if you will hearken unto his voice, he will bring you into his fold, and ye are his sheep. And he commandeth you that ye suffer no ravenous wolf to enter among you, that ye may not be destroyed. And now I, Alma, do command you in the language of him who hath commanded me, that ye observe to do the words which I have spoken unto you. I speak by way of command unto you that belong to the church. And unto those who do not belong to the church, I speak by way of invitation, saying, Come and be baptized unto repentance, that ye may also be partakers of the fruit of the tree of life. End of chapter 5 Chapter 6 And now it came to pass that after Alma had made an end of speaking unto the people of the church, which was established in the city of Zarahemla, he ordained priests and elders, by laying on his hands according to the order of God, to preside and watch over the church. And it came to pass that whosoever did not belong to the church who repented of their sins were baptized unto repentance, and were received into the church. And it also came to pass that whosoever did belong to the church that did not repent of their wickedness and humble themselves before God, I mean those who were lifted up in the pride of their hearts, the same were rejected, and their names were blotted out, that their names were not numbered among those of the righteous. And thus they began to establish the order of the church in the city of Zarahemla. Now I would that ye should understand that the word of God was liberal unto all, that none were deprived of the privilege of assembling themselves together to hear the word of God. Nevertheless, the children of God were commanded that they should gather themselves together oft, and join in fasting and mighty prayer in behalf of the welfare of the souls of those who knew not God. And it came to pass that when Alma had made these regulations, he departed from them, yea, from the church which was in the city of Zarahemla, and he went over upon the east of the river Sidon, into the valley of Gideon, there having been a city built, which was called the city of Gideon, which was in the valley that was called Gideon, being called after the man who was slain by the hand of Nahor with the sword. And Alma went and began to declare the word of God unto the church which was established in the valley of Gideon, according to the revelation of the truth of the word which had been spoken by his fathers, and according to the spirit of prophecy which was in him, according to the testimony of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who should come to redeem his people from their sins, and the holy order by which he was called. And thus it is written, Amen. End of chapter 6 Chapter 7 Behold, my beloved brethren, seeing that I have been permitted to come unto you, therefore I attempt to dress you in my language, yea, by my own mouth, seeing that it is the first time that I have spoken unto you by the words of my mouth, I having been wholly confined to the judgment seat, having had much business that I could not come unto you. And even I could not have come now at this time were it not that the judgment seat hath been given to another, to reign in my stead, and that the Lord in much mercy has granted that I should come unto you. And behold, I have come having great hopes and much desire that I should find that ye had humbled yourselves before God, and that ye had continued in the supplicating of his grace, and that I should find that ye were blameless before him, that I should find that ye were not in the awful dilemma that our brethren were in at Zarahemla. But blessed be the name of God, that he has given me to know ye, having given unto me the exceedingly great joy of knowing that they are established again in the way of his righteousness. 
and I trust, according to the Spirit of God which is in me, that I shall also have joy over you. Nevertheless, I do not desire that my joy over you should come by the cause of so much afflictions and sorrow which I have had for the brethren at Zarahemla. For behold, my joy cometh over them after wading through much affliction and sorrow. But behold, I trust that ye are not in a state of so much unbelief as were your brethren. I trust that ye are not lifted up in the pride of your hearts. Yea, I trust that ye have not seen your hearts upon riches and the vain things of the world. Yea, I trust that ye do not worship idols, but that ye do worship the true and living God, and that ye look forward for the remission of your sins, with an everlasting faith which is to come. For behold, I say unto you that there be many things to come, and behold, there is one thing which is of more importance than they all. For behold, the time is not far distant that the Redeemer liveth and cometh among his people. Behold, I do not say that he will come among us at the time of his dwelling in his mortal tabernacle. For behold, the Spirit hath not said unto me that this should be the case. Now as to this thing I do not know, but this much I do know, that the Lord God hath power to do all things which are according to his word. But behold, the Spirit hath said this much to me, saying, Cry unto this people, saying, Repent ye, and prepare the way of the Lord, and walk in his paths, which are straight. For behold, the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the Son of God cometh upon the face of the earth. And behold, he shall be born of Mary, at Jerusalem, which is in the land of our forefathers, she being a virgin, a precious and chosen vessel, who shall be overshadowed and conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, and bring forth a son, yea, even the Son of God. And he shall go forth, suffering pains and afflictions and temptations of every kind, and this that the word might be fulfilled which saith that he will take upon him the pains and the sicknesses of his people. And he will take upon him death, that he may lose the bands of death which bind his people. He will take upon him their infirmities, that his bowels may be filled with mercy, according to the flesh that he may know according to the flesh how to succor his people according to their infirmities. Now the Spirit knoweth all things. Nevertheless, the Son of God suffereth according to the flesh, that he might take upon him the sins of his people, that he might blot out their transgressions according to the power of his deliverance. And now, behold, this is the testimony which is in me. And now I say unto you that ye must repent and be born again. For the Spirit saith, if ye are not born again, ye cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore come and be baptized unto repentance, that ye may be washed from your sins, that ye may have faith unto the Lamb of God, who taketh away the sins of the world, who is mighty to save and to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Yea, I say unto you, Come and fear not, and lay aside every sin, which easily doth beset you, which doth bind you down to destruction. Yea, come and go forth, and show unto your God that ye are willing to repent of your sins, and enter into a covenant with him to keep his commandments, and witness it unto him this day by going into the waters of baptism. And whosoever doeth this, and keepeth the commandments of God from thenceforth, the same will remember that I say unto him, yea, he will remember that I have said unto him, he shall have eternal life, according to the testimony of the Holy Spirit which testifieth in me. And now, my beloved brethren, do you believe these things? Behold, I say unto you, yea, I know that ye believe them. And the way that I know that ye believe them is by the manifestation of the Spirit which is in me. And now, because your face is strong concerning that, yea, concerning the things which I have spoken, great is my joy. For as I said unto you from the beginning, that I had much desire ye were not in the state of dilemma like your brethren. Even so I have found that my desires have been gratified. For I perceive that ye are in the paths of righteousness. I perceive that ye are in the paths which lead to the kingdom of God. Yea, I perceive that ye are making his paths straight. I perceive that it has been made known unto you by the testimony of his word that he cannot walk in crooked paths, neither doth he vary from that which he has said. Neither hath he a shadow of turning from the right to the left, or from that which is right to that which is wrong. 
Therefore his course is one eternal round. And he doth not dwell in unholy temples. Neither can filthiness or anything which is unclean be received into the kingdom of God. Therefore I say unto you, The time shall come, yea, and it shall be at the last day, that he who is filthy shall remain in his filthiness. And now, my beloved brethren, I have said these things unto you that I might awaken you to a sense of your duty to God, that ye may walk blameless before him, that ye may walk after the holy order of God, after which ye have been received. And now I would that ye should be humble, and be submissive and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of patience and long suffering, being temperate in all things, being diligent in keeping the commandments of God at all times, asking for whatsoever things ye stand in need, both spiritual and temporal, always returning thanks unto God for whatsoever things ye do receive. And see that ye have faith, hope, and charity, and then ye will always abound in good works. And may the Lord bless you, and keep your garments spotless, that ye may at last be brought to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the holy prophets who have been ever since the world began, having your garments spotless even as their garments are spotless, in the kingdom of heaven to go no more out. And now, my beloved brethren, I have spoken these words unto you according to the Spirit which testifieth in me, and my soul does exceedingly rejoice because of the exceeding diligence and heed which ye have given unto my word. And now, may the peace of God rest upon you, and upon your houses and lands, and upon your flocks and herds, and all that you possess, your women and your children, according to your faith and good works, from this time forth and forever. And thus I have spoken. Amen. End of chapter 7. End of Alma. Chapters 4 through 7. Recording by David Stevenson. Alma, chapters 8 through 10 of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jared Hess. The Book of Mormon. Translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 8 through 10. Alma, chapter 8. And now it came to pass that Alma returned from the land of Gideon, after having taught the people of Gideon many things which cannot be written, having established the order of the church according as he had before done in the land of Zarahemla. Yea, he returned to his own house at Zarahemla to rest himself from the labors which he had performed. And thus ended the ninth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. And it came to pass in the commencement of the tenth year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, that Alma departed from thence, and took his journey over into the land of Melech, on the west of the river Sidon, on the west by the borders of the wilderness. And he began to teach the people in the land of Melech according to the holy order of God by which he had been called. And he began to teach the people throughout all the land of Melech. And it came to pass that the people came to him throughout all the borders of the land which was by the wilderness side, and they were baptized throughout all the land, so that when he had finished his work at Melech, he departed thence, and travelled three days' journey on the north of the land of Melech, and he came to a city which was called Ammonihah. Now it was the custom of the people of Nephi to call their lands and their cities and their villages, yea, even all their small villages, after the name of him who first possessed them. And thus it was with the land of Ammonihah. And it came to pass that when Alma had come to the city of Ammonihah, he began to preach the word of God unto them. Now Satan had gotten great hold upon the hearts of the people of the city of Ammonihah, therefore they would not hearken unto the words of Alma. Nevertheless Alma labored much in the spirit, wrestling with God in mighty prayer, that he would pour out his spirit upon the people who were in the city that he would also grant that he might baptize them unto repentance. Nevertheless they hardened their hearts, saying unto him, Behold, we know that thou art Alma, and we know that thou art high priest over the church which thou hast established in many parts of the land according to your tradition, and we are not of thy church, and we do not believe in such foolish traditions. 
and now we know that because we are not of thy church we know that thou hast no power over us and thou hast delivered up the judgment seat unto nephiha therefore thou art not the chief judge over us now when the people had said this and withstood all his words and reviled him and spit upon him and caused that he should be cast out of their city he departed thence and took his journey towards the city which was called aaron and it came to pass that while he was journeying thither being weighed down with sorrow wading through much tribulation and anguish of soul because of the wickedness of the people who were in the city of ammonihah it came to pass while alma was thus weighed down with sorrow behold an angel of the lord appeared unto him saying blessed art thou alma therefore lift up thy head and rejoice for thou hast great cause to rejoice for thou hast been faithful in keeping the commandments of god from the time which thou receivest thy first message from him behold i am he that delivered it unto you and behold i am sent to command thee that thou return to the city of ammonihah and preach again unto the people of the city yea preach unto them yea say unto them except they repent the lord god will destroy them for behold they do study at this time that they may destroy the liberty of thy people for thus saith the lord which is contrary to the statutes and judgments and commandments which he has given unto his people now it came to pass that after alma had received his message from the angel of the lord he returned speedily to the land of ammonihah and he entered the city by another way yea by the way which is on the south of the city of ammonihah and as he entered the city he was unhungered and he said to a man will ye give to an humble servant of god something to eat and the man said unto him i am a nephite and i know that thou art a holy prophet of god for thou art the man whom an angel said in a vision thou shalt receive therefore go with me into my house and i will impart unto thee of my food and i know that thou wilt be a blessing unto me and my house and it came to pass that the man received him into his house and the man was called amulek and he brought forth bread and meat and set before alma and it came to pass that alma ate bread and was filled and he blessed amulek and his house and he gave thanks unto god and after he had eaten and was filled he said unto amulek i am alma and am the high priest over the church of god throughout the land and behold i have been called to preach the word of god among all this people according to the spirit of revelation and prophecy and i was in this land and they would not receive me but they cast me out and i was about to set my back towards this land forever but behold i have been commanded that i should turn again and prophesy unto this people yea and to testify against them concerning their iniquities and now amulek because thou hast fed me and taken me in thou art blessed for i was an hungered for i had fasted many days and alma tarried many days with amulek before he began to preach unto the people and it came to pass that the people did wax more gross in their iniquities and the word came to alma saying go and also say unto my servant amulek go forth and prophesy unto this people saying repent ye for thus saith the lord except ye repent i will visit this people in mine anger yea and i will not turn my fierce anger away and alma went forth and also amulek among the people to declare the words of god unto them and they were filled with the holy ghost and they had power given unto them insomuch that they could not be confined in dungeons neither was it possible that any man could slay them nevertheless they did not exercise their power until they were bound in bands and cast into prison now this was done that the lord might show forth his power in them and it came to pass that they went forth and began to preach and to prophesy unto the people according to the spirit and power which the lord had given them alma chapter nine and again i alma having been commanded of god that i should take amulek and go forth and preach again unto this people or the people who were in the city of ammonihah it came to pass as i began to preach unto them they began to contend with me saying who art thou suppose ye that we shall believe the testimony of one man although he should preach unto us that the earth should pass away now they understood not the words which they spake for they knew not that the earth should pass away and they said also 
we will not believe thy words if thou shouldst prophesy that this great city should be destroyed in one day now they knew not that god could do such marvelous works for they were a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people and they said who is god that sendeth no more authority than one man among this people to declare unto them the truth of such great and marvellous things and they stood forth to lay their hands on me but behold they did not and i stood with boldness to declare unto them yea i did boldly testify unto them saying behold o ye wicked and perverse generation how have you forgotten the tradition of your fathers yea how soon ye have forgotten the commandments of god do ye not remember that our father Lehi was brought out of Jerusalem by the hand of God? Do ye not remember that they were all led by him through the wilderness? And have ye forgotten so soon how many times he delivered our fathers out of the hands of their enemies, and preserved them from being destroyed even by the hands of their own brethren? Yea, and if it had not been for his matchless power and his mercy and his long suffering towards us, we should unavoidably have been cut off from the face of the earth long before this period of time, and perhaps been consigned to a state of endless misery and woe. Behold, now I say unto you, that he commandeth you to repent, and except ye repent ye can in no wise inherit the kingdom of God. But behold, this is not all. He has commanded you to repent, or he will utterly destroy you from off the face of the earth. Yea, he will visit you in his anger, and in his fierce anger he will not turn away. Behold, do ye not remember the words which he spake unto Lehi, saying that, Inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land? And again it is said that, Inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now I would that ye should remember that inasmuch as the Lamanites have not kept the commandments of God, they have been cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now we see that the word of the Lord has been verified in this thing, and the Lamanites have been cut off from his presence, from the beginning of their transgressions in the land. Nevertheless I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment than for you if ye remain in your sins, yea, and even more tolerable for them in this life than for you, except ye repent. For there are many promises which are extended to the Lamanites, for it is because of the traditions of their fathers that caused them to remain in their state of ignorance. Therefore the Lord will be merciful unto them and prolong their existence in the land. And at some period of time they will be brought to believe in his word, and to know of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers, and many of them will be saved. For the Lord will be merciful unto all who call on his name. But behold, I say unto you, that if ye persist in your wickedness, that your days shall not be prolonged in the land. For the Lamanites shall be sent upon you, and if ye repent not, they shall come in a time when you know not, and ye shall be visited with utter destruction, and it shall be according to the fierce anger of the Lord. For he will not suffer you that ye shall live in your iniquities to destroy his people. I say unto you, Nay, he would rather suffer that the Lamanites might destroy all his people who are called the people of Nephi, if it were possible that they could fall into sins and transgressions, after having had so much light and so much knowledge given unto them of the Lord their God, yea, after having been such a highly favored people of the Lord, yea, after having been favored above every other nation, kindred, tongue, or people, after having had all things made known unto them according to their desires and their faith and prayers, of that which has been, and which is, and which is to come. Having been visited by the Spirit of God, having conversed with angels, and having been spoken unto by the voice of the Lord, and having the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of revelation, and also many gifts, the gift of speaking with tongues, and the gift of preaching, and the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the gift of translation. Yea, and after having been delivered of God out of the land of Jerusalem by the hand of the Lord, having been saved from famine and from sickness, and all manner of diseases of every kind, and they having waxed strong in battle, that they might not be destroyed, having been brought out of bondage time after time, and having been kept and preserved until now, and they have been prospered until they are rich in all manner of things. And now behold, I say unto you that if this people who have received so many blessings from the hand of the Lord, should transgress contrary to the light and knowledge which they do have, I say unto you that if this be the case, that if they should fall into transgression, 
it would be far more tolerable for the Lamanites than for them. For behold, the promises of the Lord are extended to the Lamanites, but they are not unto you if ye transgress. For has not the Lord expressly promised and firmly decreed that if ye will rebel against him, that ye shall utterly be destroyed from off the face of the earth? And now, for this cause, that ye may not be destroyed, the Lord has sent his angel to visit many of his people, declaring unto them that they must go forth and cry mightily unto this people, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. And not many days hence the Son of God shall come in his glory, and his glory shall be the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, equity, and truth, full of patience, mercy, and long-suffering, quick to hear the cries of his people and to answer their prayers. And behold, he cometh to redeem those who will be baptized unto repentance, through faith on his name. Therefore prepare ye the way of the Lord, for the time is at hand that all men shall reap a reward of their works, according to that which they have been. If they have been righteous, they shall reap the salvation of their souls, according to the power and deliverance of Jesus Christ. And if they have been evil, they shall reap the damnation of their souls, according to the power and captivation of the devil. Now behold, this is the voice of the angel crying unto the people. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye are my brethren, and ye ought to be beloved, and ye ought to bring forth works which are meet for repentance, seeing that your hearts have been grossly hardened against the word of God, and seeing that ye are a lost and a fallen people. Now it came to pass that when I, Alma, had spoken these words, behold, the people were wroth with me, because I said unto them that they were a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people, and also because I said unto them that they were a lost and a fallen people, they were angry with me, and sought to lay their hands upon me, that they might cast me into prison. But it came to pass that the Lord did not suffer them, that they should take me at that time, and cast me into prison. And it came to pass that Amulek went and stood forth, and began to preach unto them also. And now the words of Amulek are not all written. Nevertheless, a part of his words are written in this book. Alma, chapter 10. Now these are the words which Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, I am Amulek, I am the son of Gedona, who was the son of Ishmael, who was a descendant of Aminadi. And it was the same Aminadi who interpreted the writing which was upon the wall of the temple, which was written by the finger of God. And Aminadi was a descendant of Nephi, who was the son of Lehi, who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh, who was the son of Joseph, who was sold into Egypt by the hands of his brethren. And behold, I am also a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. Yea, and behold, I have many kindreds and friends, and I have also acquired much riches by the hand of my industry. Nevertheless, after all this, I never have known much of the ways of the Lord, and his mysteries and marvelous power. I said I never had known much of these things, but behold, I mistake, for I have seen much of his mysteries and his marvelous power yea, even in the preservation of the lives of this people. Nevertheless I did harden my heart, for I was called many times, and I would not hear. Therefore I knew concerning these things, yet I would not know. Therefore I went on rebelling against God and the wickedness of my heart, even until the fourth day of this seventh month, which is in the tenth year of the reign of the judges. As I was journeying to see a very near kindred, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house, for thou shalt feed a prophet of the Lord, yea, a holy man, who is a chosen man of God, for he has fasted many days because of the sins of this people, and he is hungered, and thou shalt receive him into thy house and feed him, and he shall bless thee and thy house and the blessing of the Lord shall rest upon thee and thy house. And it came to pass that I obeyed the voice of the angel, and returned towards my house. And as I was going thither, I found the man whom the angel said unto me, Thou shalt receive into thy house, and behold, it was this same man who has been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. And the angel said unto me, He is a holy man. Wherefore I know he is a holy man, because it was said by an angel of God. 
and again I know that the things whereof he hath testified are true. For behold, I say unto you, that as the Lord liveth, even so has he sent his angel to make these things manifest unto me. And this he has done, while this Alma hath dwelt at my house. For behold, he hath blessed mine house, he hath blessed me and my women, and my children, and my father and my kinsfolk. Yea, even all my kindred hath he blessed, and the blessing of the Lord hath rested upon us according to the words which he spake. And now, when Amulek had spoken these words, the people began to be astonished, seeing that there was more than one witness who testified of the things whereof they were accused, and also of the things which were to come according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them. Nevertheless there were some among them who thought to question them, that by their cunning devices they might catch them in their words, that they might find witness against them, that they might deliver them to their judges, that they might be judged according to the law, and that they might be slain or cast into prison, according to the crime which they could make appear or witness against them. Now it was those men who sought to destroy them, who were lawyers, who were hired or appointed by the people to administer the law at their times of trials, or at the trials of the crimes of the people before the judges. Now these lawyers were learned in all the arts and cunning of the people, and this was to enable them that they might be skillful in their profession. And it came to pass that they began to question Amulek, that thereby they might make him cross his words or contradict the words which he should speak. Now they knew not that Amulek could know of their designs, but it came to pass, as they began to question him, he perceived their thoughts, and he said unto them, O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites, for ye are laying the foundation of the devil, for ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous, and to bring down the wrath of God upon your heads, even to the utter destruction of this people. Yea, well did Mosiah say, who was our last king, when he was about to deliver up the kingdom, having no one to confer it upon, causing that this people should be governed by their own voices. Yea, well did he say that if the time should come, that the voice of this people should choose iniquity, that is, if the time should come that this people should fall into transgression, they would be ripe for destruction. And now I say unto you that well doth the Lord judge of your iniquities, well doth he cry unto this people by the voice of his angels, Repent ye, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yea, well doth he cry by the voice of his angels that, I will come down among my people with equity and justice in my hands. Yea, and I say unto you that if it were not for the prayers of the righteous who are now in the land, that ye would even now be visited with utter destruction. Yet it would not be by flood as were the people in the days of Noah but it would be by famine, and by pestilence, and the sword. But it is by the prayers of the righteous that ye are spared. Now therefore, if ye will cast out the righteous from among you, then will not the Lord stay his hand, but in his fierce anger he will come out against you. Then ye shall be smitten by famine, and by pestilence, and by the sword, and the time is soon at hand, except ye repent." And now it came to pass that the people were more angry with Amulek, and they cried out, saying, This man doth revile against our laws which are just, and our wise lawyers whom we have selected. But Amulek stretched forth his hand, and cried the mightier unto them, saying, O ye wicked and perverse generation, why hath Satan got such great hold upon your hearts? Why will ye yield yourselves unto him, that he may have power over you, to blind your eyes, that ye will not understand the words which are spoken? according to their truth. For behold, have I testified against your law? Ye do not understand, ye say that I have spoken against your law, but I have not. I have spoken in favor of your law, to your condemnation. And now, behold, I say unto you that the foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning to be laid by the unrighteousness of your lawyers and your judges. And now it came to pass that when Amulek had spoken these words, the people cried out against him, saying, now we know that this man is a child of the devil, for he hath lied unto us, for he hath spoken against our law, and now he says that he has not spoken against it. And again he has reviled against our lawyers and our judges. And it came to pass that the lawyers put it into their hearts that they should remember these things against him. And there was one among them whose name was Zeezrom. 
Now he was the foremost to accuse Amulek and Alma, he being one of the most expert among them, having much business to do among the people. Now the object of these lawyers was to get gain, and they got gain according to their employ. End of Alma chapters 8 through 10 Recording by Jared Hess in Mapleton, Utah Please visit at hessmas.blogspot.com Alma, chapters 11 to 13, of the Book of Mormon. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kevin Davidson. The Book of Mormon, translated by Joseph Smith. Alma, chapters 11 to 13. Chapter 11. Now it was in the law of Mosiah that every man who was a judge of the law, or those who were appointed to be judges, should receive wages according to the time which they labored to judge those who were brought before them to be judged. Now if a man owed another, and he would not pay that which he did owe, he was complained of to the judge and the judge executed authority, and sent forth officers that the man should be brought before him, and he judged the man according to the law and the evidences which were brought against him, and thus the man was compelled to pay that which he owed, or to be stripped, or be cast out from among the people as a thief and a robber. And the judge received for his wages, according to his time, a senine of gold for a day, or a senum of silver, which is equal to a senine of gold, and this is according to the law which was given. Now these are the names of the different pieces of their gold and of their silver, according to their value, and the names are given by the Nephites, for they did not reckon after the manner of the Jews who were at Jerusalem, neither did they measure after the manner of the Jews. But they altered their reckoning and their measure according to the minds and circumstances of the people in every generation, until the reign of the judges, they having been established by King Mosiah. Now the reckoning is thus. A senine of gold, and a sean of gold, a shum of gold, and a limna of gold a senum of silver, an amnor of silver, an ezram of silver, and an anti of silver. A senum of silver was equal to a senine of gold, and either for a measure of barley, and also for a measure of every kind of grain. Now the amount of a senine of gold was twice the value of a senine, and a shum of gold was twice the value of a seon. And a limna of gold was the value of them all. And an amnor of silver was as great as two senums. And an ezram of silver was as great as four senums. And an anti was as great as them all. Now this is the value of the lesser numbers of their reckoning. A shiblon is half of a senum. Therefore a shiblon for half a measure of barley. And a shiblum is half of a shiblum. And a leah is the half of a shiblum. Now this is their number according to their reckoning. Now an antion of gold is equal to three shiblons. Now it was for the sole purpose to get gain, because they received their wages according to their employ, Therefore they did stir up the people to riotings, and all manner of disturbances and wickedness, that they might have more employ, that they might get money according to the suits which were brought before them. Therefore they did stir up the people against Alma and Amulek. And this Zeezrom began to question Amulek, saying, Will ye answer me a few questions which I shall ask you? Now Zeezrom was a man who was expert in the devices of the devil, 
that he might destroy that which was good. Therefore he said unto Amulek, Will ye answer the questions which I shall put to you? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, if it be according to the Spirit of the Lord which is in me, for I shall say nothing which is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord. And Zeezrom said unto him, Behold, here are six antis of silver, and all these will I give thee if thou wilt deny the existence of a supreme being. Now Amulek said, O thou child of hell, why tempt ye me? Knowest thou that the righteous yieldeth to no such temptations? Believest thou that there is no God? I say unto you, Nay, thou knowest that there is a God, but thou lovest that lucre more than him. And now thou hast lied before God unto me, thou saidest unto me, Behold these six antis, which are of great worth, I will give unto thee, when thou hadst in thy heart to retain them from me, and it was only thy desire that I should deny the true and living God, that thou mightest have cause to destroy me. And now behold, for this great evil thou shalt have thy reward. And Zeezrom said unto him, Thou sayest there is a true and living God? And Amulek said, Yea, there is a true and living God. Now Zeezrom said, Is there more than one God? And he answered, No. Now Zeezrom said unto him again, How knowest thou these things? And he said, An angel hath made them known unto me. And Zeezrom said again, Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? And he said unto him, Yea. And Zeezrom said again, Shall he save his people in their sins? And Amulek answered and said unto him, I say unto you, He shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. Now Zeezrom said unto the people, See that ye remember these things, for he said there is but one God, yet he saith that the Son of God shall come, but he shall not save his people as though he had authority to command God. Now Amulek saith again unto him, Behold, thou hast lied, for thou sayest that I spake as though I had authority to command God, because I said he shall not save his people in their sins. And I say unto you again, that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word, and he hath said, that no unclean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore how can ye be saved, except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore ye cannot be saved in your sins. Now Zeezrom saith again unto him, Is the Son of God the very eternal Father? And Amulek said unto him, Yea, he is the very eternal Father of heaven and of earth, and all things which in them are. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And he shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name, and these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. Therefore the wicked remain as though there had been no redemption made, except it be the loosing of the bands of death. For behold, the day cometh, that all shall rise from the dead, and stand before God, and be judged according to their works. Now there is a death which is called a temporal death, and the death of Christ shall loose the bands of this temporal death, that all shall be raised from this temporal death. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we now are at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. Now this restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, 
both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not be so much as a hair of their heads be lost, but everything shall be restored to its perfect frame, as it is now, or in the body, and shall be brought and be arraigned before the bar of Christ the Son, and God the Father, and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God, to be judged according to their works, whether they be good, or whether they be evil. Now behold, I have spoken unto you concerning the death of the mortal body, and also concerning the resurrection of the mortal body. I say unto you that this mortal body is raised to an immortal body, that is, from death even from the first death unto life, that they can die no more, their spirits uniting with their bodies, never to be divided. Thus the whole becoming spiritual and immortal, that they can no more see corruption. Now when Amulek had finished these words, the people began again to be astonished, and also Zeezrom began to tremble. And thus ended the words of Amulek, or this is all that I have written. Chapter 12 now Alma, seeing that the words of Amulek silenced Zeezrom, for he beheld that Amulek had caught him in his lying and deceiving to destroy him, and seeing that he began to tremble under a consciousness of his guilt, he opened his mouth and began to speak unto him, and to establish the words of Amulek, and to explain things beyond, or to unfold the scriptures beyond that which Amulek had done. Now the words that Alma spoke unto Zeezrom were heard by the people round about, for the multitude was great, and he spake on this wise. Now Zeezrom, seeing that thou hast been taken in thy lying and craftiness, for thou hast not lied unto men only, but thou hast lied unto God, for behold, he knows all thy thoughts, and thou seest that thy thoughts are made known unto us by his Spirit. And thou seest that we know that thy plan was a very subtle plan, as the subtlety of the devil, for to lie and to deceive this people, that thou mightest set them against us, to revile us and to cast us out. Now this was a plan of thine adversary, and he hath exercised his power in thee. Now I would say that ye should remember that what I say unto thee I say unto all. And behold, I say unto you, all that this was a snare of the adversary, which he has laid to catch this people, that he might bring you into subjection unto him, that he might encircle you about with his chains, that he might chain you down to everlasting destruction, according to the power of his captivity. Now when Alma had spoken these words, Zeezrom began to tremble more exceedingly, for he was convinced more and more of the power of God, and he was convinced that Alma and Amulek had a knowledge of him, for he was convinced that they knew the thoughts and intents of his heart. For power was given unto them, that they might know these things according to the spirit of prophecy. And Zeezrom began to inquire of them more diligently, that he might know more concerning the kingdom of God. And he said unto Alma, What does this mean which Amulek has spoken concerning the resurrection of the dead, that all shall rise from the dead, both the just and the unjust, and are brought to stand before God to be judged according to their works? And now Alma began to expound these things unto him, saying, It is given unto many to know the mysteries of God, Nevertheless they are laid under a strict command that they shall not impart only according to the portion of his word which he doth grant unto the children of men, according to the heed and diligence which they give unto him. And therefore he that will harden his heart, the same receiveth the lesser portion of the word. And he that will not harden his heart, to him is given the greater portion of the word until it is given unto him to know the mysteries of God, until he know them in full. And they that will harden their hearts, to them is given the lesser portion of the word, 
until they know nothing concerning his mysteries, and then they are taken captive by the devil, and led by his will down to destruction. Now this is what is meant by the chains of hell. And Amulek has spoken plainly concerning death, and being raised from this mortality to a state of immortality, and being brought before the bar of God, to be judged according to our works. Then if our hearts have been hardened, yea, if we have hardened our hearts against the word, insomuch that it has not been found in us, then will our state be awful, for then we shall be condemned. For our words will condemn us, yea, all our works will condemn us. We shall not be found spotless, and our thoughts will also condemn us and in this awful state we shall not dare to look up to our God. And we would fain be glad if we could command the rocks and the mountains to fall upon us, to hide us from his presence. But this cannot be. We must come forth and stand before him in his glory and in his power and in his might, majesty, and dominion, and acknowledge to our everlasting shame that all his judgments are just, that he is just in all his works, and that he is merciful unto the children of men, and that he has all power to save every man that believeth on his name, and bringeth forth fruit, meet for repentance. And now behold, I say unto you, then cometh a death, even a second death, which is a spiritual death. Then is the time that whosoever dieth in his sins, as to a temporal death, shall also die a spiritual death, yea, he shall die as to things pertaining unto righteousness. Then is the time when their torments shall be as a lake of fire and brimstone, whose flame ascendeth up for ever and ever, and then is the time that they shall be chained down to an everlasting destruction according to the power and captivity of Satan, he having subjected them according to his will. Then, I say unto you, they shall be as though they had been no redemption made, for they cannot be redeemed according to God's justice, and they cannot die, seeing there is no more corruption. Now it came to pass that when Alma had made an end of speaking these words, the people began to be more astonished, but there was one, Antiana, who was a chief ruler among them, came forth and said unto him, What is this that thou hast said, that man should rise from the dead and be changed from this mortal to an immortal state, that the soul can never die? What does the scripture mean, which saith that God placed cherubim and a flaming sword on the east of the garden of Eden? lest our first parents should enter and partake of the fruit of the tree of life and live for ever. And thus we see that there was no possible chance that they should live for ever. Now Alma said unto him, This is the thing which I was about to explain. Now we see that Adam did fall by the partaking of the forbidden fruit, according to the word of God, and thus we see that by his fall all mankind became a lost and fallen people. And now, behold, I say unto you, that if it had been possible for Adam to have partaken of the fruit of the tree of life at that time, there would have been no death, and the word would have been void, making God a liar, for he said, If thou eat, thou shalt surely die. And we see that death comes upon mankind, yea, the death which has been spoken of by Amulek, which is the temporal death. Nevertheless, there was a space granted unto man in which he might repent. Therefore this life became a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God, a time to prepare for that endless state which has been spoken of by us, which is after the resurrection of the dead. Now if it had not been for the plan of redemption, which was laid from the foundation of the world, there could have been no resurrection of the dead. But there was a plan of redemption laid, which shall bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, of which has been spoken. And now behold, if it were possible that our first parents could have gone forth and partaken of the tree of life, 
they would have been forever miserable, having no preparatory state, and thus the plan of redemption would have been frustrated, and the word of God would have been void, taking none effect. But, behold, it was not so, but it was appointed unto men that they must die, and after death they must come to judgment, even that same judgment of which we have spoken, which is the end. And after God had appointed that these things should come unto man, behold, then he saw that it was expedient that man should know concerning the things whereof he had appointed unto them. Therefore he sent angels to converse with them, who caused men to behold of his glory. And they began from that time forth to call on his name. Therefore God conversed with men, and made known unto them the plan of redemption, which had been prepared from the foundation of the world. And this he made known unto them, according to their faith and repentance, and their holy works. Wherefore he gave commandments unto men, they having first transgressed the first commandments, as to things which were temporal, and becoming as gods, knowing good from evil, placing themselves in a state to act, or being placed in a state to act according to their wills and pleasures, whether to do evil or to do good. Therefore God gave unto them commandments, after having made known unto them the plan of redemption, that they should not do evil, the penalty thereof being a second death, which was an everlasting death, as to things pertaining unto righteousness. For on such the plan of redemption could have no power, for the works of justice could not be destroyed according to the supreme goodness of God. But God did call on men in the name of His Son, this being the plan of redemption which was laid, saying, If ye will repent, and harden not your hearts, then I will have mercy upon you through mine only begotten Son. Therefore, whoever repenteth and hardeneth not his heart, he shall have claim on mercy through mine only begotten Son, unto a remission of his sins, and these shall enter into my rest. And whosoever will harden his heart and will do iniquity, behold, I swear in my wrath that he shall not enter into my rest. And now, my brethren, behold, I say unto you, that if ye will harden your hearts, ye shall not enter into the rest of the Lord. Therefore your iniquity provoketh him, that he sendeth down his wrath upon you, as in the first provocation. Yea, according to his word, in the last provocation, as well as the first, to the everlasting destruction of your souls. Therefore, according to his word, unto the last death, as well as the first. And now, my brethren, seeing ye know these things, and that they are true, let us repent, and harden not our hearts, that we provoke not the Lord our God to pull down his wrath upon us in these his second commandments, which he has given unto us. But let us enter into the rest of God, which is prepared according to his word. Chapter 13 and again, my brethren, I would cite your minds forward to the time when the Lord God gave these commandments unto his children. And I would that ye should remember that the Lord God ordained priests after his holy order, which was after the order of his Son, to teach these things unto people. And those priests were ordained after the order of his Son, in a manner that thereby the people might know in what manner to look forward to his Son for redemption. And this is the manner after which they were ordained, being called and prepared from the foundation of the world according to the foreknowledge of God, on account of their exceeding faith and good works. In the first place, being left to choose good or evil, therefore they having chosen good, and exercising exceedingly great faith, are called with a holy calling, yea, with that holy calling which was prepared with and according to a preparatory redemption for such. And thus they have been called to this holy calling on account of their faith, while others would reject the Spirit of God on account of the hardness of their hearts and blindness of their minds, while if it had not been given for this 
they might have had as great privilege as their brethren or in fine in the first place they were on the same standing with their brethren thus this holy calling being prepared from the foundation of the world for such as would not harden their hearts being in and through the atonement of the only begotten son who was prepared and thus being called by this holy calling and ordained unto the high priesthood of the holy order of god to teach his commandments unto the children of men that they also might enter into his rest this high priesthood being after the order of his son which order was from the foundation of the world or in other words being without beginning of days or end of years being prepared from eternity to all eternity according to his foreknowledge of all things now they were ordained after this manner being called with a holy calling and ordained with a holy ordinance and taking upon them the high priesthood of the holy order which calling and ordinance and high priesthood is without beginning or end thus they became high priests for ever after the order of the son the only begotten of the father who is without beginning of days or end of years who is full of grace equity and truth and thus it is amen now as i said concerning the holy order or this high priesthood there were many who were ordained and became high priests of god and it was on account of their exceeding faith and repentance and their righteousness before god they choosing to repent and work righteousness rather than to perish therefore they were called after this holy order and were sanctified and their garments were washed white through the blood of the lamb now they after being sanctified by the holy ghost having their garments made white being pure and spotless before god they could not look upon sin save it were with abhorrence and there were many exceedingly great many who were made pure and entered into the rest of the lord their god and now my brethren i would that ye should humble yourselves before god and bring forth fruit meet for repentance that ye may also enter into that rest yea humble yourselves even as the people of the days of melchizedek who was also a high priest after this same order which i have spoken who also took upon him the high priesthood for ever and it was this same melchizedek to whom abraham paid tithes yea even our father abraham paid tithes of one-tenth part of all he possessed now these ordinances were given after this manner that thereby the people might look forward on the son of god it being a type of his order or it being his order and this that they might look forward to him for a remission of their sins that they might enter into the rest of the lord now this melchizedek was a king over the land of salem and his people had waxed strong in iniquity and abomination yea they had all gone astray they were full of all manner of wickedness but melchizedek having exercised mighty faith and received the office of the high priesthood according to the holy order of god did preach repentance unto his people and behold they did repent and melchizedek did establish peace in the land in his days therefore he was called the prince of peace for he was the king of salem and he did reign under his father now there were many before him and also there were many afterwards but none were greater therefore of him they have more particularly made mention now i need to rehearse the matter what i have said may suffice behold the scriptures are before you if ye will rest them it shall be to your own destruction and now it came to pass that when alma had said these words unto them he stretched forth his hand unto them and cried with a mighty voice saying now is the time to repent for the day of salvation draweth nigh yea and the voice of the lord by the mouth of angels doth declare it unto all nations yea doth declare it that they may have glad tidings of great joy yea and he doth sound these glad tidings among all his people 
yea even to them that are scattered abroad upon the face of the earth wherefore they have come unto us and they are made known unto us in plain terms that we may understand that we cannot err and this because of our being wanderers in a strange land therefore we are thus highly favored for we have these glad tidings declared unto us in all parts of our vineyard for behold angels are declaring it unto many at this time in our land and this is for the purpose of preparing the hearts of the children of men to receive his word at the time of his coming in his glory and now we only wait to hear the joyful news declared unto us by the mouth of angels of his coming for the time cometh and we know not how soon would to god that it might be in my day but let it be sooner or later in it i will rejoice and it shall be made known unto just and holy men by the mouth of angels at the time of his coming that the words of our fathers may be fulfilled according to that which they have spoken concerning him which was according to the spirit of prophecy which was in them and now my brethren i wish from the inmost part of my heart yea with great anxiety even unto pain that ye would hearken unto my words and cast off your sins and not procrastinate the day of your repentance but that ye would humble yourselves before the lord and call on his holy name and watch and pray continually that ye may not be tempted above that which ye can bear and thus be led by the holy spirit becoming humble meek submissive patient full of love and all long-suffering having faith on the lord having a hope that ye shall receive eternal life having the love of god always in your hearts that ye may be lifted up at the last day and enter into his rest and may god grant unto you repentance that ye may not bring down his wrath upon you that ye may not be bound down by the chains of hell that ye may not suffer the second death and alma spoke many more words unto the people which are not written in this book end of alma chapters 11 to 13 recording by kevin davidson www.blogordie.com